Cage Champion Series. I love the sound of that. And EXO against the wall, and Team Pabs will full cap. <laughs> Where did Pabs come from? Straight on top of their heads. Quartz won't let them stand much longer, kneecapping three in that fight. The new kings of EU have been crowned. Toronto Defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. What's up, friends? Zoe here. Welcome to day four of the OWCS Stage 2 groups. Joining me for the EMEA portion are Lemon and Necra women. Good luck to them. Yay! Welcome Hello. back, Lemon Kiwi. Hey! We're so happy Lemon. to have you back. Long time no see. How are you doing, Lemon? Welcome Good. What's, what's, what's new with Lemon Kiwi? I, I don't know. Like, I never left, I guess. The meta's been a bit different. We were talking about what we had for breakfast. I'm glad we all had water because it's just like this early. But we're caffeinated now, which is what matters. That's Same. right. Okay. <laughs> it's too early for breakfast, but we will be eating because we will be treated to some great Overwatch. And let's take a look at the pricing to see what the players are all playing for. Here is the breakdown for this stage. As some of you might notice, uh, got a little bit more points to hand out in the second stage. Uh, it will just increase as we go along. And those points are very, very, very important uh, because you want them in order to qualify for the main events and of course you also see uh, the, the the first place here will be qualified directly to a uh, dallas that's right that's Ooh. exciting texas uh, because this is where we will be taking our uh, first stunt at the lan event you uh, can join us as well of course if you're watching uh, just get your tickets right now right now like a second like right now just do, do it. it this second a link. Do it now it's quite short Easy to type. <laughs> yeah so true and I will be waffling and giving you time uh, before the first match <laughs> starts so you can, you know, type all the details and you get to meet us or some of your favorite players there. So let's actually take a look at who's in the running in the EMEA region. Uh, looking at the group standings, of course, some teams already qualified for the main event. Others are still battling it out. We also already had to say goodbye to a few unfortunate uh, teams. Which teams do you got your eyes on here, Lemon? Oh, that's so tough. I remember casting Aw oh, Yeah back in the day, and I wonder uh, what kind of meta they're onto these days. I like how just every team has found their own flavor of the meta, and some teams stick into what they know best, some teams being the, the jack of all trades, but I've always been a fan of Aw oh, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're so fun to watch. Like, Akaya's Junkrat one trick, I think, gives me so much life every time I see it on the stage. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, I'm personally looking forward to seeing some of these teams that are on those elimination matches. Team Peps versus a one-man army. I think that's going to be a really good match to watch. I know that's not happening today, but I'm spoiling tomorrow. <laughs> so you want to come back for that, too. That's right. I, I got my eyes on Super Shy. I loved chatting to them last week. I'm very excited to see what they can do in their next match. I think it's uh, against Ex Oblivioni, a match that they anticipated as That'll well. That'll be so as, fun. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. However, we're going to kick things off here with the Group C. Flex Zodiacs will go up against Rockstars. This is, is, uh, this is a elimination match. Speaking is hard. Playing is hard too. So they got to give it their best. Flex Zodiacs. Uh, this is uh, a squad which came into the stage two with very few changes they only switched out the dps player tricky for onto what do we know about them uh well, I at least recognize Sony, a collegiate player with the University of St. Thomas, uh, top four at the CECC South Regional, and you also may know him from his time on Timeless Obsidian in North America. Even Caraba, which I had to like double check. Yeah, he was like, he was that coach from Contenders back in the day. Anto and Karama have a lot of synergy together, probably hence why Karama found his way onto this roster. They have a ton of game battles tournaments together, so the synergy is being built i'm That's excited right. to see that i feel like when we've looked at the collegiate scene this is where we've seen a bunch of new stars born because so this is not the only team that we've seen collegiate players find their way onto these big rosters 
It's been super exciting, uh, really, already in the first stage and even more so in the second one. And now looking at this one, Rockstars, they made some changes. Uh, I guess we could say that they're formerly known as Rock Esports. Not sure if Rock Esports still exists, but they are now called Rockstars. Uh, they're keeping the core of their Saudi players. Uh, but they did have to say goodbye to their Korean players, Checkmate in Iziaki. Gucci and Sky will have to fill in for them. That's a big shoes to fill, Necra. I, it's definitely big shoes to fill, but I feel like when you're taking a look at all of these open environments, it's kind of where you get a chance to prove yourselves, right, Jen? Yeah, and I think proving yourself was exactly what I saw Rojo do. Um, the first time I got to see him compete was in the Saudi E-League, and I watched him on Hitscan, and I just thought, this guy is going to be like one of the next best DPS players, because especially like Saudi is producing a lot of amazing talent. Rojo is going to be the one I I'm keeping my eyes on, especially losing that star uh, secondary DPS of Checkmate. Is this going to be a rock? Is this going to be a gem? I hope they can still shine, uh, you know, without those Korean players, but... Uh, I still believe in rock stars. Yeah, I mean, looking at the opposition you talked about, the synergy being built, AOY, Rojo, and TV, and T, they obviously have that synergy already. They've been playing with each other for quite some while. Now it's just a question on how these new pieces will uh, fit in. And we're about to find out because the game is ready. So let's dive into the map set. Ooh, thank you so much, Zoe. Jen, this is so exciting to get to be back here and to get a chance to take a look at both of these teams really show up today. I know, we were like, oh, Flexodia, Exodia, do they have all the pieces? You got the arm, the legs, yeah, and... Hey, it's gotta be in the heart of the cards today. Yeah, because that's the end-all be-all if you guys know card games. If not, get a childhood. But I'm excited to see Rockstars now from Rock Esports. Do they still have that star power without those big names on the roster? It's going to be tough to tell, and I think another piece that throws a spanner in the works potentially is this patch that ha we had come through earlier on this week. Does it affect anything? When we saw both of these teams play their very first matches in the group stage, we saw a lot of Orisa, uh, specifically out of Sunny on Flexodiax. I think that might be another composition that they continue to play around, but similarly on Rockstars, they tended to play a bit of the Orisa, but Sigma did just get a tiny buff to the mobility on that shield. So with Sigma also being in their pocket, that could be another composition they can rely upon. Yeah, if you don't want if you don't want to go horse v horse, Sigma I think is a great choice against uh, the Arisa, just one of the best tanks when it comes to absorbing pressure at range, which is just Arisa. She just never dies. But doors are open. Let's go find out what's going to be going down. A lot of weight on someone like Gucci's shoulder stepping in as that tracer player over checkmate. He comes from Super Shine, has floated around a lot of community tournaments, even in the EU Summer Series with exclamation point play. So I'm excited to see what Gucci can do in this match for Rockstars. I am too. Right away, we're going to see pretty much a mirror match across the board, but Gucci is going to be getting the first pick. Uh, so far, so good. When you're on the flank, on to trying to protect is Arissa, but this has been tough. Gucci is on a rampage too. As soon as that one domino fell, like the rest did as well. So a great first fight for Rockstars. It's looking really good so far, and the fact that they were able to win that first fight means they are going to be leading the charge when it comes to getting these ultimates online. So I'm looking at Skyle being able to get this amplification matrix potentially for the next fight. Gucci already with that first pick, basically a one clip into that Cassidy, is that that pulse bomb is going to be up and running too. It did get a bit of a projectile change, so it's not going to be as easy to stick those pulse bombs, but could still land their mark. Yeah, on two, I'll have to keep their eyes on Gucci for now. Rockstar is still holding. They started to surround Sone and a great immortality from Reisu to assist with this. Now, Flexo DX just still respecting that space. Now the immortalities are exchanged. You're waiting for Sony to be back up. Amp Matrix from Skyle. Gonna drop it. It's smashed by Reisu. But look at that space creation from TVNT to just get in the face of someone like Umtu. And all that space, that distraction opens up the field for someone like Gucci to go insane. He's always had access to this health pack, too. He's an independent king. And you're looking at the kings of rock stars who still have the point. Didn't even have to use that pulse bomb either. They were able to win that fight right off the back of that amplification matrix. So it's going to be a very alt-filled fight for this next one when there's going to be four on both sides. AOY is going to get the sound barrier first, so it might be nice to have that as an engagement tool. But it also comes down to maybe just whoever beats later might be able to win. So Rod's going to have to watch out for that too. 
Oh, uh, I know TVNT is feeling about Terra surging in to light up the pulse bomb with the blue seal, but the immortality from Racy was just too good. Sound barrier from Rod to help the team against the responding Terra surge. Now all the ults come out. One on two was hidden with the dead eye, so that's not going to get much done. It's all up to Flexo DX to keep the overtime wick burning here in a second. 99% Rockstars have gotten almost to the finish line, and with Skyle becoming the third DPS, he's made that winnable in a 1v2 against Karama and Antu. That's what you can do sometimes if you're just on that off angle and you have that pincer coming through from your tracer as well. Rockstars is off to a blazing fast start here, 100 to zero, heading into our next round. We didn't get a chance to, um, we actually saw Rockstars play Village, the very first match of groups, so they did end up playing the Arisa composition there as well. Last time it was actually Gucci playing something like the Echo, but I'm not sure if you're going to want to do that when you know that Flexo Flexodiax is still playing a similar type of comp. Yeah, Echo is tough when you're going up against a very talented Cassidy, but if you're going to whip out the Echo, it would be here. The sky's the limit. Now Symmetra is to get people in the best position possible, and the Tracers come out, but Rockstar will have a preferable position. Karama was a bit late to the swap. A little bit late, but I think you're still not too late to the party. It's going to be a quick take of point as Flexodiacs are able to get there first, but Rockstars, they're still biding their time. They want to make sure that their cooldowns are online and ready to go. You're special, specifically looking at your Orisa TVNT to make that engagement. So let's get this uh, party started. I'm excited for the party. I brought popcorn, and this is where, where usually you're trying to generate that amp matrix from your bath, but Rockstars want to contest the uh, the cap as much as possible from Flexo DX, who were on the low ground earlier. And Rockstars, well, they got the cap, then lost their tank, so this is just going to become a ranged duel where Rojo has to respect this. I like that Rod is being more aggressive on the Lucio to try and get his DPS or even himself closer to someone like Rojo to make him uncomfortable, and he already has. Skyless team's immortality won't be able to get away. Now Rockstars are peeled away from each other. They are. I think it was a great positional advantage. Like Zodiacs were able to take the point first, and then they could play with that natural protection from the rest of the coverage of the point. And so Rockstars, they had a bit more of a difficult task being able to try to engage onto the team. They took a lot of damage on the income, but I love that Flex Zodiacs is also going to be playing really far forward. Very aggressive. I like it with the Ant Matrix as soon as Rockstars came out the door, and they're trying to contend with their own Ant Matrix. Good job from Skyle. But as the dust settles, Rockstars are nowhere to be found. Flex ODX won their first fight of the series right here, right now, and they're able to extend that lead even more. It feels good, too, because this is uh, where I think we can really see this Orisa uh, play out just a little bit stronger. You get a bit more of an advantage if you have control of the point. So if Luxodiax can still continue to win these team fights, this should also convert over to a round win. But we have ult more ultimates coming up on the board, and I'm looking at those terror surges as well as these sound barriers up next. Yeah, Rod and AOI have to be on it when it comes to those terror surges, and it's really hard to charge up that terror surge to full and have significant damage without getting killed, obviously, in the Tracer harassing that bath in the back, forced out the Immortality and the Sound Barrier, and both Terra Surges brought out all the cooldowns, but Rockstar is still at that front pillar, it's TVNT, and he's forced Racer to the high ground, it's a good jump from him, but he doesn't have a team left to protect, so Rockstars take the point back. Oh, that's a nice stagger, too, on Teresu. It's just going to give Rockstars a bit more time. But so DX, though, they're kind of missing that last fight potential, I think. Especially when you have that Lucio that can amp it up. You're really looking at, like, 85% to ensure your victory. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if Rockstars can kind of... Uh, make this work or if they're going to have one more fight if Flex Zodiacs do take back that point. Amplification Matrix coming up. Roho does have this Cassidy ult, but it's not the most impactful ultimate on the board, so not expecting much. I like the immortality play there from Skyle to see if you can get extra charge built from the Deadeye. It was more of a zoning ult, as it usually is. Ant Matrix v Ant Matrix. Flex ODX playing in a safe position, away from the line of sight of Rockstars. But now that both baps are down, like, that's a significant amount of healing. But Karama gives the 
edge to flex out the axe, and even a double kill. Now, rock stars don't have a leg to stand on, and with 83% to flex out the axe, they're very close to sending us to map three. Or round three. Yeah, I mean, hey, hey, listen, it's a map three of this map, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where we get a chance to see if Rockstars can make it back as a full team of five. It was 83% before that flipped over. You can see AOI waiting for the taxi back of the Orisa, so they feel confident that the Tracer can go in and touch. All right, on two, trying to zone with that Deadeye, and somehow Rojo shot him. That is crazy that Rojo would challenge mid Deadeye like that, and Karama still all over Rojo, but still gets dealt with great peel out of AOI. Like so, DX falling at the end, but Rockstars have one more fight to win to take the map. Oh my goodness, it's just so back and forth, and I love that this round has already been so much more competitive because it make, gives me a little bit more hope that we're going to have a great match coming up next but rock stars they're the ones in the driver's seat they have the ults so flex zodiacs are going to be walking into a terror surge and a pulse bomb potentially as a combo oh, the terror surge to bring out that bell oh, race too and even if you don't get the kill you get the immortality field out and the dead eye fully charged by rojo finishes off sony and with the sound bear of aoy rojo still gets to live so rock Rockstars has the number advantage. They still have a tank up. Flex out DX got a touch. Oh, get there. Was not on the same page. Rockstars steal away map one. Oh, they were right there. They were right there. I'm not sure if there were any cooldowns that came through. Maybe a Lucio boop or something, but. Oh. Was, I think they were trying to coordinate like a sound barrier push or something. And then it, it did look like they so were fast waiting. on control. Yeah, it did look like oh. they were kind of trying to gather their thoughts, but you're so right about that. The percentage could tick up like that, and then you miss your half-second window to go get the touch. Cassidy was right there. It just wasn't close enough. Uh, but, you know, I, I was still really impressed by that second round of Nepal from Flux Zodiacs. I That gives me, again, like so much hope that I think we're going to see a closer series as this progresses. Uh, that first round, I was sweating a little bit, but no, Flux Zodiacs, they are here to play. Yeah, Rockstars got the punish on Tassone when he went for the Terra Surge, but that was really off of a clutch sound, bar sound barrier by AOI, which saved Rojo, who could full charge the Deadeye, kill Sony, and when you don't have an Orisa, that gives so much freedom to the other Orisa to just javelin spin into your team, javelin your javelin throw into your DPS, and that's just such an uncomfortable place for someone like Karama and Antu to be. So it's really that last play that tilted the scales in Rockstars favor because like you said I was so impressed by Flexo DX namely Karama and his flank potential and just 1v2ing at times and I really thought that was going to be a Flexo DX uh, round two I, I agree with you. I, it also just comes down to uh, the punish, like you were saying, but I think that there's the general coordination and the individual pop-off potential of Rockstars is going to make this matchup a little bit harder for Flex Zodiac. So I, I'm in interested to see just kind of where we go next and if we get a chance to see some different compositions coming out from either team. Oh man, yeah, Rockstar is, you know, with the 100 to 0, the, these stats are totally under, uh, understandable. I think Rockstar is once you start that snowball, your tracer starts getting comfortable on the flank, especially Gucci. I think he slotted in really nicely. Um, and both these teams are just starting to be warmed up from that map one. Now that control is over with, we can go to something more structured, more planned out, <laughs> like hybrid. <laughs> yeah, get the chaos out of the way and let's go back to the comfort of the payload. I think uh, that's where we all remember the good old days of Overwatch for, yeah, <laughs> Overwatch 1, I guess. Yeah, and now there's high grounds to worry about. So both these teams have been playing a lot of Arisa, very, you know, flat ground dominant. She she can't go up walls, not yet. Don't give them ideas, oh though. Oh my gosh, that's so an April Fool's patch for next year. <laughs> we'll write it down, we'll write it down. So yeah, like the point, you could easily play any, any kind of rush comp, but it's beyond the point that you wonder what play styles could come out, what, what flavors of the meta could we see. 
So when we saw Flexodiacs play on Eichenwald versus D'Impero for their first day of groups, we did see this Arisa composition from them. Uh, it was Arisa, Tracer, we had Unto on the Sojourn uh, to be able to kick off an attack. Uh, and I think when it comes down to like the Sojourn versus the Cassidy, let's say, because I think those are the two DPS that are really slotting into that hitscan role, it's all about where your comfort is. Do you want to be able to play on these more long range sight lines then sojourn is definitely your hero and then cassidy is just really good in more close quarter fights when you know you have better access to something like that tracer so that's what we're gonna see out of rojo for rock stars and that third dps i feel like has been a little too silent or as if we've been too silent about him like style had his own frag moments of a double kill that ended up winning rock stars the fight on uh the last fight on so uh, round one i believe so don't underestimate the power of baptiste and the power of just sitting on the point, I guess, because Rojo is getting that second take. The rest of the team get to do work. Flexo DX uh, find themselves behind. Here's a last minute recontest by Karama. Nice headshot by Rojo, and it's as simple as that. It was a super quick rotation from Rockstars, and it Im gave them an immediate advantage having to put Flexodiax behind the central pillar. Uh, it never feels good to have to play from that type of position, and look at how far back TV and D are pushing the rest of the team. This cart is already going to be able to get under that dreaded archway, and this fight is now for high ground. Okay, Ant Matrix, just a zone to flex with DX, but to, this could force a lot of chaos if you uh, drop off the castle and not everyone does the same thing, but really flex Zodiac, stay united on that front and have fired back with the Kutsune Rush of Reisu. A great call, great resilience out of this defense to finally get a stop against Rockstars. All right, so a really good stop, too, because in this position, you have just a little bit more territory you can play around. It's a stronger defensive corner for Flexodiax if you want to try to play on the low ground, but then you also have a chance right now to set up on the high ground if you want to make sure that Unto has a little bit of a better sight line. Uh, so I really like this play, and it's a good power position for Flexodiax to have. Okay, a bit of an overclock forces Rockstars into shelter, but now you're about to be evicted from the shelter, Unto, but man, he just stays stoic. He did not even move from that position. Rockstars walked in looking to deal with that Sojourn, and they're the ones who got surrounded by Flexo DX, who just peeled for their DPS so well. And of course, the sound bear of Rod can't be underestimated, so Rockstars have been stopped back to back. It's another big defensive win here for Flexodiax. They're starting to lose a little bit of that corner, but you're still really happy knowing that you were able to force out some pretty big ultimates in the amplification matrix and that pulse bomb, and you still have pretty telegraph routes of entry where Flexodiax can be right there waiting. Oh, there's a pulse bomb behind. Karoma is a demon. Rockstars panic. They use the sound barrier. They want to run over Sone, who's just been contesting the cart and out in the open, so he won't be able to be helped in that cover. Rockstars, great retaliation at that moment. They just really had to wait for Flexo DX to come to them, I guess. I mean, the biggest problem with that fight, too, is that Flexodiacs did use most of their ultimates in the fight before. Um, sadly, I ran out of time to say that before we saw the sound bear come out from Rockstars, and then that was kind of all she wrote. Uh, but now, uh, Flexodiacs still get this high ground pressure, and while Rockstars are pushing the cart, the rest of the fight's happening up here. Oh, a dead eye with a giant horse in the way? Rose happy with TVNT being in the way, and Sony! plays his life like he's got a million of them. You are not a cat. You do not have nine of them. Sony's just out in the open, getting chunked first. Rockstar's realizing that and just bulldozing from front to back. Flexo DX will have a recontest before point B, but TVNT's on fire. He, he is really on fire. Playing from such an aggressive standpoint as well, it, it's just like no fear in this Arissa's eyes. <laughs> Okay, Flex on the X with the Katsune Rush, the one to end the ball, you would think. Rockstars, Pulse Bomb misses, Reisu in trouble. Rockstars can just outheal them, outscale them. They have more resources and they got the space to poke down. Rojo and Skyle just have to deal with Karama, great immortality for insurance, and Rockstars will cap B. It was just a quick cap as well, and now you st are still left with over three minutes in the time bank to be able to make this next engagement 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 <laughs>
listen, I I just saw like Oi just yeet off the map at some point, and maybe that's what we're pausing for. Yeah, and now we found out that it's Aoi, not Aoi, which I don't know why I was like Ao, like thinking Aoi. AOL and Aoi. Yeah, but it's not, no, it's honestly, not like AOL in my head. Like, yeah, I'm that old guy, so <laughs> it's not hey, that. <laughs> listen. We appreciate the players so much when they give us their information sheets, but y'all need to learn phonetics. Like, I, 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 I don't... <laughs> some of these don't make any sense, and it. we need your help. Please. Please and thank you. <laughs> yeah, please don't just write letters out with dashes, okay? I, I am stupid. I really need you to talk to me like I'm three, okay? How do you say your name? I don't know where you're from or, or what words I you know. I only speak okay. English. I, I know you also speak French, but I only speak English, so you gotta help a girl out. Out, please. Yeah. With the powers combined of both languages, I sometimes can't figure it out. Even when there's only three <laughs> letters, Doesn't you have caused the cast to be more, shambles. <laughs> I feel like if I knew any more of like a, a secondary language, I would actually get more confused. Because mm -hmm. like I do know some Spanish, so sometimes I look at something and I'm like, oh, I should probably say it like this. And it's like absolutely not that, uh, you know? Hmm. Well, now we get to go back in and not have to frustrate over three letters. We can f frustrate over a, a few more fights left in Eichenfeld. <laughs> <laughs> and Rockstars are on a roll. They got plenty of time. They do. So uh, poor Oi is going to have to come back into this one in uh, just a minute. But I think the rest of the team of Rockstars have to buck out so they don't actually lose anybody else or give out any more ultimate charge before he comes back. This is a great corner to hold for a long time. So Nail, oh my god, got saved by the sound bearer of Rod. You owe him a pizza. You owe him a prime sub. And Rockstar is... <laughs> Well, they couldn't punish that this time, but there's now no more insurance for someone like Zone. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about that. Uh, looking at just the overclock, personally. I want to see that overclock do something. It's a sound bear. It'll take some time. On two has to go back to spawn, so you know that's not a good sign for the defense. But Rockstar is very happy. As usual, front to back, kill the Orisa, and then win, and then profit, right? But Rockstars have three ults. This should be in the back, right? It should. I mean, Risu does have the uh, Kitsune Rush, so it does make things a little bit harder to be able to k maintain that point presence. The Rockstars are backing up. They lost somebody. They want to make sure that they're going to be re-engaging as a full team of five because that's where you're going to get the power to push this payload over the line. Oh, Rockstars. Oh, wow. It's actually the initiative out of Flexo DX to pop the Kitsune Rush, get Kuromo on the flank, and Rockstars, their backline is getting devoured right now, and TVNT could only just watch. So I, I like that confidence out of Flexo DX going for the big plays. So that's where you can see that Kitsune Rush and Amplification Matrix really play into one another. The Am Matrix is stable. You can't really use it if you walk past that window. It's not how that works. Thank goodness. Uh, but when you use this Kitsune Rush, the rest of the team just gains that extra mobility to make that engagement even just a little bit easier. Oh, don't do it to him. <laughs> Wait, Skyler's use the Immortality, so Kurama's so happy, and he got a piece? of that sound bearer from Rod, which is crazy. So Kurama got to stay there even longer, finished off what he started, which was Skyle. Rockstar still played that fairly well when facing up against the team who had sound barrier. So Rockstar still managed to, to get ahead despite that resource disadvantage. Ooh, I mean, that's gonna hurt though. Uh, Kurama was set up for a very sneaky play, but now uh, does get taken out. Get, there's a little bit more cart progression happening now with a bit of a player advantage as we're gonna see uh, Kurama get back into this. Now that AOA is close to his sound barrier, this could be where Rockstar is just overwhelmed Flexo DX in the resource department. They need so many ults just to get like three inches, and that's not a lot. Flexo DX have the overclock too, where Unto wants a better sideline to use us in. How about Sode setting up the pins? TVNT doing the same thing. Sound beer for Rockstars. That's a huge advantage. Sode is playing in there like they don't have sound barrier. So Rockstars easily deal with Flex. So DX and they'll be capping with 33 seconds. That's it. I want to give huge credit though to Flex Zodiacs though, right? Because that defensive hold had to be three minutes. 
for them to even whittle away the time being to where it is now. Uh, and I think that there's so many good points taken out of the defense that Flux Zodiacs had because it wasn't just this third point. On that second point too, they were able to play to so many outs. The one thing I think that tripped them up is there was that one fight where they used four ultimates and then Rockstars was able to run over them with just the sound barrier in their pocket was right on that first corner of point B. I think had they had a little bit more patience with the ultimate usage, I, I think that they would have been in an even better spot to potentially even keep Rockstars from pushing that payload over the finish line. But still, like, fantastic job, especially after that first point A capture was so fast. Yeah, Karama's doing so much work for Flexo DX and I think realizing that style is a huge problem is a good thing because Rockstar is after map one, style actually did more damage than Gucci. And this is no <laughs> shade to Gucci because um, style is just the goat on Baptiste. And keep in mind, the heroes are very different. Style can poke at range, has an immortality. Gucci has to get up close and personal on the tracer to uh, to do work. And the fact that style is out damaging a tracer is still very impressive to me. Yeah, it's super impressive. Yeah. I, he also can sometimes use that amplification matrix a little bit more selfishly. Yeah. <laughs> I think that Skyle has done a really good job though is finding those moments to be able to do that to give his team the upper edge. So I think that's where we can really start to see that individual skill expression come through in team comps like this. And Gucci hopes to have the same impact that Karama has had. But on two, because he's on Sojourn, he has such a longer jump and better... He could be just a better independent person against a Tracer flanking, and Karama has already killed Rojo, which is not a good sign for Rockstars. As they walk in, they gotta be uh, have eyes at the back of their head and see who could be back there, and Rockstars collapse onto onto, and Flexo DX don't have a good structure right now. They're just puddled in that house, managing to at least get the first take. Rockstars in trouble. Skyle doesn't get to the health pack in time and that'll be it for the point point. and the huddle looked like a kind of a, a like a weird position to have to take but ultimately worked out nicely to be able to buy themselves some time to get more of those skills back online and there you go point captured just about as quickly as what Rockstars did on their attack push. So tons of time in the bank to be able to work through this. And they even got a couple of stagger kills. So Rockstars, they have to set up here on the defense on the high ground instead of maybe taking the slow ground approach. Yeah, Sony's already trying to take Mega Pack control. The biggest issue with this part of the attack is crossing from that mid archway to the Mega Pack room right in front. You could be hosed down from the high ground and Flex DX are trying to get into some cover as Gucci at any moment can just drop down like a bird and leave the Pulse one behind. And Flex DX don't want that. Yes, they have a Suzu, but it's a bit more difficult to negate a Pulse bomb with compared to an Immortality, so... Like so, DX have still made decent progress, and they've, they're on the high ground. The defense have swapped around. They're contesting the cart, which is the best thing you can do. But now Ruxus are more exposed to poke, and now Just it's drop on like them. So DX. Yeah, literally Goomba stomp him, and there's a very charged up Terra Surge. But Rod was too late for the sound barrier, so Flexo DX will fall over. I, I like the idea behind being able to switch sides, get the drop on him, go pound him into the ground with the Terra Surge, uh, but it just took too long to charge. Everybody on Rockstars had scattered. There was nobody left on the team to be able to take advantage of it. And now they are touching the spawn doors. Uh, Rockstars has unlocked yet another achievement and uh, at least there's still 3 minutes and 40 seconds for Flick Zodiacs to put a cohesive push back together, but this is such an aggressive stance from Rockstars. <laughs> you see Rod go, nah, oh. never mind. Oh. Never mind, fam. Everyone back to the nest now <laughs> after that dead eye came out from Broho, which still managed to kill somebody. So Flexo DX. Okay, now there's no more ults coming into your spawn room, but now you still can't even leave spawn because Roho is hindering your support. Someone help this backline. Oh man. I mean, it was like the 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 high noon to kill TVNT or to kill Sone. 
And Sony has just been isolated away from the team so much, whether it's with an ultimate or just a surround from the rest of Rockstar, so nobody can get out of spawn right now. Okay, maybe finally. But the cart has already been pushed so far back. It's not an easy entry route for Flexodiacs right now. Ooh, I like this different route out of Flexodiacs, but now they're staring down the barrel of an Ant Matrix. But don't you just care? He's gonna punish you for using it. The overclock right to the dome. Rockstar's got a scatter, and Flexodiacs can finally see some progress. A little bit. I mean, you still saw so much time, though. They had, uh, like, over five minutes heading into the second point, and now you're down to just two. Uh, and there's not that many ultimates left in the bank, either. The good news is that you do have the Terra Surge, but we're kind of back to that similar rotation where Oi's gonna have the response. The sound bear is coming up very quickly. Oh, Sony says if you want to dance, you're invited to the show and pop this Terra Surge, but didn't fully charge it because there's a sound barrier pain train from Rockstars literally paving down the stairs. That is terrifying. Rockstars are so good at playing this chess game, but also supporting TV and T to make this look like a, a tank canyon, to be honest. Like, Rockstars are gonna hold them here, and this is such a dangerous spot to keep the card in. Uh, talk about Skyle again, though. What is that amazing positioning? Like, I feel like Skyle just had sight lens on the entire team, which made it even harder for Flexodiacs to be able to remove that main source of healing. The longer that Skyle is up, uh, the better off Rockstars is going to do, whether it's that damage output or the healing. And, um, TNT is playing Doorman. Uh, Robo is just, excuse, excuse me, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna squeeze on in here with the dead <laughs> I just, we were like five, his whole team is like at the door. <laughs> right, but you couldn't even see the rest of the team. TV and team was just standing there to block. <laughs> That's such the a black big bomb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, hey, that's why we've got the uh, auto aim from the dead eye. It's, it's really nice when <laughs> that ultimate is purple to find that. And the TVNT is just the, the, the hero shield. Uh, Terra Surge from TVNT. Yeah, Reisu used the uh, teleport to get to the team. And then as soon as you use that teleport as the Kiriko, you become target number one of the entire team. Right? Rockstars have been shutting them down so many times. 18 seconds left. And there's an Ant Matrix. There's just no way, right? It's not looking good. Uh, even if Flexodiacs are able to win this fight here, they do have five ultimates. So, like, they really should. But you have to then have what to try to get past okay. this second point well the exodia maybe it takes five ults and it starts with the consumer rush and the overclock on top of that yeah sounds like a pretty good combo rock stars now will be sent back in flexo dx good economy too only using tools to get that done yeah, and I don't even think they needed the Terra Surge there. I am actually surprised that Oi wanted to use the Sound Barrier or not save it. Because at this point, Flexodiacs have done the job. They're gonna get the second point unless they can get the, themselves back in there. Somehow Gucci contested that and gave Rockstars another fight. Sony was just blocking the door, being the bodyguard and asking for IDs, and he gets obliterated. Rockstars gotta thank Gucci for winning them that map. Uh, Gucci was definitely set up for that to be able to get the touch, and it did happen right in the nick of time. But it just, again, speaks volumes to just how well practiced this team is. Whether it's been on this map, I think Nepal was a really good showing of that too, but they knew all the ins and outs of how to surround this team. And even though they had used the sound barrier, they didn't have any other ultimates outside of that Terra Surge, plenty. Yeah, I think Flexo DX just have to have better communication between their main healer, Reisu, and Sone. There's often times where Sone's aggression doesn't match the health that he has, and sometimes you blame that on the Orisa, but sometimes you can also blame that on bad comms between your main support. Uh, they need to be on the same page. If Reisu's attention is even towards someone else, if he's uh, pocketing onto or whatever, then Sone needs to be aware of that, because as soon as Sone drops armor, uh, that Orisa gets shredded very, very quickly. So Reisu, as soon as Sone's armor drops, drops has to give full attention to that because Sony's been first picked more mm -hmm. times than I can count which is costing Flexo DX so many fights. 
I agree with you, but I don't even think that we can kind of look towards Flex Zodiacs to make those adjustments in, in terms of uh, the fact that Rockstar is just kind of back in the backline's business. Yeah. And so, like, poor Raceu and Rod, they both have such a difficult time dealing with Gucci, dealing with Rojo. Even TVNT is back there to make those supports' lives difficult. And if that's the case, then Sony is kind of on their own. And so maybe it's like when you take a look at the communication of uh, improvements that this team could make maybe it is just playing a little less aggressive so that we can actually see them work together against these flankers and these off angles that rock stars are taking and now that we're on a more uh, a larger map like Eigenfall compared to Nepal, this is where the range DPS have have more freedom and more opportunities to make the big plays. Onto and Rojo were actually very very close on Nepal, um, but now the gap has has increased. Rojo is out damaging onto by 4k damage, and, and that makes sense because Rockstars are winning the majority of the fights. But what's interesting is Karama on Flexo DX is out damaging Gucci on the opposing tracer by 3k. So Karama is opening up the potential of these fights for Flexo DX, but, but he can't really do it all. He can't do it all, and I think it's also very difficult when maybe one of your targets is Skyle. Like, you yeah. have so much burst healing, you also have a pocket that could come through from your Lucio, and even though you are doing more damage, well then, I want to look at those support numbers because I think we're also seeing a ton of healing coming through from Rockstars in order to just make sure that they're alive. Well, Rockstars up 2-0. Will they keep the streak going? Will Flex ODX flex out of the tournament? We're going to find out on the other side of this break. Begin excavation log. Sloan Cameron here on side to Petra. Me and the White Finders just found the coolest artifact I think I've ever. Again? Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! If you want to mess with these artifacts, you gotta go through me.
initiation! Time to really drill it in! Rockstars are on match point, but they've been, they're more than just rocks. They're boulders. Like, this has been seriously hard for Flexo DX to overcome. Yeah, I think that they're going to have to pull an Atlas move right here because it has been a pretty tall mountain to climb. Originally, <clears throat> when we looked at the second round of Nepal, I went, this might be a little bit closer than what we imagined heading into this matchup. But now I'm like... <clears throat> I'm not sure that's going to be the yeah. case. I, I really, I really hope to be proven wrong here. But I think Rockstars have shown really high levels of team synergy together. They've also been able to show us like really bright individual moments, whether what? it's been some of these okay. Gucci pulse bombs or the Skyle off angles with the amplification matrix. It's all looked really good here. We are seeing a bit of a different look though. Skyle is gonna go to the Kiriko, but I love having Kiriko on a map like this. Not only do you have those Suzus in order to stop some of these pulse bombs, but the Kitsune Rush plays so much better on these points if you know that the other team is gonna run it too. I'm surprised that he makes that swap because BAP, he's been so solid on the BAP and that's equally as meta on like a long lane like this. But, uh, wow. Okay, already a first pick from Antu. Shutting down Gucci was on this off angle to the left. So, Rockstar is they're gonna try and hold as best as they can and Push not give up too much Take space, but slowly will be backing away. And now we have to really respect Antu. You have to back up here. Antu is gonna get some nice free reign, though, of all of this high ground real estate. And that's something that is uh, going to be a little bit tricky, I think, for Rockstars to be able to get back in on. But if there's one thing that they can do, it's play together as a team. So even though this is going to be some bot progress, it's not going to be too long before TVNT tries to make his way in there. <laughs> what is he up to? Yeah, he used to get his way on in there. He just javelin spin into the team, 1v5. He still lives. And Karama throws the pulse. Rockstars are injured. TVNT has lost the armor. So TVNT plays his life very safely like he's not inting rockstar's got to thank him for that katsune rush at the ready and as long as rockstar's clear their flank which is on the left gucci and karama will face off if gucci wins that that 1v1 that could just open up the whole fight for rockstar's oh well here's the katsune rush well, that's pretty fun. Rockstars don't even have to worry about Karama in that case. They're just going to run them down from front to back. Racing ma matches with their own Kitsune Rush, and Rockstars immediately activate the speed from Aoi and leave. At this point, too, when you have a little bit of that advantage, just back up from that Kitsune Rush. Doesn't mean you don't really get a chance to use your own, but hey, you're cutting away from all of that damage, and you're setting up for the next rotation of ultimates. Right now, it's going to be the sound barriers and these terror surges. Oh, bro, I <laughs> so at the 100 charge and just donk walked into the other team, forcing a sound barrier, and he walked into Sone's Terra Surge. Like, Roho is very lucky to still be alive right now, and that's just the power of rock stars. We live together, we die together. <laughs> we rock hard together, so uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> rock out. Well, Antu has something to say about that. So, Rockstars, while they do get a chance to take back the advantage, it's still a long tussle over this midway. Looking at the neutral, we're really looking at these overclocks to try to find a territorial advantage to have these straightaways. Uh, but it, no one wants to give it up just yet. There's been barely any progress across the board. Oh, okay, uh, maybe Antu. now? Okay, okay. He is online, that's what we love to see. And jumping away from the Tracer, that's good. He's got the Suzu from Reisu, and man, Gucci is trying to throw everything at him, but Antu is being so well protected, and this may be where Antu can have a bigger impact, and he's already having an incredible map three. 
Absolutely. This is, if like, looks night and day to what we ended up seeing on those first two maps, but Unto is also having way more access to the front line of Rockstars. There's just a lot of nice space creation happening here from Sone, and it's really enabling the Sojourn. Also very, very impressed with how Flexodiacs are willing to give up some of this cart progress to play to a positional advantage. Well, 20 meter lead from Flexo DX is not too shabby. Six minutes left. There's a lot of time. Rockstar's Katsuni Rush at the ready. Just hoping to draw Flexo DX out of this pillar side. And then it's just Rojo that's going to overclock and zone them off even more. So Rockstar's have so many options, but winning a fight is one that's taking a while to accomplish. And Rockstar's just back away because Flexo DX tried to retaliate with their Katsune Rush. And both teams trading out very well. Sony's being very aggressive off the Terra Surge, and he eats a pulse bar from Gucci. So that's not a good start for Flexo DX if they wanted to keep holding on to this card. So Rockstar is just chasing down onto, and then there'll be some work. That's still a decent amount of progress, though, for this push bot. And by the time that Flexodiacs are able to come back into this, like, there's still not meaningful progress on the board for Rockstars either. But Rockstars do have the ultimate advantage, and that's really what these teams have been playing for this whole time. Neither team necessarily being able to get an upper hand, just trading those alts, but Rockstars have a chance to do that here. Whoa! Got into like a forward position for the Katsune Rush placement and gets punished by all two with kill two this fight. And with the sound barrier, all you gotta do is finish off what you started. Rockstars might have taken one or two, but it won't stop like so Dx from taking back the bot and getting it back to a neutral position, if not even extending it past that. Kurama and Unto are popping off. Uh, it has been uh, so fun to be able to watch both of these DPS really show up to this map because I feel like they were a little bit quiet on the first two, but this is really where we can play with just kind of Sojourn's playground. This this is all her map. And why we see Sojourn picked a lot on Coliseo. Just look at these straightaways. Unto is finally really feeling themselves. So let's hear how Flexodiacs are going to approach this this next fight with a listen in. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, we can start with Kyrie really soon. Or Ki if you can look for a sway, we'll look for it, okay? No, I'm gonna look for a vertical. I'm gonna look for a vertical. Coming to you. Just one of me, just anything. No, no, no. I'm gonna look man. I'm gonna look man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rissa, Rissa, Rissa. Rissa, Rissa, Rissa. Rissa, Rissa, Rissa. Rissa, Everyone, come on. Rissa now, Rissa now. Everyone shoot Rissa. Shoot Rissa, shoot Rissa. Rissa, Rissa. Okay, they have uh... I got the space. Take top, take top. Catch my sword, catch my sword. She's moving. I can shoot her a bit. Okay. okay. Uh, they're a little too calm for how cracked Unto is at the game. Like, kills two or three, no energy change. If that was me, I'd be screaming in the mic like you'd have to be. <laughs> hey, the, this, is, this is why. It's just another day in the office for this player. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, Unto's gonna pop off. We, we love that for him. Oh, I love that rotation. Flex OGX went through the door, dropped down. Kurama got card push and also just got the backup of his team. Katsune Rush. Rockstars are still, well, hanging around the bridge, hoping Rojo gets a pick, and they're a pulse bomb. Rockstars dodging it in time, and they're collecting so many ults, but Flexo DX are collecting all the meters. They're at 63, and if they can keep this up, if they can just deny progress from Rockstars, Flexo DX could easily force another map. With how long these fights have been going in the midpoint, it absolutely could happen. Uh, this is going to be a team fight win though for Rockstars as Flexodiacs do have to back up, but uh, we're still kind of back to a point where while Rockstars does have the advantage, Flexodiacs have the picks. Yeah, the fact that Raceu picked off Rojo, it really kills the momentum that Rockstars could have had here. Let's see if TVNT finds a trade. Okay, he had to kind of move away from Sony's Terra Surge in that case. On the high ground, though, it's Flexo DX just poking and prodding at Rockstars who are caught in the open with no healers and no hope. So Flexo DX played this map beautifully. It's like you said, the DPS are, are unlocked. Uh, they are unlocked, they are loaded, they're ready to go, and they are showing us a brand new look for this team. I mean, that was an ultimate advantage for Rockstars, and look how quickly they eliminated that. So once again, Flexodiacs are back in the driver's seat. We have sub two minutes left in Coliseo, and this is a very winnable position for them. It's gonna be another tussle over this midpoint, but Flexodiacs, again, great awareness to just back up from this damage and get a stronger defensive position.
condition. Yeah, Flexo DX just have already oh, had placed that? the right condition that's 63 meters. And our, our, their job right now for Flexo DX is to stop progress from Rockstars. Not really to extend theirs. I mean, if they could, great. Right. But it's taking a risk to step out of that pillar side. It exposes you to damage. Flexo DX realize that and draw Rockstars into them, get the first pick, and then that's all really she wrote. Yeah, that defensive position is exactly what you said. It's really just kind of putting the onus on rock stars to have to make the first move. And you don't really want to be doing that, making yourself vulnerable when you have a minute left now. This is going to be the final attempt here for rock stars to be able to win this team fight and then win the map. If they do, they close it out, but if like Zodiacs are set up to bring us to a map four. And Unto is going to have uh, 15 minutes to think about it. Just kidding. That Just was a quick, uh, <laughs> quick tech pause. But that, I mean, Unto is a big reason why Rockstars just can't get progress. Because where they need to get progress from is an area where the attackers are com have no cover, no high ground, and just the power of friendship, as ideally you would <laughs> love to see someone like Rojo jump to the high ground, make Unto uncomfortable. But to use your jump then disallows you from having an es a good escape from anything that could come your way. And it's not like the rest of the team can go to the high ground. It's really just Sojourn who can jump up there and maybe a Lucio, but it's tough, a tough position for Rockstars. It is tough, and I think that the other thing about that position that makes it really difficult in this situation is that not only do Flex Zodiacs just have that defensive stronghold, but they also have the flank angles. So, like, Karama is going back into the back line, getting a quick pick onto a Tracer, the Sojourn, a Kiriko, and, like, that just spells disaster for your push. You can't go in without that main source of healing. And I think that whether it's Karama or it is Unto, like, the team is getting the work done, and they're really putting the damage down. Here's some highlights from Unto while we wait for uh, the tech things to settle. Uh, Unto was being out damaged by 4K uh, by Rojo on map two, but this has been the Unto show. He is unlocked, if anything, and he's jumping in. When you see a soldier jump in to the other team, that's when you know you gotta start running, okay? Because <laughs> that Sojourn is coming for the paycheck. Oh, I think it's too late if Unto is in your face. I think you're gonna be going back to spawn pretty quickly. Uh, so yeah, it's looking so much better for Flex Zodiacs, and I feel like we're just moments away from confirming we're going to a map four if things continue to go the way that they are. Does Flex ODX just have a really good understanding of they've already set the initial pace of the 63 meters and usually they don't have all five people alive once Rockstars drop drop the ball. So Flex ODX probably don't have the members to push out of pillars, but they also don't need to. They're up by 20 or 30 meters at this point. So you just have to stop Rockstars from, from winning a fight outside of pillars. And then and then that's all she wrote. So Flex ODX are doing a good job of sending on two onto the high ground. Uh, headshot everybody, go kill. Uh, and, and then that's just going to be the map for Flex of the Axe. How Rockstars can crack that. They've got to win one fight here. And they've win a win fight? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I, <laughs> just so win simple, the fight. Right? Just win the fight, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just click the heads and get the picks and kills. No, but like, <laughs> well, we have a minute left in the clock. We've got a little bit more game still to play, and there is a win condition for Rockstars if they just simply win the fight. I don't know. We'll have to find out if that is the case after this short break.
Rock stars are still on match point, still up by 20 meters. Don't worry, guys, you didn't miss anything. Player just had some internet issues, and uh, two's having some issues. We said, how do rock stars break outside a pillar? Send Rojo to the high ground. Rojo, go kill. And he did that all by himself. That's amazing. That's amazing. And now this is the win condition we were alluding to right before we hopped into that break is that Rockstars not only had to win that fight, but they've got one more chance to close out this map and close out the series. So you can see this aggressive positioning they have as TVNT is just waiting in the wings to get the Terra Surge. Got a contest. There you go. A Karama got pulled by the Terra Surge and he has to be the one who touches. You cannot give them a lead. And this may be too late. There is somebody there from Flexo DX. Sound bear, this the emergency glass is being shattered. Flexo DX had the lead for most of the game, and it all comes down to this overtime where Rockstar stole away the second round of Nepal. When Flexo DX, it looked like their destiny to send us to a deciding one, but it's Rockstars that get to the finish line. And Flexo DX will have to flex out of the tournament. It is a four versus two. Now four versus three in favor of rock stars the fire dx would have to kill now and yes flexo dx oh man they may have closer spawns but this is just rough the fire is a weird emergency pick but this has just been a weird series overall karama is gonna do his best to live but rock stars will be taking the series in a sweep Oh man, I feel really bad for Flexodiax there. I feel like they were on such a good momentum. They were on a great pace and uh, that the pause is just a little unfortunate there. But hey, Rockstars, they were already up two maps. Uh, who knows what would have happened had we gone to that fourth one. And so they're gonna be moving on. They will indeed. And I mean, honestly, on the other side, though, I think there were definitely some some bright spots on that Flexodiax roster. Unfortunately, they are, of course, out of the tournament for now. But we might see them returning in stage three. Onto, I think, uh, is uh, one, especially on Coliseo there at the end, really impressed me. Uh, new addition to the Flexodiax roster. It was the only change they made. And I think the Sojourn definitely could have been the big difference maker if they would have pulled that map out. Let's actually take a look at the highlights to see some of the bright moments from both sides, of course, in that this very match that uh, Rockstar kind of ran away with. Very impressive performance. I'm very interested to see if they will be able to make it out of groups. I'm just... I'm... Antu did so much work on Coliseo. It makes me so sad because here is that star performance uh, and keeping up with what Karama's impact has been for Flexo DX. But all it took was Rojo one overclock to ruin the one fight they needed to defend. The last fight that Flexo DX needed to win to, to send us to a fourth map. And then Rojo jumps up with the overclock, kills Antu, and all the cards fumbled after that. So just Rockstars have insane clutch potential from winning that 99 to 99 fight on the, the second round of Nepal to winning the last one in Coliseo. Like, every time you think Flex ODX is going to win, Rockstars do. <laughs> I know. It just felt like it was so back and forth for a lot of these fights. And I think when it came down to I can vault as well, Flex ODX showed us a really great defense. It's so difficult when you have such a huge time bank uh, that you're facing down, whether it was like the five minutes that we ended up seeing Rockstars have heading into the third or even just like that second point as well, but Coliseo is really where Flexodiac stepped up and onto with all of these overclock picks, to great synergy there with Karama, and I think Sone as well, just being able to play a little bit more comfortably, I really thought we were going to a map four. Yeah, it's uh, the pause, I mean, that's unlucky. That's really like, that's, unlucky. Th that's really peak unlucky right there, unfortunately, uh, that... Uh, that may have kind of stopped the momentum for them, I feel. Uh, we don't know what would have been and could have been if it weren't for that pause, but I mean, credit where credit is due. Rockstar, take it. Here are some stats to round it all up. Uh, on to out damage Rojo by 6k, where Rojo, or sorry, from 600, not 6k, oh my god, <laughs> oh, only geez. by 600, but to <laughs> less, okay, that would have been insane, that but be Untu was getting diffed by Rojo by, by 4k in map 2, so the fact that Untu stepped up in the damage department, and it's not like he got so involved that he died more. He actually died less than Rojo. Untu was really one who stepped up, but Skyle, no one plays kind of the damage flex support the way that he does. <laughs> 
I yeah, mean, Skyle maybe. really showed up. Eichenwalder, Skyle, just, you know, as you mentioned <clears throat> during the cast as well, just out damaging the tracer. Uh, that's a feat. It is a feat. I, I think it's really impressive when a Baptiste or a Kiriko does that. Like, yes, you are able to do the damage and if you are playing either of those heroes you're expected to do both but really when you're able to get those big picks or just continue to have that burst damage down onto the rest of the team i think it speaks volumes to the type of position that rockstars was playing from and it was a position of power if you can see that much damage come out from either one of those heroes and that wraps up our first match of the day let's quickly dive into the winning comms to see how they got it done Nice GG's indeed. I love when the pitch goes higher and higher, then you know the player is really serious about their calling. <laughs> <laughs> and those were the wounding moments here for Rockstars, and that means they're keeping themselves alive because they have one more team to face, one more team that stands in the way of them and the main event. The Impero is the next one they have to go up against. They've not met in the groups just yet, so let's see what they can get done. For now, we're leading into Group D, where we will be seeing meta boys and all year facing off against each other in just a little bit but before that quick break
Heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, League. Powered by you. Make sure to register yourself and your team. Signups, they do close on April 25th. There's $170,000 prize pool on the line. And of course, it's all about the path to EWC and a piece of the $60 million prize pool. Exclamation point, question mark. Lots of money. Uh, so yeah, you too. Uh, you, you know, you don't have to be a highly decorated uh, top tier player. You can also just be a random like Costa. He signed up. <laughs> oh my God. How is how is Costa still catching strays? I feel because like he's up Costa next casting, and, and I just I have to get it out of my system before he's on. <laughs> <laughs> Costa oh and God. Jay both catch so many strays on this broadcast. I feel so bad. <laughs> we do it because we love them. That's, That's true. It's, it's all a sibling out of situation. That's. <laughs> right that's right now um i don't really have a good transition other than <laughs> let's move on group d is what we're focusing on now uh we get to say goodbye to one of the teams there as well oh yeah we'll have to take on the polish squad of meta boys let's talk about the rosters looking at the meta boy squad i mean quite frankly don't don't know anything about them other than their performance thus far of course in the groups uh, I've, I remember Fillion from Team Poland at the Overwatch World Cup, and that's about it. And I think he had a super solid performance. I think Team Poland overall uh, were solid. Just, you know, not getting as far as other countries, of course. But there, there's experience on this roster, and they call themselves meta boys. We'll see how much they, they stick to the meta. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I, I think like well, that's what I'm really interested in. I feel like it is going to end up being sort of more of the same as what we saw in our very first series of the day. So the Arissa, the Sojourner, the Cassidy, Tracer, Kiriko, Lucio, you know, kind of all of all of that. So that's that's what I'm expecting. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here's your position though. A lot more name value, of course, on this side. Also, um, we're gonna speak Junkrat into existence. Please. Make it happen. Please. I, I'm feeling it. I read it in my tea leaves this morning. Uh, listen, listen, this team is maybe one of the most fun to watch in EMEA, if only because they have some of the most unique hero picks for their one tricks. Kaya is a Junkrat specialist. We've got Chasm that is a Wrecking Ball specialist. Specialist. And then we have seen some really interesting picks outside of that to sort of fill out the roster. But like, Jen, how could you not be excited looking at those two heroes on your screen? <laughs> Aya have been just menaces in the EMEA <laughs> contenders Europe scene, casting them for so many years. Like you got Necros, the Genji Lord on the bench, which is crazy. Once that Genji meta comes, you better watch out. But a Junkrat uh, one trick is crazy. Chasm with the ball changes. I wonder if he's going to show us how that's going to be done. But all oh, yeah, have been the anti meta boys, if anything. <laughs> and then they made it to the main event last stage. I mean, they they're they really played the teams very, very close. It could have been theirs to win it, unfortunately. They did have a tough group as well. I'm very interested to see if they can make it out of groups this time around. Let's find out. The game is ready. Take it away. Thank you so much. Meta boys versus anti meta boys. Uh, <laughs> it's what it's feeling like. But meta is bringing us to Nepal first or Samoa. Okay. That looks or no. like. Yeah. S hmm. That looks like Samoa. I'm not sure. Uh, well, we're going to a control map to kick things oh. off, and we have confirmation. It is going to be Samoa picked by Meta Boys, and I, you know, I'm honestly not sure how this one's going to go. When we've seen Aya uh, yeah, in their very first match of groups, we did see Kazim in this roster come in specifically to, to play the Wrecking Ball, and then Kaya, of course, playing that Junkrat. Uh, and as we kind of load in, we can get a little bit of a sneak peek. That that surely may be 
what we see. So I feel like it might be a good idea for us to kind of go over some of those Wrecking Ball changes because we did have a patch that came through in the middle of this past week. So players and teams, they all had to play in one patch and now they're playing in another patch. But even pre-patch, we did see Chasm just play this Wrecking Ball. And this is kind of interesting. Like Grappling Claw got a couple of small changes to it. The Adaptive Shield can now redistribute over health to nearby allies uh, so i think this is a really unique way for wrecking ball to see if this this has some merit in the meta no hammond is no longer that selfish hero that's just going to be on the flank and not caring about what the rest of the team does you're encouraged to play with your team and i love that emilia now that we get more time to think about this emilia is on the orissa and this is my favorite thing to lock when there's a hammond on the other team this hammond rolls at me javelin hammond at me <laughs> javelin spin try to push me fortify it's just the kryptonite to a hammond and what it's trying to do that. Not only that, but you also have the Cassidy. Like, I think immediately when we launched into the game, you saw the Hinder come up when we were on Chasm's POV. And so that's where the Magnetic Grenade can come in. So you already talk about all of the pieces of Orisa's kit that can work against this Wrecking Ball. I raise you a Cassidy, and I also maybe even raise you a Kiriko, so... Yeah, I I have harassed Aya enough about, oh, well, they're getting countered, blah, blah, blah. But oh, yeah, we're <laughs> dominating contenders Europe so many times for playing anti-meta, for being so good at their individual heroes that they know how to play against their counters. They wouldn't be in this position if they didn't. So, yeah, if you have someone who can hinder you, Oh, wait for the hinder to be gone or don't play around the Cassidy wait uh, completely ignore the Orisa if you can and it all depends on if that Orisa of Amelia can protect or just kind of be more aware and mark where that Hammond is trying to displace from I think what also makes this matchup unique though is like you're also not just playing against a wrecking ball but you're playing against a wrecking ball one trick they have yeah. dealt with the orissa before they've dealt with all of these backline heroes and if there's anything that you can learn from watching a wrecking ball uh, that is just a specialist on this hero it is just how you deal with every single aspect of that and, and then you also have to throw a junk rat in the mix for all the rest of the cc you're gonna get yeah, if I'm ICAB, I am playing at Amelia's hip. There is nowhere that I... And this is what happens if you don't. <laughs> this is what happens if you don't play like the people who can feel for you. Alucio Boop is cosmetic at best against the Hammond. That is not going to be enough space creation. Absolutely have to stick by Amelia so the spear can be thrown. And even that extra two seconds uh, of pushing that Hammond away is a world of a difference for someone like ICAB. I, you know, Arisa sure might have four to five, but the rest of the team does not. And so you could see the knockup of that wrecking ball really come into play. You're kind of movement locked for a while, which means that you're now just great clay pigeons for the jump rat to hit. Yeah, everyone is very mobile on meta boys except that Cassidy and that's why Cassidy hasn't been meta at least in the past for for the history of overwatch until he got some significant buffs so oh yeah all they have to do is isolate icap this is going to be the primary person for chasm to kill and meta boys ideally fillion can, can flank and do some work against ken but against a junk rat you don't want to fall into traps you want to get shot by a bat and headshot by a kiriko so fillion has way too much to handle i don't think he's gonna have a fun time either no it's so tough because like yeah go with, go into a junk rat trap and there's probably also a concussive mind waiting for you so uh it can be a little tough too because tracer did get a small nerf to the recall it's gonna be another extra second for the cooldown uh but oh look at that oh kitsune rush from saipe tech soul 2 rip tire and you don't have a baptiste you only have a suzu actually susu is dead kaya from the top rope no, ignoring the Orisa, not sure if they could get the full kill, and we're very close to measuring that perfectly, especially after seeing Amelia without armor, so... Oh yeah, zoning tire, still almost getting that Orisa killed is, is a good start. Well, like 15 seconds, I think that's a plenty of time there, and we're already gonna be in almost last fight territory. Big Terra Surge at best! The other team were very, very low. Amelia delivers even through the Immortalia. Cool boy placed. Oh, yeah, in trouble. But hey, the work has been done. 85% is huge. 85% is going to be that last fight territory. There's a couple of other... Uh 
Oh, that, that's fun. A small change to the custom mines is they now have like 60 health instead of 50, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> or sorry, the, the Wrecking Ball mines, but anyway, uh, Battle Boys had to use basically everything in order to take back control of this point. Arissa does play stronger from being able to have this point control, but Aya uh, yeah, have found plenty of ways to get around that frontline presence. Yeah, Amelia is playing their life very well, knowing how deadly a Junkrat can be and just staying firm at the front of the point and protecting it. And I don't even know what Ken's doing over there when the rest of the team is over there. So don't think you could play on an off angle if that was the intent there for the Cassidy. And when there's blood in the water, here comes the Sharks of Meta Boys. Isolating Kaya is big against an Orisa. That could have gone either way. Amelia would have hit, had to hit the Javelin to uh, have the edge against Kaya. But for now, Meta Boys are about to take the lead. Here's Aya at the back. And OK, Ken clears out the point, is looking for Fillion, who's going to stay hidden. And there's the point flip. A point flip, too, because now you're just looking at the team of Meta Boys having to walk into all of these Junkrat mines. Jeez, Chasm is such a nuisance back there. ICAV zones with the dead eye to regain point control for Meta Boys, but ICAV in danger. Fillion dealt with on the flank, and oh yeah, take it back over. And the mines are at the ready. This is last fight. Meta Boys won't be able to touch this. And oh yeah, with the Ant Matrix right in their face. This is okay. The Ant Matrix is a little whiffed. It's a little too far forward, but maybe given to Chasm, uh, which you don't usually set up your hammer with an Ant Matrix, but hey, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, had all the ults in the world and the firepower they need. To take round one. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at like all of the different explosives on this point. Poor <laughs> ICAV got pooped into a wrecking ball mine. You saw the Kiriko go down to a rip tire. Uh, it's just goofy. Like this is goofy, funny Overwatch. <laughs> Uh, so it's goofy Overwatch it. when you're when you're watching. Oh yeah, but you're yeah. entertained because they play off meta, but they show you that they almost teach the worst lesson in Overwatch, which is, which is don't swap off if you're getting countered. Everyone's gonna be taking notes on all oh, yeah of like okay, play Junkrat, play Hammond, and it's like no, you will be costing yourself SR. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Do gosh. this in the ranked games. Please. Oh, please. Only, only if you're Chasm and Kaya. If you're in my ranked games, please. I will do anything to enable you. Uh, <laughs> but hey, we're going to another going to another round of Samoa. This time we're heading over to Beach. And Chasm's already in the back line. You saw that. He, he He's rolling. He's vibing. He's playing pinball. Yeah, they see me rolling and they hating. And ICAP uh, is hating this, needing to play a lot closer to Amelia. And ICAP lawn. found that out the hard way. I think Fillion's job should stop flanking, because honestly, 1v5 or 1v4 is just not going to be possible against the, those heroes. Fillion needs to chase down Chasm when he's low, because Hammond is very speedy once he gets rolling, and he's going to be looking for Mega Packs. And Fillion wants to ideally deny that if he wants to uh, help his team that maybe you're looking for a magnetic grenade just to help hinder that wrecking ball but there's also not really a whole lot of cc the only thing that you can look at is maybe the lucio boop to help get that like point four five second movement lockout and even then the lucio is dead so uh yeah it's tough you only really got one shot at some of these cooldowns to hinder this wrecking ball so Saipei teleported to Chasm. Oh yeah, had a 2-2 two -two, or were split in half, pinching Meta Boys from both sides. So Meta Boys are like, okay, if this Kiriko is gonna be on the other side of the planet, then let's run over the rest of the team in front of us. So then that way they went after Kaya, Meta Boys killed them, and oh yeah, the split approach didn't end up uh, conquering either side. So Meta Boys have the point, but for really how long? And Fillion, yes, he needed to chase down Chasm, but also Chasm has more health than a Tracer. So you have to be careful with how you take that 1v1 still. Yeah, and you're still a little bit squishy, and you also have so much help that could come through from Cool Boy or Saipei, so I would definitely be really nervous about that one. It's ready for this Kitsune Rush, though. But Amelia's already so low. <laughs> Kitsune Rush just to heal Amelia back to full, and look at the explosive power of all, oh, yeah! Just tearing down all of Amelia's health, and the Kitsune Rush just got completely zoned off from all the mines and everything all oh, yeah threw at them, so... Oh yeah, trying to close the gap in the score. 
Closing, closing the gap a little bit, but I, I think you're still a little bit worried about having to deal with, like, Cool Boy. Let's not forget that Baptiste can still dish out a bunch of damage, even though Cool Boy isn't necessarily showing up in the kill feed in the same way that Kaya and Ken are. But, uh, like, you're, you, you still have the amplification matrix, time to go pop off, and, yeah, go, go be by your Junkrat. That's also really funny. Ooh, and Matrix? Goodbye, Meta Boys. Rita will not want to get outside of that house. And oh yeah, get to zone them off. Smart move by Meta Boys. Now they have to close the gap. They have to traverse this bridge, go to the other side. They're gonna use the speed of Flipper, and if things get hairy, you got a sound barrier, but oh yeah, focusing Emilia down. Sound barrier time from Flipper. Meta Boys need to use this resource to get something done, and Philly's on the flank, but Ken shuts it all down. The overclock to cut down Meta Boys at the end. Now 80% plus for all. Yeah, it's coming down the last fight for the map. The last fight for the map. Saipei is going to have the Kitsune Rush as well. And Chasm may even just get another set of mines to drop on the point. So it's not looking great for Meta Boys to come back into this one. Yeah, 95%. Kitsune Rush from Saipei. This is looking very chalked. Your rare win condition for Meta Boys is to depend on Texel or Fillion. And how Meta Boys can work together. There's so many threats to worry about. As soon as Chasm disappears, they need to look at Ken and Kaya. And of course, the Pulse Bomb gets negated by the Immortality. A great job by Cool Boy and all the kills coming all yes way. As soon as Meta Boys wanted to convert close range. You just can't get close to someone like Kaya. You think that a Junkrat is a vulnerable hero, but so deadly, lethal, and Kaya and friends will finish off the fight and take map number one of uh, Samoa. How do you practice against this? I feel like it's another one of those Clockwork Vendetta stories where they were the only ones running the Orisa and the Torbjorn and all of those pieces together, and now you have to play against a Wrecking Ball one trick and a Junkrat one trick, who know these heroes probably better than anybody else you could get practice against. Yeah, it's it's tough. Uh... We with the wind conditions we do name, like if you throw a spear into a Hammond, it's to slow them down. You need everyone to have like a CC chain and all of the focus into a Hammond. So it's either you try to kill the Hammond or you have to shift your focus from, from one target to another to perfection against a team that are just gonna dip dive and dodge against you. And even with someone like Kaya, who's on a Junkrat that uh, should be someone you can lock down in a vacuum, Kaya, doesn't miss the nades and puts all of that focus into Amelia, who's trying to close the gap. And, and Kaya bursts down and wins the 1v1 against Amelia, who's one of the tankiest uh, heroes in the game. So there is no easy solution for a team like Meta Boys. No, I mean, like, you, you saw in one of those clips, Amelia got trapped, and then it was just, like, six nades. Amelia was finished. And then if you don't have that front line, the rest of the team is going to get picked off, too. So Amelia does have a very, very difficult job in this matchup. Not only because, like, you're going to get knocked up, you're going to get the trap, you're also going to get concussed backwards from a concussive blast from this uh, drunk rat. It's, it's not very fun. And I feel like this is another one of those comps it's gonna be difficult to play against uh, you know like um not even just when we had the shield meta but i think like with all of the cc that some of these metas have had like the tanks have just had a generally hard time i don't even mind the heroes that meta boys have chosen either the tracer's very mobile the sojourn's very mobile if they get collapsed on by a hammond they could they could easily get away even the orissa's not too shabby she's got a, a great close uh, gap closing abilities the only thing you can maybe think about is, is a diva if you wanted to go full hard counter is that something even amelia is comfortable with i don't know but the diva my argument for that is to be able to matrix the junk rat needs once you want to get close to have more chase down potential against a Hammond. You're a lot more flexible to shift from target to target and be lethal close range. So that would be like the only thing I could think about. But then D.Va has to play out of cover a lot. And it's very hard for Emilia to hold a point on control being someone who can't take poke. Yeah, and like if you don't have the defense matrix or you're not looking in the right direction, then it can also be really difficult. Uh, because at the end of the day, I think what's making Aya oh yeah, even more powerful is that Meta Boys, they can't play aggressive. They have to play from 
from behind. They're playing defensively. They're playing reactively. And I think with the Diva 2, it makes it even more difficult if you're playing reactively because y you just aren't going to be able to initiate on a lot of those picks. But we do have a sub coming through, so it's going to be Fake Jake coming into the roster and Fillion coming out. And this kind of speaks to me that maybe we might get a little bit of Echo, just something that the Tracer doesn't necessarily... Uh, you know, Tracer doesn't have to deal with the Junkrat anymore. Maybe you do something that's just out of the range of the Junkrat entirely. <laughs> right. And a lot of synergy on this team. When I have Fillion, Fake Jake all played for Team Poland, I didn't realize I had to uh, actually search it up. So, cause a lot of these guys are kind of brand new to the scene and don't even have Liquipedia pages. So this is where Ooh. like stages like this, they can really develop. Uh, Wait. Speaking of developing, we uh, have a Roadhog. Road we do have a Roadhog. Okay, this was the other option that I thought for tanks. I'm like, just hook the ball. Like, like, just, just hook it. Yeah. Because then, then you have to bring, you bring it into you. You bring it into the rest of the damage of the team. You're also set up for some really explosive damage when you've got the Ash as well as the Farah. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen Farah actively take a competitive Overwatch stage. After all of the reworks that happened to this hero, it's still a little bit weird to have to play around all of the fuel changes. Uh, so yeah. I I think it's going to be really exciting to not only see this hero pick, but also what can we get done with this with this Roadhog? This is just so goofy. I have Roadhog yeah, is so it's selfish. Goofy it, it's goofy Overwatch. Like you hit the hook, and yeah, cool. Maybe you get a pick, but if you don't hit that hook, you're you're a sitting oh duck. God. You're a meat shield. You're an old uh, charity giver. It, it's not. I think Diva would have provided more utility, at least in the tank department. But we'll see if Amelia can prove me wrong. Uh, for now, Akaya is on the high ground. And that is something that boys need to deal with. And namely, Fake Jake, who's trying to even identify where Kaya is. Because Kaya's trying to be countered by Fake Jake. But like I said, Aya don't metaphorically have counters. <laughs> No, I mean, because at this point, too, like, you still play from cover, and so, yeah, you can see this, like, uh, you know, Fake Jake is trying to shoot through one window, Kaya's just not gonna sit there and gonna shoot through the other ones. Uh, so it's still gonna be an interesting poke war between these two projectile DPS. Yeah, Kaya's uh, only had one death. By the way, on the last map, I was really curious about this. That me. What punish? I was wondering what level of punish Meta Boys had, and I wonder how that's gonna change after this map. For now, oh, yeah, I still have to cap the point. Half the time bank is gone. The bob is being thrown to quote unquote contest, but it didn't actually hit the point. But it did zone off. Oh yeah, for a hot second, and as soon as they came out, uh, oh yeah, we're punishing them. So oh yeah, we're playing more death match than worrying about the objective right now, but. I'm having fun. No, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm just here to watch the chaos ensue, and I'm ready to see these mines get laid down. And a Riptire? Riptire? Amelia's dead. There's uh, only so much uh, your forearms can do as <laughs> Team Fist against uh, a giant explosive. So, oh yeah, it took a bit of time. I think there could have been more point presence, but Chasm is anything but present on an objective. Chasm is trying to set up kills, and that worked out in the end. It did. I think you always have to play this really slow, right? Because you don't want to, especially on Midtown, when you don't have a Lucio, you're not able to get into position nearly as quickly. So it's all about patience and patience being rewarded. Uh, now, uh, Chasm, where are you going? Where, where are these mines going? Are you just going to go after a Farah 1v1? Uh, because it does look like that's happening. Okay, hiding from the dead. Uh, oh, it's almost the pile driver from Chasm. That could have set up a huge play for Ken. But Kitsune rush from the defense, dropping down. Amelia just hammered to death. And oh yeah, just play off the at matrix. This barrage looks like a swap one, or that's that was a choice of all time. And, and oh yeah, just playing to their strengths. Uh, it's so sad because I think one of the reasons why Farah hasn't been played for a long time is that once you alt, you are a sitting duck. Like, someone's gonna clip your wings, you're gonna die, you can't move. Uh, and so it is gonna be a swap, <laughs> correctly called. It's gonna be the Echo this time around, which is a hero that Fake Jake knows very well. 
And Kaya's right there it, in this underground area. So Fake Jake, if it, they can get all the sticky nades and focusing beam on Kaya, maybe after spawning some important cooldowns, that could be a, an execution opportunity out of Fake Jake if you're not taking random poke damage. So I see Meta Boys stepping up, taking back the fight, and playing back when their numbers were down, and they, they salvaged that. Well, there you go. It's a, gonna, a nice defensive hold. Get Amelia on the Roadhog is still Rocket able to put in some disruptive work with the hooks, as well as those combos. Uh, that's the other thing about the Roadhog, too. I think that uh, it's a fun choice, but maybe not the most effective one, is that hook pull combo is not necessarily a one-shot anymore if you're not super accurate, so it, it can be a little bit difficult to make sure you feel like you're, you're getting that maximum value. But there's the, there's the hook! See? Wow. Perfect execution. Great whole hog too, knowing that the Hammond was going to be pushed up against the wall and would have added more damage to that. So we saw some of the value of Roadhog, but also the value of the DPS from Oh Yeah, who are still winning on this underground or this under archway side. 1v1 between Texel and a Widow, I believe, and Texel being down is quite painful. Flipper will be the last healer for the defense. Fake Jake is copying a Hammond uh, to maybe try and 1v1 some of these DPS and is so close and does a good job of at least getting one kill out of this dupe. Duplicate is so fun to see like how these echoes are going to use it because it's like do you go after the tank do you try to go after the support for a little bit of immediate utility uh, but I think the wrecking ball I, I we're just everybody's having fun in this one uh, there's the diva swap you wanted though Amelia is going to come back not on the roadhogs but this diva so maybe this defense matrix is going to be enough and you've got a little bit more with the boosters to try to get some uh, get in there. Get in the fight quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be invoicing the coach of Meta Boys after this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Amelia doesn't have to hold the bridge, too, which is the weakness of D.Va in terms of holding space. Amelia can dance off the bridge, go back on it, and, and shift back and forth, and ideally throw the missiles in Ken's face, Kaya's face, chase down Chasm if needed, but there's a rip tire. This is good head to the back line. Flipper has the immortality, has already brought it out, and thankfully Meta Boys were able to shoot down the Reptire in time. Amelia could get the chase on Chasm, but is being distracted by the rest of Oh Yeah, firing down from the bridge, and Meta Boys are out in the open, not having a lot of cover besides the cart. Last few seconds for this push out of Oh Yeah, and they have the Katsune Rush. The bot from ICAV may just relieve some of that objective uh, responsibility that this defense needs to get done, giving a chance for Texel to <laughs> heal them back up. The now fashion. the fashion is out. Uh, sure. Still, oh yeah, have a lot of protection off the bridge. The Deadeye comes out, not finding any kills, forcing Meta Boys into cover. But Amelia has been a solid anchor in terms of this D.Va to protect the cart and focus on the oh yeah DPS. And oh yeah, don't have cart presses without Chasm. I'm really impressed with how many tanks Amelia has pulled out of that pocket. Uh, Roadhog, Doomfist, D.Va, we saw the Orisa on the very first map as well, and that's something that we love to see out of the solo tanks we now have in Overwatch 2. You, you just need to have that flexibility, and I, and I think it honestly worked out even a little bit better. If you can't play your meta composition, then play something that might be a little bit more off the wall if you feel like you've got the hero pool to play that rock, paper, scissors matchup. Diva worked out. I'm on to something, I think, because Amelia got to Matrix a lot of the nades, play behind the bar, or the cart, I should say, and this had way more potential than a Roadhog ever could. And just in terms of just Oh, uh, damage mitigation too. I think the Matrix is a lot more valuable to actually deny the damage rather than just soak it. Um, and ah, uh, yeah, uh, the weakness being exposed here of they don't have front presence. It took them forever to cap the point because the only person that can realistically play <laughs> that far forward is Chasm, and Chasm is on roll around duty. <laughs>
Yeah, it makes it more complicated if the Roadhog is on the other side because you can't just freely go into the back line without wondering if that cooldown is available and if Amelia is going to land the mark and hook the ball into, what was it? The, the full damage from the right click and then you have the focus beam from the echo and that's just a dead wrecking ball. Uh, and and it also an alt battery if you want to put the shoe on the other foot there too. <laughs> Amelia stuck without shoes, trying to getting trapped by the junk rat there in Chasm, waiting to pile dry for the perfect moment. Fake J can stay in the air, and that's the advantage uh, versus an Echo, but doesn't have like a lot of. You'd have to hit a lot of direct rockets in a row. I think with the focusing beam and the stickies, it's got more potential to be on the Echo, so way more valuable. Like you realize with the barrage, how quickly that can be punished. But Fake Jake staying in the air, at least that would be the point of Farah and now running into uh, a junk rat is tough, but Meta Boys convert at least on one, but a four versus four, it's not something Meta Boys can work with. You're gonna have to go back to the drawing board for sure, because I like you just need a bit more of that tankiness. But Amelia is gonna switch off the Roadhog right away, heading over to the Diva. I think this is a great choice too, because as you talk about that Farah being vulnerable, well, the defense matrix is one way that you could ensure that that Farah actually gets off the full barrage without taking that incoming damage. Uh, we've seen that combo a lot, and it's it is one of the reasons why it's so effective. Uh, but here's another attack push coming in from Meta Boys. Back to the D.Va, the Echo Swap, I hope will be coming next. We'll see what the Barrage can do, trying to float above the Metro uh, Station is a good way to catch the defense off guard and didn't even really need to pop the Barrage. Oh yeah, we're already low and overextended. So Meta Boys made it through the initial choke. They're all very low though, so Texel is trying to bring everybody back up and as soon as they turn away from the tank, Amelia loses the mech. Fake J converts on two with the Barrage, but uh, there's not going to be any point being capped uh, with Ken's bop in the way. Oh, uh, Flippa actually used the amplification matrix. Yeah, Meta Boys don't have everyone alive. The comms are completely whacked right now. Like, your tank is still coming out. It, uh, iKev can at least get the first tick. Meta Boys should be back. You only have one healer, so Taxol has to use the Katsune Rush as soon as Ali has a... Uh, Recontest comes in if it does. Chasm being in tells me, oh yeah, want another shot at this. So Kitsune rush from Texel as Meta Boys stop the reinforcements of all. Oh, yeah, they'll just try to ignore Chasm, but now you can't because he's contesting the point and Meta Boys focus on everything but Chasm and then wait to finish him off last. <laughs> but, uh, it's just it's just gonna look like this for the rest of the match if we're gonna continue to have like the, the far the ash the diva uh, the road okay um well we've got a sombra now so kai is actually gonna swap off of the junk rat i i'm excited to see what this change brings to the table flippa is also now gonna make a change to the moira both sombra and moira have got a couple of updates with the patch notes too so moira's not gonna do nearly as much uh damage with that biotic grasp and similarly kaya does have less damage over time with the virus change but you're still gonna get the same effect of the hack and of course that coalescence pressure yeah and flipper mainly cares about fading fading yeah, out yes. and piecing out into the bushes like homer simpson style just don't touch me okay flipper needs to live and that's all his job needs to be because guess what if you do that you got better you're still alive to punish oh yeah who are gonna be diving you constantly so meta boys do a good job of playing off amelia and the diva is amazing Steve has been so good, I, and one of the... Ooh, see, look! D uh, you know, defense... A barrage matrix. doing something. <laughs> yeah, no, the defense matrix to protect the Faro. We love that. There's some synergy on the board here for this composition, even though it looks absolutely wacko. But uh, the job's not done yet. You still have two minutes and 20 seconds to get there to the end of the line. And Chasm is almost full again. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're laudable. walking into an EMP too, exactly. Like, EMP, mines, uh, oh. Bob. 
Already not a good start for Meta Boys' offense, having to play this 4v5 and now getting pitched from all sides. Coalescence from Flipper to chase after Kazuba all things. I thought that was going to be to uh, help support against the dive. Sure, offensive Moira works out too. And now that everyone is back from Meta Boys except Amelia, they, they've now taken care of the oh yeah, flankers and can just wait for Amelia to get back. Still have a minute and 30, and you still have so many ultimates if you're meta boys. Uh, I'm looking at even the self destruct as just being able to get some extra pressure, but hey, look at that. It's an Russian Bob. And uh, Bob a here. Zignata. And it's gone. <laughs> uh, it was a cool attempt by ICAB. I think that it would have been better placed on the, on the cart just to have extra presence within the fight rather than flank pressure that uh, is merely a distraction. And Flipper and Tech Soul are about to die, and Meta Boys will have to reset if that happens. Um, Chasm is also on a rampage, and is now. Fl I thought he was gonna be rolling in. Thanks for that. That's a U-turn right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but uh, still one more attempt. It's going to be sub one minute, but Meta Boys still have this final shot to be able to get that golden box of victory. Uh, but an amplification matrix and is going to be waiting for them on the other side. And maybe even a transcendence. Saifa is putting in a ton of work here on the Zenyatta. This is super winnable for Meta Boys. They're meters away and like they did last time, just zoning off Chasm, hoping for the best. And a self-destruct kills Ken and Kai is down too. Meta boys need to push the cart. I don't know who's there, but they need to get that done. Stack as many as you can while you have the space to do so. Saipei Transcendence to reestablish themselves with the team and even get some cart uh, some cart touch for the defense. Meta boys. Oh, there's Kai on the flank killing Icav who hit away from heels instead of dropping down into them. Meta boys panicking and folding under the pressure. Amelia is now the only one that can keep this overtime wick burning and it's up to this backline of Meta boys to actually win the map. You got Kitsune Rush, you got Ant Matrix. Amelia needs to be kept alive and they do just that. Meta boys tie the series. Oh, that was so close. I thought that the EMP would get there in time and then everybody else got off the cart and didn't contest it. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to chalk that up to a C9. I think we can just call that <laughs> great pressure from Meta Boys. They had the amplification matrix on the high ground, which was perfect for not only the Baptiste, but the rest of the damage up there. And Amelia, like great showing on that map, be able to pull out the diva, be able to contest with the wrecking ball. And I think we got our first glimpse of what potentially taking down this wrecking ball and junk art comp is going to look like. And the counters actually countering. <gasps> Is that what's really happening? Flipper goes to Moira, which not, not like a counter, but more of a just a survivability swap. Uh, the D.Va, the counter that's been just an anchor to chase down the Hammond or to really just have better damage mitigation options against the artillery coming their way. I kind of have a swap to a few different things. I, I hate the Cassidy because it just doesn't have the mobility that anyone else does. Uh, but the damage got buffed, so maybe why not? I would like rather see a Sojourn, just something that has more survivability in. But even when Icav dies, Fake Jake and the rest of the team can still step up. So if you can at least trade one for one, it's not bad. It's not bad. I think like with Afara too, you're still slippery. Like Ken is going to have to really focus down their shots and maybe not focus down that DPS onto the front line to get that damage. And so it might just be enough of a distraction tactic. Plus, Kaya had way more trouble on the Junkrat, even switching off to go to the Sombra instead. Uh, so there is definitely some counter picking happening in this game. And Meta Boys just putting up a great performance in terms of the damage like damage you mitigated is crazy yeah maybe i'm crazy and i thought i can't played cassidy but he just played mystery heroes just trying to find something that won't get constantly dove on uh but hey our next map chosen by meta boys is ishperanza our series is tied 1-1 and he'll find out who will go to series point after this break
Very nice out of the meta boys, and I'm not crazy. I kept did play Cassidy, but he had to swap to so many things. A lot of things. Meta boys swapped to the right things though. They won the map because of it. They did, and this is, I think, what this matchup is going to take. You've got to be able to shut down the overwhelming pressure from the Wrecking Ball as well as the Junkrat, and what better ways to do that than to go back to our counter-picking roots and play something that's just a little bit spicy every single time. But uh, here we have a substitution coming through for one of our rosters, so let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick and see who's going to be stepping up to play. It's going to be Dark Side Phil. Coming in to play a damage role, Jen. Usually we see this player on a tank. Wow. Kai is coming yeah. out of the roster for that. Yeah, just thinking, okay, well, the D.Va is hard countering the junk grab, and then that's enough space for uh, Icav or Fillion at range to poke down Kaya. So Junkrat not working out, and I, I don't mind it. I don't know enough about Dark Side Phil <laughs> in terms of DPS to know uh, what the secret Me sauce either. is. But, but I'm excited. When we saw Dark Side Phil during stage one, it was to come in to play the Rissa uh, alongside, of course, like the, the Junkrat that we saw from Kaya. Chasm, though, staying in the roster should be able to see a bit more Wrecking Ball, but maybe Dark Side Phil has something up the sleeve that we don't know about. If anything, it's not going to be the Junkrat or the Sombra that I think limits the composition in terms of changes that you can actually make uh so so let's see what kind of flexibility oh yeah still have up their sleeve they've got a deep roster uh, to be able to de dip into i know we talked about necros being able to play the genji if they want to swap him in but it's gonna be the cassidy from dark side phil i'm sure why not yeah <laughs> sure what I mean. I'm gonna say sure why not to any hero that oh yeah pick no. because they play against their counter as well. They make everything work. And finally got a taste of kryptonite on that last map, and hence why we're in a tied scenario. But this map was chosen by uh yeah, I believe, so that's where all yeah get to go crazy off the ball. That can just push anyone off the bridge, and then ideally you shoot them after. Yeah, you know, it's simple step one, step two, and step three. But uh, the fact that we have to see a bit of setup here, though, because you've got like kind of this this poke oriented comp on both sides. I know I say that as, as weird as it sounds with like a Bastion, but the Bastion's got to get set up. So does the Sombra. And then you've got to get the Diva in place for that, too. And oh, yeah, we're just going to continue to pivot around this central pillar. This is just a better map than Colosseo when it comes to Hammond, so this makes a lot of sense for all, yeah. But Meta Boys are playing inside of rooms or playing in corners that Chasm would be inting if he tried to pile drive into, but it all depends on the support because Ken, very mobile on the Tracer, can can dive with Chasm, Saipei can TP in, so I, I think Chasm will get a lot more support with this type of composition. Meta Boys uh, want to catch up to the bus because uh, the car, the bus, is moving away. Now Meta, Bo Meta Boys are forced to take the fight if they want to get something done. The yeah, Matrix plus the Bastion. Chasm, how does he live that? The fact that Ken just walked face first into that and didn't die is insane to me. Oh yeah, I have no fear at all. Dipped into a room, grabbed a health pack. Uh, yeah, somehow, even if it was a mini, I think you'll take that over dying. And so that's going to be the amplification matrix down. Uh, Sombra doesn't get away with that either. And now meaningful push bot progress as you make your way over to the bridge. The good thing about the composition that Middle Boys has is that it's it's pretty mobile. You don't have the Lucio, uh, which is something that we would normally see on a map like this. Just be able to get back into these fights a little bit faster. So you're playing in a little bit of an awkward position where Aya is bringing the fight to you. There's not really the same tussle over the bridge as we would expect. Um, so yay, have fun with the chaos.
Have fun with those mines. Chasm has no chill at all <laughs> and keeps them trapped. Meta boys break out, use the EMP, and Saipei tried to counter with the Katsune Rush, and most of the team is dead, so they're, oh yeah, are not going to get full benefits from that. And Meta boys do a great job of countering Chasm again. Countering Chasm, but you still have to figure out how you're going to deal with the rest of the team. I, I think that the Sombra makes things a little bit trickier because it's like Sombra versus Tracer. You're still fighting over those health packs, but Sombra can still shut them down. Uh, but I, I love that we've got this Kitsune rush from Texel because this could really turn the tide for Meta Boys to take the advantage. Maybe even the right. checkpoint. Yeah, the lead for Meta Boys, at least in this case, still plenty of time. And Amelia gets the chase down on Chasm. So I was worried about if there was going to be a lack of Tracer, if there was going to still be that finishing power, the mobile finishing power to get after Chasm. So far, so good for Meta Boys. And they got the Katsune advantage after Saipei wasted it last fight, trying to salvage, I think, what, a two or three versus five? Either way, Meta Boys can just wait for Anya to come to them, try not to get separated. Meta Boys group up on the bridge and... I guess just the poke from Aya yeah, is still strong, despite being on the low ground. ICAB is missing. The yeah, Matrix is kind of ugly. It's not really looking at anything, so we'll ignore that out of Flipper. Kasune Rush is plan B for Meta Boys as Aya yeah, is caught in the open. Dark Side Phil, very killable. Amelia gets the chase down and uses the self destruct to trap Cool Boy and going for the mech kill, respectable, but in a pro game, insane. <laughs> it's actually insane. But that's the checkpoint activated for Meta Boys. Boys. And so they have these four respawns, and K maybe not that advantage okay. anymore, as Aya does get a chance to clean up these picks. But it, this is so back and forth. We still have over a half of this map to go in terms of that time bank. Uh, so high noon here from Dark Side Phil. Maybe we get a chance to see this Amp Matrix too. There's a lot in that bank here for Aya to throw up this next fight. But I'm curious to see how much of an impact this EMP can have. Yeah, Meta Boys could have used their ults a bit better, and Amelia could have not egoed them with the self destruct and could have just killed them vanilla just without the ult. But hey, Katsune Rush works out for all. Yeah, giving the extra firepower to Dark Side Phil with the dead eye. And Meta Boys will have the lead, but they're very soon gonna lose it. Now that Dark Side Phil has some space to work with, he's landing all these shots and he's delivering. Okay, I mean, delivering a point, that feels really good. Even though, oh uh, yeah, are struggling to deal with this Sombra from Fake Jake, I think you're still really happy being able to unlock those forward spawns for yourself. And then Chasm's got these mines again, so playing around this really open space is going to be difficult to work around that huge area of effect. Okay, deny the pulse bomb with the javelin spin, EMP from Fake Jake to pressure the back line. And Metal Boys uh, still need to touch the bot here. Okay, 72 meters for all yeah is where they will end at for the moment. But that's starting to become more of a significant lead. 20 more meters and Meta Boys are going to have to win back-to-back -back fights to catch up to that. That was a really good rotation coming through from Meta Boys as well. As soon as Chasm hit those Wrecking Ball Mines onto the point, they said, we're just going to go into the room, going to avoid them, and then we'll wrap around and, and, and nab you from behind. So I think it was a really smart choice. And now that they have the ultimate advantage, not only do you have the Amplification Matrix, but here's the Kitsune Rush as well, as we get a listen in to see how these teams are going to approach this next fight. <laughs> I'm a checkpoint. Nice. Wyjebie ci się? Yep. Wyjebie się, ja cela, jeżeli możesz. Okno poszło, coś jeszcze? Okay. Oh yeah. Getting the job done. Taking care of Meta Boys once again and denying an important fight where Meta Boys could have tried to get a lead back. It's a, it's a really important fight to take there too because Texel didn't get a chance to use that Kitsune rush and and now like we're playing kind of the same game as we saw in our first match of the day where Aya have the lead not by very much but still enough that they just have to stop Meta Boys from getting any more progress. Yeah, Meta Boys have to build momentum and that's so difficult to do. If you lose any member, you you could be set back. So Meta Boys have to be perfect. There's less than three minutes left. Kitsune Rush and Texel just couldn't TP to someone like Flipper who had already dropped to the high ground. Oh yeah, so quick to overwhelm you and tear 
surge from Amelia trying to take some bodies with them. The numbers might have been evened up actually after Fake Jake and I have killed some people. So all oh, yeah, are not in the most comfortable position either. No, but uh, yeah, I think like you have to step back. Uh, poor Phil and Chasm were already very low, but that is going to be a touch coming through from the Tracer. Uh, at the very least, it's going to stop the progress for a little bit and also make Meta Boys scatter. They don't have the personnel either to take this as a 5v5. Okay, Chasm waits for his moment with the mines all right at the chokehold. That could have been good. But Meta Boys realizing they don't want to be uh, in a corner against the mines, but placing it out in the hallway is maybe not the best place for Chasm, because Meta Boys easily walk out of it. You ideally want to trap them into that hallway and not put it behind the- Oh! <laughs> the headshot! I mean, Fake Jake ate the barrel. He deserves it at that point. Oh and Meta God. Boys keep getting set behind. <laughs> you just like see a tracer run at you, and I feel like it's one of the easiest shots of your life. So if I kept missed that, uh, uh, would have felt a little bad there. But hey, um, really nice positioning here from Oh yeah. Now we only have a minute and twenty seconds left. It's not a whole lot of time to work with, and Oya is continuing to put on this pressure with the amplification matrix to stop this push for Meta Boys. This is a must win for Meta Boys. You just can't let this bot get too far back. And Flipper is isolated. All of Meta Boys are split from each other. And there's you ideally need to be in some range of your diva so that she can uh, boost towards you and matrix the damage. If everyone's split up, Amelia can't do anything about it. No, it, it's too difficult to do that when, like, you've got the amplification matrix splitting your focus, and then, of course, you've got Chasm behind you, too. Uh, just, uh... <laughs> Uh, ah, okay, spotted. Good. Love it. Now, though, less, uh, like, gonna be less than 30 seconds for this next engage, and this is final fight here for Meta Boys. They've gotta win this. Oh, ICAP is already dead, too. The comeback from Meta Boys does not look like it's gonna be happening. The last 22 seconds left. Oh, yeah, we're so good at collapsing onto ICAP, who. Again, I'm hating the Cassidy and why he's been not meta for the history of Overwatch is that his tumble doesn't go far enough. And against Dive, against a Tracer, against a Hammond, it just, Cassidy doesn't have the survivability compared to a Soldier or anything else. So the Sombra may be better, but Meta Boys would have to do the comeback of a century to win this. Yeah, it starts here. You have a couple of resources to work with, but the Wrecking Ball Mines over the point is going to make it really difficult to step up to the plate and actually keep this progress going. Yeah, ICAB gets isolated. Not able to translocate out is really difficult. Oh, yeah. They've just been improving as time goes on. And Darkside Phil, you just got subbed in and he's popping off like that. Thank God for him. Oh, yeah. Go to series point. Oh man, I, it's been so interesting to see the development of both of these teams over the course of the series. And as you called out, Phil coming in, slotting in perfectly, playing the Cassidy and just making it so miserable for something like a Sombra to get access to the back line. I think it's been night and day difference. Uh, not to say that Kaya's not a good player, right? But you're playing this long game of making these counter choices and Phil was the right player for the job. You needed some kind of range uh, DPS, and the Junkrat, as good as Kaya is, those nades are still hard to hit. <laughs> They're a projectile, so at range, the Cassidy was going to be better in, in that vacuum. But yeah, I'm like hyping up Darkside Phil, who's also playing Cassidy. But the difference between the two Cassidys is that Darkside Phil has a tank that's making space. Emilia, D.Va is not a tank. I know in 6v6, D.Va would dive in with somebody. But now in 5v5, D.Va is more of a peeler than anything. And Amelia did an amazing job on Midtown doing just that. But the team is like dispersing a little too much in the heat of the moment. And Amelia can only do so much. Sorry, that, that pick from Phil is just still living rent-free in my head, even after getting stuck. Knowing like, ah, oh, my team's got me, I'm not gonna die to this pulse bomb, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill the tracer that walked in front of me. Uh, it's just really funny. And yeah, I, I agree with you. I think like, the, the D.Va is one of those things I think that makes a lot of sense if you're playing on a payload map, because not only do you have the opportunity to get those quick resets, you're not worried about this 
push bot moving in another direction. That's what makes push so tricky to try to create space with that diva. Um, so maybe if we're heading over to our flashpoint map, maybe the diva makes a little bit more sense. Just because you're playing yeah. a static point. But the same problem remains that you, it's just harder to keep yourself in the loop and in the front line. And Philia needs to just go back to Hammond duty. I know it's really boring to be like mechanically amazing and just shoot the most giant target in the game, but that's exactly what they needed to do. Meta boys would win fights when they converted kills onto Chasm. Cause then you don't, then ICAV gets to actually shoot something instead of getting Hammond pile drove on it and like a, K, uh, uh, not a Kazer, but a, a tracer behind and stuff. So gotta go back from play for Meta boys to play from front to back. I know Chasm is very elusive and frustrating to play against, <laughs> But you can't switch targets too fast either. It, there needs yeah. to be a fine balance between focusing down Chasm and switching to a better target afterwards. But if you swap too early and Chasm is still killable, then you lose a big opportunity and then he gives a ton of support ult charge to his team. Yeah, if you, if you want that front to back damage, just Wrecking Ball still is a tank. So a very survivable one at that gotta make sure that that wrecking ball is out of the way but we do have another substitution coming in to this roster and so it's gonna be kaya coming back into the roster and dark side phil actually coming in for chasm to move over and play that tank role when we've seen dark side phil in new junk city it's always been to play something like the orissa and this is also the map that kaya ended up getting a 4k rip tire kill <laughs> onto the team <laughs> God. So like, yeah, maybe we're in for another one of those. I'd be stoked. That should be illegal. Uh, you know what should be illegal? Not playing Kaya, a Junkrat player on New Junk City. The Junkrat map. So totally understandable staying on brand, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's like, you gotta play the Junker Queen. Maybe it was a Junker Queen. I honestly can't remember at this point, because Aya has played everything under the sun. I swear it's been Orisa, but... Okay, maybe maybe my my mind is deceiving me because <laughs> there it is but hey oh actually i'm looking at the at the stats that we got given after the last map and i kind of actually kept up in terms of damage numbers against dark side phil 11.3k to 11k favoring icap but the difference is the deaths seven yep. deaths out of icap two deaths out of dark side phil like that's that's just the impact that wow. a hammond has onto a cassidy yeah, and I think similarly, when you take a look at the tank deaths, Chasm died three times, Amelia died eight, and it's no fault to Amelia in this situation. It's just that when you're playing the D.Va, you're playing the Orisa, it's way easier for you to target down the tank because you just don't have the same type of mobility and escape that the Wrecking Ball does. But it's gonna be going back to basics for these two teams. You've got Icav and Ken on the Sojourns, Orisa on both sides. The only difference is gonna be this Tracer versus Junkrat that we we see. Maybe Meta Boys have a better chance uh, in a pseudo mirror, at least a tank mirror, where Amelia has done a good job just being an anchor, not being overly aggressive, not being passive, just trying to really unite the team. But uh, Amelia got united with the wall and almost got reunited with God, but thankfully they get back to the team and Meta Boys are just getting run over right now. This ducky is, is a menace. <laughs> it's so tough. <laughs> The rubber ducky leading the charge into the bloodbath that might be this game. Um, but hey, I, I think still uh, Meta Boys have a great shot to get back into this. Amelia is not too far away from this Terra Surge, and you're also looking at Flippa coming up to that sound barrier. Just both support ultimates being online is going to feel nice to get that engagement into this next fight. Oh, yeah, have the point, so they can play this dance all night long. Bring around the Rosie, too. And Saipei can teleport, may need to assist this front line. There's the Suzu and the Katsune rush right to the Terra Surge. Amelia is crazy for that. But a sound barrier still helps the rest of Oh yeah, capitalize on that moment where the tank from Meta Boys is missing. And the Riptire, just to celebrate the end of that point, I don't think Meta Boys will be able to touch. We'll see, though. 
Uh, it's gonna be really tough for them too. And I think at this point, if you're meta boys, you might just want to try to get set up on the next flashpoint. So they aren't even gonna do that. They're hoping that the next flashpoint is gonna be somewhere on their side of the map because there it goes. Fake Jake is also going to make a swap over to the Fara. So still playing this counter pick game to play up against the Junkrat in an easier fashion. The Tracer was just having too much trouble getting access to that backline. And at the very least, you do have that concussive blast to help try to push everybody away, disrupt that structure that Aya has in their composition. So Meta Boys are able to get to the next flashpoint first as we hover, head over to the Junkyard. Okay. Is it ending now? Ken wants to end this point quickly. Oh yeah. Completely zone off Meta Boys from the point. Who looks poised to cap that first. Sound bear from Meta Boys uh, when they're right on the coast is a difficult spot to be in. Meta Boys no, aren't necessarily getting an advantage from this. Texel's just gonna die with the team. So a waste of Sound bear is really rough. Now oh yeah should be in a position to make this a good one. Uh, it doesn't feel good when you have the sound barrier advantage and then you lose the fight anyway because ah yeah not only got control of the point but like now you're missing such a critical ultimate to deal with something like the terror surge you have the suzu uh, when you were playing something like the baptiste you had the immortality field was just a bigger aoe effect uh, but here's the overclock from icaf there's barely any targets in sight and now a 25 hp icaf still kills saipei who's trying to place the Kitsune rush, so I yeah, just don't have heals to make this a long brawl, and Fake Jake had a javelin spin to the face trying to barrage, so again, barrage, just not a good ult against this team. Oh yeah, managed to make this kind of close despite not having a main healer for the longest time, but uh, Metal Boys will still keep the point. The meta boys get point control, and now oh yeah, bought themselves that last fight territory. The sound bear advantage is in their pocket, and as is this rip tire. I am never gonna count out this rip tire. Typically, when you look at uh like two high skilled teams going at it, you expect that the rip tire is gonna get shot down. But Kai's been able to get a pick or two every single time with this rip tire, if not even to get the zoning from having the pressure of that ultimate. Riptire coming towards the back. Meta Boy should be able to hear this and shoot it down. And oh yeah, I want to take advantage by pressing through the front and have a distraction. So, oh yeah, doing a good job of well taking space in terms of winning the fight. That's a different story. You needed the Salvier from Cool Boy to actually salvage that. And Ken with the overclock delivers that first pick that oh yeah needed to get a leg up. But now ICAP is on the high ground, making this difficult. Oh yeah, are now exposed out in the open and Meta Boy pick them off oh yeah we're just this close to winning the point so close and at this point it's gonna get flipped over there's still some time here for Aya to come back but that's if they get everybody out of here Saipe is gonna go down and with that sojourn following up this should be a flashpoint headed over to Meadow Boys and we've got to get set up for the next one now where is it gonna be that's the question uh rounds tied 1-1 one, one. here we go a ducky is hungry for blood. Skin. I love <laughs> that skin. Deadly. I love it too, but it's just I don't so like getting killed by it. I did that you just see the Arisa walk up to your face and you're like, I'm gonna kill their rubber duck. I don't know how I feel about that. Ducky's one. one, Ducky's one. Oh, we need the winning comms to have that. Oh, Dark Side falls in trouble. No armor. Amelia, dog walking towards the pause mid file. Oh, there was a disconnect from all oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Oh, it's gonna be the Kiriko too, so uh, I feel so bad to have to lose in like a member of that when you know that that like mid rush is too. So important. <laughs> oh, oh god. Sometimes it just it be like that. Makes our job e easy though, because uh, now it's a guaranteed fight win from the other side, especially when your main healer Ooh. who's getting pushed into uh, died. So we'll get that resolved ASAP, but. Hey, uh, Meta Boys in this kind of mirror tank mirror, I gotta say, has looked a lot more even. Like this is t these fights are going down completely different when there's not a Hammond to worry about. I think you have to consider though that like I just I don't know how effective the wrecking ball would even be on a map like this. So I think bringing in Dark Side Phil makes a lot of sense. I believe they ended up doing this actually. Um, we did see Dark Side Phil get switched in for Esperanza actually when they ended up playing against Peace and Love in the very first uh, day of groups. 
So we've like we've seen this look from them before, and of course, heading back to stage number one, we've also seen it there. But I think like when you look at the wrecking ball in New Jug City, like there's no verticality for you to play around outside of bomb flats and junkyard. So like you're gonna go get stuck in a corridor where they recently body block you. It like just doesn't feel good. What's not gonna feel good is this next coming fight. <laughs> now that we get all of our members from oh yeah back side wow. is missing and Tex will just use Katsune Rush. But wait uh, a minute, does it matter? Fire is bombing the heck out of Meta Boys. This should have been a get. You know what? That's that's my fault for caster cursing. I apologize, everybody. Yeah, you can't uh, underestimate the Junkrat. The Rip Tire is still important. I, I, there's gonna be another one up here. That is insane that Kaya saves that it's fight actually insane. when they don't have a Kiriko. Like, I and the other team is Katsune <laughs> rushing. Kaya is killed during this fight! Oh, and the tire's about to get four. Well, Amelia is going to be dying next. The Suzu tries to help them regenerate armor, but nah. Oh, yeah, we'll be getting the point back. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Who needs healing when you just deal more damage and you kill them before they can kill you? I, that's a great strategy. Why did I never think of that? Uh, uh, these late saggers are gonna hurt too, and here comes Dark Side Phil. Oh man, he'll be sticking around his pond. But wow, great clutch by, by Kaya in that moment. Yeah, super nice, and, and it bought enough time actually for Aya to get other ultimates online too. So Terra Surge, Sound Barrier, Overclock, all at their disposal, but iCav's gonna hit it first. Okay, I kind of have to try and chunk through a sound barrier, so that's not fun at all. At least uh, Amelia's body blocking. They're gonna do their best. Trying to draw out cooldowns of, oh uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, still have point control, now staying on the top bridge. I kind of have to be careful how they expose themselves to damage, and Fake Jake went from bar to soldier, so not my favorite, not my most favorite picks, but at least the more mobile pick than, than a Farah. So Meta Boy is swapping to everything they can to find what's going to be cracking the egg of Aya. Well, it's sadly not going to be that visor. They did got just chased out of the point and then walked into like the Junkrat damage and the Lucio is going to switch over to the Echo. So still trying to figure out what hero is going to be able to make this work. If it's not the Farad, it's not the Soldier. Let's go ahead and try the Echo. It was effective when we looked at our first couple of maps of the series, but it's going to have to clutch up here because Meta Boys have to keep control of this point. Oh yeah, just need one fight to uh, win this second or third point, I should say, to go to round point on this map. And Meta Boys, yeah, going back to the comp that won the Midtown, or at least most of it. The Diva would be what's missing, but Amelia wants to be the anchor, and it, it's just going to be that much better on control. The sound barrier from Flipper helps Meta Boys extend the fight, but oh yeah, we're just chunking through it. Now a rip tire. Like, oh yeah, fought through a sound barrier and won. Oh yeah, are just that good. It's, it's, they've done it again, you know? The, they, this is the second time now in this map that Flippa has had the sound barrier, but not been able to convert that over to an advantage. So, oh yeah, now on round point of this flashpoint map. And so we're gonna see if they can just close it out here. Not a whole lot to work with outside of this overclock, but that could be all that they need here. Now they're gonna be the ones that have the sound bear advantage too, actually. As we go over to bomb flats, we will ton of straightaways to try to weave in the sojourn damage. Oh yeah, would ideally like to get Meta Boys in a place where the nades from the junk rack can coalesce into a small area and get a lot of burst down, but so far all these nades are focused onto Amelia as Dark Side just runs in, starts javeling people against walls, and Ken jumps into his own death, thinking he could get that finishing blow. But Fake Jake has had great punishing power with the focusing beam. This has been a great swap for him. Katsune rush for Meta Boys to try and take back this point here at the last second, because this Arissa of Dark Side Phil is so tanky, and Meta Boys need all the help they can get. Now they're even gonna dupe, use the Arissa to just throw Kaya off the map, I guess. So Meta Boys should be coming out with this fight. It just depends on the investment, but now, oh yeah, are investing into this 4v5 with a sound barrier and cool boy made the call and this may just pay off for all yeah 
and Amelia's gonna have to rush back into things with the Doomfist, and it feels like it almost might be too little too late. Is able to take down Darkseid Phil so that opens up the door for Meta Boys to try to finish up these picks, but it's really only this Lucio as well as uh, there's just this Doomfist left. Maybe it is enough. Kiriko is also here to save the day. Everyone is just so desperate to win the fight. They're just popping ults as soon as they get it. Like, Meta Boys, three-man barrier. They still don't have the point. Yeah, that kind of, that was a long fight that only benefited all. Yeah, at 86. Now they're one away from winning the map and the series. It all comes down to Kaya's rip tire chasing down Meta Boys' back line. You better run. At least Amelia was the only victim in that case. <laughs> yeah, but that is all of your tank pressure out the window. And if this is going to be the final couple of seconds, they cannot make a cohesive push without this team of five. There's a touch for the overtime, though, so maybe there is still hope. Beijing is dead. The hope is diminishing. Oh, yeah. Are just so deadly. Close range, long range. Amelia trying to disrupt them as the Doomfist, but will fall along with the rest of the Meta Boys as they also fall out of our tournament. And oh, yeah, take the series. That was an impressive victory. We always get treated to so many interesting heroes and plays when oh, yeah, are here in these matches but uh, meta boys they, they put up a good fight I, they were able to take midtown they were able to get a score on the board but but zoe how do you deal with this kaya junk rat it i mean possible i'm glad that it is impossible because that means it stays alive and we get to see more of that although i do have to say on map number two meta boys they they had some answers to it i think the addition of like putting the diva in worked really well for them not on map three since the map just really isn't conducive to such a composition but i honestly uh think they they tried their very best to deal with what was thrown at them in their defense it's hard no one else is playing a composition like that it's not like you get any reps in and really have a good answer to uh, what we're seeing from oh yeah and even though yeah of course if you are going up against oh yeah you kind of expect them to throw that kind of stuff at you that doesn't make it any easier let's take a look at the highlights and some of the best moments of this match well, yeah, aren't unbeatable. They're like the peace and love have found the secret sauce. Surely, I thought Meta Boys did on Midtown when they, I don't know, if they're listening to casters. I don't know, but me and me and their coach are on the same brain, <laughs> uh, like wavelength of go to Diva and peel for the ball because that was their biggest problem was dealing with Chasm. And then I thought Meta Boys had a better chance than going into an Arisa mirror, but it turns out that uh, it wasn't the case. That now the Junkrat becomes the newest problem where Kai is turning around fight solo i i mean like i can't count out the junk rat <laughs> yeah. if the junk rat's not looking at your team or you can't see the junk rat the junk rat's probably gonna kill you that's just how that works right best junk rat is not even looking at the enemy team and hoping that the grenades are gonna do the rest so uh it's been fun to watch that and the other thing about this all oh, yeah team that makes them even more tricky to try to counter team is that they also have this dark like this deep roster dark side phil able to come in not just to play that dps role but also to come in and switch in to play the Arissa. if you need that on the tank it makes them even more deadly how do we feel about their uh, newest member? They did only make one change heading into stage two uh, in their backline. They said goodbye to Abs and added, uh, is it Saipe or Saipi? Saipe? Saipe sounds Saipay. more bougie. So I've been going Saipay. with Saipe. Yeah, <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I've, I've been a fan of, I think the only time I was like, ooh, was when you're trying to pop Katsune Rush in these fights and you kind of put yourself out in the open. Sometimes Saipei has gotten picked by trying to get the, the call going for the Katsune Rush and putting themselves in vulnerable positions. But other than that, like every Katsune Rush fight has been really solid out of them. Yeah, I, I sadly only got... I uh, kind of chunked once there by the internet connection oh, uh, but still <laughs> but still like you definitely saw and felt the impact that Saipei was having on those fights whether the Kitsune Rush was up or even just being able to come in get a swift step into Chasm save the day a little bit and make sure that Wrecking Ball was around Chasm barely died we took a look at those tank stats uh, in between like Chasm and Amelia even on this first map I think only died twice and then on 
on the second map only died like three times so it, it just like it doesn't it doesn't feel like a uh, chasm is fair on, on an even playing <laughs> field with the rest of the team yeah you it's know just... chasm is a problem when he forces the entirety of the other team to swap the things to counter him <laughs> like that's how good he is that's right. I I just I was in pain just like watching on Samoa especially. Uh Necker, I think you hit on that as well during the cast. So many explosives. Like you could literally not <laughs> step into any place on the map where you didn't get blown up. So pain. Pain when you're on the other side of it. Now of course, uh this is a team which definitely did benefit from the recent patch changes. I'm pretty sure there's some other teams out there as well. Let's take a look at the bracket and maybe one or two of the teams are standing out to you uh, well not this particular graphic but <laughs> coming up after that uh, when we're looking at the groups uh, looking at the brackets of course uh, just to quickly run you through it oh yeah now has to fight Araxia in order to advance to the main event let's see if they can get it done they've not met, met each other during the groups just yet I'm not entirely sure if they faced off against each other during the Swiss stage uh, either way and Araxia they, they better be ready for this it's hard to be ready for this. <laughs> I, I think that's something else we've seen time and time again in EMEA. They often have these more OTP players that are very well versed in a particular hero. So how do you actually get that practice? Because Chasm, probably one of the best wrecking balls in the entire server. You're not going to get a chance to play against them unless you scrim. And same with Kaya. How many people can you say you're able to play like a high skill level Junkrat against that knows all the ins and outs of that hero and knows where to put those traps down to, to nab you every single time. It's tough to get that practice. It is. It's so much fun to watch. Uh, I love that we have a team with so many niche picks in uh, their very own uh, roster. Let's uh, take a look at the recent patch notes, or at least some of the t uh, changes there, especially to a Ball. We talked about that last week already, uh, that the word on the street is we might be seeing more Ball usage. Of course, a lot of teams we're still seeing, you know, on your good old faithful Orisa but the ball is back. And of course, Chasm, front runner to pick the ball. Uh, Chasm has <laughs> got to be very, very happy about those very core changes. I mean, this really changed the way Wrecking Ball can be played right now. Yeah, I think like if you're a Wrecking Ball player, you are very happy about the patch that we just saw because uh, for a while, there were too many answers to the Wrecking Ball that it made it very difficult to play. But I think as well, Wrecking Ball's kit wasn't necessarily keeping up with where the meta was. So now you have that change to the adaptive shield. You can uh, you gain the shields from the enemies around you, but you can also transfer some of it up to 75% over uh, 75 total over health to your teammates and i think that makes a huge difference in terms of the team play that you get a chance to see but not only that we saw how the minefields came into effect typically that was something that you were able to just get out of the way immediately shoot them down but now they've got 60 health and that actually does give a bit more benefit to making sure those mines are going to stay around for a long time but jen as you were calling out in the middle of that match there are ways to actually play around this wrecking ball but these teams are going to have to find them and make sure they actually have those at their disposal. I mean, the entirety of Europe has been trying to counter all, oh, yeah, and especially Chasm for, for as long as I remember. And Amelia started to pick up on that with the D.Va and other picks. But I like that. I love these Hammond changes because the cooldown being reduced on the grappling hook, too, just being involved in so many more fights, you're no, you know, you don't have the only option of being selfish. You can actually be selfless, although Chasm has been the one-man army for a long time. So it's been cool to see the non-meta boys show us uh, different looks to the game. Indeed. And now as I jumped the gun before, let's take a look at those standings and maybe uh, peek some other teams which could be benefiting, not just from the ball changes, but general from the patch, uh, patches. Is there any team in the EMEA uh, region you feel like they could also come out on top of this? Hmm. It's tough to say because I think for a long time, all we've really seen is just the Arisa meta. I feel like I have lost a lot of my peanut memory to like who <laughs> these other heroes uh, these players can play. So I'm excited to see particular like Ataraxia. Do they have a way to actually deal with this wrecking ball? I look at a player like Fi that has such a dominant Cassidy that I think the magnetic grenade is going to be a great way to hinder that wrecking ball. I actually think that Danid, like, maybe? 
I, I don't know. I, I, it's going to be interesting to see if mm -hmm. they can pull anything out like that. And just a reminder excited. that all the teams at the top of these groups, sorry, that are, are the only ones that are safe. And so yep. what, what I like is that everyone is in danger from the 1-1 one, <laughs> one to the 0-2 spot, especially, well, I mean, the 0-2 people are out. But I, I hope a team like Ex Oblivione with the names that they have on their roster should be able to make it through. But who knows? Yeah. <laughs> who knows indeed? Well, out. Lemon, you're making a great point. You're saying that they're safe. Yes, they already moved on to the main event, the uh, two O teams. But also, they don't have to play on the new patch uh, they can lean back take notes check out what everyone else is doing and then act accordingly that is a huge advantage for them heading into the main event well let's see if they can make uh, good use of said advantage you also just mentioned ex oblivioni well they will be up next they're going up against super shy you don't want to miss it
heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. And you indeed can sign up before April 25th. That is the deadline and see how far you can take it with your team. Now let's dive into our next match of the day. Ex Oblivioni and Super Shy. Once again, Ex Oblivioni are finding themselves in a decided match. Uh, they made it work in stage one, of course, against Keltos. But after what we've seen last week from Super Shy, I feel like they will give them more of a run for their money. What do we know about Ex Oblivioni though? Well, uh, what I know about these two teams is they played each other already. This was one of the first matches that we had for their group stage. It was a very, very close five map series. So if there's anything, I'm like, this is about to be a super, super good show. Especially when we take a look at like Shockwave. No, all of that Overwatch League presence coming back into play with this roster. Kanael and Crispy have been such a solid backline. And Ex Oblivione basically bringing back the whole squad from what we saw for stage one. I feel like they are super set up for success here. They are indeed. Uh, now, uh, of course, if you watched the show last week, Super Shy after their victory over Schmungus, which, okay, fair, they weren't really the team to, you know, push them to the limit. But we did get to talk to uh, Zaro, their uh, DPS player, and he did say that a victory over Exit Blovioni would really give them a chance, you know, get their name out there and show that they're better than people think. And yeah, Super Shy are still building up their name. And you may recognize some people. I think the three biggest names being Pac from Team France, Overwatch World Cup, Will from Sheer Cold last stage, if you guys watched that. Sobek also from Sheer Cold Timeless. These are very well-known European brands. So the rest, I think, are still developing in terms of the career. And this is a really difficult match. You're going up against EXO. This group is very top heavy. And I think EXO are contending for a number two behind Space Station. So Super Shy have a challenge ahead of them. So best of luck. <laughs> They do indeed, but you know, maybe recent patch changes help them get the edge here. There's only one way to find out, and that is to play the game. So let's head into the map set. Let's right. go! Let's we have to break so many hearts today. These, uh, these are all elimination matches, everyone. So sounds like you guys are very much uh, leaning ex oblivione, but you know, anything could happen. I mean, the nice thing about this match, though, is like loser sadly does go home, but but the winner moves forward. And so you would love to be on the winning end of this match because you get to go to the main event. You get a chance at that bigger prize pool, $30,000 for that first place. And Exit Vione would love to have a shot at being able to nab that prize pool once again. But here is where things get really tough. When they face each other last time, it was a 3-2 in favor of Ex Oblivione. But as we were saying, like, what does the patch, if anything, change about this matchup? Uh, at least for the Pammon players like Chasm, they're stoked. And <laughs> we even saw some Sombra here and there, but uh, at least these two teams seem like they'll follow the meta as much as possible. At least for map one, when you're kind of finding where your comfort zone is and kind of a kumbaya before the doors open. I think you're right about that one. I think the only thing that we might see some differences in is like just looking at the, how they uh, played in their very first match against each other. We did see Oasis and it ended up being Arisa versus Arisa. So the fact that we're seeing the Ramatra here from Hitori, I'm super excited to see this Ramatra versus the Arisa composition when Ramatra gets to just walk forward. Uh, Tools is getting tossed. Okay, he actually did get tossed off the map. What the heck? Just really good uh, environmental kills out of someone like Sobek and I thought there was a fire at some point but either way super shy winning the first fight just quite literally bulldozing the competition well there you, well, there you go I mean just Ramatra walk forward Ramatra punch and then Ramatra go kill uh, so <laughs> That's a really good first point take here for Super Shy as Ex Oblivione now. They have to play on the back foot. Getting this Orisa into the mix is going to be a bit harder when you do have this Symmetra from Pack that's going to make these rotations way easier for Super Shy. 
Yeah, holding the high ground, giving space for Zoro and Exoblivione will have to counter rotate towards the uh, mini pack side in that hallway, or they got to try and contest Zoro. Uh, Exoblivione don't just want to walk into the point because then you're just going to die. You're going to get poked to death. You got no cover advantage would be for Super Shy and Hitori is getting quite low. So Exoblivione think they can finish off this kill. The Ant Matrix to support Hitori. He's got so much trust in Super Shy and well, his entire team. He's still somehow alive, but Exoblivione converge on that tank and will find themselves flipping the point shortly. I still have to win out this high ground duel though and still having that immortality field means that Super Shy are still in this. Even though Shockwave now finally gets a chance to take out Sobek, there is still a good stall. The fact that it's Oblivione have already flipped over this point though, Super Shy have to leave. They also don't want to get staggered. They would have loved to pick up that pick onto pack, but mm, Ex Oblivione, they still have five ultimates to work with as they try to go touch the spawn room doors. Oh, that's fine. We've had, what, two spawn holds today now? <laughs> or two fights <laughs> taken that direction? Maybe a couple more than that, actually. <laughs> the morning was so long ago. <laughs> well, five ults! Deadeye with the speed boost right around the sign and the teleporter from Pac gets them all out of dodge. A huge play there. Ex Oblivione got more up their sleeve and it starts with a sound barrier up against Zoro's overclock. It was too late. Crispy needed to pop that way earlier. Thought that Exo just running away would be enough to negate the overclock and Pac play places the uh, Photon beer to protect them on the approach. So big investment out of Super Shy, but a win's a win. A win is a win. You still have the Annihilation as well as the Amplification Matrix 2. So you haven't used everything that's in your ultimate bank, uh, which is important because Exoblivione did get a chance to overtake them in that percentage charge on this point. But this, this Kitsune rush. So you kind of like to have the Annihilation in this case. While Kanile has a chance to use this Kitsune rush, like just, just lay down the Amp Matrix, I guess. But what? The pack is teleporting the team behind Ex Oblivione. And Ex Oblivione are just trying to have a poke war that they're not going to win because Hitori can place a shield down and give them sort of an edge in, the, in that poke war. So Super Shy did a great job just converging on Exo there. They really did. Like, you put the amplification matrix, so you force Ex Oblivione to have to kite away, and then all of a sudden the teleporter is behind you, and now you're sandwiched. And this is last fight territory, so Super Shy's already done a great job of getting themselves this far, but they can convert this over with the Annihilation after they kite away from this Kitsune rush. So far, so good. Super Shy are on the high ground. Annihilation needs a lot of attention, a lot of TLC. Super Shy trying to round behind Ex Oblivione. You're going to take shelter in the hallway, which is good. Twolls uh, did take unnecessary damage. Just trying to contest as much as they can. Now has the armor and a dead eye. Shockwave stepping up. Zoning off Super Shy from the high ground who almost tried to peek it. Thankfully for Super Shy, they did not die to that Ex Oblivione just seconds away from taking our first round. And it all depends on how Terra Surge in this pulse goes. We're super shy, unaffected so far. They'll have a photon barrier to play off of very soon and an overclock. That could be a huge advantage for super shy. There's the photon barrier. So super shy have a, a great area to protect themselves in. And Zoro is waiting for Ex Oblivione to come out so he can overclock. Now you could just wrap around the team as well as you still have that high ground advantage, but the sound barrier in response means that Ex Oblivione still have some fight. So far, Super Shy at Matrix just gets to hose down the fire that Ex Oblivione put on the point. And it's really who had the better ults in the end. Super Shy banked up enough. Ex Oblivione invested early and it, it didn't pay off in the end. So round number one will be going Super Shy's favor. And it's all for the creativity of someone like Pac who can teleport them around. And the Ant Matrix, as you pointed out, like Super Shy are a well layered offense. Maybe taking a page out of Twisted Mind's book, that's another team that we see use some really big symmetric teleporter plays, and it's really nice to have when you're going to be playing a little bit more Brawl-centric comp. But as we have our city center, this is usually where we start to see a bit of a switch up from our teams to go over to more of a dive-oriented comp. So we see the Winston right now and the Diva being covered by Tools. And I have 
always loved watching Tools as D.Va, one of their absolute best heroes, and it gives you a little bit of a difference when it comes down to how you play out the, like the, the Winston dive versus the D.Va dive. Uh, D.Va just has so much more firepower at her disposal that you can go into these dives a little bit more comfortable knowing that you individually can get those picks. And ideally trying to pick off the Winston, if he places the bubble, trying to use those micro missiles inside of the bubbles, how you bully the Winston to jump out earlier than he intends. And remember, D.Va is more of a peel hero than a dive hero, but at least on sh shorter range maps like this, you can go for smaller dives, but Twolls will be trying to protect Shockwave from Pack potentially, and Hitori once they do dive in. But that is also the beauty of running a Brigida, having that secondary peeler, as Twolls also wants to anchor the point, try to cap it, but for now, Twolls is on bully duty against Hitori. And this could be a ring around the rosy. This fight to just cap the point could take a long time, but Twolls is hoping to get the Mega Pack, is successful, but that is space given up by Exo. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of space there. Super Shy are already going to be able to capture control of this point, which means that as the longer that this fight goes on, the more percentage that Super Shy is going to be able to get. The nice thing is, though, Crispy is going to be on the Brigitte, so there's a couple less targets that Super Shy can get that dive on, and you also have the ability to whip shot somebody away. It's going to buy some time here for Shockwave to get a pick onto Tekuno. Hey, yes. Shockwave, if he can get away with that, that's perfect. Because you're always worrying about a Winston jumping on your face or having to duel against Zoro, who could be quite deadly. So it's a great job out of Axo to just stay stoic, play around their diva, and fight when it's best for them. So Exoplivione, like, they had to be patient, but their patience paid off. And now with control of their own, they're just going to go up to their spawn and hit the Ant Matrix. This is not a well-placed Ant Matrix, unfortunately. It's only going to be looking at the right side. Spawn room door, a lot of cover for Super Shy to work with. And they even have Pack, who's back capping and forces Ex Oblivione to retreat back. Canile managed just to headshot Hitori. And yeah, Winston is still vulnerable to that poke before the bubble is placed. So that's rough. Probably Hitori wanted to be aggressive because they were just that close to the Primal Rage. And the Katsune Rush didn't necessarily give Super Shy an advantage either. Either. So for now, Ex Oblivione will hold. It's going to be another back to the drawing board here for Super Shy, but they are walking up to some pretty big ultimates, so one of which is going to be the overclock, but they hit right away. I like this protective bubble that is placed on Zoro. Just cover him <laughs> in bubble wrap and go shoot something. And Exo are so good at disengaging, and Zoro gets pulsed. Fantastic play out of Cloud, Ex Oblivione can maybe win the round here if they just keep extending this fight, but how do they deal against Sound Barrier? What a, good, what a call out of Sobek. Save Super Shy as they were getting pushed into by Exo. Now Super Shy should be able to flip once they deal with this D.Va. And it's kind of like their last chance to be able to do that too, because Ex Oblivione, they are going to be able to get 85% before that flips over. So Super Shy had to use a sound barrier there and then to try to get that point back. But that is the big difference between running the Lucio versus the Brigitte. The rally just doesn't have nearly the same effect if you aren't all going to be able to fight together as a team. Uh, but that's kind of where, like, a kind of layering on top of the Baptiste and the Cassidy can really do that work for you. But Super Shy has so much mobility to just walk away from all of that over health. At Matrix from Canile. It's really tough to find a good spot because this map has so many nooks and crannies and corners to just hide away from an Ant Matrix that is trying to get as many people out in the open as possible. And again, everyone from Super Shy is very hidden. The the use of Baptiste is really to just use immortality against Pax as Pulse. But the Amnitrix is unfortunately not getting much value. Super Shy will dive in as soon as that ult is expired with the Kastoni Rush and Primals. He's punching at two times speed, giving black eyes to everybody. Exo won't be able to flourish through that. That's a great retaliation out of Super Shy. Oh. And Twools uh, just kind of lets the car run him over because he knows that he's got to get that fast reset. Canal is actually going to go switch over to the Life Weaver. Uh, I guess to be able to, I don't know, go back to spawn and pick the Baptiste instead. But that's going to be another delay to be able to get back into this fight. 97% ticking upwards and it's going to have to be Twools to touch. Oh, stomping on Cloud? As he was trying to go for a pulse, it's 5v4 in favor of Super Shy and an immortality from Canile. Stops the pulse out of pack. That was his job, and he delivers. 
At least executes on that front. Now Super Shy working together. Pack and Hattori diving. Twolls will leave the self-destruct behind. We'll be able to get back into Meg and Pack. Trying to confirm that the Diva wasn't getting back into Mech. Dies from the self-destruct, and that's a fumble. Super Shy still have outnumbered Axo by a lot. And Zoro finishes it off with an overclock. Super Shy will be taking map number one. Look at that. It's very convincing. Map number one at that. I think the Winston play versus the Diva. You always have to pay attention to that Winston having the bubble in order to show off the healing access, even just being able to protect the team. Like we saw that bubble on top of the Sojourn overclock. And it's a gr it's a great start for Super Shy to take. When we saw these two teams had against each other last time, Oasis went in favor of Ex Oblivione. So already Super Shy kind of switching the script switching the script and also the predictions because on paper ex oblivione should be blowing super shy out of the water and for that it's but super shy it's the synergy that really thrived at the end hitori and pack diving together sort of negating and also knowing how to disengage out of canile's ant matrix and yeah i just think super shy did a really good job in understanding the wind conditions of not only their team but the other team I agree with that. I think something that uh, is so uh, kind of underrated is the ability to just play together as a team in this meta. I, it's so tough, right? Because I think in the patch notes, we were really hoping that maybe there would be a little bit more room for individual skill expression. I think there still is, but maybe not to the same degree. Like the Tracer did get nerfed a little bit, uh, maybe not so impactful since we're still seeing the Tracer, but it's still very much like team synergy uh, oriented. So who has put in the legwork in order to get the better of this matchup? It was always going to be close. Mm -hmm. It really was like Pack and Shockwave made their own plays with the pulse bombs and then the range duels here and there where Zoro just had a really nice 3k overclock to finish the fight in Super Shy's favor at the end. And uh, yeah, Ex Oblivione tried to play the dance on the first round and then just lost the first fight and Super Shy just out thunk them too with kind of the Symmetra teleport plays. But we'll see <laughs> if Super Shy have the plan set as they have chosen to bring us to Hollywood. Okay, uh, really interesting to see like the ban onto Midtown and then like the, the ban into Paraiso. They did play Paraiso against each other last time. So maybe it's just kind of like, well, you know, we, we kind of don't want you to be able to go back to a map where you beat us. And I think for Hollywood as well, we're really looking at sort of limiting the opportunity for somebody like Don to actually play the are um sorry for Hitori to play something like the Winston uh, because that Winston looked really good when we take a look at it on City Center. <laughs> Hi Zoe, I hope you're enjoying your meal. Um, but yeah, just, <laughs> but just like just yeah, look, it's, like, it's like a little like a popcorn enjoyment for watching the the matchup. But yeah, I think like when you take a look at Paraiso, you get a chance to play the Winston a little bit more often to take advantage of the verticality that is offered on that first and second point. Uh, so shut that off right he told his winston looks so strong and that is something you don't want to give too much advantage to and that's why super shy pick hollywood is mm -hmm. to go to a winston favored map i think i could vault as another solid winston choice but you can play the point uh, as a rush v rush so i think hollywood is very strong for winston throughout even the point you play on that solid high ground you just let your dps po whether it's defense or offense that high ground that's that's both high grounds next to the point is ideal for that Winston. So this is where Hitori and friends of Super Shy are going to go to their comfort zone and have already started to upset Exo. I think too, when it's, a, it's really tough because like Twolls already had opted to play the Diva instead of the Winston. So I'm wondering if there is comfort to actually play the Winston in this matchup and how are you best going to be able to support that? Ex Oblivione, one of the greatest strengths of this roster is not only how much hard work they are willing to put in, but also their ability to play multiple different compositions. That being said, this is a new tank for them. Them. They were playing um, with Chase, I want to say, in this roster for stage one. And that was really where you saw a lot of their ability to play flexibly. Uh, so let's see what they got here. It's going to be a quick little Hanzo pick to see if you can maybe get a, a pick or maybe get some information. But it's back to the D. Nope. 
it was going to be the diva back to the Orisa. So that's the other thing about Hollywood that's so interesting, right? We talk about the Winston being able to play with the verticality on those points, but um, you can in fact play the Orisa here, despite Exibilione uh, <laughs> going, going through a rotating door of uh, heroes. Yeah, the Diva is a better pick because you need some high ground presence. You do. Without him, there was a there was gonna be a long road to just going yeah. up the staircase, maybe getting booped like, off. So yeah, like you can do it, but you're right. Like it's definitely a longer road to get there. Well, I guess once Exo just looks through the door, they get headshot. And Supercharge just playing so deep in to the point that Exo have to expose themselves to damage, and this Diva can't really peel if it's just gonna be a poke war. So. Hitori has done a good job of also just not being a target to peel against. Supercharge is winning off a poke. Poke is going to be tough. Like, you've got Zaro that's been really showing up on something like the Sojourn. And so how are you able to kind of deal with all of that damage? Tools is going to have to have his head on a swivel with this defense matrix. Hopefully eat up one of those charged railgun shots. But if you're busy dealing with Hitori, you might not be able to even try to do that when the bubble's also blocking... Uh, your ability to shield. Yeah, EXO are gonna come out with an amp matrix. Super shy. We're already playing next to cover, so it's a zoning tool for EXO to get the first take at the very least. EXO gotta be careful playing into tiny rooms against a Winston that's just gonna hold the choke against them. I would like EXO to play main, play on the high ground, and just take things slow and wait to react to, to Hitori rather than uh, get themselves blocked off by Winston bubbles and waste dead eyes, I guess. I, Deadeye is like barely ever gonna try to get picked, so I think it was a fine use to try to go for a zoning Deadeye. Gives a little bit of space here for Exoplivione to try to get back into the mix of things and maybe play a bit more reactively, like you said. Yeah, at least Exo react in the best way, uh, of running away from the Kitsune rush, except Shockwave got dove on by Hitori, forcing the immortality of Kanile, and Crispy tries to save him with the rally, and this allows Exo to have the sustain to punish Hitori on the primal. Now Soundbeer from Sobek only hitting two, Tekuno is getting shot at by Exo, who have now established themselves close to the point, so Super Shy don't have a safe area to stand on. And when they do, Twolls dives the high ground that Zora's trying to play from. And now we get to see Twolls really accomplishing this diva role so well, giving Exo uh, the point here shortly. There you go. So this is really where the power of that D.Va can come in. If you're able to isolate away something like a DPS or a support, something that's a little bit more squishy, D.Va does have that firepower with those micro missiles in order to finish off the job. Uh, plus, like with the defense matrix, you're able to soak up some of the healing you want to distribute and it's it's going to be really great. I love to see the Tracer tr just continue to try to push the payload as the rest of the team is going to play on this high ground and really gives us space for the payload to move. At least Exo Bliviani have a really good understanding of this point B. Just deny every high ground you can, and that's going to be the beauty of D.Va, of just being able to cycle from low to high all the time, while as Hitori, it's... Once they're in, they kind of are stuck in, and Super Shy got to be able to peel for Hitori. Really not peel for Hitori, but support Hitori on the dives. Um, Ex Oblivione go back to the point to uh, stop the flank here from Hitori and Pack, and uh, it looked like an easy road for Ex Oblivione. Still so making some meaningful progress. I think you have a chance to come back and recontest this twice if you're super shy, so not feeling too worried, but Ex Oblivione have that ultimate advantage for sure. This Deadeye is even more impactful if you're able to actually set up on the high ground. Maybe you do actually end up getting a chance to get a pick, but you gotta wait for all those cooldowns to expire on super shy before maybe even accomplishing that. But super shy aren't even gonna give that pressure over, just play on the slow ground. Holes has isolated um, themselves in the bar downstairs, in the saloon downstairs, and thankfully got, gets to keep the mech. Ex Oblivione were a little bit split, so they do regroup, manage to disengage from the overclock from Zoro. Now Supercharge back on the high ground, and this is something Ex Oblivione really want to contest. Twools spotted Zoro being low, pulls from pack at the back when Cripsy, uh, Cripsy, Crispy had his back turned as Ex Oblivione. Now hit one of their supports gone. Kanile's the only survivor, so Ex Oblivione can't be playing split, not with one healer. 
And then you just wait for Crispy to come back, especially with the rally coming up quickly. You want to be able to play together a bit more as a team, but Super Shy, they're not letting up the pressure. That's going to be that Kitsune rush on high ground. Well, self destruct from Tools, he'll get a second life, and next to Oblivione, it's a slow burn, but it does hurt nonetheless. Super Shy leaving the high ground, hoping to buy themselves another fight before the point B cap, but Tools won't even let you escape. This guy's on a hunt. Oh my goodness. I think you just gotta keep uh, stepping on the gas if you're the diva, because at this point, that card is gonna be reaching that checkpoint before they can come in and recontest, even though you had the primal rage to try to get there and bat everybody out of the way. It's gonna have to be a regroup and also a reassess of how they're gonna take this defense super shy. They have no ground to stand on right now. Tools is gonna continue to be in their face. Pools has really good measured aggression too. He's never going in too deep, and even when he did isolate himself once, like he got the mini and he was completely fine. Ex Oblivione have put a lot of trust into Twolls, who's died not, I don't think he's died at all on the whole point B push. The Ant Matrix, it's just been a zoning tool so far, and it gets them a push, but Twolls didn't get any support. And Cursed him. I know, I talked about how he didn't die, now he's dying. Now he's dying. <laughs> yeah, he, he cursed him. No, I'm just kidding. You're right, like, he really didn't get support for the rest of that push, and I think, like, once you lose that tank, Ex Oblivione did the smart thing, just back up. Bulls is gonna get back fast with those boosters, and this is where the rally can really come in clutch. There's very little high ground on this third point to actually play around, so you will all get a chance to stack together and get that over health, but, um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, ideally I'd like to see Kanile get more value out of these uh, these Ant Matrix as soon as Hitori dives in. Like, yeah, you're disengaging, but place the Ant Matrix as soon as Hitori jumps into you. Place it between you and Hitori, and that's going to be your safety blanket. Ex Oblivione could get some serious punish on Hitori if they can burst him down, but for an error, burst them down. It's Ex Oblivione ready for the rally, waiting for Super Shy to dive in first. Here's a retaliation, Takunu with the Katsune Rush, assisting Hitori on the dive as the flankers try to have an impact with the immortality from Kanile that at least gives Ex Oblivione an edge in that regard. For now though, Hitori dives in further with the sound barrier as plan B and Super Shy aren't really killing much. And you gotta applaud the Ex Oblivione supports for keeping this fight burning forever. Ooh, Tools is gonna be able to start to get it lead. The Diva Ball on point two. Nobody can come in and contest. <laughs> Poor Pack got smushed. Yeah, wow. Ex Oblivione <laughs> living through a Kitsune rush fight from Super Shy. Ex Oblivione lived through a sound barrier push from Super yeah. Shy. Like, this little dance that Ex Oblivione are doing is really good. It's super impressive. Like, uh, again, like when a team has a sound beer, usually you would end up saying they're going to win that one nine times out of ten. But not being able to convert that over speaks more volumes to how Ex Oblivione have been able to play together as a team. And that's where the Brigitte really comes into play. You give your Tracer a little bit of an edge with those packs and you're able to help keep the team together with all of that like rally over health and even just kind of the inspire healing. You have to play together as a team on that final point. You can't really afford to play 1v1. Now oh, Cloud and Shockwave, maybe I'm crazy. Are they swapping heroes? They're like training off on Tracer Cassidy duties. I don't know, but I know these are really flexible, talented players, so this will be cool. See how they will defend, because a, a 15 second cap, very respectable. It's a super respectable pace to set, and you have set a win condition on the board. But as Super Shy come out of the gates, let's hear their planning to attack this first point. So maybe mm -hmm. next time Four, you do that. Three, two, yeah. one. Attackers incoming. Oh, he's really yeah. <laughs> What's that man? <laughs> oh, bombed them back. Yeah. Sig. Yeah, they traded up there. That's uh, first map, first map. We can TP on them, baby. Yeah, 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 we can TP outside. Come outside. Come yeah. outside, yeah, buddy. Three, two, two one, one. one. No. No rock. Come take top. 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 I forced the sick to drop it, then we can move to TP. Kessler, Kessler. Should I tracer, should tracer. I really can't carry, should have tracer more. Kessler, Kessler, Kessler. Left, just a left. 
Tressa, 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 Lord. That's fine, that's fine, G. Let's get him. Go on, Cast Pig. Go on, Cast Pig. We can TP top. We can TP top. Come top, come top, come top. I can't, I can't. I'm split from you, I'm split from you. We take top, we take top. Tressa chasing you, Lord, you're alive. Tressa, TP him back, TP him back. Tressa one. Tressa one, Tressa one. I'm on that, um... I play point with you. I'm dead, I'm dead. Tressa one, uh... I'm trying to trade. Tressa, I think. Yeah, do we want to keep trying? Tressa, 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 I'm back in one. I can try. You can speed back. Better lift, better lift. Now I speed you back. Okay, uh, trying to coordinate off the sim TP is is a roller coaster. Hearing what Super Shy had to do that fight. Yeah, it's, it's so tough too because I think like uh, where are you actually going to be teleporting onto? You can't necessarily teleport onto the high ground. You, with the composition that Exoblivione are running, want to force them to come to you. Oh, oh, Chris! Oh, that works. Just got toasted. Oh my God! Super shy just teleported right onto him. So that's the call. Everyone was on board for Super shy. Now the next level, going to the other side, and maybe wanting to TP out of that because here's the ground flux. It does manage to put a dent into Hitori, but as a Ramatra, got enough health to go around. Super Shy will collect that first take. Still have the Animatrix up, so Exit Oblivioni couldn't contest till maybe this last uh, moment, but it's tough with the Sigma, who would prefer to be able to poke things down than brawl super close range, but Super Shy are okay with this poke war, especially with the photon barrier that pack has placed, and now the overclock from Zoro! The sound bear from Sobek to just support the team on the drive to kick EXO in the face, but somehow EXO are emerging from this nest and have managed to contest this final tick, and it's not going too bad. Yeah, it's the Brigitte. That's the power of the brig. Like, look at that. Poor Takuno just got swatted off of the high ground. And uh, while you do have the opportunity with the Symmetra to put the pressure onto Exo with that teleporter right in their face, and then Ramatra just moving forward, you still have to deal with all of that Inspire healing coming out from the brig. If they're all going to be clumped up like that, it's difficult to pick them apart one by one. So we are going to see a switch up of composition. There's only a minute left to capture this one third of the point so you're hoping to break apart this defensive stronghold with this dive exo are very happy because super shy used all of their best ultimates in the last fight and all exo had to do was not die they just hid inside the house and so to be fair didn't hit everyone from the team with the sound barrier so exo still were able to crack have a crack at them and super shy it's not been an easy road and it'll be even tougher now that you don't have Kiriko, you don't have Takuno in this fight, and Ex Oblivione are on the chase getting staggers and Hattori thinks they're safe in this corner and they're absolutely not. Exo are about to touch the spot room doors. I think it's just force Super Shy to have to come in staggered. I don't even know if they even have a great option to actually go touch the point and you're walking into a dead eye! Looking pretty dead. Wow. I thought Pac was going to die to that for sure and didn't manage. Uh, Hitori did not manage to touch in time. Ex Oblivione with a insanely one sided Hollywood there. Uh, yeah. So we're all tied up on one. And I. Um. I smell a map no five. Words. I guess yeah. is, is what I was saying. <laughs> Smelling another map five between these two teams. But this is what you expect out of Ex Oblivione. I think they were able on Hollywood to play to some of their strengths. Beating out Pariso was smart because you still are able to kind of like play the dive, but in your own fashion. They were playing with the momentum really well in their attack push. And then Twolls also gets to play the Sigma, which like was unbreakable. Yeah, um, I don't think the Symmetra from Super Shy was necessary. Like, they played Winston throughout most of that attack, and who are you escorting in? Like, you don't... Who are you it made sense with the too? rush. Like, yeah, it's, I like the photon barrier, so you're, you know, your DPS can just poke, but the, the, the whole point of playing Symmetra is the teleporter, and that worked out fantastically on the first map, Oasis, because you wanted to be close, you wanted to brawl, and you had the brawl hero for that. But with the Winston setup, and yeah, they eventually went to Ramatro, it's not like that helped. Uh, it's just, yeah, they, they looked coordinated on the teleports, but then they weren't killing more than maybe one person. Yeah, it's like the, the brig makes that really hard because you can whip shot somebody away, you can stun them with something like the shield bash, and then you also have the mag grenades, which, like, Ramatra's not 
uh, going to help shield the entire team like a Winston Bubble would in order to play that a bit more uh, from kind of like the front to back. So, uh, so super shy. They they get shut out. That, that was just a clean map coming out from Ex Oblivione. I think the KD also shows that along with the rest of the stats. But Esperanza is where we can start to see some of the Winston dominance again, I think. Or you could just go, you could go Arisa if you really want to, but uh, Hitori's Winston is really good. I'd imagine it's a, a horse battle between the two, but if Hitori goes back to the Winston, which I don't mind, because there are some high grounds to, some power positions to set up your Sojourn or whatever range DPS you pick, I just would rather see Super Shy go back to their city center comp of the Tracer Sojourn, which eventually they sort of went back to the Tracer and got rid of the Symmetra, but Super Shy were just pivoting to so many comps that then the old fights that they did have, which were very limited, Ex Oblivion Age just hid and lived through it, but we have to live through another break. We got to check in on one of our players, so we'll see what happens on Ishbronza after this. is tied one to one super shy though got the door shut on them but they're gonna make us wonder if this next map they'll be able to make it theirs each baranza is next when you see something like that happen on hollywood you just kind of go well then was map one a fluke or is it something that Super Shy is able to take advantage of a chaotic pace that something like a push or a control or flashpoint map gets to give you? It's so tough to call. So I think looking at Esperanza and how this plays out will give us an even better idea of what the rest of the series is going to look like. But we were pondering this before we went into the break. What kind of compositions we could see? It's going to be the Arisa hovered over for both of our teams. Uh, we'll see if Tool sticks with it, because uh, they kind of debated us quite a few times on Hollywood. Um, we should be able to stick with this, because even on Oasis, I believe they played D.Va and played like a more Peel style. Either way, um, even Exo played some Brawl too, but it will be Orisa Brawl. Sojourn versus Cassidy too. Okay, so that's always really interesting because I think when you play the Cassidy, it has a bit of a better matchup into something like the Tracer. But the Soldier, and this was something you wanted to see Super Shy go back to. Not only does it have that one pick potential with a charged railgun shot, but that power slide is just so good to reposition with the rest of your team. Yeah, you just got to get the charge up um, and you'll have more mobility as an exchange and Shockwave has only a small tumble and has a hinder, but are you going to be able to use that on someone like Pack? And for now, Pack has been already dispatched, and Super Shy have the number advantage out the gate, so good progress for them so far. And it was a good stagger there onto Shockwave and Cloud as well. Uh, so you're able to get some really meaningful progress on this push bot. But what you're really looking for 
is to be able to poke away now at any of these entry points that Ex Oblivion are going to take. And that one's pretty telegraphed. You're going to give up a little bit of this presence on the bridge, but you're trying to play around the central point just to give yourself some extra cover. Tiny Overwatch time. Tiny Overwatch into a tiny choke point too. At least Supercharger doing a good job of contesting this bridge, and we're hoping to get the drop onto Exo, and pushing Twolls down is huge. Super Shy have access to the back line, but Twolls got back in time. Super Shy didn't capitalize on that window of opportunity as Zoro is putting down good damage. Super Shy are not able to get progress despite playing this cat and mouse game with Ex Oblivione. It's at least Cloud that's trying to contest the bot as much as possible, but the spear hit him, and the stun was so nasty. Kanile hit the Suzu, but the damage still came in and killed them, and Super Shy are taking full advantage of this weakened state out of Exo. Yeah, Hitori's Arisa is also looking really good. Uh, I think, like, as you pointed out, like, Zoro gets to go back to a bit of more comfortable pick with something like the Sojourn, and it's really paying off with some of these more open sight lines that this map provides. Power Slide as well allows you to have that mobility to jump up to the high ground, make that rotation so you get a bit of a better angle, and all while we are checking out what's happening with this Lucio, there is a cap that came through. Ex Oblivione, nowhere to be found when all of this fighting is, is just happening on this high ground. They're just searing each other at the moment. There's... That's the impact of a tracer on on payload and on push maps of, of a huge role for the tracer is pushing the bot and contesting it and marking the other tracer. So it's a great job to get that forward spawn out of Super Shy. Kitsune Rasho from XO to overtake this 53 meter lead that the other team has along with the sound barrier. But XO are not really delivering on kills. And that's because Shockwave got pulse bombed at the beginning. It can't really help that. Cloud is doing his best. Sobek did him a favor and jumped into that pulse bomb. So EXO have started to even up those numbers, and Twolves is on a rampage, so EXO will maybe finally get to see some meterage. Yeah, but not after not we see you. a bit more stall come through from Pack. The forward spawns are still active for the time being, so Super Shy are going to be able to get back into this like relatively quickly. As I say that, I think Pack did, did get did get far spawned, unlucky. Uh, but it's still, it feels good to have the majority of Super Shy ready to take some action. Hitori is going to have this Terra Surge up pretty quickly, and Ex Oblivione had just used everything, so Super Shy just kind of set up to get another ultimate online to combo with that and go for the gold. Yeah, Zoro's had a bunch of charged up shot opportunities and just needs to give Super Shy that first pick. Next, so even in these 4v5 scenarios, I have made miracles. I guess it's not really a miracle, but I've turned around 4v5 <laughs> fights. So you can't, out, can't count out Ex Oblivione until everyone has been killed. So Super Shy, Hitori wants to be in a close-up position for maybe a Terra Surge surprise, but you don't want to just only drag the Orisa. You want to drag everyone else too, namely a Cassidy who can't roll out of it as easily. And Shockwave is going to be really close using the Deadeye, but Twos is making space. Hitori wanted the Terra Surge, but also just goes for the Spear Play to cancel the Deadeye out of Shockwave. Now a Terra Surge from Hitori gets Suzu'd by Takuno and the Katsune Rush to heal Hitori back to full. And this kind of coordination out of Super Shy has helped them make them so unkillable in these fights. And Max and Blivione are using a sound bear in a 4v5 to tilt the scales, and it's worked out. They've isolated Zoro, who missed the train home. Yeah, but it's not before the rest of Super Shy is back in the action. You saw the Fortify hit from Hitori, and it might even force out another ultimate from Ex Oblivione to try to finish the job. They've got the Terra Surge in their pocket as well as this Pulse Bomb, but do they feel the need to use it? Uh, it doesn't seem like that just yet. Oh! There you go. The pulse in the middle of the team got scary there. Super shy, the sound barrier has expired, and Exo are still trailing by like 25 meters plus, so it's uh, a lead that Exo still have to surmount. It'll be up to this Katsune rush coming up, or if they could survive the Zoro overclock. There is a chunky Orisa in the way, and removing tools would still be a good win condition. Deadeye from Shockwave to keep Super Shy up against the wall, and Exo. We'll have to back away with their tank being this weak. 
that almost looked like it would be a fight conversion because when we were at a standstill before, it was plenty of time to get some ultimates online from Ex Oblivione, but they felt like they had to pull the trigger on a couple of them to keep them in this fight rather than try to take an advantage. And it's not paying off. Super Shy still have the lead. We have less than four minutes remaining, and it feels like their backs are against the wall a little bit. Maybe the Katsune Rush is enough now to try to get them that advantage. It's a good call out of Kanaya. It was matched by Takuno seconds later, so Super Shy may have the late stage of the fight advantage to work with, but no one died. <laughs> this is just incredible healing out of Kanaya and Takuno. For now, Ex Oblivione are trapped against the wall. A Terra Surge should finish off Shockwave and Super Shy. Just have this battle horse of Hitori stomping down any competition that stands in front of them. And Super Shy will see even more progress here in a sec. What a nice combination of the Terra Surge into some low health targets, just pulling them also into the Disruptor shot from Zaro. So if it wasn't going to end up being the Terra Surge that finished them off, there's still all of that little dot damage that's going to come through there from that Disruptor. So a really great positioning here from Super Shy. They get to extend their lead now, but they don't even want to. They want to go back and take this defensive positioning over on that bridge, make Ex Oblivione come to them. The poke war will ensue. Great high ground position from Super Shy, as you pointed out. Ex Oblivione trying to ride through the side of the wall just to avoid damage if they can. Nexo escorting the bot as best as they can, and actually it's really only Twolls doing that, and he's eating so much damage, as you can tell. The rest of Exo are trying to follow along. Super Shy don't have a good target. The focus on, and Twolls draws them down from the bridge with the Terra Surge, and Super Shy's backline is missing. Cloud is just incredible on the Tracer, and Exo may just be able to start closing the gap in the score. They still have their work cut out for them, though, because they're going to need to win this next fight and then another one in order to secure this checkpoint. Uh, at least there's a little bit of a far spawn coming through from Super Shy, so maybe it's going to just be that one fight. But all that Ex Oblivione have to work off of is going to be this Deadeye as a good zoning tool, and then you also have another Kitsune Rush from Kanile. But where the going gets tough is that Zaro also has sight lines with an overclock ready to go. Okay, Pack will... Or it's Hitori, actually, but maybe Pac and Cloud faced off for bot control. Now, Exo won't be able to extend this until they win the fight, and it's up to this Katsune rush, but Zoro's overclock is too much! When his back is against the wall, he'll just bite back! And Exo are trying to escape and get into cover away from this absolute menace of a DPS. Now you got Cloud and Kanile's attention, and Zoro still stands. Exo did a good job of trying to stop the threat. But the threat was already delivered. The and Exo trip over their laces right before they could get the lead back. And they only have a minute remaining to try to do just that. No ultimates in the pocket. Maybe getting this pulse bomb online, but not before. We might see another deadly combination with this terror surge and the taxes pulse bomb for example so this could be final fight here jen and super shy could go up a map in this series uh, super shy will stay on the high ground and at any moment hitori could get the drop anyone who touches this bot could be in trouble from a terror surge and ex oblivione know they have to dislodge them and they've sent tools to do just that He's close to a terror surge himself and he needs all the attention from canile Pools will look back to see if his team is there. And Ex Oblivione pulled into a Terra Surge. Twolves can't escape with Spirit of Hattori! Super Shy close to a barrier too. Crispy, this is the last fight. They could turn a 4v5 around and Exo will make the call. But Super Shy are escaping with the bot. They're just going to speed away and split up. This could be a moment for Exo to converge on these islands of players. And Cloud is... Making the plays just has to finish off pack and Exo will have bot control, but this is overtime and Exo have a lot more fights to go to even try to win this map. Two more. They need two more fight wins. One is going to be here in the midpoint and then another one right at the finish line. They've got the ultimates to do it. Four in the bank. They've got to be smart about it, but it's going to be the Kitsune Rush first. A Kitsune Rush from Exo and nobody, or at least one person needs to stay on this bot. And Super Shy don't have Takuno. What a shot from Shockwave. The impact of his kills are definitely being felt, and Super Shy's sound figure is only buying them a life to escape with. Next, so still have someone contesting the bot. It's Pack versus Cloud. Come on, finish off your food. We don't have time to waste. Exo will chase off Pack in a late stagger. Exo will see progress. 
And that box, or that line of victory, I should say, is right in front of Axo. Super Shy will be able to contest. Here's Satori from the window. The rest of the team isn't there. The Katsune rush from Takuno to support Satori and the heels to keep this anchor alive for one last time. And Zora with the overclock needs to be huge. But Takuno's been terror surge. Super Shy are, only on, are already on a back foot, not having the heels they need to survive. Do they have someone at least contesting the bot? It has to be up to pack. Next up, Levione just can focus on their front line, devouring everybody from Super Shy. And what a turnaround we've seen from Max Oblivione to now go on series point. That was such a comeback. For most of that map, it was all on Super Shy to have the advantage to just keep Ex Oblivione from getting any more of that push bot progress, but it comes down to the wire. And that is just how close this match is between these two teams. History is repeating itself here, but right now it's going to be Ex Oblivione. They're steering down the barrel of being able to close out this series and move on to the main event. So Super Shy, they've got to get the themselves back into this one and it thought it would be the chaos that would really help him out <laughs> cloud and shockwave were just so clutch oh at the end God. even if it's just one or two kills that doesn't sound like something you'd make a montage out of but it's really the value of the kills that you get um just ma managing to get takuno out of the fight at the end super shy barely had any heals then zoro's overclock can't be as aggressive if you don't have someone constantly supporting you and pocketing you babysitting you and ex oblivione just totally took over the map just at the very end like at the last minute yeah i mean like uh, that pick onto takuno was really what i felt like spelled the disaster for the rest of that map because you started a stagger and that had a domino effect where we didn't see a, a super shy able to come back into those final moments even when you knew that there was going to be a little bit of a lapse once that bot hit that checkpoint they couldn't come in as a full team of five confidently enough to be able to get the job done even still ex oblivione had ultimates in their pocket that could have worked with like the terror surge the pulse bomb uh and the dead eye at the end of things but it was just like a great positioning all around there for ex oblivione to brute force their way through yeah, the poke wars were really fun to watch between the two. I still think like Super Shy had a really good understanding of the map, knowing to get the forward spawn, go back to the bridge, and, and just poke it out at the end. But then it's the DPS that have to step up, and Pack did still an incredible job contesting the bot and, and forcing the attention to be split out of Ex Oblivione. Cloud got the diff at the end. Maybe it wasn't even a 1v1 at that point. Um, and Cloud versus Pack, that's been pretty even, but at the end it was Shockwave and Cloud that got the really important picks, as we mentioned, onto the healers of Super Shy. Uh, and you could see in the stats just kind of how close this match really was. I was gonna say, like, KD is very similar. The only difference is that you could see just like Super Shy did in fact have the lead with a 5k damage difference between the two teams. But I think this is where we really get a chance to see kind of a difference in the tank role uh, I'm curious, like, overall, what, like, actually, I don't know if this is right, because they played, no, they played, okay, sorry, I got confused, because, like, they played Arisa, but then, like, I see the wind stand in the Vita. It's fine. Yeah, it's My fine. Brain. Um, yeah, at least according to our stats after map two, um, it was seven deaths for Hitori, Twills with one, and then we go to this one where the deaths are a lot more evened up on the Arissa side of things, if you guys can imagine that these are two Arissas. Uh, but just yeah, that's teams, for me. <laughs> um, just both teams, like through Kitsune Rushes, through Sound Beers, where like nobody was dying. I think that's why like the deaths are that low. Both tanks were just so well supported. They weren't like insanely aggro. They were very measured and it came off of who is going to get the first pick. And Zora wasn't it, very consistent at always getting that first pick, which Super Shy had a 25 meter lead for the longest time. But at the end of the road, Axo got the first pick and were able to tumble that into a win. Yeah, it, it was a uh, like you always can't you can't count out like a team like EXO until the Arisa sings. I guess maybe is is how that will go for us. But, <laughs> and heading over to Suravasa, this is a map advantage for EX Oblivione. If they win this map, they get to move forward to the main event. So it's on Super Shy right now to try to tie up the series and bring us into a map number five. Suravasa now, but we saw on that map set that Shambali Monastery would be the deciding fifth map, uh, which is Exo's pick. So maybe 
reading into the tea leaves a little bit about how we might see that match going, but it's an interesting look as of right now to kind of see what these teams want to go with. I feel like more Arissa is what we typically see on Suravasa. Winston not having the same type of impact, knowing the amount of verticality that's offered on this map, but here you go. But you also feed into, I thought Pack was going to go Symmetra. They must have just completely hated how they approached that on Hollywood and do not want to risk it again. But this would have been a solid. Is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth it? You couldn't make it work it. Uh, but Pack, I thought that would have been a cool shot that's very meta on this map. But going up against, tra uh, playing Tracer against Cloud, Pack actually out damaged him by 1.1k. So not too bad uh, for Pack against Cloud. But who will get the first pick that can really open up this point? Twools versus Hitori for the contest. Twools in a less healthy position because he's also got the attention of this Tracer on his back. And you got Cloud marking him a bit better. So Pack goes back to his back line. And Super Shy may just be giving up the cap here in a second. All right, but Shockwave, Zaro, they had an opportunity here to try to make a difference for their team, but Zaro's going to be the one that gets picked first. So Ex Oblivione, uh, they can draw out this fight and keep up racking up that percentage. Ow, just Ooh, it's even. a pain train out of Hitori just to walk towards them with the javelin spin. And Ex Oblivione are still behind Super Shy, who are still trying to regain that space. Like, Super Shy had put a good dent into Ex Oblivione's team and forced them to spl split all off, forcing all these 1v1s, but Super Shy regained control. It was a very patient play, just kind of waiting for that opportunity to walk onto Twools, surround him, and then take him down to try to get that damage. We actually saw Hitori walk past him for a second to try to go after Crispy instead, who was very low. But as soon as you get that healing out of the fight, then take out the Arissa. So Super Shy now able to try to match some of this percentage from Ex Oblivione and start to work towards some of these ultimates. I expect these Kitsunai Rush to get layered on top of each other, but both sound barriers are in line as well, so it's about how many ultimates we actually see come out of both of these teams. It's just been really long fights too. It's just a chess match of which pawns are going to be moving up to claim the kings and queens and Takuno headshot by Shockwave. You just can't have that happen. But Shockwave has made those big plays just like he did on Esperanza. Now he's jumping into the enemy team. That's when you know Shockwave's feeling himself and Ex Oblivione will be claiming back this point. But if they give it up at any point, Super Shy will win the that first point. But there wasn't many ultimates being used at all. Like Ex Oblivione, that was like very very cheap. They only had to use the overclock from Shockwave, and now they get a chance to play a, a little bit more forward to get some poke. But Super Shy is actually kind of taking the long way around. Actually, they only smell this though. They're gonna head back to the point so they can get that damage down onto this large entry route. But take a look at this as a split push. Pack is gonna try to take an off angle to get into this fight. You gotta watch out for that Suzu from Kanile. He uses it at any point. This pulse bomb could be big. That Suzu is the only thing that could deny this, unless you, unless you just miss it. But Crispy says, "I'll catch Hi. it." Who dropped this? <laughs> pulse bomb clips Crispy. No sound barrier for this fight, and that was a big win condition for Ex Oblivione. At least they can depend on Twolls to maybe get a Terra Surge going, and Ex Oblivione disengage slightly just to re-engage again off of the terror surge Swoles draws them in hitori against Swoles, where hitori has the edge right now in terms of health sound barrier now the crispy is back axel bought enough time for that to overwhelm super shy who have now given up the point ex oblivione just chasing down the kills they have cornered super shy but actually need to execute them or else super shy are going to contest forever ex oblivione actually reclaim the objective and now the dust is settling, and Ex Oblivione will be taking the first point. Now oh, they're so expensive on both sides. We kind of like expected that after Super Shy had to use everything in the kitchen sink to get back control from Exo, but another big clutch from Ex Oblivione. When their backs are against the wall, they're able to do some magical things, kind of like what we saw in Esperanza. So maybe we're in for a bit more of that as we head over to the next flashpoint. Ex Oblivione have done enough work to get this overclock from Shockwave back online. So that could be a bit of an advantage that they can use here as we head over to Palace, uh, or Temple, sorry. Uh, a couple big windows for this Sojourn to play around, which is going to be difficult to hide from that damage. Uh, capping the point first can also be tricky. The other team can retaliate by just surrounding you and picking off your backline, and 
forcing you to just go cross-eyed trying to figure out which which entry to pay attention to. Naxo will claim the point first. Super Shy have already lost the Tracer duel, so a 4v5 is difficult for them to turn. And the Javelins can get these surprise environmental kills, and Shockwave is lucky there was a wall behind them. <laughs> hey, you can all... <laughs> You gotta pay attention to what's behind you, but that is going to end up being a Katsune rush from Kanile just to solidify this fight. I'm curious why Tekuno felt like it was a good idea to try to get back into it with the Katsune rush. Maybe not yeah, expecting fun. the burst damage to come through onto Hitori, honestly. Hitori was also split from the rest of the team, so I wonder if the Katsune rush was like, how, well, how about we rush back to Close the gap, yeah. <laughs> Let's sprint towards each other, maybe, and find God, I don't know, but Exemplifione are now 70% plus, and they look pretty untouchable. They got a sound barrier, Terra Surge, just as very much favoring Exemplifione, depending on if Pac can hit the edge against Cloud. Which Pac might have out damaged him last this last map, now. but for now Cloud looks firmly in control of this duel. Now you got the overclock from Zoro to help Super Shy flip the point, and they're successful at doing that. Yeah, not for long though, I feel like, because you've got the sound barrier as an engagement tool if you want it. I think Twol's also just uh, looking to be in a position to help make sure that Shockwave can still pop off, but Shockwave is under pressure. We've seen that health bar dip pretty low. Maybe it's going to be Pac that's trying to uh, keep him busy in the back line, but here's the Terra Surge. Oh, that got Exobolivion a pretty low sound barrier will help against the responding Terra Surge of Twol's. Now you got the Katsune rush from Exobolivione, one that Tekuno did not have ready in time. And Exobolivione will be going into round point, series point in a few seconds, putting a lot of weight and stress on the shoulders of Super Shy. And Super Shy, they, they have to make sure that this Katsune rush gives them even a bit of momentum. But Exobolivione have won out the ultimate trades. They're finding more value with the ultimates they're throwing at these fights. And they're being way more economical when it comes to how many they need to use in order to actually get these fight wins. So walking into this next flashpoint, they've got the pulse bomb. They also have this overclock. And that's just so much damage and pressure. Super Shy are also going to block them at the door. We're gonna take this fight here. Oh boy, Super Shy. They have the Katsune Rush advantage and they'll need to deal with Shockwave. They don't have a sound bear or something to negate that. I guess they have the power of just hiding <laughs> and just not being in line of sight, which works out perfectly well. That's even more ideal. You don't have to waste resources. As Takuno and friends of Super Shy hope to find an angle onto Ex Oblivione, forcing the jump out of Shockwave to get into cover. Katsune Rush, they just gotta go for it. At the very least, Super Shy will get a point cap out of it, but you'd like to get more done out of this Katsune Rush. But Exo, they just disengage so well, so Super Shy are out of options besides the Pulse Bomb. And you can't really depend on that against a Suzu from Kanile that could come out. Cloud, same thing for him. Pulse Bomb could be the first pick potential or the so or Sojourn or Cassidy's could do that. For now, this Super Shy barely in control of this point, hoping to keep these flankers of Cloud at bay. Super Shy starting to get weak though. Hitori brought back to full. Exo are just this close to flipping the point. Super Shy have been so stubborn in that regard. Cloud looking for the pulse and he just backhands pack. Now he's in the back. Places the pulse bomb. And you gotta say goodbye to Takuno and friends, the healers of Super Shy, that will drop this to Exo. Force the Swiss step into the rest of Ex Oblivione, and now you get to match that progress and then some. We are on the cusp of Ex Oblivione sending Super Shy home and getting to move on to the main event. You've got this overclock to keep everybody on Super Shy at bay, and you've got this Terra Surge and, and Sound Barrier. If everything is coming up Ex Oblivione right now, if Super Shy can't get back in this. Oh boy. 80% last fight for Ex Oblivione, as you said, Sound Barrier. How do you play this? I think against the Katsune Rush, ideally, that I to zone the point. Tools is gonna eat a lot of it. Oh, actually, Javelin Spin, I'm able to negate that. And Shockwave out in the open with the overclock. He's got the peel of Cloud looming about to keep Pack Mark and in his place. Sex Oblivione can always rely on the Terra Surge to line up the pins for Shockwave if needed, but Cloud gets shut down on the flank, and Super Shy have a one man advantage. Here's Hitori. 
with the Terror Surge along with Twirls doing the same thing. Fully charged to zone the point. Exo fighting tooth and nail for this. But it's Super Shy that have control and Exo are not really able to break it right quite yet. Super super shy forced Ex Oblivione to use a bunch of ultimates there that finally didn't get a chance to find some value. He told her every resource on the team being pumped into them to keep them up for that big terror surge just to finish off this flashpoint. And now they finally have some skin in the game. We're heading to the next flashpoint and super shy buy themselves another life in this series. But we are going over to Palace. It's a little bit more open. Maybe we want to take these fights into some of these rooms on the side, but uh, I'm looking at the fact that we've got a Kitsune Rush from Kanile to open things up for Ex Oblivione and potentially get them this Flashpoint capture first. Zoro peeling against Cloud with a tilt of the scales in that last fight, keeping, giving, giving Super Shy another chance at this Kitsune Rush. Kanile has been building these faster than Takuno, so this has been the advantage that Exo can work off of, but Super Shy's disengage is just that strong, and how fast can they run away now? Kitsune Rush, Exo Oblivione, with a commanding march towards Super Shy, already taking care of Zoro. But it was only Zoro. A glass half full kind of scenario. Super Shy 4v5, it's not impossible. And Pack manages to dash out in time. Exo Oblivione, they're on the chase though. Yeah, they want to pick up these picks because the more that they can stagger out this Super Shy recontest, the more progress they get a chance to have. The Kitsune Rush, though, gets Super Shy back in. The fact that Cloud could recall there, very, very lucky. Once you get Jab Wind, you're toast. And look, Kanile being a great example for that. Terra Surge stomping down the rest of these low HP targets from Ex Oblivione, and Super Shy will have the point. And they also still have the ultimate advantage they were able to grab when we were on Ruins. Uh, Deadeye really not going to be as impactful, but the sound barrier from Sobek can come in so clutch. Uh, it's just tough because your backs are still up against a wall if you're super shy, where you've got to play this out perfect. Not too many routes of entry that Super Shy can take where they're not gonna, or, or Ex Oblivione can take where they're not gonna be able to uh, kind of defend themselves from this damage, but they're rushing into this one quickly. Oh, Ex Oblivione trying to converge together off the sound barrier. I've already kicked Zoro down. That's one of the most vulnerable targets that you can reach on Super Shy. So Ex Oblivione have a good understanding of their win condition and we'll be able to take the lead back in a second. Yeah, Twills just walked past the front line, straight to the back line. If you've got the Terra Surge on lock, why not try to get a squishy target out of the way? Especially when Zoro has had so much individual impact in this match so far. Now, the, the hiding is still on the table, but how much is it going to actually provide value? You can zone Ex Oblivione back, but Ex Oblivione are on the cusp of being able to take this point and the series, and Super Shy have no choice except to play from the point. Deadeye from Zoro just to guarantee this cap. It's good use of it. Ex Oblivione now can re engage with the Katsune Rush right through the choke. Pack is dead. 5v4 advantage for Exo, and they only need to win the one fight to take the map in the series. And Super Shy can't afford. They can't afford this 4v5. They gotta turn it around off the Katsune Rush. But that spear from Tools was insane. Hitori removed. No front pillar for Super Shy to lean on. Ex Oblivione, though, they're losing the DPS battle uh, against Zoro and Pack, who are clutching up for Super Shy. And this is also within one fight territory for Super Shy to force a final point, and it's slowly going their way. Now you can see why Zoro was so much of a focus for Twolls, because Zoro just flipped this back over for Super Shy. They're going to be able to get this Flashpoint. No recontest can come through for Exo, and it is going to come down to that fifth and final Flashpoint. It's going to be Gardens, and... Ex Oblivione, they're already there. They they know what they've got to do. Set up on some of this high ground and try to take this control back of this map and this series. The Super Shy, they're making it really difficult right now, especially knowing that they're working up to some of those ultimates of their own and they're playing from the power position of the point. That Terra Surge. If these Cassidy's play too close, they could be drawn in. And see, Tori was looking for it. Oh, he gets pulsed and thrown into the enemy. Like... Uh, Shockwave was just enemy number one and played too close, but Super Shy, really good ident identification, killing that Cassidy, 
And Super Shy want more than that, but that's all they're really gonna get. All right, Shockwave is gonna switch over to the Cassidy to try to get back into things. It's gonna be a quick disengage, though, for Mexilivione as they buy their time for their fifth to come back. Heading into this though, with the sound barrier as well as this terror surge, but Takuno is gonna have this Kitsune rush online first. Dead eye from Zoro. Ex Oblivione, gotta be careful. Javelin spin to help tools get into a safer position. Need that damage is a good job. Super Shy have bought themselves some time. Here's the re-engage from Exo, running into the Terra Surge of Tools there. And the sound bear to support the frontline bash. Tools and friends taking space and another pulse cloud is incredible. And Exo just have to finish off what they started. Hitori is getting healed back to full. Tekuno doing everything they can to make this 4v4 still possible. Shockwave will be back on the Sojourn, but Exo are just losing steam. They got no wind in their sails anymore. It was a fire start out of Exo, but that has quickly been dimmed. Hitori, once they were brought back to full, just were an anchor that Exo could not get out of the water. And we're seconds away from Super Shy forcing a game five and Rex! Just sealed the deal, the kiss of death. Exo will wave goodbye to Suravasa, and we go to game five. Oh, yeah, that pulse stick was sick. You got the stick, and then both of them had to sh shoot into the point, like with the power slide and the amp it up. They killed each other, did some damage to the front line in the terror surge, and then that's all she wrote. Holy pack, just cl absolutely clutched that. That was We're a really tough... Uh, it was all about Super Shy having control of that point first. And then it comes True. to how you deal with the LOS, where um, Exo kept trying to put Shockwave in a position where he could actually shoot something, but as soon as he was close enough, pulled in by Terra Surge, booped by a Lucio, pulsed by a oh Tracer. God. Like, that poor guy. <laughs> I, like, honestly, just everything uh, coming up poorly for, for that particular player. It's like... What can you do, though, when the enemy team is making your life and your job so hard to accomplish? But I can't believe it. 82% of chat, by the way, predicted that Ex Oblivione were going to win. And it did look like that was going to be the case, especially early on in that map of Suravasa. Exo, they start out with a really good lead, but super shy. There is a reason why this map at the or this matchup at the very beginning of the group stages ended up going to a map five. And we're back where we started, Jen. It all comes down to this fifth and final map. And this could decide whether Exo Vione go to the main event or not. In last stage, Exo finished top three. For Exo yep. to not go to the main event would be a crime. It would be a travesty. It would be the biggest upset of the group, uh, of this group. I said the only upset that could happen. So Super Shy, they just know when the clutch up. Zoro has been either always dead first or the one to have the first pick to drive Super Shy to a fight victory. This group has already looked so incredibly tough. I, I think this might be the group of death. You had a space station that already was able to get out of this group stage. Ex Oblivione went down 3-0 to them in that winner's match. And now Super Shy, once again on the cusp of getting an upset versus Ex Oblivione. I feel like it was destined for these two teams to potentially meet up against each other again, but this is a very, uh, very big difference in these wow. KDs. Wow, just... Maybe not what you would expect when uh, the Super Shy came out on top. Yeah, like very similar damage mitigated, very similar damage dealt. And when you see the deaths be very different, that's when it comes down to focus fire. And this was very, very, very close. Went to the final point and we're going to game five. And this is chosen by Exo. Shambali Monastery, very good for the rush and long range DPS. So Exo want to go back to an Arissa mirror, it may seem. It does seem that way. I think you could also potentially run the Sigma on this map. We have seen that out of a couple teams, the Ramatra as well. You're going to be playing something though that gets up close and personal with the other team. And I cannot wait to see how this match is going to end. We are going to find out the conclusion after this short break. So don't go anywhere. You're watching the OWCS.
him! Stable, stable, stable! I'm backing, I'm backing, I'm backing! Just live, 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 I'm back in, I'm back in! 3, 2, 1, okay, okay! Oh, Arisa, 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 Arisa! Arisa, Arisa, Arisa! Oh my god! Oh my god! They're so they're so excited, and okay, I'll also give credit to Hitori's Terra Surge to set up pack to group everybody up into uh, a pulse bob. That was incredible. I love that. I, I, everybody was uh, there for the party. I just don't know if EXO wanted to be on the res on the on on the <laughs> seat of honor for that one <laughs> so comes down to this shambali monastery to decide everything and it looks like for exoblione being on the defense we are gonna end up seeing the rematra composition but oh my god jen we got a throwback to the overwatch world cup cloud coming out on that signature may that was able to take his team so far through that world cup even though he's really well known for the tracer that he's been able to train up throughout emea contenders when we have that circuit this this may has always been so much fun to watch yeah, he's been one of the best, especially when it comes to Icicle first picks. Like, everyone talks about Mei and the impact of the wall, and he <laughs> uses that to divide the fight very well, but can't deny the damage that EXO have with him in the lineup. So, a Widow just to see who would be peeking early. EXO... I'm sorry I didn't want to go with a spawn room hold with this composition, where you can't really use the Mei while once Super Shy are just out in the open like that. They're gonna try and duel. Maybe a first pick can lead EXO into pushing Super Shy back to spawn, but you're also trying to keep track of where the Symmetra Teleporter is putting Super Shy, which is on the other side of EXO, which they managed to not really get baited by this. The Super Shy maybe only sent Pack back there, but it was really only a ruse, and EXO didn't fall for it. Oh, it's gonna be a bit of a tussle still by the point. Like, this payload hasn't been able to go anywhere. Maywall being used defensively, but not before Hitori is already gonna be taken down a little bit low. Some big burst healing, though. But a uh, coalescence already coming out from Ex Oblivione to keep this defense alive. So far, yeah, spawn hold is working out. That is an evil eye, and that is terrifying. That is so <laughs> creepy. Eye of Sauron just chasing you. And it's, no, no, it's healing. Come back. But I have now been distracted. Uh, super shy. Trying to distract themselves from not being able to move from spawn until Hitori goes for the Annihilation and just runs at everyone of Ex Oblivione. And that is a tough, uh, tough take to stop in that moment. Uh, Hitori had taken so much damage over time. We, we ended up seeing like Sovek and Takuno have to pump so many resources to make sure that Hitori was kept up. Uh, but using the Annihilation now means that Exploione is going to have that advantage heading to this next one. So Zaru has an opportunity to maybe set up a bit more behind the team. And as his payload starts around the corner, this is where this overclock can really pop off. If you hope so. It's a tough uh, place to go just based on the LOS is pack and friends are super shy maybe teleporting people on the flank and EXO are gonna retaliate by just counter rotating to the upper the other side so now the offense is where the defense should be and you know you get it now it's the overclocks so Zoro gonna dash in away from everybody and has now access to this back line and Kanael and Crispy in trouble managing to find some cover and Sobek peels for Zoro very well and the blizzard place from Cloud to read some space for this defense, but Super Shy have just not lost anyone. Gotta thank the sound bear from Sobek in that regard, and the Ant Matrix. A ton of ults have come out, and Super Shy have brought this down to less than 90 seconds to get things done. It's still a very admirable amount of time that Ex Oblivione have taken off the clock, uh, and they're still getting that stall as Cloud is gonna be the last player standing to just keep that ice block going. But the Here's the biggest issue. Is that Super Shy rounding this corner only with the Annihilation? And this area is so open. Shockwave is set up in the back with this overclock. How do you access him as the rest of the team is going to step up to the plate? And if you get stuck here, it is not good. So Super Shy got to get it done now. Yeah, I think Super, Super Shy can just hide from it. And oh, never mind. Zoro says. I got hands, I'm ready to throw them, and gets killed, so I would have liked Super Shy to zone away from the overclock, force Shockwave to jump in, and then uh, counter in that 
in that situation, but Super Shy taking a lot of damage, but hoping that the Annihilation from Hitori made a big enough den, made enough space. Once Cloud is out of the picture, Super Shy will be capping, unless Saxo barring some kind of miracle here, but yeah, Super Shy will cap. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it could be a little bit more of a stagger. Twolves does come back on the Doomfist just to try to deny the point a little bit longer, but that was all the time they had off the bank. So Super Shy now, they, they're kind of working with a bit of their backs against the wall. This map is heavily defensively favored. So Ax Oblivione actually had a shot there to just kind of stop this cart before it was able to grab that first checkpoint. And they still have a decent shot to stop this payload from getting any more progress. They have this blizzard ready to go, which, uh, you know, last time I checked, fits this whole area nicely if you just play on the payload. Yeah, Super Shy are at a time deficit, so these next fights need to be quick and easy, but it's been anything but that when you got a coalescence where the sun don't shine. So Super Shy will try to come out and emerge with the sound bearer, and that's the resource advantage that they can play off of an XO. Totally did not see this coming. Two fell over instantly when Super Shy had the jump on him, and now they'll get themselves halfway to B. But that's still a minute off of that clock because these fights are just so long and they're so scrappy. So by the time that you're rounding this corner, this could be the final fight that Super Shy get to take unless they're able to extend that time bank by capturing the second point. There's a bit of a setup here from the Symmetra turrets. There's the amplification matrix as well to buy some time. And this card may be able to find its checkpoint before Ex Oblivione can come back in. But they've got the sound barrier to re-engage now that that amplification matrix has expired. Oh, 0.3 meters, and it's only tools contesting. Yeah. I love that amp matrix from Tekuno. It bought very crucial meters, and that forces Axo to have to take the court or the fight next to the court in Cloud. At least drops the blizzard before they pass away. And Super Shy, it's, they're already distance away enough, but they're not necessarily winning that. There's better cover, better shelter from Axo playing behind this cart here. And Super Shy thought that it was in the bag, and it was not. No, I mean, wait. Unless? Zaro? Hello? This guy's the goat. I don't know. Honestly, is the goat. Like, I. Okay. I, I mean, still kind of the goat, to be fair. So that <laughs> is going to be the checkpoint denied, but this is what we were talking about. There is not enough time for this team to come back and contest as a full team of five. We saw the Malga come out from Hitori, so at least you've got some more point presence if you're gonna give up the Ramatra, but you're running out of time. And there's a Coalescence waiting for you as well as an Annihilation. Canal's gonna be a really Ooh. big key here for Twolves to not get taken down. Twolves in trouble, and the Malga swap is perfect. Close range, rolling man to man, and super shy is just that goaded and Zoro gets all the freedom in the world to take off three in this fight to save Super Shy. Oh man, Exo fall over their laces and Super Shy. It's still only have 90 seconds to go to the end. It's right in the nick of time though. It doesn't matter if it's overtime, you still are able to try to capture that next objective. You are stuck on the Malga though. The, I mean, like, it's still good. It, even though we did revert those uh, super Malga changes, you're still able to have that up close and personal pressure and just so much DPS output. With the Symmetra Ultimate on line two, this is splitting the team and splitting the fight. Yeah, Super Shy going to stick to one side mostly and have great protection in that regard. Exo, as soon as the sound, I wonder if they're going to wait for the Annihilation for the sound barrier. And well, let's see what Shockwave can do. What up against a sound barrier? It's a good counter from Sobek and Super Shy. 37 seconds, Annihilation and Sound Barrier, that could be a deadly combo and Super Shy would have to focus everything into Tools in that moment. Tools with the Annihilation first, Sound Barrier second, Super Shy don't want to fight, they want to escape and Pack provides that taxi away as much as possible. It's Super Shy outpoke Exo when they were getting desperate for kills using the Annihilation Sound Barrier. So Exo should have just stayed on their island and now Super Shy have a two-person advantage in this last fight, and now that Cloud is staggered, this should be a Super Shy cap. Yeah, especially because you've got the cage fight right on the point. Nobody can step in unless you want to be in the end of a disaster, and it's going to be Canal that gets taken down first. 
At least Exo brought this to overtime, which is just the best thing you could hope for in that moment. But they had such a good combo. And they were trying to chase down the teleporter, thinking Super Shy were within arm's reach. But Exo losing that fight is what cost them the entire map. Oh, man. I'm just thinking about the cage fight on point. Like, like what do you do? You're going to get stun locked if you move in. Then you just get apparently taken out there by uh, Tekuno. A full map completion is, is just like, it's so... It's so big. It's already a very defensively favored map, so Super Shy, they've like they've set their line in the sand. Can Exo actually finish the map? Can they get past this first point? That's like step number one in a very long journey. That is a long journey. And Super Shy completing the map may have just set themselves up for success. After what looked like it was giving full cap vibes or, or full held vibes based on how long and treacherous point A cap even was for them and how impactful Shockwave was on that defense at the beginning. But then Zoro took over on point B with these off angles and even the Takuno amp matrix to enable him. Like Super Shy are a very fun team to watch despite not having as long of resumes uh, compared to EXO. <laughs> I mean, they've taken EXO to a map 5 before and they've done it again. So I think we can't count Super Shy out of this fight because they have bought themselves a win condition to move on to the main event and send EXO home. But it all starts here on Exoblivioni's attack push. They've got to be able to get past this first point and that's a great start. That Maywall was so gross, like in the best of ways from Cloud, isolating the Sim and the Super Shy just in half in general. EXO will be able to break out of the spawn hold w within the first couple seconds or first 30 seconds. So that's really good already an advantage in terms of time for Axo. Yeah, and, and you just start to get a bit of a lead when it comes to building up those ultimates as well. Hey, Shockwave is already like, what, 36 away from being able to get a overclock. Canal as well is going to be the first support ultimate on the board with that coalescence. And it's really nice to have when you're in these streets phases of Shambhali. So. Oh, <laughs> and Tori came down. Yikes. Oh my god. Just the uppercut right into Shockwave, who almost escaped around the corner. Hitori, just almost a team ace to themselves. Crazy. <laughs> Super Shy, that was an important hold, because now they can play this corner, they can play the high ground, and this is a tough fight for Exo to take. And that's the big key when you have that close defensive hold is that you buy yourself two chances to come back and contest again if you lose that hold. So now Super Shy, yeah, a great defensive position for them. And they can guarantee themselves another contest if this one goes poorly. Wow. Axo just ignore the high ground and take over the corner that Super Shy could have played from. But Hitori is still contesting. Guys, guys. Exo, go shoot for Matra. Hitori is contesting. This is precious time going away. And the coalesces from Kanile is trying to give tools an upper hand against Hitori, who is still back there. And Exo Blivione also don't want to get flanked. Shockwave is doing their best to have an off angle here against Hitori, who's behind the cart and is, has annihilation. Sobek has sound barrier. If they can fight each other, they may just find success. But Hitori may not even need it. Where is the rest of Super Shy? Okay, maybe it was just Hitori. I don't know, but in the back line. now. <laughs> no, it, it's just, they're in the back line. Like, Pac just picked up Shockwave. They're actually forcing Crispy to use the sound barrier here, which is such a critical ultimate to have, knowing you only have a minute and a half left to finish up this first point. But ex Oblivione, they have to push an advantage here, because if they get stopped again, that could be the end of this map for them and the end of their tournament run. They're able to break through the defensive hold for now, but not before Super Shy come back with reinforcements. Oh, at least Sobek saving that sound bear for this fight could be even more important. They're going to use it to engage with a good Maywall from Cloud to make that engage even slower. And Shockwave backs away. His whole ult is negated by a Photon Bear from Pack, But no one dying from that. Now Exo have Annihilation. So does Hitori. And Matrix from Takuno can force Exo around the corner. It all depends on how Exo react to this Ant Matrix. Maybe the first pick will just be without ults. It's... Shockwave getting packed, rounding this corner. You just don't know where this Sojourn could be. 
and the blizzard was nice, a nice space creator, but now against the Annihilation, it's a dance between Super Shy and Axo with 31 seconds left. This is one of Axo's last chances. And it might just be their last. They're all gonna get staggered here because that's Tools down, Cloud as well, and it's a stagger onto Shockwave before you have to traverse this entire first point to get back to the cart. 15 seconds left, and there might not be a soul in sight to get this overtime activated. Supershine might have done it. They might just send Exo home, and Kanile might be the final nail in the coffin. And this could be the biggest upset of the group stage, and someone has to touch and. Crispy, okay, reactivates the overtime wick, but who is next? Cloud isn't there, and neither will Exo in the main event. Congratulations to Super Shy. Super Shy did it. What an upset. 84% of chat was with Exoplivione to get this match win. But when it comes down to the rematch, Super Shy got their revenge. And they're moving on, Zoe. They do. I can be happier for them. What a great match we got treated to again. First time they faced off against oh in God. the group stage was in their opening match. They took it all the way to map number five. And you said it at the beginning of this one. It is likely going to happen again on a slightly different patch. Does not matter for either of those teams. I was extremely impressed with the DPS duos on both sides. I feel like they've put up heroics time and time again on Surabasa there. It was just so many highlights worthy moments so let's walk through some of the best ones again at, uh, as we revisit this match and discuss how they got it done super shy coming out on top of this one yeah i can't believe axo just they they got so stressed at the very end in that last fight they did not take care of hitori was contesting the cart forever exo just went cross i just knowing where to take that fight and it, it was really back and forth it, i was gl glad to see the winston out of hitori do the work that it did tools had the counter with the diva on one of uh, their comfort picks and went back and forth kanaya had a uh, more quiet uh, first half of the series but then really picked it up in the second half it's so interesting to see how back and forth this series was because I feel like in any given moment we were looking at those individual impacts whether it was like crispy just having these great whip shots on the Rito or flip side Hitori being able to hit a Terra Surge I think every single player in this 5v5 was able to deliver a like a highlight reel for the ages there were indeed and I am honestly super, super excited already to have a post-game interview with our winners because, quite frankly, uh, it was so great to hear from them last week. And they wanted this rematch so badly. They were prepping for this. They knew they can get it done. They came in with confidence. And I think it really translated into the performance they showed us today. For sure. I think it was like it is so palpable the amount of hard work that Super Shy put into this. Because even though Ex Oblivione were up two maps in the series, the grit that Super Shy had to show on Suravasa to even make it to this map five, and even in a map that like I quite honestly I look at on paper and I go, I feel like we just see Ex Oblivione have an upper advantage. You've got Cloud on this May with the Rumatra. It just feels like such a boon to add to a composition like this. And Super Shy instead show us that the power of the Symmetra just tied away from the damage, have those big teleporter moments. It was so amazing to watch, Jen. Yeah, it really came down to the coordination. And Super Shy, you heard it in the comms, especially on Hollywood, where uh, they knew where to go with the Symmetra, and even when there wasn't a Symmetra. Like, you heard it in the winning comms for Suravasa, the Terra Surge, the Pack 3 k Super Shy knew that they could beat Ex Oblivione, and that belief just led them to this confident victory. Let's actually listen in to the end of this last map to hear how they got it done. Hold close, just hold close. Hold this one, hold here, hold here, hold where I am. Maybe where I am. Cam, no, 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 no,
friends and we do have Sobek joining us now for a quick chat so first things first congratulations you got the dub you got the revenge how did you edge it out this time around because the first match was already a very very close series did you make any adjustments any adaptations based on uh how the match went in your opening match in group a um, well, honestly, I think it was just down to the comps. Like, uh, first time we went against them, I think we were cooking a bit too much. So we had to, you know, had to lock in a bit. Uh, so I think it's probably mostly down to that. But yeah. And what what was your perspective going up against Ex Oblivione, who have so many, like, well-known names in the scene, and y'all are just starting to blossom and, and start your careers. Were you intimidated going into this match at all? Uh, I think it's a lot of pressure, you know, but uh, considering we 2 3 them before, like, I don't know, I had a lot of faith in my team. Like, my team's just insane. Like, uh, truly good up-and-comers. Like, uh, I don't know, they, they're just going to pop off in the next couple of months and whatnot. Well, how excited does that make you, knowing that not only does your team have the synergy to take down one of the consider top teams in EMEA, but you get a chance to prove yourselves in the main event and even potentially earn your way to DreamHack Dallas. You must be so excited. Yeah, I mean, it would be sick. I, I don't know if we get to Dallas, but I mean, I'm going to play the game until I go back to uni. So, you know, a couple more months, I'm just going to grind out and I'm so happy to be doing it on this team. Like they just, it's so solid, so much fun. Well, it's a lot of fun to watch you guys go at it as well. Uh, one last question, as you now officially punched your ticket to the main event. Are there any teams that are next on your hit list? Because when I talked to Zoro last week, he did say, Ex Oblivione, we got our eyes on them. We need to prove ourselves going up against them. You did that. Who's next? Yeah, that's a tough question, actually. I'm just going to say SSG, you know, like aim high. I feel like uh, it'll be easy, you know, 3-0 next match. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the confidence we need. We can't wait to see more of you in the squad in the main event for now. Enjoy the victory. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so bad. Did you see the background? Like some bourbon on the shelf, some good books. My man Ready is living. Celebrate. My man is living. I love that. I love that for them. I <laughs> can't wait to see them back in action again. Uh, let's uh, take a look at our player of the match, actually. I feel like we have plenty to choose from in this particular one. Vittori was the one who won game five for me. Like, just standing behind the cart, Chad. Romatro of the day and playing off of their team so freaking well and being composed like you heard the comms from everybody playing off of this all playing off of this all and setting up pack for a 3k on Suravasa that wouldn't have maybe happened without someone like Hitori going up against uh, Twoles who has more experience than him uh, on the tank roll is so impressive to see how Hitori stood up to one of the most fearsome teams in EMEA. I think what's amazing too is that Hitori got a chance to show us a couple of different heroes that are in their pool. When, you know, we were talking to Sobek and he was saying, maybe we were cooking a little too much. I just like, <laughs> want to go back through for a second and note that it was mostly Winston versus Dawn that they played in their very first match. And so to be able to pull out the Orisa, the Ramatra, and make them both look so good. I think is very impressive and I set some up really well I think for the main event next weekend. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a good time and they definitely put themselves on everyone's radar with that victory. They are now officially advancing out of group A together with Space Station Gaming. Uh, they made it very clean, of course, 6-0 score for them. And uh, it's gonna be a good time in the main event. Uh, I said in our pre-show actually that we should be eating well today. And quite frankly, I think we did. So let's take a, a look at some of the treats we got to enjoy in this first half of our day as we're wrapping up. They for in the EMEA region. I love our highlight clips because I never know <laughs> what actually is being pulled because I'm not reading a run of show ahead. So <laughs> it's all our production <laughs> cooking and usually they're delivering. I'm loving it. We've Maybe been a feasting. junk rat rip tire? I, um, I mean, it has to. Like, it has there to. has to be one, I right? like some ball action for sure. <laughs> since we've seen ball back in the mix. So I let's, think that's that some highlights. Okay, but the pulse bomb has to be in there, right? There we but, go. Okay, there you go. I'm loving it. 
Oh my, that made iCav just miserable, that entire series. <laughs> I would not want to be iCav against Chasm, swap from Cassidy, Ash, uh, Sombra, M uh... made the other team play Mystery Heroes. That's how impactful Chasm was and made the whole comp uh, swap because of them. Chasm was incredible. Eventually got countered uh, by the D.Va from Amelia on Midtown, but that was the only map they dropped. Uh, it's like Rose said during the cast, you don't scrim against a comp like this. You don't scrim against a player like Chasm. So how do you prepare? <laughs> Yeah, and if it, that's not bad enough, then you still also, of course, have to deal with your Junkrat and everything else that team is throwing at you. So, rough times on the other side. Great for everyone watching, as it's just very, very entertaining. Let's take a look at our EMEA standings to see where we're currently at in our EMEA region with one more day of play. I mean, frankly, the result from this match that we just got to watch, that's got to be the biggest upset here. Absolutely. Not seeing EXO in the main event is a travesty, as I said in the cast. Like, they finished top three last stage, and that leaves kind of that top half of teams open up. Who will be the next rising team? Then we got a rematch of Team Peps versus a one-man army tomorrow that will decide, like, which other teams are going to make it through, uh, at least in that regard for Group B. But, yeah, upsets can happen. I, th I like I'm excited to see what's gonna happen too when it's like Ataraxia versus oh uh, yeah like we didn't get a chance to see those teams play against each other just yet does Ataraxia actually have the tools to deal with this wacky oh uh, yeah comp like tomorrow's gonna be really exciting to see which three teams can close out those main event spots Indeed. Now, we are, of course, done with today's EMEA portion of things, and that also, unfortunately, means that we're done with Lemon Kiwi and Necra. Thank you both so much for joining me. Uh, any last thoughts, takeaways, PSAs you want to share with the world? Uh, you know, the meta is only a figure of speech. You guys watch, oh, yeah, don't pull that out of my ranked games, but I will cast that <laughs> any time of day. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, who cares about the meta? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. D just, just throw the Orisa out the window. Maybe don't play the Winston dive and give us a little bit more Roadhog. I'd also like to see that. But, <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure today, and we're excited to come back tomorrow and close out EMEA for the stage. That's right. Yeah, meta. I mean, just like time. It's just it's just a concept. Yeah, it's like, it's not real. <laughs> anyway, up next, more elimination matches, more deciders, lots of drama, such overwatch, all of that after maybe a bit more of an extended break because a bunch of our NA teams are actually still stuck in collegiate games. And we, of course, want to accommodate as best as we can for that. So we're going to wait for them to wrap up, uh, allowing for the double dip in order to get more of a bag. We can appreciate that. Now, while we wait, uh, why don't you just use the time to, I don't know, hydrate, sign up for the Face It League, or learn a language. I don't know. Be productive. <laughs> see you on the other side. Thank you so much for watching. we see you in just a little bit.
Heat Champion Series. I love the sound of that. And XO against the wall, and Team Peps will full cap. <laughs> Where did Pelican come from? Straight on top of their heads. Quartz won't let them stand much longer, kneecapping three in that fight. The new kings of EU have been crowned. Toronto defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. You're watching the OWCS Stage 2 groups and I'm joined by Costa and Jaws now as we kick off the NA region. So I got to replace my USDA Prime duo from EU and replace it with, I guess, the store brand. Oh, <laughs> my, my version of beef. That's what was, we are, Jaws. I was, <laughs> I was sitting on this one for 30 minutes. <laughs> but we're cheap. We're cheap and affordable. That's what I'm saying, actually. That's what, yeah, hey, you that's are for the want. people. That's right. Yeah, for the people, exactly. For the, no, the I just, I'm just... Side. I am just kidding. Every day I get to talk to the two of you, I feel like I'm winning. That's not true. No, it's not true. I'm just, just waiting for the digs. Yeah, the punchline's coming. I'm waiting. Another jab's coming. Don't let her lead you into a false sense of security. She's not being nice. Say, no, that was flattery for the sake oh. of a good segue because I want to speak okay. of winning things. Uh, this is what our players are playing for. So I guess it's like, at least a slap, not a punch. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, this is what they're doing it all for. Of course, we have money on the line, but more importantly, we also have the circuit points. This is what the players are playing for, and they are increasing every single stage. Also, as you can see on your screens right there, the uh, best of the best will find themselves in our first LAN event uh, of the year, which is taking place in Dallas, Texas, very, very soon. And you two at home can join us there. Not as a player, most likely, but... Uh, try. Uh, I mean, go at it. It is a, it is a yeah. LAN event, so you can you can play to your heart's content, or you can just bum around like we do and watch some Overwatch <laughs> because that's gonna go down there as well. Uh, yeah, link on your screens. All you have to do is purchase your ticket. We hope to see you there as well because we're all going on that Dallas adventure together oh, yeah. and we'll be digging up our first OWCS champions which is really really exciting and we're gonna see new faces new teams new names and by that time we also get to see a new hero so let's dig a little deeper into all things venture <laughs> it all started with talent stealing artifacts but wait Who's that? Those boots, the drill, that perfect smile. It's Venture! Whoosh, flashback. I researched this artifact, last seen in my favorite place, Cairo, and the reliefs there led me all the way to the Shambhali, who were kind enough to direct me, after a lot of digging, and I mean a lot, to the hideout. Oops, hi, Talon. They ran with the artifact, but I dodged their spikes and juked their darts and blasted my way through the base, and... Here we are. Artifact, safe and sound. That was a doozy. Yeah, as you just saw there at the very end, uh, they are available to play right now, at least for everyone at home, not for our player in this very tournament. Have you guys gotten to play them yet? And if so, what's the consensus? Yeah, I, I was able to play them a bunch. Uh, they're a really strong hero, like as just like an assassin, they get in your backline. If they hit the left click, right click, uh, you know, left click again, it Probably does clicks, a yeah. ridiculous amount of damage. So as a support player, I'm just getting one shot what feels okay. like a lot of the time. But it's like, crazy. It's cool. It's crazy. I know it's, it's cool, cool, Jack. But it's it's crazy, but cool. I have been one shot too many times to, yeah. to count. It's it's kind of insane. There is, um with Burrow specifically, like, and obviously the, with the gun being AOE, getting into someone's backline, getting out could be pretty easy, especially if you're running like a like a rush, like a Brawly style comp. And the melee does extra damage too, which is uh, which is quite cool. The and, oh my word, please. I saw, I saw <laughs> some That's people. Jack. <laughs> that is me every day, bro. I just getting booed by Venture over and over. It's so frustrating. Well, some people have definitely raised concerns about you know, uh, they're what we would point out as strong uh, parts of the kit that would be uh, too easy to abuse, but I think that's only in bad hands. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think you can really identify a bad venture player very easily. Yeah. yeah. If you're, it, it's a hole. high ceiling. 
my word if you are good with assault it, you just wipe the entire team it is yeah. Yeah. crazy but then uh, obviously uh, day one it being available and ranked as well is just like okay if our venture is bad we lose if our venture is good we win like yeah. that was that was day one Simple of rank with that. that venture enabled <laughs> which is crazy but gaining a good ult is just unreal but then if you're really bad at them you just uh, hit a wall a few times and everybody laughs at you and then you uh, just kill them so yeah it's pretty fun what the real question as well <laughs> that i have for venture when they get into pro are they going to be able to play at this level are they going to synergize or yeah. are they going to be exploitable because when you got teams like these it's very difficult to play a solo style hero that venture kind of feels like that's right this is our na group standing of course a few teams have already made it through uh, namely of course toronto luminosity m80 and the students of the game they 2 0 in their group moved on into the main event and they were spared the agony of playing on a very brand new patch and trying to figure it out live on air in front of everyone's very eyes now a few teams have already uh, of course left us as well but the rest blood is in the water they're still in it to win it everyone has to fight for their lives so let's dive into our very first match of the day shikigami and is it unc or unk ink who unk. knows let's Wimpy. go with unk ink mitch's favorite <laughs> yeah they're, they're, fighting, they're, they're fighting for survival in group c uh both of those teams have actually been going down three one in their respective opening matches against yeah. uh parrots and pajamas and m80 so tough tough i would say matches to start it off with yeah, and it's it, it, can, it can be hard, but the, the big question that we have, obviously, we haven't seen too much difference in, in Europe, but we did just come out of a patch change. A lot of the usual suspects that we saw in previous weeks didn't get touched that much, so I should expect more Rissa, more uh, Kiriko as well, playing around that style. But already just off of this Shikigami, I'm kind of curious to see which players they're playing in which roles. And then as we head over Unk Inc., this is a team that honestly don't seem to have like as many subs. This is just a team that is playing on pure vibes, and that's just anytime Paintbrush is on a team, it's just vibes-based. It's pure vibes. That is, I mean, that, that, that Sigma is... name is, that's a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our man 7-Eleven. I love it. I, Dirk, we are we have passed the, the need for numbers in our names, but uh, you know what? If you can keep it around, crush a 99 moment. I mean, I love it. Am I going to say the 7-Eleven at the end? Probably not. It's not happening. Yeah, I love you. You mentioned paintbrush and vibes. Dupe was like the GM, the cook, the, the bus driver, the everything for Valiant <laughs> the, the last year that was uh, in the Overwatch League. <laughs> Oh, there's, um, there's Shikigami. We don't have Aspect and Rai Amazing switched around there, but Aspect is playing tank. Don't worry. We're not going to see a Dark Side Phil moment where they just jump into DPS and then just pop off. It's all good. Right. Yeah, but this should be uh, fairly... Client, it should work for everyone else. <laughs> okay, okay, right? okay, no? okay. Sure, a clueless, clueless individual right here. Yeah, I mean, surely we can just have random swaps and it still work out. I don't think everybody's quite on the same level, but we'll see. Yeah. Maybe then. Based, based on what we've seen so far from those two teams, do you feel like there's a clear favorite here or are we finding ourselves on even footing? I, I think so. Think, yeah, I think it's pretty even, right, Jack? Yeah, like both these teams went 3-1, uh, and one, which is crazy. Stay, uh, day one of groups and uh, teams not going through. Oh, oh my God. What is this? What's happening? <laughs> the viewers seem to love Shikigami, though. 76 is 24%. Not too bad, but I mean, Shikigami, they didn't take a map of M80. They took a map of Pyrus in pajamas. Unkink, maybe they got some secret weapons because M80, definitely the strongest in the group. Well, Shikigami was a team that in the first uh, stage of OWCS, they made it all the way to the main event. They they were yeah. played incredibly well. So I think that's probably why we see the viewers trending towards them. It's, you know, a team that they actually know and recognize. But so far lately, you know, Shikigami in their Swiss run where they did go eight and three, they didn't beat any of the top 16 teams. So they had a pretty easy run through. So this might be one of their first real tests for them to, you know, on on eight to keep their, you know, OWCS stage two dreams alive and hopefully get to the main stage again yeah let's have a little look at the map set though as we go into our first game Samoa chosen by Shikigami Unk taking Midtown and Esperanza by Shikigami here so when it comes to Metascot obviously a lot of players last week were like man we've got to make it through I don't want to pay on the new patch but it doesn't seem to be anything crazy different at least on uh, the EU side of things but then it's also not been enough time really for people to get grips of the new meta or like the new patch but then it also seems like apart from venture nothing crazy changed um for a lot of the heroes Tracer did get a nerf though so maybe we see a little less of that 
I think the biggest thing that changed within the patch was the Wrecking Ball change, right? The ability for right. Wrecking Ball to be able to distribute the over health or the shields that they get from their, uh, from the, you know, jumping into the middle of the team. The question that we had when we saw it was, is this going to be effective or is this going to be too difficult to utilize? The fact that we haven't seen anyone really mess with it other than Chasm from all yet it makes me think that yeah. Aris is just the easier choice. As you said, Jack, teams have had enough time practicing and scrimming on the Arisa and Kiriko. If that's still going to be just very strong, why would you take the uphill battle of trying to work out if the Wrecking Ball is going to be meta-defining? Yeah, in, in such a short amount of time, like, there's just no way, bro. There's no like way. Three days, three... four days. No, exactly, time. Yeah. You're just sticking with the same old, same old. That's exactly what we're going to see here from Unk and Shikigami. Mira comps almost there. Cassidy and Sojourn still interchangeable right now. Yeah, it doesn't feel like there's a, a leader in this two match. It's just what people are more comfortable with. Obviously, there's strengths and, uh, you know, minuses for all of these uh, heroes, but it feels like if you can just play the Cassidy, you can play more around getting the Hinder Grenade on the Tracer, play a little bit more off angle. You're less dependent on the one shots of the Sojourn. And you can see that's why we have Haven taking an off angle, but Shikigami recognize it and punish him. Yeah, right engine speed onto Haven. Well, less mobility with the Cass. Yeah, as well. The slide is just so strong uh, from the Soch. Ooh. All right, there's the kill. There's the cap. Shikigami control him first. Yeah, Vintage coming out of the gate strong, but that's just great recognition from Shikigami. If they're going to play the Cassie on the off, off angle like that, punishable. And that's why we're actually going to see Haven switch over to the Soch. And so we now have complete mirror compositions. You do forfeit some of the old charge at least, which is kind of frustrating. First pulse bomb available for Shikigami by the looks of it. It looks like Ryan, Ryan May's in there was trying to just jump on the head, but it's all good. He ends up backing off, push onto the point as uh, Haven does that a nice little headshot cross map. Here's Cowman using a lot of the abilities first. Fortify down, same with the spear spin, got to be careful. Post bomb from Ryan Amazing does end up swinging a miss. But here comes the rush from Graveyard. Shikigami just running into the front line, and unfortunately for Handbait, uh, rush a lot, so a lot later. And that's the problem is with these rushes, Scott. As soon as you like, you hear the enemy rush, you're like, okay, do I press the Q right now if you're the Kiri? Like, do I have to do it? I need to heal my Orisa, but then if it's you're a little bit too late, you're kind of locked into that animation, you can't heal your Orisa, you end up falling down, and then you've wasted your rush. And you made a great point before that as well, not just on the rush, it's about Kalman using their cooldowns. In this Orisa versus Orisa matchup, as much as it just looks like they're shooting tennis balls at each other over and over again, the big determining factor of this matchup is when you're using your cooldowns. You see, they engage with the spear spins, they're putting back, uh, going back and forth. But when you use your Fortify, you become a lot more exploitable as a team. Oh, but we're gonna see Peace taking out one. Overclock comes out from Vintage, but hasn't found anything. Yeah, well, there's the sound barrier from Unk. Paintbrush keeping the rest of the team alive and well. They had to as well. Shikigami not using their sound barrier. Because see, like you said, Scott, Nog just got chased down by Peace. Although they're kind of thankful they didn't use their beat there. They got one fight, 84%. Like, you're chilling. Yeah, Noctis kind of gets caught on the wall and Peace is just the easiest one clip of Peace's life or at least two clip. We'll, get, we'll give him a little bit of extra there. But <laughs> if you're Shikigami, as you said, it's not the worst thing because you didn't use the sound barrier. So now you're going to have the sound barrier to respond against the overclock or the pulse bomb. So you can just play very aggressive. Noctis getting low. Needs to be careful. Cannot be the first one to get picked again. All right, now they're going to try and vibe on the point. Pulse bomb and that overclock available from Unk. Nice little headshot. Doesn't find too much. And now searching for a little bit more. More than willing to uh, kind of run into oh, me. Nice. The problem is that uh, Terra Search just grabbed him down from the high ground down to low. Hulk spawn from Ryan Amazing too. Man, Unki not be able to stand up to this. Up Chicken Army used that sound barrier and just pulled down those DPS from the high ground with the Terra Surge. It was easy as pie. 85% of building, quick push to the spawn. TP out actually from uh, Haven, <laughs> just getting people back into the into the what? fight. ASAP. Really what is smart actually? It, 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 that's actually like a really nice play like because it closes a little bit of distance that's an extra little bit of meter that your team can get now they can touch and take a more effective fight and they have ultimates up as well they have the rush they have the pulse bomb there's an opportunity opportunity for them in this fight there's a continuing rush onto the point cam i need some serious help though there's an moving forwards but look at the damage incoming onto the tank player of unk just no chance for cam and stay alive oh right amazing gets comboed out by the kiriko Overtime is still here, and Aspect just trying to navigate around this point, trying to chase down, pin down, lock down one of these DPS, all of the supports that are quite vulnerable with that tank, and it's actually Unclank. Ends up coming out on top. 
You lose your tank that early, you're thinking it's all over. Haven was able to just, like, kite away from Aspect that entire time, just refuse to back down, and Unk ends up coming up with the cap. And you can actually see a fundamental difference with how these two teams are playing the composition. Right now, it feels like Shikigami, they're trying to put all their pressure on a Kalman, the opposing Orisa, try and punish the tank for their positioning, while it feels like Unkink is trying to find picks on either side with the Sojourn or the Tracer, just trying to create threats on either side. And that's what ended up happening for Unkink in that fight. They found the picks. Even though Kalman falls, they were in a much better position to close out that fight. And now 67% of counting. This could go either way, as there's a lot of ultimates up for Unkink. Shikigami at... Closing in on a couple of theirs as well. Right, amazing. Does that have to back out? Doesn't want to use that recall just yet, especially with a pulse bomb. They are contesting, but for how much longer? There's the spear spins from both Orisas. Cowman, Terra Surge. Does it get matched with a Suzu? Almost gets blown up straight out of it, though. But Pain Dresh lays down the sand barrier, so Cowman can oh, nice. still just continue into this fight. A nice spear onto Noxus, and this will be Young Kings. It's their final chance here to try and win this round, and Haven's going to put this final nail in the coffin. 95% for Unkink, and Shikigami with the sound barrier can't find a place to use it. And Unkink managed to take that round straight out of Shikigami's hands. Just didn't panic. Great presence of mind, understanding your situation, understanding the limitations, right? They hit that at 99%, that one fight that they had to touch in overtime, but they were smart with it. They did exactly what they needed to do. And then when they had that ultimate advantage, great play by Kalman, just making himself a threat. Walks into the opposition team, pops to the terror surge, just makes himself a threat. Does enough damage that Shikigami has to scatter into the wind. And then from there, they just couldn't do anything. So... A flip of that around, and we might have a close series. We expected this one to be a close series. Both of these teams have been pretty solid, just weren't good enough to get that uh, get out of the group in the number one seed, but everything to play for. Yeah, it's group C. Ready to turn enough, actually. All right, a little swap here. Onto the Sigma. Stead for both sides. Even the same kind of layout here for Shikigami, at least, apart from the Sig. But uh, Baptiste for Hanbei. Yeah, they, I think if you're going to play the Sigma, I much prefer playing the Baptiste. I think you can play around the lamps a lot better. The window is just overall, you're playing a lot slower. So Baptiste is going to get more value in comparison to when you would usually want a Suzu. Kalman gets Kalman, extremely hey. aggressive onto okay. the opposition side. Has to use all their cooldowns and eventually fall down to the point. But they are alive, at least for now. Jeez. That was close. There's the cap too. Hanbei ends up taking the head clean off of uh, Ryan Amazing. I always feel so satisfying. I always say, but like, Bab's gun is one of the more satisfying ones in the game. Yeah. Like, easily. Just the burst fire, there's something, there's just something so cerebral about it, bro. Just, the, it's a, it's just a serotonin in your brain as you're sort oh, of weaving in the hills. It, you hit a couple of headshots. Man, it feels so good. It's like a And then use the immortality the field right? and no one ever dies. Oh, oh the no, good times. It's just so good. It's so good. DPS players molding right now in the chat. DPS oh, that's good. Molding. Sorry, I uh, suzu and lamped your pulse bomb. Yeah, get better. Get Sucks good. to suck, DPS players. Sucks I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're both support. <laughs> we could just, uh, we could just dunk on him 24-7. Well, right, amazing finding a little duel here. A little two. 1v1, a little bit of unfair uh, on his side of things, but Nog just does end up coming back in. Right, amazing, just playing so aggro, trying to force a lot of damage. He's out of here. Those bolt bombs coming up rather soon. Turns the attention now onto this uh, high ground bridge as the Kasune Wash was pulled. Unking does end up backing off. There's the pulse, here's the floor, still gets a kill though. On bait, no lamp. Sad stuff there. Ready, uh, rest in peace. And you see right there, there's the difference of maybe why Shikigami is playing the Kiriko. The Kitsune Rush, I think, objectively so just true. is a better ultimate than the Amplification Matrix on the Baptiste. Yes, you can get great value out of the, the window, but the Kiriko Rush is just so oppressive. They just couldn't stand up to the amount of damage, and that's pretty much a team fight win for Shikigami off of that one ultimate. Obviously, Pulse Bomb, but that's not a big one to go by the wayside. It's a window. No rock to be seen, but there's the sand barrier. Aspect going pretty low. Rock from Kalman does hit the shield as Peace pressures the point. Pulse bomb in hand, looking for one of the tanks, or maybe just a flip. There it is, and Peace managed to find himself in the back line as well. Easy stick on the Sigma. The hands, they won't save you now, unfortunately. And yes, you've got some uh, mean ones on you, but no, there is no way. Oh, fancy footwork from Peace. Was he Mike Tyson? Oh my god. Unking just kind of demolished Shikigami there, and they're in final fight. I'll take a 
I, I don't, you know, I'm gonna say it. Okay, obviously great play and that was a great team fight overall. Why do all Tracer players, after they blink and dodge an ability and then they kill you, they always do that one second pause where they look down at your dead body as if they're taunting you. I feel like yeah, that's yeah, a Tracer yeah. trait that every single one of them does. <laughs> it's disrespectful. They are literally taunting you. They got the kill, they got the kill bro. There's the flux from Aspect. Hits the rock, but actually, no, ends up going through the Sigma. Thank you very much. Suzu moment. OT coming in. Unk Inc. Now on the low ground for Haven, but it doesn't really seem to matter. Got a good angle now for this railgun. The overclockers ran out, but they've got bodies on the point, and Shikigami need to be able to touch. Noctis falls, and the rest are going to fall like dominoes if they're not careful. The rush comes out from Graveyard, does hit the point as well, but who's there to touch too again? Late. Aspect jumps back in, but a little bit too late. You aren't wrong, Scott. Cowman with a triple kill at the very end, and Unk Inc. with round one and map one. Pretty convincing round on the second one as, there, uh, as well. As they went over to the Sigma Mirror, it just felt like Unkink just had a lot better understanding of how they wanted to play around it. They played around the Kiriko perfectly using those rushes. Uh, so it's just one of those things that, you know, I you have to have a lot of you know, respect for how teams are willing to adapt and play to their own strengths. Because as I said, I think the Baptiste can be stronger, but overall, you know, it, it's just one of those situations. And then now we head over to Midtown. If you're better in the Sigma matchup, do you just keep playing Sigma in, a, in some senses? Yeah, I mean, this is where the Sigma is really going to shine on this map. Very, very quick round. You're not half wrong, Scott. That didn't really... Uh, the Sigma Army didn't really stand a chance there, it felt like. At uh, the very end of it all. A lot of the time, the Fluxes are going to get Sound Barrier, they're going to get Rocked, they're going to get Suzu'd, etc. It really was uh, Cowman coming up rather large. And even Haven, too. I mean, a lot of players having a lot of standout moments. Haven with the Railgun, especially staying alive without a tank and... You were mentioning before that Cowman's just absorbing so much of that pressure. And you can see it right here too. The sound barrier from Paintbrush was able to save Cowman because they know Cowman and, well, any Orisa player, as soon as the ult goes down, you've lost a lot of that uh, ability to absorb the damage because you haven't got the, like, the fortification. So everybody's kind of standing around them, shooting them, and then Paintbrush lays the beat in. Now Cowman can survive, run to the back line, just leaves a lot of space for peace and Haven to just get it done, basically. I mean, this is Peace's, Peace's uh, moment here too. Just pulsing the Sigma after the sound barrier, just being very patient with it as well, not layering a lot of ults. That was really nice footwork there. And you're not wrong, they do end up stopping and looking at the body. I mean, they just... Yeah, yeah, well, what's up with that? Get moved on, get moved on. Yeah, well, what's up with that? What's up with that? And you can just see the stats here as we mold about Tracer players. You can see, yeah, just Unk, uh, Unking, just doing a phenomenal job in that Sigma matchup of really just like, showing that they have the dominance in the Orisa matchup yeah. it seemed like they could have gone either way right like that first round it was back and forth it really just came down to individual plays so very evenly matched teams and honestly jack i think we can say overall group c is probably one of the more evenly matched groups overall I mean, you know m80 went 3-2 against pirates in pajamas but shikigami went you know they took a map off of uh, pirates in pajamas as well so probably one of the closest groups in terms of the just like the skill levels of all of these teams it does feel like that, yeah. Really much feels like that. And uh, kind of telltales in the score as well, because day one, there's always a bunch of 3 0s, but there were two 3 1s uh, on that first day. Here's the Tracer head to head. Not the poor Tracer, that's just uh, their favorite characters, but pretty one sided in terms of peace. That KDA looking clean there. Damage pretty similar, but, you know, dying less, more limbs. Feeling pretty good for peace right now, but right, amazing. Not too far behind, I must say. But as we move on to this next map, I mean, Midtown, that. Is, Sigma's time to shine. Although it does feel like you can play pretty much anything, but if you're a good Sigma on this map, there are so many good points to hold. So we'll see if uh, that's the flavor of the day, or this, at least this series that uh, both these teams are going to bring out. Even just looking at the bands, you know, they ban Eichenwald, they ban Paraiso. It seems like both of these teams, they want to play on the ground. They want to play the Sigma. They want to play the Orisa. I don't expect either team to sort of try and lean into, you know, some teams have been trying to play the Winston, especially in other regions, just play a lot more Winston, gives you a lot more opportunity to set up dives. But it feels like both of these teams stick with what's comfortable. Just play the horse every now and then. Um, but now we're going to see a roster update. We have Neb coming in for Paintbrush, it looks like. Looks like it. Please play some Alari. Please. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't know. I think a lot of people just playing whatever ranked right now. Very very apparent in my games, at least. But Alari feels so good. There was only a small change to Alari's weapon and the, like the heal and the, uh, the left click. But I don't know. Alari's very, uh, Alari's very fun to play. 
Ilara is one of those characters that like they are exceptional if they're able to set up the pylon and they're able to protect the pylon utilize the healing pump out the damage that's when Ilari is very strong the biggest issue that Ilari deals with is that people just run into her and if they yeah. break the pylon she doesn't really have a lot of protection she doesn't do a lot of healing there's a limited range to her healing as well so sometimes the game just outpaces Ilari but that no Gnome goods? Hey, yo, what's good? What? I have never seen that souvenir before. There's a no. Well, I've also is, never seen a they souvenir finally in the game before added as well. to the game. That's crazy, <laughs> bro. That's crazy. Well, I think they made him a little yeah. tall in game, but you know, maybe that was just being generous. That's true, actually. That's a little generous, I think. Generous wow, on Jack, the you're right. Too. A Nev onto the oh. Alari. Okay, okay, let me cook. Okay, let me cook. All right, so okay. it, why, why you can is hold in the house so easily. You hide around the corner, you double shot tracers, make them quit the game. Like, that is the plan. Yeah, we're just hating on tracer players today. Oh, wait, yeah, we actually are. <laughs> wait, <laughs> I mean, please. here comes the tracer. And this is the issue, right? So all of a sudden, Alari's had to put that pylon down in an awkward spot. Fortunately, it is going to live there, and the tracer is going to disengage, but with the death to Noctis, Vintage following, this might just be an exceptionally quick first point cap. It's not like the Hilari did a whole lot, but the rest of the team taking the space. Disagree with sure. I think Hilari did everything. Well, okay, what did the Hilari do in this fight, Jack? Put, put the pylon down. Got damage in. Uh, made sure the bat stayed alive. I can't see the stats. I'm lying. I'm potentially lying here. But I will say the thing with the Lari too, Scott, where it's something we didn't actually mention, is that you really need another, like, main healer. You need someone yes. that's also able to pump out heals. You can't really run the Lucio. You're definitely not Zen. Like, Brig, Mercy, like, they don't really do as much as, like, a Kiriko, Arno, or, like, a Bat that really just pump out heals in AoE or just, like, single target. Oh, cast down. What? Vinci just dies there? Just takes okay, it. Well. Took it. I think they might have taken a shot from the Alari to the head, and then the Sigma was there to follow up. Maybe it was. You know what? That was it. No, I think it was the Alari uh, doing the damage. But you do need that extra uh, layer of healing for the Alari because the pylon, like you mentioned, it does get run down a lot and just shot from across the map, and uh, oh. end up falling. What? Nice little flux there. I mean, surely that's a kill. Almost guaranteed. It's a very messy fight too. Pulse bomb as we uh, come back to the present. Did end up landing on Neb. So Alari down. And I think that Kalman's pushed too far up. From Kalman. Once the Alari falls, they want to continue to hold this aggressive positioning and just keep the card moving for free so they can hold this high ground. So utilizing the ultimate and trading off the Sigma, that's actually very much worth it because that gives time for Neb to get back into this fight. Well, Captive Sun is available. Got to be careful though. Oh, nice. straight on top. No hands to be seen. And there we go. Easy double kill for Neb. Noctis Vintage struck with the power of a thousand suns. And that should be the point. Unk Inc. Team kill. Four minutes plus. Going into third. Like what I'm seeing. And the Ilari ultimate overall is just very difficult to get value from. That's one of the weaknesses of Ilari as well. It is a support hero who has an offensive ultimate. No. But no. it can it can be hard to use, and that's why you need to credit Neb. They had the positioning where use the shift to get the high ground, instantly pop the ult, instantly shoot it down into the squishies, gets two kills off of it instantly. So great play there from Neb on the Alari. Ah, uh, Kart, anyone? Kart, guys. The payload, uh, payload, payload, payload. Anyone want to? Payload, the, uh, payload. Everybody's on it. Yeah. Ne everybody, calm down. All good. Ryan is in the back line right now. A little bit frustrating for Ungink to kind of deal with. Oh, there's the flux on heights. Not sure you're going to be able to survive that one, unfortunately. Even with that uh, BP pylon up there. That lamp being instantly taken care of. Nice little push. You do use a lot of ultimates, though, for Shikigami. That's flux and rally off the table now. I didn't even see where the rally was. You have to... I, I almost feel like what happened was Noctis wanted to go with the rally and play aggressively, but then Aspect saw the opportunity to drop the flux. So those are two big team fight ultimates, as you said, though, Jack, that are off the table. So now Shikigami, they're playing with nothing. They almost have to take a dry fight in this situation. It was a nice little stagger kill there from Rai Amazing, but you can see them now they're kind of on the back pedal, wait as much time as they can, get their ultimates up, maybe Vintage finds a pick, gives you an opening. But if they open up these long sidelines, this is what's gonna happen with the Alari, or the Zenyatta now actually, with the Zenyatta and the Sojin, people are gonna just take so much damage. Gotta be careful though, gotta protect your back line, but they are stacking, it's like a three or four man squad in the back. What? Zen's pretty safe. See the one those uh, VR goggles on. Looking to find some kills. Nice pulse bomb on the side again from Peace. Aspect Noctis dead. It's kind of a roll right now. Shikigami. 
Where are you at? You haven't got any ultimates either, right? Amazing close to that pulse bomb. I mean, window for graveyard, sure, but like, Shigami I mean, also needs to touch. It's gonna be up to the tracer. There's the double triple blink into the recall. So now uh, Ryan Amazing has to go out to the rest of the team, but it's unlikely they survive. Nev ends up with an easy kill on the Tracer. When it comes out from Graveyard, but I don't think Heaven really cares, to be honest with you. And uh, Unk Inc. They're just going to run this one in. Noctis already dead. Aspect to follow. Three minutes plus. Post bomb doesn't do anything. I hit the trance just at the very end. No worries. Unk Inc. With a three minute, eight second time bank. That is a speed run on Midtown. That's actually insane. And honestly, textbook double flex support play, right? Understanding how it's all about controlling positioning. They, they were always trying to manipulate space, right? Like even that one fight where they got fluxed, the two people on the high ground, that's the right play that forced out an ultimate. And they did that throughout the entire map where how do we get Neb into position to be able to utilize their damage and then just slowly win the fight on, uh, one, after the after, uh, one after the other after the other, right? And... It also goes back onto Shikigami. They need to get their ultimate economy under wraps because using that rally really costs them. If they had a rally in that final fight, there's an opportunity that they can hold there. That pigeon, that's like a par sleep paralysis demon mode. <laughs> that, that looked really scary. I don't know if I was not yeah, listening to what you were saying. Do you have a pigeon fear? A fear of pigeons? Yeah. Doesn't everybody like have a slight fear of pigeons though? No. What do you mean? Pigeons are just pigeons, bro. Yeah, but they can, they, I, I, why are you putting it back on the screen? Get it yeah, off. Yeah, like, honestly, obs, yeah, obs. Honestly, yeah, it's kind of cute. They're like, they are I, kind of cursed. I, I look at those eyes. Like sleep paralysis demon, but like. Exactly. It, what's it going to do to you? It's just, those eyes are like black holes, bro. I can just, they're they staring into my soul. I don't know what it is about those pigeons, man. They scare me. Scary stuff. Jump scare horror game is what I watch is sometimes. Yeah, you know, to get you out of this one, Jack. You know what's scarier than that? A three minute and eight second time bank for your opposition. So let's see how Shikigami are going. He's yeah. still got it. Adjust. He's still got it. I'm back, Scott's baby. back in it. He's so back <laughs> with the segues. So, okay, I actually love this decision here from Noctis and Shikigami. Get off the brig. If you're playing against double flex, uh, flex support, brig just isn't going to find as much value because you're trying to play around the extra healing, but there's just so much pick potential. So they go to the Lucio Kiriko so they can just play faster because they need. They recognize they need to get in the face of Neb Ahambe, otherwise Neb's going to get picks just like that. Yeah. Surprising amount of damage. Always feels like with the... Uh... The Iliari uh, headshots. That solar rifle, it does a, a lot of work. And you obviously, there's it's a bit of pacing to it, and that's why it's a very satisfying gun, like we were kind of talking about before. But if you add one headshot, that's very easy for your tracer, your sojourn, even your bap in some regards to kind of follow up with a lot of that damage. So you have to be very careful. And like you said, having to go quickly here, Shikigami. They get stomped on their first push. We'll see what they can do on the next one. And you see the pylon go down. That's a window every single opportunity that it dies for them to get aggressive because that's a lot of less healing on the table. But Haven now taking out Noctis. Ooh. Returning the favor, but Neb is just everywhere. Dominating on the Alari right now is what I would say. 10% as well. Towards that ultimate, make that five. Make that a captive sun available in just a moment. And there are a lot of sneaky places you can put the pylon as well. A lot of sneaky places. I feel like this is like a snake oil salesman trying to sell me to play a Lari in ranked. <laughs> just like it's so fun. It's really good. You just don't understand. You, know, you just don't understand the pylon physics, bro. You just need to understand what man. You can get into it at the ground floor and you can start <laughs> playing a Lari, man, and you can be ahead of the curve and get so many SR gains. <laughs> then lose all your SR. <laughs> don't do it. Kid. Sun, no value. Not worth it. No value. Sad stuff. All good though. Gonna end up uh, backing off up to the high ground. Here comes the rotation. There's the flux. Hits two. Noctis. No sound barrier and no health either now. Hanley and Haven do end up falling, however. Cowman trying to even this one up. Just like isolating vintage there. A nice little ease from the pulse bomb too. Right main suits pulse bomb and ultimate not getting any value whatsoever. And who's alive? Well, it's Neb. Still going. No HP. Doesn't matter. Doesn't care. Still kills the tracer. And with one minute and 30 seconds to go, Scott. Shikigami. I mean, it feels like this first map fell through their fingers. This second one, too, they got no fingers left. Like, they've barely got palms to hold on to this win. Like, they need to get this tempo up. Noctis didn't have that sound barrier in time, but maybe they can engage with it now. 
Yeah, they just don't have an answer to Neb right now. Even when they are finding picks and solid engages, it just feels like they're slowly bleeding out. They do have so many ultimates in the tank now, right? If they can just pop all of them and try and find as much value. The Fluxes goes wide. It does manage to catch the Soldier, but it's not gonna get any picks. Haven goes down to a dead eye. Rotation from Shikigami into the Mega Health Pack room. And maybe they can get some time on the point. Vintage trying to look for an angle, trying to look for kills. Just literally anything to shoot at, please. Please, someone pop into my LOS. And here comes the captive son. Neb hitting Vintage on the point. That should be an easy kill for the Alari. It is. That outburst, though, not unfo uh, unfortunately. Not saving them this time around. And there's the kill Shikigami are after. And there is time on the point. 30 seconds to go. A stagger kill onto Haven. Not sure there's a chance now for Unk Inc. to come back into this one. Neb quickly switching over to Lucio, back to Eliari, and uh, point unlocked. And with two minutes and 45 seconds to go, they're still fighting an unbelievable up until battle. Yeah, that's a huge high noon kill onto Haven. I said that it didn't feel like that Flux was gonna get any value. The Suzu was there, they healed him up, but you can't heal up through a high noon. It just locked on and it just went down. And from there, they just didn't have enough on the side of Unk Inc to be able to hold on, but two and a half minutes, they do not have much going for them at all. They need to get things going fast because they also need to finish with time to be able to get this into overtime. Amazing with a pulse spot. There's the stick onto the Sigma. Should get healed up pretty quickly, but Harmé is pretty low. There's the Flux 2. Cowman, 70 HP, still manages to get away with that Flux scale onto Aspect. Vintage at least trades it over here, and with this rush spot, they can just kind of put Vintage on the payload, or at least Ryan amazing someone. He's with a pulse bomb. Oh, got Suzu, I would imagine, there. Didn't even hear the explosion go off. Two minutes to go, payload's moving. Peace now trying to match this payload progress. Trying to do Ryan amazing on the point. You can even give the pylon just to the tracer here, I'm just saying. Yeah, but they, you don't want to lose and you want to be able to hold this high ground. You can see Shikigami recognize they need to take them off the high ground, but they're fighting into a rush and an overclock. Oh, a couple of missed shots there from Haven. Does end up costing him his life. However, here comes the drop. Should be pretty easy clean that now, but on Gink. Nice little Suzu, didn't Blast. need it there. Oh, the, huh? Oh, okay. That was that ambitious, that I'll say, from Aspect. You know, obviously the idea is they're all stacked up, they're all in a small room, you can get a lot of value, but it's just too many tools to be able to, you know, counteract the value of that Flux, and now they don't have the Flux, they're not going to be able to combo it with the High Noon like they did last time. How do they get onto this high ground? They're going into an Alari ultimate. Ugh, this is getting from bad to worse for Shikigami. Right, amazing, a little bit off this Pulse one too as they try and push this high ground. Shikigami using the rush, forcing on King's retreats. Great man with the post one too. There's the captive son. Hit a couple of people in the back there. He's trying to pin down Vintage, but can't quite get the kill. And it's actually Vintage Ooh. who comes up with two off the back of that one. Even when he was sunstruck, that movement uh, speed getting low by about 40%. They're still lining up headshots. A double kill for the class. 30 seconds to go now, Scott. Unki have got another chance to contest. Yeah, the cards were so far back because they just were committing so many resources to the high ground that there is going to be another opportunity here. Now we get to see Cowman's Flux. Flux is good, but there's the sound bar and the high noon, Scott, to make sure people are backed off. Four meters to go now with Cowman dead. Looking pretty impossible now for this defense as Shikigami are going to lock it in. By the skin of their teeth in OT. Are they going to match the time back? No. Are they going to be able to finish with time? Unsure. But they at least get this second point. They need to finish with time if they want to stay in this map. Otherwise, you're just fighting for a draw. And fighting for a draw with three so minutes on the time bank is unlikely, right? So you, if you're Shikigami, it comes down to you need to have a couple of big plays. And the only big play that I see on the horizon is Ryan Amazing here with the Pulse Bomb. If they can force out the Suzu and find a big pick with this Pulse Bomb, anything's possible. Oh, oh no, he attached to the fence. <laughs> oh man. The deployable scenery. Jake would be livid, is all I'll say. <laughs> he saw that. Don't get into our Christmas Kings Row again. I don't oh, I'm not. Another yet. three hours. Yeah, another three hour conversation about Christmas Kings Row not being fair. All right, there's the rush. I'm down. I'm being, yeah, he instantly goes down to vintage. He's been clicking heads these last couple of points. There's Peace nice to be a follow up as well. Is Aspects Flux really going to change anything here? At least with the kill onto Cowman. It's a little bit more likely. Those spheres landing too. Direct body shots onto Neb, but they're able to back off. Looks like Cowman's death actually here is going to enable Shikigami to push forward, Scott, but there's no chance they finish with time left. Yeah. 
And now it's just about finishing. Just give yourself any opportunity. Right, amazing pulse bomb goes wide. Now they're only holding on to the sound, oh. right, which is so real. Oh, nice, Suzu. All good. All good. We're chilling. Oh, no. Vintage death. Four seconds to go. Sound barrier to try and turn the tides. Unkink. Know that what they're dealing with now, and they're just playing all the way back. An easy kill into Aspect, who is just trying to shield dance. There's the overclock, but before Noctis can get in his LOS, Haven secures the kill. And there we go, Unkink with an unbelievable finish there on Midtown. A three plus minute time bank managed to stop Shikigami just before that third point. Scott, what a, what a speed run. I mean, this yeah. is looking one way and one way only right now, and this is Unkink's game to lose. And that, that's just the value that you have of having an extra sub and why a lot of teams play this double flex support idea and you know players because it can just throw your opposition through a loop right we talked about it on the first map it actually felt like shikigami was pretty toe and toe when they were playing the arisa matchups or when they were sort of fighting it out head to head but you throw a little wrinkle in there which is the alari in this situation all of a sudden everything changes the flow of the game changes and all of a sudden the adaptation needs to be made by shikigami and they just didn't make it fast enough yeah, they just didn't. And uh, you know what? Maybe it was the Alari. Maybe it wasn't. Not entirely sure. But the double flexible really worked out. Even when uh, jumping over to the Zen, that last point. I mean, this is also Cowman and Aspect. It feels like they're going pretty even um, just with the fluxes and whatnot. But it's the DPS follow up a lot of the time. Either Vintage or Haven and Peace are just kind of going crazy. Ryan, Ama uh, Ryan Amazing. Their pulse bombs, they're landing. A lot of the time, they're getting Suzu'd. But um, uh, Vintage really saved them on the second point. But it is Haven and v a Peace for me that are really being the big difference makers here. Yeah, uh, 100%. I feel like, honestly, I, I can't even really isolate just like one player here for uh, Unk Inc. It just feels like every single player is doing their job. They're coming up with picks where they need to. They're being threats, right? Like even Kalman, yes, you can say Kalman is probably the player falling, but he's making himself such a threat that's enabling the rest of his team to step up. Is this, are we gonna see the flux opportunity? You can see the idea here, you know, he had Whoa. 300 health, maybe he can yeah. get it, but Cowman hits, him with, a a bag hits too? him with a bag as well. Nice, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Flaps all around for the little bag at the very end. I mean, you got it with that situation. Oh, you try and flux three in a room and I hit you with a rock? Yo, easy. Just so easy. look at the damage discrepancy from these two teams, right? That's, that's an un, uh, unassailable amount of damage. They need to find a way to mitigate this damage so that they can take even fights because there's no way right. you can go into a 17k damage differential in a map and expect to not lose. Yeah. Pretty rough. KDA is looking uh, pretty strong for Unk Inc. as well. Next map, I believe it was Esperanza. I'd have to I double check. It as well, yeah. Yeah. So no Sigmas here, I'd imagine. Like, yeah. well, can you play I, I would expect Neb out. I, I think Esperanza yeah, and Push in general, it's like control, it's like Flashpoint. You just really want a Lucio to be able to maneuver the rest of your team. If you're playing the Alari, there's a lot of flank angles. It's very difficult to sort of play as linear as we saw on Midtown. So we wouldn't be surprised to see Neb come out and paintbrush back in. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, obviously, the substitutions will come through in just a moment once the players have decided uh, who they want in and out. Yeah, I'm thinking, can you, you can definitely play the Zen here, but it. it feels pretty rough especially if the other team's playing like dying games. yeah 100% you can exactly then you just go dive and you just <laughs> like insta kill him like it feels pretty good and there you go exactly like you were called Scott Unk Inc update in the roster it's paintbrush back in so we're gonna see some Lucio here just like standard stuff Oh, interesting. Aspect is going to come out and solo in. in. Solo in. Dive, dive, and dive. I wonder if this does lead to, you know, the portrait's namesake of they're going to play a Winston. They can play faster. Maybe expecting, like, hey, playing slow isn't working for us in this matchup so far. Let's put in a Winston player. This is a great map for Winston because you can sort of dive effectively. You can sort of play great angles. So maybe this is going to be a huge mix up of how this series has been played so far. Right, Esperanza. Let's lock in, let's load in Unk Inc. on match point 2 0 after quite a dominant midtown. This is uh, Shikigami's map choice as well. And Scott, I mean, this group, like you mentioned at the very uh, the very beginning. Oh, nice lobsters. Do you, okay, so lobsters, lobsters are okay, but pigeons are no good. Yeah, why wouldn't lobsters not be okay? Lobsters are pretty weak. Well, those things, look, look, they, these are actually black holes that are looking into our, our souls. There's no, there's no like, yeah, but they're cute. Around they're cute like, little beady eyes, you know? Yeah, they are little, you know, pinchy adjacent, you know, little lobsters here. I, I don't know, adjacent. like, I, I, I think, yeah, this is kind of cute. But they're about to be eaten, so it's not as cute, right? 
Mm, or is yeah. it delicious? Do you like lobster? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm not going to eat those ones though. They look like they're chilling. Out of water and potentially being eaten in about five minutes. <laughs> All right. No dive here. Right, yeah, he's staying on the Arissa. Okay, they're going to stay solo, but they're going to go under the Arissa. Pretty much mirror compositions, except we're going to see Unk Ink on the Baptiste, like we saw on one round of Samoa, and Haven on the Cassidy once again. Yeah, no, uh, nothing crazy yet. No double flex. Yeah, like you Ooh. said, pretty much the same you were seeing She's on uh, the first map. Suzu is down. You can see them, like, kind of backing off now. No way Shigami wants to fight this. It's an important, like, thing when you're in these Orisa matchups. I, I was talking earlier about the Spear Spin, about the Fortify. Suzu is also a very heavily tracked cooldown. If, if Suzu is down, you want to be able to take that opportunity to engage. That's why you saw Shikigami back up, wait for their Suzu to come up, then they re-engage. Haven didn't see it coming, the lamp just a second too late, and that's going to be a first fight win to Shikigami. Easy clap. Just like that. All right, and Graveyard gets uh, their rush on line pretty early, and it, the benefit of winning that first fight too, very easy place to use the rush, because this corner can be quite frustrating to get around, especially if the enemy team does end up flooding out. Even though if you've got high ground, they can kind of jostle the bridge and uh, just stop the bot from pushing super far, so maybe she could have me want to go early. Yeah, I, I think you want to try and rip this rush as early as you can as soon as they commit to the fight, but the difficulty here is, they, as you said, they can get very close without committing to the fight, but it doesn't even matter if Vintage is just going to kill Peace without anything. Haven also going pretty damn low. There's the window. Yeah, just trying to force the Tracer off as well. Pretty easy disengage, however, for Shikigami. That's it, headshot through the window, though. There is the rush. Pretty late one. But it might be what they need. And uh, unfortunately, Cowman's on the wrong end of a, a bad time right now. There is the Terror Surge, and there is his swift death. Noctis has end up falling over to the ultimate, though. Oh, what a Terror Surge! Oh my word! Dragged Haven off the side of that high ground. I didn't think even Haven thought that was going to go that far. I don't know how Unk Inc. are winning this fight but they somehow came out ahead and with the bot because they had no positioning. They were the team to get picked first. I very much questioned that window when it came out from the Baptiste, but somehow able to trade back and forth. Maybe it's Noctis randomly getting caught in that Terra Surge, but you know, that saves them a lot of uh, the cart moving forward. It potentially even saves them the checkpoint. So big individual plays from Monk Inc. Post bomb for peace. See what he can get done. They're taking a lot of damages solo right now. Oh, Peace is just kind of laying into him at this comparison moment in time. Don't really want to pulse the Arisa, ideally. I want to pulse Vintage, though. That'd be quite nice. But there's the Suzu. Stops the damage coming through. Both sound barriers also utilized. This overclock from Vintage. Going to have to tear through some of that over health. He has spotted the Arisa, but taking a lot of damage from the disruptor shot. Oh. Same with the trace of this jump straight on top of them. Peace is just being an absolute menace in the back line. But Haven tries to take an aggressive angle and gets taken down by a right. Amazing. Now playing a little bit of defense is the Tracer for Shikigami. And Unking unable to get anything done there, but they do force Shikigami to use ultimates, but I mean, all for naught, really. I mean, you're getting this bot down this hill so close to the checkpoint. Peace is just a mosquito. He's just everywhere, just hounding everyone, putting on so much pressure, but it didn't come up to anything in the end. Eventually falls as well. So I like the idea from Unking there. I think Peace did a great job, but they just... At the end of the day, they didn't have enough legs to be able to hold the fight. They want to get the touch here before the checkpoint comes through, which is smart, but now they've put themselves in a terrible position, and now Cowman's used all of their cooldowns, and they're fighting into a Katsune rush. Oh, that lamp too. Oh, that hit the lamp post or something. I'm not sure what that hit, but it didn't go far enough to save Cowman. That is a checkpoint too for Shikigami. This is looking the exact opposite of what happened in the last couple of maps. Yeah, and, and you know, things like this can happen in, in any form of mix-up, right? You put in a play, you know, different tank play, even though they don't play that differently, can just sort of give you something different, maybe even calling, but Solo, as I said, presence being known in this series, gets a 3k with a Terra Surge, and now that's even more meterage on the board, up to 70 meters and counting. But also, we did see in the first round, if we go all the way back to the first round of Samoa, when they did play the Arisa matchup, Shikigami did have the edge for a majority of that round as well, so maybe they're just more confident in this matchup. I will escort the robot. So many ultimates on King, but just unable to get any of them like uh, utilized. Really, I mean, at the end of the day, fighting up into this high ground is really rough. Oh, Peace gets spear checked. 
Cheeky army now trying to rotate down to the bots. Pulse bomb. Where'd that go? Okay, well, nowhere apparently. Just on the bridge. There's the terror surge, and now the bot has been stolen away. Shikigami re-engaged. Sound barrier. As well as this overclock being used by Haven. A little bit of trade of ultimates there, but it puts Shikigami in down. control again with Kalman hitting the floor. Also on from Peace, even going a little bit wide. Still takes down the Tracer, but Shikigami just running away with this one. Just basically out-rotating on King. Yeah, and that's that's the big issue, is that Shikigami is just like, oh, okay, you want to fight for that high ground? We'll just go to the bottom. We'll just keep pushing. Rimezing did fall, so that means that they can't fight as evenly, and that's why, you know, Peace is able to eventually stop the bot. But now, once again, we get into the same loop. Shigami, they say, we'll take the high ground. How does Unk Inc. once again try and get this high ground? Because last time, it cost them a lot of ultimate sound barrier. Oh, no, no, AJ'd. I'm pretty sure that just got AJ'd. I think it did. Oh, oh you're right. brush. It was high in the air. The beat, the blaster did not hit the floor. That is rough. Unk Inc. lose their sound barrier. But Peace is making up for this one. Don't worry. Paintbrush, I got you, Chief. They're going to hold it. Nice little they Suzu. Could. Nah, I think you're better. They could have done, but I think with the Tracer and the Kiri, it's pretty hard to, pretty hard to get that one in. I'd love to see that Ajax again, because, yeah, it, it felt like it was going to go down. You know, we sort of fly into the camera, but never ended up coming. But that's a huge fight win. Even with the Ajax, Unkick are able to win the fight. So Shikigami, now they're the ones on the back foot a little bit. They're the ones who have to assail into this high ground. They have the Terra Surge and they have the Overclock, but both of those ultimates are hard to get value from while Unkink are able to just sit on this sort of high ground. Peace Ooh, somehow he's falls down, though. Oh, there is the rush behind me. Can in a decent spot to try and do some damage in the back line, but unfortunately just gets pushed away by Solo. Still with the Terra Surge in hand. Looking for that Soja. Does manage to get it. There's the Suzu. Stops all that damage going through. Now the high ground yeah. advantage for Shikigami. Yeah, that, that rush from Hanbei, it slowed things down, but it didn't give them any value. So they're still dueling back and forth, and this overclock gets ripped by Vintage. Looking for any picks. Paintbrush is the one who falls, getting very aggressive, trying to deal with it himself. Cowman tries to use the Terra Surge to stop the Vintage Overclock as well. Costs him his life. Vintage does eventually fall to peace, but it's already over. Already over. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go, Scott. Unk Inc. with quite the disadvantage in terms of a lead. I mean, you're thinking, what, like 60 meters, but they still need to get checkpoint. And with two and a half and minutes, that's not a lot of time to really do much. And with a big change from Unk Inc. going over to the SIG. What really just they, been uh, like, hey, you this, this is what we're better at. You know, this is where we are seem, to, seem to be finding value. Kalman just seems to be falling over and over again. So potentially slow things down, play around the Sigma. I don't love it on this map, but what they were currently doing wasn't working. So may as well switch things up. Haven with a decent lineup too with this overclock. Almost as soon as Haven popped that overclock there, Road got laid down. Yeah. So that's an instant back out from Monkey Cool. Oh, nice little Ooh. shot onto the Lucio. Noctis gets out of there though. Same with the rest of Shikigami. If once again, Skull kind of stolen the bot away from Monkey who now have to drop down to the low ground. And if you see the way Shikigami are playing, they're just playing reactive. They recognize they have a huge advantage. They don't need to be the ones going in first and using ultimates first. Every time Unkink uses an ultimate, they just react with one of their own. They have the sound barrier, and that's pretty much all they have for right now. Hanbin drops the rush. I expect the Noctis sound barrier to follow. There's a sound barrier from Noctis. Still on the high ground, dueling away with the Tracer. Solo just getting focused out the disruptor shot plus in the rush. I mean, you're just cowering around the bot, just hoping you can survive there. But Shikigami still in just such a commanding lead. And because these fights, they're so long, Scott, but they're also just so close to the midpoint. Like, Shikigami have got so much time to work with still. They've got a minute to really contend with. And Unking still needs to get a checkpoint. The big thing you need to be scared of if you're Shikigami is we see this time and time again on push. You lose this one fight. If they get this checkpoint, they're able to hold this high ground. All of a sudden, it only takes them one or two more fights to be able to control and close out this map. You can see Solo trying to close the distance, has the Terra Surge, but they're kind of in no man's land with no more cooldowns. Yeah, like and you said, now the Terra Surge map with the bot. They flipped. There is a Flux, there is a Sound Barrier. However, Shikigami might just want to wait this one out, Scott. They've still got a lot of meters to kind of play with, too. They can force them into a position where they need to use ults to stay in OT. Oh, oh he's dead. that is a fantastic kill. Shikigami lose their tank. Now they need to make a decision. Just to int onto the points. Or just get out. 
they're gonna just get out and the three of them do manage to do just that but now we're in an interesting spot you see Kalman tries to use the flux to catch him off guard but doesn't hit anything and is now in the worst it hit ever nobody Kalman is so low no. there's this sound bear from paintbrush and it is all fallen apart having getting pushed away and nice little double tap onto the Arisha's skull but still sitting in that terror surge Vinci takes the skies and takes him down and shit Kagami are gonna wipe the floor with Unk Ink no chance for the Lucio to touch, and Shikigami aren't out of this just yet. Rough. Oh, my soul. I, okay, I love the idea by Cowman. The idea, there's three of them, you can isolate them, but missing that flux and then being so far out of the position, like they had a pretty even ultimate fight coming up for that final fight. It could have gone either way. The flux is a huge ultimate, anything can happen, but trying to all in, then the sound barrier coming out a second late as well. That's, that's a tilter of a fight that, you know, yes, obviously the map went away from them for a majority of that uh, those team fights. It would have been a monumental comeback if they were able to win that map, but if there was ever a team fight or a situation to happen that's going to rattle a team, it's something like that. Well, so Vass is the map up next. Hey, still be ahead out high if you're uh, Unk Inc. You had two extremely good maps back to back. We'll see if Shikigami can continue this, though. I mean, do you still come out with a Sigma here? I mean, you, you can't really, can you, on uh, Suravasa? It's possible, but... Yeah. You could try. Like, honestly, every time they've played in the Arisa matchup, it doesn't feel like Cowman is anywhere near as comfortable. It feels like Cowman seems to be getting their cooldowns forced dramatically earlier. They're the ones to fall, and it just doesn't feel like the team plays around it anywhere near as, like, as well. And you think about this map right here, Esperanza, they were getting held a majority of the map, and then they go Sigma, which is another map that you wouldn't think Sigma is good, but that's when they started to find some value. Really nice stuff from Vintage. Do you see these clips? Just coming alive on the Soge, which is uh, always important when your DPS actually click on some heads. Really nice stuff. Hey, and there's the uh, KDAs and the stats for you there as well. Okay, doing a little bit more damage there. Same with the mitigation. Um, a lot less healing though. That Shikigami. Don't always tell the tale of uh, stats. The 16k healing is very low for a 10 minute game, right? So I, I think what the, that sort of goes to show that like the fight wasn't really happening anywhere in their favor. They were just always fighting up your battle. People are just getting one shot. If, if you're not able to heal up the damage, it doesn't mean it's usually means you're not taking effective fights. So I don't know what's happened in that map, but hey, reset, go on to the next one. All right, we're going to jump to a quick break. Get the teams ready. Suravasa up next. Don't go anywhere. Shikigami versus Unk Inc. Welcome back. Shikigami versus Unk Inc. As we load into the next map, it's Suravasa, picked by Unk Inc. at the beginning of the series. Pretty uh, pretty close one so far. Wouldn't have had it any other way either. 
is uh, this elimination match here. Scott, one of these teams, will be going home. And uh, one of these teams gets to face, well, has the lovely honours of facing Pirates in Pyjamas <laughs> in their next match to try and secure that spot in the main event. Uh, oh. Sorry, I wasn't listening to you, Jack. I, I was very it's distracted pocket. by a lot of important things. There's a lot of animals in a lot of different maps. Now I'm starting to realize, you know? We, well, we had a pigeon on Midtown. Bro's like, lobsters. there are lots of animals. I didn't realize that. D uh, you guys want to know a fun fact that was given to me by my best friend, Zoe? Do you know that <laughs> lobster eyes are built so uniquely that they actually help scientists to analyze far off stuff that happens in space, like supernova collisions and solar winds way beyond our galaxy? So they're putting lobsters on the telescope and be like, yo, yeah, what's going like, on? Yo, what do you see? <laughs> what do you see? <laughs> Let me know. What, what do your elven eyes see? <laughs> what do your lobster eyes see? <laughs> Man, I need lobster for real though. I need lobster eyes, actually. I need, I need, I just need good eyes, honestly. You know, my eyes are getting shot, I'm getting old, but... Yeah, no, the, the young whippersnappers get this one going because we actually have both teams playing Arisa and they're not going to come out and play the Sigma. Both teams on the Kiriko, both teams on the Sojin, so complete mirror matchup. So it's all about the cooldowns of the points. So it's getting very low. Oh, Vintage. That was a very good railgun shot. Unfortunately, Haven didn't end up falling. Point does get Katoi on King. Shikigami unable to kind of hold on to that point. No Batiste either, Scott. There's a small little change there as well. No Unk Ink Batiste. It's all on that Kiriko, especially for this map. Feels like you really need it. Vintage going a little bit too far forward. Receives the Suzu. It's actually Ryan Amazing who goes down first, but they end up trading it back with Haven. Vintage trying to get the kill on the front line, but oh my word, the pressure Kaman's putting on right now to Vintage. Kind of shrugging off, but that DPS passive doing a lot of work, making sure they go down quick, sharp. Although Peace landing that Pulse Bomb, that's a bit of AoE damage on Graveyard. There might be a little double kill as well. Yes, it is. Peace coming up huge in that fight with three. And uh, one of the things that is as old as the test of time is that if you lose the first fight, but you give up the cap, it's one of the worst things that you can do because Shikigami, especially on Flashpoint, you might not even get a second fight, like effective fight. You can see Solo's running to the point, but they're going to have to rush in and use cooldowns very early. So if you're Shikigami, this is almost like a let's not use ultimates unless they get a pick. Well, they do manage to get the touch for OT, but such an easy point to use the rush on. And with Vintage already dead, surely this point is already over. I can see in the back line there, Peace is trying to harass the supports, but there's the Terror Surge, but only, only for a little while longer can you really survive in that after you've used all your CDs. And that will be point. Unk Inc. off to a good start. Not bad, not bad. Yes, Shikigami, they use the Terror Surge, they use the Pulse Bomb, but it's not the worst in the world. When did they use the rush? That must have been the fight pre previous to that one as well that I must have missed. But now Shikigami, this fight, it, it felt like that first point was over in the blink of an eye. And now Unkink, they're going to have positioning once again. They, they have the high ground. This is what both teams always want to fight for because it just gives you so, such an overlook over the, the capture point. And you can see Shikigami, they're going to fight for it. They've got a good position again. Just kind of the rotations and the positional play here from Unkink. Kind of standing up strong, like they did in the first couple of maps. Shikigami, like you said, Scott, they'll be closer to their rush. But there's the overclock, Haven receiving that sound barrier, and somehow Haven weaving that ult through to the back line, just sniping Vintage. And that's another fight won for Unk Inc. And I think that's the fifth ult so far from Shikigami that hasn't found any value, right? But like, and that's that's the one thing that I think is hurting them the most. Feels like they're playing incredibly reactively to try and respond to what Unk is do Unk Inc is doing, but they're just always on the back foot. So they need to get a change up in the way that they're playing this matchup because right now they're just getting completely outmaneuvered and outmacroed. They're gonna walk into a terror surge too. So if you want to take the high ground, it's gonna be pretty rush. hard to. Terror Surge rush. rush and then walk into another rush, it's going to be difficult to win. Fish taking a lot of damage, there's a pulse one from Ryan Amazing. A lot of tiny overwatch happening right now. It doesn't matter, because the Terror Surge did enough to find two. Ryan Amazing and Solo still coming up with a lot of damage and kills, but all for naught really at the very end of it, unless Ryan Amazing hits uh, three one clips back to back. One of those one clips has to be on Orisa, which is uh, very unlikely. Yeah, you know, yeah, as long as Orisa doesn't use Fortify, Shield Spin, or look away from the Tracer, right, uh, yes. you know, Raya Amazing could get those three. 
Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Ever tried to one clip an Arisa? I just think it's impossible. Okay, so you would have to assume that this is going to be Shikigami accepting that they're not going to win this fight and they're not going to touch. What? Never mind. Lol jokes. They're going to go for it once again. You got to at least have a one last try. In with uh, the Terra Surge too. Oh, but with Vintage dead, I don't think that Lucio is long for the world either. Kaman taking a lot of aggro in the front line. That space being going a little bit wide. Peace with the pulse and sticks to the Terra Surging. Orissa actually results in the kill. So they're still finding a lot of damage though. Enough for uh, Hanbei to go down. Oh, good headshot from Graveyard, but there it is. There's the cap. Unk Ink. I mean, is this just it, Scott? I mean, 0% on two points back to back, Shikigami? I, uh, they might just go down. Unk Ink have got uh, another priority position on point two. Yeah, and, and that's the cost of, uh, of taking the fight at 99% is that you just lose the position. If you lose that fight, you commit ultimates, you lose ultimates and you lose positioning for the next fight because now Unk Inc, they have positioning. We have Cowman already set up on the point, shooting, poking back and forth. And now Unk Inc are the team that has the ultimates coming up. They have the overclock, they have the sound barrier, so they can do whatever they want. They can take as long as they want. Shikigami, they do not want to lose control of this point or sort of capture of this point before, as this starts to unlock. I mean, the overclock angle here might go a little bit wild. Oh, there's one shot. Dodge is out of the way of that pulse one and two. That was Plyton is right in front of them. No slide available, though, so an easy sound barrier coming in through for Shikigami, but they were met with a terror surge and a rush. Every single time Shikigami have a plan, they cannot execute it. Unkink has all of the answers, the test that they're uh, presenting them. And the rush was used there at the end. Yes, Unkink used a lot of ultimates, but a lot of big ones by the wayside for Shikigami. Now it's going to be on Vintage. We've, we've sung Vintage's praises on this Sojourn and so multiple times throughout this series. Vintage has to come up huge with this overclock. Needs to give them a window to get back into this map and keep the series alive. All right, amazing. Oh, almost got one shot there by the spear and some additional damage thrown on top. It's the fight that they need to win, Scott. That is right. He's getting close. Right, amazing, Ooh. almost with it. Oh, what? Okay, Lucio come out of nowhere and just finished off peace. Okay, one man down. One v five v four now, on the point. Kaman still taking a lot of that damage, but getting perma healed. You can see so how much healing. healing. It's ridiculous, even with this DPS passive. Surely the Arisa goes down next. Surely. Finally, Solo gets the kill. My word, that was absurd. How long Kaman survived there. And that, that's percentage on the board, and Hanbei also got so much of a Katsune rush as well from just permanently healing Kalman sitting on the point. So they can just build up all of their ultimates. They're getting close to four, almost a five with Paintbrush as well, but Shikigami have a wealth of ultimates on their own. So if they can do a better job of playing the macro, using the right ultimates at the right time, anything can happen. Nice dodge. Close bomb for peace. Yeah, good dodge. Four, five ultimates for Shikigami. So they cannot let it. Solo to go down. Like they gotta save him. Well, there's the sound barrier to top him up with some over health. As Vintage just lobs these rail guns in, trying to get him past the Arisa. Pulse bomb drags the Arisa in, but Solo's still super low. I mean, permanent harassment on the side here from Peace, but eventually Kalman ends up falling over. Shikigami now determined to keep themselves in this series. And that was not bad if you're Shikigami here. They were able to hold on to the rush, so they have a big tool to be able to deal with Unkink if they come in. But Kalman's going to switch over to Doomfist. They want to end it here and now. And Haven, this ends now. If anyone's going to do it, it's going to be the Sojourn. Yeah, Doomfist has such a hard time as well against the Arisa. Here's the rush, matched instantly. Unkink still with a sound barrier advantage. As Kalman had to go for the retouch, and here it is. Here is the overclock. He's trying to find targets, but the Trace is giving him the slip. Right, amazing with the help of Solo there taking it down, the ulting Sojourn, but it's not over just yet. Kalman has fallen, but Peace has a pulse one in a couple of seconds and a couple of kills to his name as well. 10% away and a fortify and a spear being already used from Solo could be a prime target, but Painbrush is actually the one in focus for Peace just trying to save his Lucio. Solo super low, another spear spin comes up just in time, but it's Ryan amazing that comes up clutch, saving Solo one HP. Shikigami hold on by the skin of their teeth. That was all Rhyme Amazing's fight. Shikigami saved by their Tracer player as they secure this round or this point and keep themselves in the game. Valiant effort by Peace on the Tracer. Peace almost clutches that up. If Solo had just fallen, anything could have happened because it would have been a 2v1 on the point. But now we're going to have Unking taking position once again. They have no ultimates. They committed everything to try and win that round. And now they're the team that are in the hole. Of oh, they used too much. 
and maybe you could say it was all for naught and it was a mistake and with peace falling here as well it's gonna get from bad to worse because unking they're just gonna, they're gonna go in knowing that they're at a 4 to be 5 disadvantage well they tried but a quick speed away a couple of little boops there make sure shikigami gets out of this one scot free Pulse bomb for Rai Amazing as well. So many ults for Shikigami. They're in a good spot to defend too. Really yeah. easy point to get Terra Surge down. And then they can play so defensive here. You can see they're just rotating the map every time you see uh, Unkink move around. Kalman's trying to force it a little bit. Goes in with the spear spin. Oh, Solo is now the one. Gets it too aggressive. Oh, Does manage to live, but so now they don't have control of the point. They don't, don't want to make this flip. Oh, there's the Russia trying to put him back on, and they do so just in time. And now Unking forced to disengage. There is the Terra Surge. His paintbrush square in the chest, reducing to about 50% HP. And here comes the Sound Barrier, but unable to save Vintage. Shikigami's beat, not finding too much just yet. And it's actually Unking that come out on top of this fight. Wow. This Sound Barrier from Noctis uh, just ignored pretty much. That was just so much damage coming out. Yeah, that one rush from Unking and Hanbei just gave him such a huge advantage on the point. That could all probably lead back to the fact that Solo taking so much damage trying to aggress onto the point onto Kalman. and Graveyard has to use the rush early. And then from there, they just kept committing ultimates to try and turn the fight in their favor, and it just never came. And now, Macro flips once again. Unking with a bunch of ultimates and holding the point. 60%, and they'll close out this series. Cool. There you go. Overclock. Into the skies is vintage. A lot of people lining up. There's the spear to dissuade him from pushing even forward. There's the sound barrier. Must have got speed up. I don't know. I saw him activating that quite a while ago, but it will end up connecting with the rest of the team. Beat hits from Paintbrush. No stagger on the Lucio too will be extra nice. Oh, yeah. very right? nice Maybe. because that's one of the few people that are able to actually touch this point. Eighty percent. This is final fight. Yeah, it's quite amazing. It's chance now. This is it. I mean, you have to touch it for the Tracer. Noctis only just spawned, Scott. Yeah, and if they catch the Tracer, you can see uh, Ryan Mason is going to try and go around the left side, but I think Peace is going to already match it. They, they're just going to They don't touch it. They don't touch. They just don't touch, Scott. Shikami can't get, get there in time. That late kill onto Noctis was all that they needed. And Unk, Ink, come up with the win. A 3-1 victory, eliminating Shikigami. Wow. And honestly... I think Unking just played a better series. It felt like they had a much better understanding of how they wanted to play all of these matchups. I really liked what we saw when we saw Neb coming in to sort of play something different on Midtown as well. And even in that final map, it felt like they were just firmly in control throughout the entire series. Uh, there were. I did like the sign of lives, of course, that we saw on Esperanza, though. I think Shikigami had a really, really good game there. I loved how they just out-rotated Unking, like, time and time again. And that was probably also the one map where they found a little more value, uh, you know, from their alls. But overall, Unking, very, very dominant performance. Um, should I be the one saying it? Maybe not. Chat was wrong. Oh, oh my, yeah. you're gonna call out chat like, it's always something wrong, call I'm just gonna say gotta it's call always something wrong, Gotta call out the chat, you know, they call out, they call us out all the time. All the time, yeah. So we gotta savor yeah. those little victories. <laughs> <laughs> kind of true, though. So if they bully us, the only solution for us is to bully them back harder. Yeah, that's true. That's not, that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the looks here from, uh, Unkink though. I mean, playing the Alari, pretty bold, I'd say. Like, the hero isn't uh, really known for being perma meta right now, but coming out with different looks on Midtown, it you know catches people off guard. And what a push too! An unbelievable. I do, I do love that you do sound like you're getting commission from selling us on Alari. Uh, yeah, it does feel like that. Right? It's, it's, like a, it's like a pyramid so. scheme Please, God. that's going Please. on right now. Is Jack tries Alari. to sell us to buy Alari stocks? But <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I agree. Like, and these are the types of things you know. Whenever a patch comes through, it might seem crazy to play Alari, but Alari did get some pretty significant buffs in this most recent patch. It's probably not as much of a troll as we've seen it be in the past and you can see it was played to perfection by Neb so maybe we'll see more teams sort of buying into playing the double flex support with an Alari because as Jack said you need something with high healing output paired with it but overall yeah anytime you have a different trick up your book that's something that oppositions need to be careful of yeah and they'll be facing a Pirates in pajamas in their decider match and that's who uh, Shikami ended up going down to in a 3-1 fashion. This group has been pretty damn close. 
I don't rate their chances, though, going up against them. I mean, Paris in Pajamas also took M80 to a map number five. So you're thinking it's probably going to go Paris way. But the way Unkink played today and their ability to rotate as well really impressed me. Their rotations on Midtown were ridiculously good. And uh, even on Esperanza as well, even though they ended up going down. I mean, if we want to use, like, transitive properties, Shiki actually played them twice. They also played them right. in Swiss. 2-1, uh, uh, I think, was the result in Swiss. And then 3-1 in the groups so shiki managed to just take one Unk was very dominant against shiki so pirates win right yeah they, 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 <laughs> so why are we even gonna nah. play the match honestly we should just we cancel just the match that, and just yeah. use transitive properties to determine the outcome of the rest of the matches you're welcome uh, yeah <laughs> I, I, I think this will be a close match. I think Pirates in Pajamas into Unk Inc. will be very interesting, but player of the match for this one in particular was Haven. Reinhardt in the top left is a, is a questionable choice, but the Sojin, nonetheless, <laughs> absolutely crazy. Uh, <laughs> finding a lot of big picks in this series. Yeah, the absolute like... unwarranted hate on Reinhardt. <laughs> well, why is there a Reinhardt in the it. top left? Because that's the favorite like, character. The best player it's who's the, like, yeah, I play tank. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, I play tank. My favorite. What a troll. Yeah, you can like Ryan, but also just are mad on hit scan. That's fine. I, I think fine. Hey, Haven's up. performance really, really stood out on the first map. But overall, I think the yeah. first map was just just such a cohesive showing that the star performance that Haven had almost went under the radar due to how amazing the rest of the team was. Yeah, it, it, and I said this earlier when we were talking about it. Like, it didn't really feel like we anyone on Unk Inc was just like overachieving you know sometimes when you see a series you're like this player went nuclear and that's why they won the series yep. it didn't feel like that it felt like it across the board they were just playing a consistent smart game as jack was saying earlier so that's what impressed me the most about unkink yeah, Vintage Same. tried to take him down, like, but I mean, Haven at the very end was just getting the better shots. Vintage had a fantastic map on uh, Midtown, like a lot of high impact kills on the cast. But I mean, the Sojin cast thing, like you mentioned before, Scott, it's like it's personal preference at this point. But the Sojin, when it really does pop off, like it really shows like the railgun accuracy and just like being able to not even like insta kill someone with it. If you land a headshot or even if you land a body shot, it's so easy for so many other people to follow up on that. So, yeah, no surprise prizes there a lot of surgeons are gonna get player of the matches that's just how it's been. that's just how it's gonna be yeah i mean the cool classic if it's not tracer then it's sojourn right exactly yeah that looks cool, <laughs> that looks cool someone has to well it's the explosive performances from both of those heroes uh, that uh, we just can't cannot give them some credit let's actually dive into the winning cons to hear how they got it done taxi what are the use yeah, so close to you i could touch hard here yeah. We should we should fight early. Yeah, they, if someone you know, does the point, we take four v five. We should fight early. Yeah. Okay. 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 They okay. have the tech point, so we're looking for the four v five. I'm fighting Trey right side. I'm fighting Trey right side. She's looking at us. Looking at us. Ignore her. Ignore her. Go, go with team. Go yeah. with team. Peace. Ignore her. Ignore her. I'm upset. I'm upset. Oh. Nice. Good job. There it is. That was the winning moment for the team. And now we do have Peace joining us for a quick chat. First things first, congratulations on the dub. You came out on top. Dominant showing overall. However, I'm going to be the one person I do want to chat about Esperanza. Uh, most of that map looked, you know, very much uh, to be going in Shiki's favor. Why do you think they were in control uh, for so much of it? And what adjustments uh, did you guys try to make other than that Sigma? Um, well, we currently, I don't play that much. Ryan was uh, gone for today, so I had to try to pick it up. Uh, I know Cowman, I did some little funny stuff with the Flux. <laughs> but I think our neutral, our, our, neutral, our, our neutral flights were a little, a little bad, but they're a pretty good team, so I'm not surprised to take a map. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you not throwing Kalman under the bus. I would have thrown Kalman straight under the bus. Yeah. If someone asked me about Esperanza, I'd be like, Kalman threw that without flux. But you know, it happens sometimes. Oh, sorry, you're a bad teammate, Scott. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just going to point yeah, out. I know, I know. That's, why, that's why I'm here now. Uh, uh, but, peace. Honestly, uh, I did want to ask you. Yeah, I was going to ask you real quick. Like, how do you rate your chances uh, against Pirates in Pajamas? Obviously, that is the match for the main event. Like, how are you feeling uh, stacking up against them? Well, I've been a lot of my friends are on PIP. I rank for them a bit. Uh, kind of a vendetta against some of the, one of their players. Okay. Um, but I think maybe it's me. Maybe it's Ryan. Can't let, can't let the ops know. But uh, <laughs> I think I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident that 
It's gonna be close. Pip is a really good game day team, but I'm fully confident that we can win. 100%, 100%. Well, I actually want to ask you a little bit something about the Neb sub because we saw it on uh, Midtown, plays the Alari. Is this something that you guys like to do on very linear maps? You play the double flex port, play a little bit of Zenyatta, a little bit of Alari. Do you do that to sort of throw people off guard? Is it a bit of comfort? Like, what's the thought process behind this pick? Uh, well, we're not thinking too much. Uh, yeah, you can say we, we, we play Neb with the more of a a Lari sided maps, so like longer range, like some other, we play them on like one other two maps. Midtown is one of our uh, Nebron exclusives that we just put him on a Lari, me and him, hold on, hold on the right angle. Well, you got a big fan here with Joss. Uh, couldn't oh, shut yeah. up about the Alari pig, in fact, trying to sell <laughs> us all on it. <laughs> the Alari's awesome. I, I hope you guys keep playing it, actually. It's such a fun hero, but we don't see it often at all. It feels, it doesn't feel as strong, maybe, as uh, I'm kind of leading on. Like, do you guys rate the pick a ton? Um, like, how do you feel it works in the current meta? Because you just get run over if you're against, uh, like, a good team of Lucio. Okay, without not saying too much, can not let everyone yeah, know? Of course, but of course. We, we we've been talking about like uh, teams if they play Brig. Uh, we we've been like talk. We talked about it for like an hour yesterday because we, we played in the Face It uh, Master League thing and we ran into a team that played Brig and we actually got full health. Perfectly. Oh wow! Well. But okay. we talked about it for a while. I think we have a pretty good idea of how we should be able to play it now, and I I am very confident in our Larry comp now. Awesome. We love to hear and see the confidence as it translates really well into the gameplay. Peace, thank you so much for joining. Best of luck in your next match against the, the Pirates in Pajamas. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you for having me. Of course, great to hear from Peas. Uh, they've just kept themselves alive with their team and they have one more hurdle in the way of the main event. Now we're heading into our second match here in the NA region. It's going to be the first elimination match of Group D. Vice versus Nightmare after this.
heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. That's right, more Overwatch for all of us, and that's always a good thing. And more new faces, teams signing up, of course, for the Face it League, so it's going to be exciting. And you too can sign up. The sign-ups actually close on April 25th, so there's still a little bit of time to get in there. No, Costa, I won't be saying anything about you. I know, I was... I, I know I, you were waiting. I, you said April 25th, and I went, I went, what date is today? Okay, April 20th, <laughs> so okay, I'm going to have five days to lock this in. <laughs> Have you not just, signed up yet? I thought you did. Did we, uh, I, I, did I mishear we, you? Well, we kind of did, but I'm the one like organizing it. So I like, I so probably you didn't have on, or okay. like, you know, maybe I didn't hit the like actual check-in button. So everyone should go double check that you checked in for the face at lead. I'll oh, see you in stage two, buddy. You haven't checked in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait to me. see you excel in stage two. It's going to be a great old time. <laughs> now, uh, two other teams we haven't seen a match of, uh, which might be new to the scene, if you will, uh, are Vice and Nightmare. They will be going at each other in their elimination match today. Both actually went down 3-0 you know, in their opening match against uh, other uh, teams in the group. Sentences. Yeah. I'm very tired. No, you're good. <laughs> My brain I mean, students of the game in FMCL, That's they're right. just so good. Yeah. They really are. So, like, neither of those teams were the favorite to win their opening match. So now they yeah. get to scrap it out. Uh, looking at the Vice roster here, number four seat, uh, and, of course, uh, Hinged, you know, a very dominant Lucia player. So might have seen Hinged around town. Yeah. I, 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 both of these teams have, like, pretty solid players, right? Like, not enough yeah. to be able to fight with students of the game or FMCL, but as you said, like, to keep their dreams alive, they just have to try and find a way to sort of find this win. And then as we head over to Timeless Nightmare, this is a team that, honestly, I, I, is this like, would you call them the or oh yeah of the NA region, where it's like, I kind of don't know what to expect. Their names are hilarious. Like, they got Salami Boy 200 over here. Dude, uh, I, I, yeah, look Salami at the heroes Boy. they've chosen. Like, this is probably going to be a little chaotic, to say the least. Shout out Salami Boy. <laughs> it reminds me of a uh, hot, the hot babe and cool boy. <laughs> you see, hot babe and cool boy bro broke up though. That what? Abs Why? Abs isn't, on the, abs isn't on the team anymore, bro. Oh, or like they're man. on the wrong team now. It's so sad. The breakup oh, to betrayal. end all breakups, man. The yeah, the ultimate betrayal. See her first on uh, OWCS. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Uh, mainly because Bash Domain's starting. <laughs> so I don't know if you can call them uh, like that. Oh yeah, but it will still be pretty fun regardless. Dirt obviously locking the hog right now. See if a uh, timeless nightmare can come out on top. Bastion on this map, Scott. Thoughts on this? Thoughts on this one? Not bad because you can kind of like play on this back mini. You can play around when you sort of like switch your forms and do a ton of damage. Uh, but overall, I would say about a three out of ten. So it's good for Bastion overall, but in terms of like actually being a good hero, unlikely. As we're gonna see Timeless Nightmare roll out on the Roadhog Moira Bastion. Let's see how Vice deal with this one. I mean, being real though, the Bastion. Being real. What, uh, what defensive countermeasures do you have? Because the Hog is not it. Unless Hog randomly gets a shield at some point. Well, I think the best Bastion countermeasure is they can't do damage if they're dead. You know, that's kind of the thing. So Damn, if, they, if they don't die, then you kind of you kind of fall over. So it can be a little difficult. As you can see, they're trying to control this little pillar. Oh, oldest trick in the book. Yo. Oh, oldest trick in the book. NVM is down the... Oh, There's another. no way. There's and no another. way Dirt just hit that again. My goat. Oldest My goat trick dirt. in the book, 2x, actually. Oh, and another one. Is Dirt just the best? Why? Well, I, 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 I don't really know what's going this on here. might yet. be the best Hog player to ever exist apart from Nozzle, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. And Evermore, obviously, the only player to ever get 5 there. Dude, look at Bastion Maid's positioning. They don't I'm know sorry, how is that a 180 hook? Uh, you just pulled him to a different dimension. 
I swear when I play Roadhog, my hooks don't work like this. It, it, it feels like a completely different game, but we're gonna see Salami Boy fall over to the Javelin of Azur. That might be a flip on the point. I feel like once they lose positioning, it's very difficult for Dirt to walk up. Never oh mind. my god, never mind. He's just the GOAT 3x. Surely you don't stay here as the Orisa with no healers. All good. And Axe just uh, has no healing. Just... Yeah, because they're all dead, bro. They're all getting yeah. hooked. They can't even cap. Is anyone going to be able to contest this? Are they going to go for it? Oh, yeah, we do have a contest from the yep. Tracer player. Yep. All good. There's the cap. We're fine. Maybe for now. Okay, NVM doesn't find anything with this overclock, but here comes the Bastion ult. Any chance you getting out? Yes, especially with the sound barrier and a little speed up there using that uh, slide. Dirt pretty low. Taking a breather real fast. Deal with the hook in hand. Can use it whenever. Same with the trap too. A little quick flip around here though as Dirt tries to find yet another oh, open Oh, room. goodbye. Straight into Bastion Main's line of sight. Wait, did they just no, go for... No, no, no. What oh, am I witnessing? What am no. I witnessing? What am I witnessing? Okay, it was better than what I, what I thought happened. I thought the Orisa went for the play where you jump off the map and then you pop the Terra Surge and then you try and pull them down with you, which would have been hilarious nonetheless. But unfortunately, Salami Boy just making a big play, booping the Orisa. And this is just, it feels like Vice has just not had an opportunity to take a fight on their terms at all. They're just getting hooked, they're getting pushed around, people are falling. Because theoretically, the Vice composition should be better, but so far, not paying off. And Soft's going to fall down on the other side as well. Um, so, Jack? I think Bash and Hog might be meta on this map, like, actually. <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> I've seen enough, maybe? I mean, okay, okay. Is Dirt gonna get another... Okay, we're good. We're all, we're all fine. Sound barrier in. Bash and Mame is on the side. No right click available, but that turret form did a whole bunch of damage and someone's still gonna have to touch. Doesn't look like anybody is gonna be able to do it, though. As the coal comes out, and yeah, I'm ready to call it here, Scott. I think Bastion Hog might be meta on Sanctum. It just reminds me of ranked games. Like, everyone's had this ranked game where you're playing a composition that you think is good, right? You're playing like Orisa, you got a Kiriko, you're like, yeah, we're playing the meta heroes, okay? We've got this unlocked. They're playing Roadhog Moira, there's no way we lose and then you lose and you're like my face went and you just like don't know what to do because it doesn't feel like what the what the timeless nightmare are doing should work right that they should be able to you know you should be able to punish them for their picks but if they're just doing wacky stuff and you just can't preempt it and you're just not able to play your style it just feels oppressive and almost impossible to play into so move over to shrine you would think the roadhog wouldn't work as well here there's less cliffs to hook people off you got to close more distance Surely. <laughs> Surely. He says. Clueless. Clueless, perhaps. All right. I see what uh, Dirt can get going here on the Hog. To be fair, it's pretty uh, disgusting when you meet a good Hog player in ranked. Yeah. He's just like, just I can't do piece. anything. I just can't do anything. I'm just like perma stuck in this like never ending like death loop of getting hooked and then getting sent back to spawn. And you can see Timer's Nightmare, they're just having to play around the, the sort of sentry form of Bastion Main and the hogs, uh, the hog hooks, right? As soon as those cooldowns are done, they can play a little bit aggressive, but other than that, they have to respect it because otherwise they're just going to get hooked and lose a player and oh, lose it mean, goes down. I mean, yeah. You knew, like, it's like, how did I get myself that old, like, meme format? How did I get myself into this situation? As the Lucio beeps his head around the corner. Skier gets two? Skier does get two. No, oh, no, there's a hook. Definitely. And Dirt still exists, and he's kind of the goat, so... All good? Yeah, and it, I, I, I'm going to say uh, in terms of bias, I need to see them play more aggressively. It feels like they're kind of just like waiting around until someone get hooks. Like like in that fight in particular, how many hooks did Dirt throw before he finally hit one, right? It's taking too many fights and Vice is just giving them too many opportunities to eventually find that pick. As soon as they see a cooldown down, they need to start playing aggressively because that's what this composition is so strong at with the Orisa. Right. Well, they've killed Wait, the Bastion made? Uh, oh my god. Bastion made's one. Couldn't be lower. He could be, really. I mean, he could have zero HP, and he does now. Salami Boy in trouble. Sloth with a 
Aggressive post bomb. In Salami does manage to slip out of there. Star still hot on the tail though. Turns his attention towards Dirt now. Healed up with Coalescence. MVM does go down. Unfortunately Ooh. to a trap of all things. And that Arisa 1 HP but still kept up. That Coalescence unfortunately not netting them a kill. Timeless Nightmare. They are going to lose that point. Yeah, I don't, don't really know how but this is really dangerous matter. advice. Sky can't go down. It's Salami boy chasing him down. This is extremely dangerous. Losing a battle to a Moira. There's the healing orb. There's the kill. Good boop out of the healing orb's range. But Thomas Nightmare Scott. I mean, they're almost back to full force and the cap. They committed so many abilities and cooldowns to try and punish those three players. As soon as they didn't kill them, you're playing against a Lucio Moira Tracer. They're just not gonna ever fall over. And then Vice were the ones who started losing members. So even though they get the flip, it instantly goes back to Timeless Nightmare. Soundbarrow for both teams. Full spot. But the problem is, Bastion main has ult almost. 10% to go. Well, fortunately for Vice, Bastion ultimate is probably not going to find any value. What? That was a very hard waiting for. Okay, okay. <laughs> Menacingly. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> hey, it's just vibe it, just vibe it. Okay. Here come the sound barriers. Dirt's already down, same with Sloth. And VM just be able to rip through this overhealth. Pretty easy stuff. Salami boy fall. That should just be the fight, surely, with uh, Bastion men going down, but still timeless nightmare, Scott. One fight territory, you're thinking, Hello. what, they Bastion ult? Probably not going to get much, no, but this Coalescence, this is going to be the big difference maker. Sky needs this rush, like, ASAP. Yeah, the, the, this rush is going to be very important for them to be able to just, like, live through the sheer amount of damage that's going to come from just all the ultimates from timeless nightmare. The Coalescence, it isn't the strongest ultimate, but it's just so good at changing the tempo of a fight. It does damage, it does healing. It's difficult to fight into unless you have a Katsune Rush, but Bastion Mane just getting a little too aggressive there. So I'll stay able to punish, and this should be another reset coming out for Timeless Nightmare. This guy's going to be able to get the rush now. Guaranteed, Scott. Timeless Nightmare just going for a big reset. I'm not sure they're going to Surely they can't catch Dirt on the rotate. I mean, they're trying. They're trying. It's just too dangerous to try and get that pick, right? There, there's a world in which one of your squishies overcommits a little bit, gets hooked, and then that's a trade that is never in your favor. So rightly make the right decision to move back towards the point, play to your own advantage. Just, just trying to walk up. Colas is very early. Oh, here Bastion it is. ultimate. Bastion ult, the, the mortars come down. No, no, uh, no kills. Sadly. Dead with the whole hog. Goes for that hook again, just goes a little bit of a swing and a miss there. Would have gone around the Arisa range. There's a Terror Surge. Does straight in the line of sight of the Terror Surge, but just shrugged it off and just said, didn't ask. There's the sound barrier as Vice end up using it to get back onto the point. Time is Nightmare halfway to capping. Pulse Bomb stuck to dirt. Still survives though, of course. He has a breather and he's taking it. Time is Nightmare now need to touch. They do get OT, but where are the kills? Bastion main, I mean the rest of Time is Nightmare just relying on dirt to try and set them up for success, or maybe the tracer. MVM close to this overclock is gonna be the thorn in the side of Time is Nightmare, but there it is, there's the first kill. He ends up going down. MVM using the ultimate, and I'm just gonna tear through them if he gets any chance. Whoa. He's getting chased out though, Salami Boy dodging, ducking, and weaving. It's actually the Moira that comes up big. I mean, Time is Nightmare. I, they don't care if you got old Spro. They got a hog and a bastion. 99% to 99. Surely that's it. I mean, the Lucio touches, sure. I mean, the Doomfist as well, but they have three Ultimates, a Pulse Bomb, a Coalescence, uh, a Sound Barrier. Ain't happening, Chief. Timeless Nightmare. 99 to 99, a 2-0 to start off the series. Yeah, that okay. was pretty okay. much... Uh, that was a chaotic matchup. And I wasn't familiar with your game. Yeah, that's I it. Wasn't familiar with your game. I, I knew that they were going to play something different, but I didn't expect just like full send on the Moira Roadhog Bastion, right? And just, this is what we're going to play around. And you could see Vice starting to work it out a little bit more on Shrine. It felt like they were winning more fights. They were punishing Dirt for playing aggressive, but... Even then, at any moment, anything can flip. If Dirt hits a hook, all of a sudden Bastion Man catches someone out with the damage, anything can happen. And that's a 2-0, as you said. And now we move on to Eigenwald, where I would say Roadhog gets better on these type of maps, where you can play corners, you can look for hooks. Yeah. I don't know. How do you feel about it? It's Hog and Bastion, bro. Like, what, like, what, are you, what do you want me to say? Sure, Hog gets better value on corners. Uh, let's take a quick listen in to the comms, that final fight of that round. Uh, let's take a listen. I'm hitting back on right now. 
you gotta like hard push. Look, 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 look. I just have so I just won. My re got canceled. Oh, where's the one? Where's the one? Where's the one? Where's the one? I have TP. Get one or TP. So join, so join, so join. Nice. Nice. Oh, Kiri. Nice. Just trace oh, him. Just trace him. Kiri, get to trace him. Trace him. Trace him. Trace him. Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys are carrying me. You guys are carrying me. Listen one. Listen one. Listen one. Okay, they're coming back. Okay. Doom, doom, doom. Focus up. Focus up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Hey, baby. I. I think they were more surprised they won that than we were. We're with just how they're reacting at the end of that map win. No, I always had faith when I saw a Bastion and Hog roll out. Like you said, it sometimes catches people off guard, and I think this is just what's happened right here. I mean, hey, I can bowl that, maybe? I, also, these two hooks were ridiculous. Like, oh my god. It's such like a Hog, hog player thing to do. Like, the, the, somehow the rope goes through the scenery because sure physics <laughs> and he just hooks two people that just proceed to peek him it's like surely surely the hog player doesn't have hook right now right wait the, the thing is it's on such a short cooldown it's on a six second cooldown so it's just never ending it's just a constant threat all at all times just consistently coming out so like even the Arisa who has the spear spin who has the fortify sometimes you just can't be prepared for it at all times and then also you can't prepare the fact that dirt's just the goat so like there's so many different threats that they have to deal with and we as i said earlier vice did start to realize like hey we can't just let dirt just continuously throw hooks and they did stop stepping up and that's where dirt started to fall early in these fights but especially axa on the uh arisa i want to see them playing more aggressively if they see an opportunity to punish dirt they have to commit to it because otherwise Dirt's just going to pull you apart this is just a highlight reel of dirt at this point Keep them coming. So all I want to say, damage mitigate is 4K. Who is mitigating damage on this team? No, The Roadhog. The Roadhog is just, just absorbing the 4K's worth of damage. Yeah, I mean, you take a breather, that's, ma that's mitigation damage, to be fair, when you take a breather. So, yeah, that's pretty sick. More of this, please. I can Valdor up next. Is Hulk, is Hulk going to get better? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, Bastion does, uh, Bastion does fairly well on this map. Um, I, feel, I feel like... I feel like Timeless Nightmare are playing this exactly the same way that Jaws is playing it. They're just gonna play it on vibes. Like, let's see how it's yeah. let's see how it feels, and like, you know, let's see how it works. I I wonder if it, if they do hit a wall, we'll see some swaps from them at all, or if they're just gonna die on the Roadhog Hill. Nah. Nah. It worked. So do it again. It's like when you go to different rounds of control in ranked, and you're all like, uh, when you flip sides or whatever, you're just like, it worked last round. Why can't we do it again? And just yeah, that's true. Really different map and game type. <laughs> It's going to work out this time, though. I promise. I promise you that. I mean, look, if you are playing against uh, the Roadhog and the Bastion, especially at this point, and you, you're playing against Moira, it, Anna? This seems like the perfect place to just throw out the Anna, because why not, right? Yeah. I, I, I see what you mean, right? Like, you, you play... If you just go what for the Anna, you have the right nade. Now. But would we see, see a Kiriko swap at that point? At least you're forcing Timeless to make swaps as well, right? So I could absolutely see an Anna coming in. Yeah, but then it's like, is Vice comfortable on switching to those kind of heroes, right? Like, it's not always just, like, so easy to just make those swaps. And then you also run into a problem that... As soon as you start swapping away from your game plan to play the other team's game plan, if you're a Roadhog one trick, you've had your fair share of players in rank two are like, I'm going to switch Ana against you, and then you're going to have to deal with it. And you understand how to play around that. So all of a sudden, Vice is For playing sure. into Timeless Nightmare's game. They just have more experience playing this setup. So looks like right now, Vice don't want to make any changes. Maybe the Echo. I actually do like the Echo versus the Roadhog and the Bastion, just sort of the burst potential. From the Echo is kind of a nice change. Uh, also for the Sojin, it can be difficult to find picks. So some adjustments here coming from Vice, but Timeless Nightmare, if it works, we go. Exactly. Just like you said before, just pure vibes. Let's get it. Jump into the server. Happy thoughts, smile on the faces. Oh, you're a one trick for sure. All right, roll out the gates. Yeah, so no honor, but I mean, the Kiriko is pretty powerful. Even if you get hooked, right? You can still hit the Suzu so they can't get the one-two punch. Yeah. My favorite thing is a as lot well. of damage to the Roadhog as a Kiriko. Because right. the, the Roadhog hitbox is so big, you can just like throw Kunas into the head. Oh, look how fast. Oh, oh you're so quick. My favorite quick. thing uh, is actually, especially with the Roadhog, like small, small little rework with the pig pen and stuff. It was like, we're going to take the ability for Roadhog to one shot. And then every Hog player was like, I found a new way to one shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
That <laughs> always happens, man. They're just, they're just always finding a way to make everyone's day worse by playing the Roadhog and getting the one-shots, especially support players. And once again, Timeless Nightmare, they're the team coming up with the picks. It wasn't even dirt this time, just like the amount of pressure coming out. It doesn't feel like Vice really know what to do at all. <laughs> Dude, watching the Hog just take infinite damage uh, versus the Arisa. <laughs> Roadhog versus Arisa has to be the dumbest matchup in like Overwatch history. Like, because the Arisa is just standing there. Widow Wait, maker? no. Okay, okay. Bash Mane's Widow, no joke. Actually, pretty good. Goes crazy? It kind of goes hard, yeah. That was crazy. You're right. That was. That was. Hey, they tried for the jump shot. It didn't work. You know, you switch back. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. If there was someone there, it would have gone crazy, but, you know. That's on the other team at that point. So Sloth is playing very aggressive. They've actually found Bash and Main in his room. Wait, have they? They, they lost them? They Bash lost about. Oh, there he is. is. <laughs> well, there he is. Wait, how did he get there? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, all right, okay. Go skin for Bastion next Halloween. Oh, oh hello. Goodbye. Oh. The sticky, the sticky bomb impact killed him there. Sally, all good though, because Salami Boy got a wall riding melee kill on MVN. And there's the coalescence too. Hi. Vice having to back off now, no DPS. And Kiddick is having a very good game on the Tracer. As much as we talk about the good vibes and memes coming from the Roadhog Moira players, honestly, the Tracer player from Kiddick has been highly impactful and it feels like it's putting a lot of pressure on finding picks on a vice and that's something that they're also having to deal with right you can't put as many resources into just trying to isolate dirt if you have a tracer just constantly pestering you in the back they're gonna oh. all in on the bastion main but the car's still moving this is so sad bastion main down there's the copy of the hog oh dominated oh almost dominated oh and it's actually dirt that gets boot Oh, that would have been such a the biggest diff in the history of diffs. That would have been on the uh, on the, getting the hook on the Echo Hog. Unfortunate there. Good duplication. Like when you duplicate the Reinhardt and then the Reinhardt you duplicated pins you off, but you can't fly because you're an you're an Echo duplicate. That's, uh, that's yeah. That is uh, rather unfortunate. Damn, slots aim on the uh, try shots looking pretty nice there on the tracer. Couple of headies. Got to be careful though. If you get hit with that uh, bomb and the right click. Hog's fine. I love so the boy I, looking I, down is like, you good? <laughs> you good, bro? Because <laughs> space fell off the map. You good? There's still that ledge there. Oh, Dirt's in trouble. Nah, Dirt's Never mind. Roadhog moment. Oh, and Kidding coming up with another big pick with the pulse bomb. They do lose Schwartz on the other side, so they've lost a lot of their healing, but... It doesn't matter, the Hog's okay. got healing. Thoughts on that? There's the sound me. barrier. Straight into the back line. Coalescence try and match. Roadhog always oh, just going to chew bomb. through everybody, though. Oh, that's huge. Exit down. Oh, where's your rush now? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Little whole hog to secure the point. Four minutes and 30 seconds, Scott. This has to be so frustrating to fight into his vice. Like, oh, there's the Anna swap, actually, that you call, Jax. Skier's gonna go over to the Anna. I like this, especially on the third point, it feels like it's hard for them to flank you. And now you can play around the sleets and the biotic grenades onto the Roadhog. That's gonna mean that Dirt is going to have to respect to, uh, the backline of Vice a little bit more and not overextend because if he gets naded and he gets slept, it's just over. It, oh, Kidding again on the Tracer. Opening picks are plenty. Oh, another one. Surely another one too. Oh, beautiful. Blink smack. 45 degree ang too. Salami boy down, but it's all good. Dirt down, it's all good. Kidding alive. Oh. Another stick. Oh! The copy to stop the damage going through too. Not only does Kiddick get three in that fight, forces the duplication. Okay, Schwartz is dead. That will get the... My word. My word. And yeah, that's a, that's a good fight. If you're, if you're a timeless nightmare, yeah, you might have lost it, but it's a bunch of ultimates. Oh, they got caught on the chandelier on the roof, I think? Something, they got stuck on something, well, and that's going to get them killed. Work, yeah, yeah and that, but that, with that pick from Bashman, they're just going to step up. Walking in, sound barrier from Hinge to try and change the tempo. Cole, that's oh, on the other oh. side, but Bashman Main's full. No, Bashman Main! Dirt's on down. Oh, my heroes, my goats. Yeah, that's, that's kind of rough. You're running into an Ana now, so it's like, yeah. You might be able to play against it, but Ana in a small corridor like that, you are just going to get rolled. I wonder if they're going to switch to Kiri. Probably not. No, it doesn't look like it. Every time I've ever asked my Moira players in my games to switch from Moira to Kiriko, it never usually goes very well. Okay, so I assume it might be sloth. something similar. Sloth. What's happening? What's, what's happening up there? I don't know how Sloth got there. I th Sloth was an echo just before switching up to the cast, just hanging out on the high ground, the enemy uh, enemy base. 
I thought it was going for like the high noon play, but they don't even have high noon. That's oh, a that's nano a nano terror, terror, terror surge with a nade on top. Ain't no way you're living that one, unfortunately. That's uh, that is an ultimate combo, close to being forbidden. Two minutes to go. Hinge with a boop onto the Moira. Nice little pick there as well. Yep. And you can see how much value down is getting. Skier is doing so much work, and Dirt is just getting punished time and time again for getting a little too aggressive. They get purpled, and then they just can't Ooh. heal, and then Slabby they're falling down. And we're going to see Vice do the same thing, but this time they're going to get back up to Sloth, so it's not just Sloth versus the world. There are people on the card, though. What is Salami? Salami? How is Salami Boy here, and how has he gotten two kills? Don't care, did not. What is happening? Oh, wait, a third? Use the sound barrier, you won't. Yeah, do it. 100%. Wait, percent. wait, the cart. Wait, Kinnick is just moving the payload. Hang on a second, the whole hog to blow everybody back. Wait, this is so smart from them. Wait, they're so smart. Toronto to find, you need to get on this right now. This strat works 100% of the time. Someone is a great roadhog, so it could happen. Oh, someone touched it. Oh, oh, once again, Dirt's going to get the purple. sound barrier. Perfect timing too. Dirt's going to be able to do this, surely. I mean, Hinge uses that sound barrier. But for what? Lucky this spawners are coming in. Azure is now on... The uh, uh, Malgo of all things. Oh, that's a uh, that's a very early. They did not realize the overclock was not going to find any value because the team was already disengaging. Schwartzy is going to fall to sloth, pretty much like a one v one moment. But the overclock still doesn't do anything. The timeless nightmare. But without your main healer, you, don't, you can tell. Just dirt doesn't want to step up unless they have the extra healing. If they get hit by a bite grenade, their health is just never going back up. Ooh, there's still 1v1 on that. Kinnick is out. Yes, got to the mini pack and even getting a little orb from the Moira. Soth and Little bit of trouble. Forced a recall as well. Both tracers either have their pulse mover pretty close. Oh, okay. Nano on to the Malga. <laughs> Coalescence, where is our Moira? Is oh, wait, she, she was trying to use it through the wall. Did you see that? <laughs> Looking at her team. Well, damage orb's coming out and secures a kill. Okay, Schwarzy with two. Okay, the hog just needs to just please keep dirt just alive. A little bit of healing, please. Just a little bit of healing, bro, please. Five Next seconds to healing, go. Please. You need to touch for OT and Sloss uh booked out the bastion of his own. Surely dirt dies down though. Yes, there it is. Triple kill for Sloth at the end. Lego Bastion coming up large. Two points to zero there. Now as Vice gets the chance to attack. That was a large time bank as well. They did manage to whittle down, but you know, hog bastion comps. Not the uh, best for pushing third points, but they did. A pretty damn good job. They almost managed to get the cap. Yeah, it's all the way very close to the end. And honestly, a lot of it goes back to Skia just switching over to the Ana. And the third point just being very difficult for the Roadhog to attack. So, Timeless Nightmare, not a bad performance, all things considered. But it always sucks when you have, what was it, four and a half minutes in the time bank going into the third point and unable to close it out. See if Vice decide to stick to the Ana. Surely. Surely. He says, questioningly. Okay. Maybe the Malga as well. I do like the Malga pick against the Roadhog. Yeah, you just kind of shoot. Yeah, like, that's what Malga was very good at. We saw in that final fight, Dirt hooks Azur, Axo, sorry, and they just get nanoed and kill Bastion main. So it's kind of like yeah. call an ambulance, but not for me moment. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of rough. Bastion main at... Uh, of course, only playing the Bastion. I would, I would love to see a little Bastion main Widow. Like I said, it does go kind of crazy. But I've yet to see it. You know, you, you're hyped up a big game, but I, I've yet to see it. <laughs> We're not seeing it, Scott. We're not going to see it. It's only for specific points and special occasions. So they're saving it for Toronto Defiant in the grand yes. finals of Dallas. Yes, yes. That's smart, yes. honestly. You really want to save yeah. it for the moments that it matters most. Yep. And he jumps up, hits a 5K, and uh, he's clap. <laughs> Takes the trophy. Insane stuff from uh, Timeless Nightmare. The lore has already been written. Bash your main on the high ground. They don't Soft know. dies. They don't actually know. Now oh. they know. Oh my word. That would have been an insta kill. <laughs> yeah. Quick fingers. Oh, okay. Dies anyway. Now we go to the next corner that they're not going to suspect. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. That's all he's doing. Just That's hiding in every mean, corner. They're just, they're just waiting for the moment. They yeah, won't check this in. one, surely. Surely they won't check this one. And they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Surely there is better things Bastion Man could be doing during this no. time. They're you waiting for the kill someone in his turret form. You're always useless, bro. You just if run away. If this works, me. I'm going to be very upset. He's done it again. But he's done it again. Look, he's going to oh, pop out. They don't know. 
They don't know. They just don't know. They don't know. Oh, the Kiri. You're pretty low. Oh, There's the mouth. They know. Crash domain saved. Oh, they know. dear. They might be aware. Oh, it's fine. All good, though. Slavi Boy trade. trades. Nice little boot kill onto MVM, who got booped off of the map. No recall, no problem. And Gillick is here to save the day. Sure, he doesn't end up going down. Of course, on the Kiri now, not the Moira. So helping out everybody with those anti... Uh, those anti-nates. However, with Salami Boy dead, this uh, might just be over, at least this first point. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them to get on the point. Oh, Can good pulse. Sloth. Oh, bro, on the point. Oh, no. Right, no, so that's not lucky. Hey, well, another underrated thing as well is if you, even if you hook a squishy, the Naga can pop the Cardiac Overdrive and it will provide damage. Wait, they're coming back? Surely not. My MVM's dead. They're focusing down the Maga pretty heavily here. Oh, nice stomp preemptively too. There's no way Bastion survives. Uh, I mean, the maga has got two Bastions strapped to his arms. That's true. He's a, he's a, he's a strong. He's a, he's a Bastion that can charge and yeah. light people on fire. Law accurate. All right, Slimey Boy's dead. There we go. There's the point. Four minutes and thirty seconds. In what right now is uh, some sort of lucid dream that we are watching. Yeah, it did force Hinge to use the sound barrier there, so there was some uh, nice picks. But you can see it's it feels like Vice is beginning to believe. You know, they're starting to understand what their win conditions are going to be in this series, and they're starting to work out solutions <laughs> for this roadhog setup. They're beginning to believe. <laughs> Morpheus? Schwartzy is believe. off the Moira as well, so that's, a, that's an what? important first. What just happened? I don't know. <laughs> it's actually... We are watching Overwatch 3 with uh, yeah. Dirt POV. I really you, you obviously with the everyone. with the hog like you can when you hook somebody you can whip them around so you can whip them a little bit but it looks like he turns his mouse up to like 20k DPI and then just 360 so they end up behind him yeah which is uh, which is how a lot of the time Dirt was getting kills on Sanctum as well oh wow there's there's the drop almost one shots the tracer with the left pick however got to be a bit more cautious now with this rush not sure where that charge went but. Here comes the cage. Ash made under a little bit of pressure now. Same with Sloth, who just gets rolled over. Kidding with the nice little slide in the melee. However, with Dirt down, what really is there for a front line? And same with Schwartzy, too. Well. Yeah, this is rough. Look at the positioning right now of Timeless Nightmare. Really bad place to be. Ooh, That's I didn't even go that high, man. Uh, yeah, I didn't so. know that either. But I also, I'm not in love with the position. Yeah. Yeah, it feels now. like Timeless Nightmare. I'm gonna say it. I oh. think they need to swap. I no. think what I, yeah, I think what they're doing right now isn't working. Salami Boy. Wait, he's alive. He's no, he's dead. dead. It, it, it feels like Dirt is just straight up not having a good time, and there it is. Dirt's oh, done. The, the unfathomable. No. Dirt switched to Rissa. This is so sad. You think you know a guy? I mean, you're gonna have to, otherwise you just instantly get yeah, flattened. Just they have to play yeah. Asa. Yeah, that's kind of rough. And Axes are here on Naga being like, is this allowed? Are they allowed to switch off yeah, the road? They... <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily for Dirt, they can. All right, time is time. What you've got? You got the window and the overclock. Pole spot from MVM. Does manage to uh, get it attached, but that lamp is gonna help. Unfortunately for Dirt there, that window does an exceptional amount of damage, even from the Tracer. And Vim does end up falling over, a little bit of revenge there for the Baptiste, but what more can be done from Timeless Nightmare? Doesn't look too much. Salami Boy down. And same with Schwartzy. Although, saying that, no, Baptiste is not dead just yet, but you are now just slowly trickling onto the point, facing death. And the cage even available from Vice. And there we go. Salami Boy traps himself in. And that should be it. Vice finished the map with three minutes and ten seconds left in the time bank as they tie the series up. I'm getting whiplash. I felt like I was like, I saw, saw Timeless Nightmare finish the second point, And I was like, this series is over. They don't know how to deal with the road hug. And then like a... A flip switch there. Maybe it's the Malga switch. Wait, we just play on it. I know yeah, we, we just about play because Kiriko exists, but they win. Anna's still powerful. Very powerful against the uh, the Roadhog. Yeah, yeah it did so, feel like Dirt, especially on second, Scott, struggled a little bit <laughs> against the Malga gob. So the question now is, do they think it's an Eichenwalder pro problem, or do they think it's like a overall the the composition has been so because you would have to know that they they understand what the counters to their own heroes are right like roadhog mag is a huge counter anna's a huge counter and it feels like they're really starting to sort of lock into those heroes 
it feels like there has to now be a switch up from Timeless Nightmare. They, you know, they, Vice has made the adjustments. They know what they want to play. Maybe they go back to a traditional comp and then they can always switch back to the Roadhog if they feel like they're... They all of a sudden their composition would make more sense or any of those kind of situations because right now it feels like there's a lot of mental games going on right now with the compositions and the macro. Well, yeah, we'll see if Arissa is kind of the port call here for the next map. Not sure, not sure, but anything can happen in this game at this point, to be very honest with you. It's one of my favorite kind of a casting dream. teams full of uh, full of OTPs. Also, uh, not all of them are OTPs, I don't think, but uh, might as well be pretty close. They're like, they're like, they're not one tricks, they're preferred tricks. You know, they have, they have their preferred preferences of tricks. what they would like to play. And maybe they're Roadhog and Bastion, but they, they, they don't, have shown a willingness to swap. You know, Arissa went dirt. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Dirt went Arissa. Arissa went dirt. No, dirt went Arissa. <laughs> she followed. Uh, and so there is a willingness there to switch if necessary. Right, right. It is a, it is a fun way to play, but yeah, you do need to switch the Arissa sometimes. Yes, you have to you have to give in to the Corpo and have to switch to Orissa. Sad stuff. But as we go into the next map, maybe that is not going to be the case. There are some small stats for you there as well. Colosseo here. So yeah, lots of room to play the Malga, which is uh, fantastic. And I'm getting word as well. No substitutions for either squad either. So same 10 entering the server. And now we get to go to Colosseo. I mean, interesting map. Yeah, it could honestly go either way. I, I cannot tell you that, that I feel like the analysis is just kind of once again, it's going off of vibes. I feel like it's anything that happened with That's these good. two teams, I feel like they could go back and forth. I, I think at any point we could see switches coming out from Timeless Nightmare uh, and then it's then it could go either way. Once again, maybe they have a mean Orisa. They just don't like to play it. Maybe they think it's cheating because Orisa so good. Yeah, like, that's man. it. This Orisa character is so good. This is this is cringe. Let's just They're play an the honorable hog. Roadhog player. That's what they yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. You got to. Sometimes you just got to keep it honorable, right? You, you know, the enemy team is like, okay, no Orisa. You know, you literally GA it in a ranked game, which you know can happen. You know, okay, Ryan matchup. Yeah, sounds good to me. Like, that feels good when that happens. But yeah, sometimes you have to fall back if the other team is playing the cringe. We have to play the cringe as well. So, I respect it. I respect it a lot actually for that one. But Colosseo, is it a good hog map? That's the question. A lot of corners, a lot of corners on mid. So you yeah, can 360 whip hook. Sailing the checkpoint is very difficult. Like you have a lot of high grounds, there's a lot of open spaces, a lot of long corridors. So I feel like it could be hard to play the Roadhog, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I'm a Roadhog aficionado. I, I, I'm one of those players who don't play Roadhog out of respect for the other nine people in my lobby. First of all, because I suck at it, so that's that's being respectful to my teammates. And second of all, because I, I like to not do that to my enemies in a ranked game. You won't be surprised by this, but I think Hog is my most played tank. I that that that, that checks out with everything I know about you. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty you're, sure you wouldn't be surprised. That's you're that. also a support player who makes it your life mission to do anything that isn't supporting. You're like I like to play Zenyatta and Alari because I don't have to do things. Okay, I don't do. play Zen right now. Zen sucks. Okay, I play Alari when it's fun, which is okay. a lot of the time. And then I do play Kiri and Bap. Okay, and then you know if I play DPA, I do play a lot of silly heroes. To be fair, yeah, you're a silly cool. hero specialist. Widow. Best way to be, man. Best way to be. Okay, right, here we go. Here we yeah. go. Yes. Okay, <laughs> back to the old faithful. Here we go. Time is nightmare. Hog, Bastion. Let's go. They're, they're like, you know what? Who cares? Didn't ask. I can well dumb map. Let's just keep playing what we, we like to play. So let's see if they, it's going to work better because Vice they saw this coming as well. They've already come out on the Malga. Oh, ooh, that helps. I'm telling you, Kinnix picks have been exemplary oh oh huh? wait mag was wait mag was just too wide his chest too wide he was too broad <laughs> to be broad around that rock that uh bit of scenery the crazy stuff counter, that mag is just too wide he's to just be able too to get wide by roadhog oh kidding trying to get the better of sloth again i kind of lost him for a moment <laughs> i think sloth thought bastion was on the other side of the glass but he was not sadly him Oh, Sloth Ooh, trying nice. to get back to Mega Health Pack. Good pickup from uh, MVM there. It is Salami Boy doing Salami Boy things. Still, Vice not in control of the pot right now. It's all time this nightmare, but Salami Boy is still in. Okay. This is reminding me of games where I'm playing Clash this weekend, is where 
I'm playing Clash, but nobody's fighting on the point. Nobody's doing the objective, and everyone's just brawling for the fun of it. I think you should uh, do a half an hour piece where you overreact and think Clash is good for competitive. Oh, you don't think Clash is going to be the best mode that's ever going to come into the game <laughs> of all time? I, I, I am excited oh, for Clash, don't get me wrong. I am, no, I'm excited. I don't think anybody should uh, judge the mode just yet. I think it's pretty damn fun, but when an enemy team runs Moira in four, uh, four tanks, <laughs> it's a little rough. You don't like Moira goats in your, in your Clash games? It's in crazy. my Clash games? Yeah, surprisingly not. All right, right. MDM taking down Kinnick. I mean, the railgun is available here, but it's going to be really tough. I mean, the best thing for the Time of Slammer, I suppose, is they can just drop onto them. Dirt can literally just kind of body slam them from high ground. Oh, the pulse one from Sloth, though. That is going to uh, push Vice a little bit far forward here, especially MVM getting this high ground. Doesn't really have to worry about the hog who's trying to contend with the stairs. And you can really see, like, Bastion is just struggling to stay alive. You, you, the hitbox is just so big that it's difficult to really get anything done because you just fall over. A lot of ultimates you committed. Axe yeah. tries to use the cage, but that doesn't work against the whole hog. And it looks like this should be Thomas Nightmare stabilizing just at the checkpoint. With Sloth getting a late kill on a Salami Boy, I don't think they're going to get the point back to the, the checkpoint. They're going to have to fall back. Yeah, they're going to have to fall back. Here comes the rush, too. Vice really just p piling on the pressure right now. Does behind. Oh, that! I think that connected that hook, but I think the Tracer got out of there just in time. Sloth now trying to get some revenge. Still has a recall. Here comes a sound barrier. It doesn't hit Dirt, but it might not matter. Sloth still trying to get out of here, but actually finds Bastion main on the retreat. Dirt eventually kills... Okay, Dirt randomly kills Sloth. I think Sloth uh, was up and close and personal against Dirt, but apparently he was. Nice little uh, 140, uh, 140 degree hook there from Dirt. Just whips him into the trap. But the best thing about Malgra, just thinking about it, Scott, yeah, you could just charge out. <laughs> The unstoppable nature of Mauga is uh, really hindering Dirt's ability to kill the tank. Yeah, that's why it's such a good matchup. Like, obviously, the, the mini guns is really Ooh. good against the Roadhog because it's just permanent damage, like mini crits, and just always putting out damage. But as you said, the ability to just charge away when hooked, whoa! Okay, okay. And just do things like, like that. that. But yeah, yeah let's just say, even though they're finding picks, they, it just doesn't feel like they're able to clean up team fights effectively against this new setup from Vice. Okay, big reset here. Big reset coming in. Big reset. A lot of ults for Vice. I, I, uh, I fear. Oh dear, that's not good either. That's really where are, they, where are these kills know, Yeah, where was Sh where was the duel between Schwartzy and Skia, where Skia wins with a melee? I'm kind of curious to see how that happened. I guess no. we never know. We'll we never know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's the charge out, and there's a kill, and there's two. Oh dear. This is falling apart. And uh, the Sleep Paralysis Demon, that is a uh, timeless nightmare right now, is kind of turning more into a dream for Vice. And this, this sort of goes back to what I was saying for Timeless Nightmare is it doesn't feel like it was a mass specific thing. It feels like Vice have just found what they know works against this Roadhog composition. And now Timeless Nightmare are having to work so hard uphill to try and beat this composition. They're getting picks, but even then it's just never enough. They're splitting oh, up. The map is just unkillable. Boy is stuck on the low ground. I think Schwartz was tr Oh, good kill though. Perfectly timed with Salami Boy there. You see that squad? A little Flanking boot Moira. Flanking Moira? It works. Cage comes down. I think it's the Moira that's stuck. Yeah, Schwartz ends up just falling over. A solo cage fight was won there by the Mauga. Who'd have thought? Charge it into the back line. Nice little Suzu dodges the hook, but can't dodge this damage. Kinnick and Dirt taking care of the Kiriko. The boy is kind of just AFK right now. As uh, Vice are looking to retreat as a group, or at least uh, try and get as many people out as possible. They need to let Bastion Main get out of spawn. It, it feels like Bastion Main is just dying on cooldown because of just like the sheer amount of damage going on. Every time Bastion Main steps up, they're getting instantly punished. They're getting stuck on cooldown. They're getting shot on cooldown. They're getting run out by a Malga on cooldown. And now they're engaging with a sound barrier on cooldown. Oh, good be kidding. Oh, one second before the recall came back up. And Dirt gets booped back in. Dirt is having the worst time imaginable right now. Everybody was just body blocking him. So even if he got past the Malga, it's like three other people looking at him. Bash Domain's one HP. Getting taken down by Sloth. And this is slowly but surely turning into a vice win. Ooh. That was a very aggressive pulse. Run, Salami Boy, run! Nope. 
Unlucky. Unlucky. Look out for Salami Boy. You know, they tried their best to run. Chat. And now, back. <laughs> oh, now man. We're getting I mean, they're back against further. the walls now, Scott. Skier has the rush. As soon as Dirt tries to step up, there's going to be a rush in their face. And there's just going to be so much damage coming out. I mean, Salami Boy's got the uh, sound barrier, though. So anything is possible. Salami Boy's there. Although, dead. Salami Boy, straight back to the deli counter. No sound barrier. Double DPS ult for Timeless Nightmare. And a whole lot of hope. Kinnick is dead. That is uh, no pulse bomb now. Nice little Suzu. Ends up saving the front line. And Malgut should be fine, though. And here comes Salami Boy. Hits a four-man sound barrier. And here comes the window. Bastion ultimate from the spawn. MVM dodges out the way. Schwartz ends up going down to the Malgut, who's now into their back line. And uh, as we round this last straight Scott. watch. A little bit of a timeless nightmare. And looking a little worse for wear, although Bastion main still getting some decent damage in. Both tanks end up trading now as a sloth still doing a whole lot of work in the front line. Takes down Bastion main before that nade explodes him into a million pieces. And Hinge gets kidding as well. I was expecting a disengage, but now that they got that pick, they might just like try and linger around, try and find anyone that they can. They are going to think better of a fallback, but the damage is done. 130 meters, two and a half minutes left on the clock. This is going to be half a nightmare. Okay. Okay. There's still a chance, Scott. Of course. Okay. 120 meters in two minutes. Oh, so what's, what's the success for Timeless Nightmare here, Jack? Hmm. Good point. Uh, I'll get back to you on that one. Uh, <laughs> I'll get back to you. No way. Oh, okay. Ooh, I thought Dirt was going to hook the Malgor off the edge there. Hinged in getting a boot kill on Salami Boy, though. Pulse ball onto Bastion main. One dead Bastion. And there you go. Dirt descends back down to Earth off the side of the map. And yeah, this might be just a little full cap here from Vice. Map one looking like a blip on the radar for them right now. Yeah. You see Dirt trying to roll out again. They are going to have to fall back because Skia did fall, but... They should be in full strength once again, and now they have they have sound barrier, they have the cage. You can see as soon as Dirt steps up, Kay, Dirt's just going to end up in the cage. So they're going to need to keep Bastion Man around to be able to break that one. Because Bastion Man is once again hiding in a corner, <laughs> waiting for a, an unsuspecting victim. Dude, this guy plays hide and seek. <laughs> yeah, this is prop one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, yeesh. Wish uh, he could have turned into a little Ooh. bit of a chair there, but Kidding with a double pulse bomb in the cage. Everybody was like cramped up. Will it matter? Not sure. One minute to go. At least you got a highlight pulse there. Nice little uh, boot kill from Hinged. All right, Vice, you got two people up. You've got bot control, kind of, but yeah, I think it's time to get out of here. All right, here's the win condition. Okay, I'm just. Dirt goes back to being the goat. Bastion main is going to live and kill three people with this Bastion ultimate. Good Vice oh, are going to get okay. scared and switch all of their heroes and not use any of their ultimates. That's okay? crazy. I've seen it in the tea leaves jaws. Get ready for it. Dude. Have you been having what Krusty's been having? That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. Sloth in the 1v1 versus Kinnick. No health pack, but some oh. health for Sloth. A couple little offers thrown his way to make sure he stays up. And there's two kills. Bash to main. Tea leaves. Hey, he's got all. The tea leaves aren't telling the full story, Scott. Maybe next round. Maybe, well, I mean, max map, I suppose, at this point. Five seconds to go. They're not pushing the bot. There's no need to. And there it is. Vice are going to secure that map. Timeless Nightmare going down. Unfortunately, only getting about 10 meters there. Uh, but it was worth the effort, worth the attempt. Map number four still on the card, Scott. Anything possible? Just saying. Roadhog could be better on Flashpoint. You know, maybe the, the Bastion, the Roadhog, like play around the corner and they jump out. Like Bastion main's great at playing around corners and especially right. in the corners. So it's maybe the tea leaves were talking about Flashpoint. He's cooking, he's cooking. Hang on. I'm trying my maybe. best over here. Maybe. Suravasa is the map up next. You are correct. Have a little highlights here before we get into that map though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you've got to be mad if you're the Tracer. <laughs> Just getting a one shot by the Hog. Still pretty frustrating, but can happen at any time. Feel that close? Yeah, only 10 meters. My God, Salami Boy. <laughs> Salami Boy was having a little bit of a rough map as well on the Lucio. But then, like, what are you doing as Lucio in this comp? Like, trying to kite for your, for your Bastion? Like, it's pretty tough. 
And <laughs> the Moira in the cage as well. Help! Just absurd. Help! There, there is so many Help! absurdities in this map. Like, it's really hard to comprehend. There's just so many silly little moments. Just like I that. It's one of those situations where, like, yeah, you're playing the Lucio, and I'm sure there was a plan, but when it's not working, it just kind of becomes the every man for themselves kind of vibe where, like, everyone's just, like, trying to make crazy plays. Salami Boy's getting a little right loose with it, and everyone's trying to do something a little bit different. But as I said, like, the, the Mauga is just too strong. Like, this is one of the things that makes Mauga, like, a tank buster, right? Like, tank, that's why a lot of people are very unhappy with Mauga when Mauga first came into the game, because they didn't really have any counters, and they made it impossible to play the opposition tank. So they've, they've dialed it back a little bit, but Roadhog is still in Frowny Town when facing off against the Mauga, and you can see how, how bad it was in the KD difference. Okay, so if Timeless Nightmare don't make it to Dallas, thoughts on this? Nam Coochie Brothers, Timeless Nightmare, they have a feature match. Okay. Thoughts on that? Yeah, no, Just I'm a about show match. Yeah, I, I think this is the match that we all need to see. That's the, that's now the Coochie Brothers match. versus Times Nightmare. It's perfect, bro. Nozzle versus Dirt. I mean, what more can you really want to see? Let's be honest. CC2 versus Bastion Main. Come on. Battle of the Gods. Battle of the Titans of Overwatch. Yeah, let's get a show match in Dallas. Happen. You know, I, I, producers, lock, lock it up. Let's <laughs> yes. just fly him in. Get him to Dallas. Lock it up. I need, I need to see this. I need to see this happening. Hey. Anything can happen. I mean, Timeless Nightmare still got an opportunity to come back, Scott. I'm just saying. Let's get a small roster update, though, for Timeless oh. Nightmare, Scott. Ooh, okay. A small sub. No more Bastion main. We now have Flak coming in. Now, Flak, as you can tell by the profile picture, is a Reaper guy. <laughs> so, wait, wait. Let, let me just clear, clear this up. So, they, they took out the Bastion. Yes. And they put in... A Reaper. The Reaper guy, yes. They did. They did. Um, yeah, so, you know, a little 4.5k Overwatch 1 Reaper only player? I mean, hey. And hey. the owner of the org as well. Just like well, that, so. It should work better than Bastion. You know, Bastion main was, in, was having a bad time. You know, just getting run rings around. Impossible to do anything. So maybe the Reaper is better. But still not great. So, uh, I think with the hog, right? Okay, so you know, Bastion Man was following up on the hog hooks. You can still do that with a Reaper because you're really close and you just yeah, hog you just hook shoot them. and then shoot them. And then the Malga are pretty weak to the Reaper as well. Well, is the Malga really that weak? Yeah, yeah, he's a big body to shoot. Not We've already really. talked about how wide your boy Malga is. But the Reaper will also run into the issue of when the cardiac overdrive is, is pulled. Oh, you they're just gonna fight, shoot sure. at you. Yeah. Force to fade. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. That's that. That's oh, that was that. That was it. That was the. That was it. That was the. That was it. Okay. That yeah, was the strat. Right. You're forced to fade. That's and then you just better than our theory of how this is gonna play out because I, I I'll be impressed if this works out. But honestly, I'm here for the vibes of Timeless Nightmare. Let's hope it works out a little bit better and we get to go to this map five. But Axa and Vice, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, Schwartz is dead. Oh dear. Not great. Flax it up though. There's the fade. It's four. There's the fade. Now what? Ground slam. Oh and dear. Yeah, Flax may be dead. Worth the attempt though. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Little death ball there for Vice just running down the back line. The back line being the tracer and the, the Moira of all things. All good. Don't worry. You know, yeah. lock in. Yeah, if, if Schwartzy, yeah, it was just a bad first pick. So now, now they lock in. Go for this again. And Sloth has really been stepping this up as the series Ooh. has gone on as well. I, I do need to give credit where credit is due. Felt like Kinnick was getting the better end of the stick in the Tracer Duel early on in this series, but now Sloth is really... They're the ones finding the pick. They were all over Bash Man, as I was speaking earlier. Nice Tracer Duel getting very close. That was really nice movement from Sloth. Pulse Bomb already earned too. Kinnick's there to match. Oh, Salami Boy. You don't want these hands. You don't want the smoke. Sloth doesn't want any smoke either. <laughs> nice movement again. Jeez, how does Sloth get out of these? No recall, no fear. No problem. Hinge gets Slimy the long boy, though. Sloth takes down Flak. You don't need and that should now. be the first point. Yeah, I think so, Scott. Sad to say, but the hog didn't work there. And that should just be a first cap. We'll Whoa, that was... That was Alpha. That Bad was respect. trying to send a message right there. Oh. 
Surely. I mean, you're going to spawn the hog. Right, so you're standing. Okay. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna head out. You can see Vice taking the high ground now. They got the ultimates coming up. They're gonna have a rush. They're gonna have a cage. We get to see the tracer dual slots. Just whoa, wait, yo. That, that looked like a, a cat hair in the mouse kind of moment. <laughs> yeah, it really did, didn't it? Like a bit of dirt on the mouse pad. Oh dear, there's the cage and too many people trapped in here. I don't think dirt has got enough in that breather to really do much. Oh dear. All good though. It does feel like a, a little 4v4 happening right now and then Sloth and Kinnick is just like, well, if we just kind of have our own little fight, we can just determine who the best tracer is. We're the only two people playing what we consider honorable Overwatch. Let's just fight over yeah. here while they fight over there, and then we'll, yeah. we'll see who wins. Oh, the hook goes a little wide. Narrowly missing uh, the front line there of Ice. Okay, big rotations, big rotations. Big ultimates, here we go. They're going to have Cole, they're going to have the, the special move. Everything. Let's see how, how they play it out. All right, Reaper guy, okay. Special move with the Cole Essence, pretty powerful. And he has two guns. Oh, good There's hook. the hook straight onto the high ground. Oh, the slide away. And the sound barrier, too, to make sure the Sojin does stay alive. Sky, even with this rush, too. Really nice response there from Hinge. So you trade the coal for the sound barrier. And there's the kill onto Sloth. There's the Reaper guy. He do be spinning, but unfortunately, he ends up dying to uh, NVM, who just... That's crazy. The open button, just walking towards the hog. I'm sorry, what was that? Duh. You don't see that every day. An ulting hog running away from me, ulting Sojin. I'd say the hog normally wins that one, but uh, with the aiming headshots, felt pretty good. Luckily enough, though, the orb from the Moira was able to kill the Soj. Oh, a pulse bomb onto Salami Boy. Still having a rough time, I think. Oh, Sure, oh. doesn't win the 2v1. Or the 2v3 there. Kinnick was 3 HP, but Timeless Nightmare, they still managed to cap and waste a bit of time too. Yeah, that was a great fight there for Timeless Nightmare. A able to get aggressive into the face of Vice. And we get some punish. Oh, Sloth went Torp, never mind. Thinking better of it. What do you think about the Torp pick here, Jaws? Do you think that it will get any value? Torp forces Reaper, bro. Ah, Torp's the count of the Reaper. Good Reaper thinking. Shift. Yeah, although Torp Tower does zero damage, so. They should buff Torp Tower, actually. Ah, uh, well, no. Oh, Let's go back to normal oh, things. Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah, what? Did they did it hit the shield and then the Sojin grabbed it from I, the shield? I think she might have done. Yeah, that was really weird. So I thought that bomb hit the shield, but I need a little slow motion replay there from off Sojin, maybe. Actually, in the front line, Coalescence at his back. In a bit of a problem here. Cardiac Overdrive up and ready to go. So My much healing. Word, that's a lot of healing. Yeah, shooting the hog like you were saying a little bit earlier on, Scott. Pretty easy to do for the Malgren, especially with a cardiac overdrive for the rest of the team. Everybody's kept so healthy. Actually, still ends up going down. Really scrappy on the point right now. The Reaper, no special move. Just has to click on the head of the Tracer, just desperately trying to find kills. Just tickling Don't people worry. from distance. <laughs> Salami Boy comes in clutch. And Tyrus Nine they managed to cap that point, even in this one up. Yeah, that's, that was very back and forth. Felt like it could go either way. But it is going to be Thomas Nine by getting on the board. Oh, here's well, the we got here. of the pulse bomb. So the pulse. Oh, it went. Oh, it went past the shield like oh. it was a frame. It was so close. If the shield was like a couple of frames, or the um, the cage was a couple of frames quicker there, that pulse bomb would have hit the wall. But it connected with the sojourn on the other side of things. Unfortunate stuff. Axe making a swap over to the Orisa away from the Maga, which is interesting because it felt like the Orisa, the Maga's been working well for them so far, but. Maybe feeling like on this map, it's not going to do the same thing. So I like it. A little bit of adjustment seems to be working out as they get the first cap. It was a really early pick onto Timeless Nightmare there, sadly. Special move available from Flak. I kind of want, yeah, I, I want to get some pub for this Reaper special move. I feel like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big one. Yeah, I mean, you guys the Orisa. We'll see. Oh, I'll be from Dirt too. A lot of environmental potential. We'll see if that ends up uh, working out that way. There's the Sojourn. Overclock used by NVN. The run moment. Oh, right. That's a lot of enemies. Yeah, that, that looked like a... Pelican triple collapse Or married. Kiddick ends up going down to Sloth. They really are just having a 1v1. Yeah, just where? He's not even in the oh, same like point. The other side of the map. 
Well, there's the Reaper guy. Still with it, a special move. However, it doesn't really matter, especially when you've got the whole hog uh, just a blazing in the front line. All right, there's the flip, but still... Well, they're always in a situation where they're in one fight territory. Vice at 87%. A hey, Pulse One will finish off dirt. Oh my god! Where did that Moira come from? Oh, nice job on the board. There's a These lot of trades going back and forth here. These are not good picks. Uh, time is nightmare. They're losing people on the exit. Salami. Yeah. Oh. And that might be a flip here, and that's going to be difficult for... That's going to be very difficult for Timeless Nightmare to get back here. 90% of counting. It's going to I mean, be they've on got the Lucio to touch. And they've got everything. They've got no touches. Timeless it's Nightmare just overextended. Wow. Just that's for free. Pretty big mistake there from uh, Timeless Nightmare. I, I like the idea of trying to get aggressive, but just get punished for it in a big way. So the advantage that they did finally have to work for just goes by the wayside. And now, Vice, one more round away from closing out this series and the nightmare ending of going up against the Roadhog Reaper. Yeah, it really is the nightmare. But all good. All good. Dirt down. Oh. I wonder if they ever make that TP a little bit more quick. A little quicker. It'd be cool, right? If it was like more instant. Maybe that'll make him too strong. Well, know. yeah, you put some limitations, but if you made it like quicker, but he, he like the duration to TP went higher or something like that, I don't know. It'd be cool, but I hope we do get a cool special move here. Any moment now, this Reaper's gonna, gonna press Any Q. moment. Oh, here we go. Watch your butts, everybody. There's the, oh, there's the speed in. Here's the chance. Good move onto the Kiriko too. There's the switch Let's go! That's a lot of damage. Oh, hinge takes damage done. Good. That was a lot of damage. Damage done. And now we return to the Tracer 1v1. It is a 1v1. I'm surprised they're on the same point as everyone else. That's a first. My word. Good track in there from Sloth as they do manage to take low ground. And there you go. Time is Nightmare with a cap. The bad news for Time is Nightmare is Vice have five alternates. Hello. So they're going to be able to come in and choose which ones they want to pop at any moment. It's only the sound barrier up for Salami Boy on Timeless Nightmare. So how are they going to try and kite out a lot of these ultimates? It feels like they're, they're almost like hiding. Trying to hide away so Vice are playing scared as they step up. It just feels like, like Ghost playing on this point alone. Oh, there they are. Like, actually, where was the team? Sound barrier coming out from Salami Boy. It's going to get matched by this rush and this overclock. I mean, dirt doesn't stand a chance. A sound barrier overclock in a rush? I mean, there's just no way. There's just oh. no way. Flag hands are getting rolled. There's the coalescence on the point. I mean, Simon Boy's going to get kept alive, and that pulse one goes wide too. I still have so many ultimates in the bank. 82% and building timeless nightmare. They're going to go down. Not as a team. They're close enough, though, so they're going to be able to get another touch. This is the last point, too, for Vice to take the series as well, Scott. And uh, knock Timeless Nightmare out of uh, contention. Yeah, and the only thing they have coming is going to be the whole hog. The whole hog is very strong against the Arisa. If you see the Arisa pop the uh, the gold, you can just walk at her and just shoot her with the with the gun, and it just does so much damage. So the Arisa has to be careful. The Axe is going to have to be careful. Same thing with using the Terra Surge. The Road Hog could just pop the whole hog, and it's just too much damage for you to withstand. Vice oh, with uh, almost Ooh. OT. Does her going a little bit wide, but here's the pig fan, and here is the whole hog. Oh, what a clip! Pulse on the floor for Sloth. There's a little bit of damage, but now it's a 3 of E4. Timeless Nightmare capping the point. Surely there's a touch. Yes, there is. There's the Lucio. Hinge gets in. OT in session now. This guy TP's back to the rest of the team, but they got their sights firmly set on that Kiriko. Flag falling. That's a lot of dead damage loss, and Dirt needed to hit that hook. OT still here for Timeless Nightmare, but I think this might just be it. Vice have managed to regroup. The Arisa's coming back with the Terra Surge, and these hooks are just not hitting. Terra Surge hits the point as, uh, well, Durs made himself out of there, but the problem is Vice have capped. They get the point, the map, and the series. A 3-1 to one victory for Vice as they knock out Timeless Nightmare. It looked a little dicey. At the beginning there, when it didn't feel like they really knew what to do against the Roadhog, against the Bash, against the Moira, but slowly over time, they worked out how they want to play against it. They weren't getting picked, and they just they were just so strong overall. And honestly, a very impressive win. A lot of teams can flounder there, but they, the way they were able to stabilize was impressive. I mean, Hog, Bash, and Moira meta. Did it work? No. 
But I take no questions at this time. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, you didn't say anything. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Therefore, I do not have anything to answer to. Uh, I generally did have fun seeing that comp, though. And after the switches at the end of Eichenwald, I generally thought, you know, there is a willingness to play something else. There did switch off of that hog. We saw, in, uh, we saw the backline picking up, you know, uh, Baptiste. Alas. What a hill to die on. <laughs> I, I love it. I get, no, I, I love I it too. I'm all about it. Uh, very dominant in the very end here for Vice. Let's actually head back into the last map and listen in to the winning comms. Nice. Uh, Lucio? Lucio, Lucio. Yeah, Lucio. Lucio half. Lucio, sir. Lucio one. Come point, come point. I sprint hog now. I've been 20. Just give me up. Should we try not point? No, no, right, no. Right. Yeah. Care hooks here. We can look for a wrestle here. here. Bring hug, bring hug. Hug one. Hug one, hug one. What's that trade? Nice. GG. Nice shots. That was a very chill comp. Yeah. I was about yeah, to say that. That's yeah, clean. That was a calm. <laughs> I, I have more urgent conversations talking with Jack about things that don't matter. But these guys are just yeah. in it in overtime and they're just like, yeah, they're locked know. in. In an elimination match too, they're just locked in. They know. Yeah. They know. Yeah, the bag. another day in the office for them. I mean, after after getting over the hump of uh, the first map there and being faced off with, uh, let's call it a more unique approach to the meta. They seem to have an answer for it and they run with it. I, I really love the adaptations they made there. I honestly couldn't even believe when we were on Nepal, seeing one hook after another after another connecting. I couldn't believe that they had the audacity of making that composition work. Well, the funny thing is, I think they were surprised that the composition worked as <laughs> yes. well. We heard their comms <laughs> after the first map and they're like, oh my God, we're doing it. And I was like, oh wow, they, they really didn't think the hog was gonna work. And they were right, it, it didn't work in the long run, but hey, they had fun doing it, as you said, and that's what matters. That's all that matters. And hopefully we see them again. Of course, they did get eliminated here, but uh, there's still another chance. Next time, next, next time. Stage. Exactly, exactly. Well, Jack, they could also play in the face at League, you know, $170,000 off a of grab. You know, there's so many so great true. opportunities for you to play weekly with your friends, you know? Any, anything can come. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, hey, you're going to trip some people up. If you can make it to uh, the group stages like this, I mean, running these kind of comps, like, anything's possible, man. And it's always good fun to see these kind of comps too. Like, you know, uh, being a little bit more serious, like, a lot of the time, obviously, look, top teams, they're going to be playing meta, but this is what OWCS, this new format is kind of about as well, like a, a bunch of homies just making it to, to the group stages and just playing what they like. And yeah, you know, Bastion main, pretty famous for Bastion, literally in the name. Flax as well on the Reaper, Dirt on the Hog, like, yeah, I mean... I just, but uh, what a story. Like, you're replacing yeah. your Bastion one trick with a Reaper one trick <laughs> just to roll it out. Perfect. I love that. Uh, I am in love with everything we saw, and I hope to see more of that. That's what makes this open format so exciting, as you just said. Uh, Sloth, of course, under Tracer. Absolute menace. Uh, was picking up a, a bunch of different heroes, of course, throughout the series, uh, making it work for them. Yeah, Sloth, if it, it, it did feel like we were watching uh, it was Sloth and Kiddick just going toe-to-toe, -to -toe just like playing the 1v1, and I talked about it on that, uh, uh, on the Suravasa, where it felt like all of a sudden something happened in the series where I guess the rest of the tempo of the team flipped, and it just felt like Sloth had so much position to do whatever they wanted, and they were just sticking Bash and Man on cooldown, just running rings around Timeless Nightmare, so well-deserved player of the match just absolutely stepped up in a big way when they needed it most. Yeah, really, really nice stuff. And I think uh, Suravasa was quite funny because it really was just 1v1s. <laughs> like, yeah. what was this? Like, what are we doing here? We're, 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 yeah, like, where are we? Like, where are we? Like, the, 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 the other... That's some uh, good, honest, honourable old... Yeah, I guess. Of, yeah, the, I can appreciate Your teammates are on the other side of the map. Like, it, it did make for a very entertaining <laughs> game. And it went all the way to 4-2, so, you know, I can't really... Uh, Sometimes tracers to be tracering. Speaking of which, Sloth actually joining us now via voice uh, for a quick chat. Congratulations on the dub. Let's talk about the match. Uh, Timeless Nightmare. They must have thrown you off on map one with their hog bastion more shenanigans. Now come Eichenwalde. Y'all made some adjustment, uh, adjustments, uh, busted at the Marga, and you guys seem to have an answer to it. But walk us through the thought process and more so the comes after map one here um well map one was definitely a little uh it was like a bunch of 
just testing on like what what we could get away get away with. But I think um, Koth really favors the uh, the Roadhog comp because we have to push into him on point, and then once we push into him, or I mean, he didn't play a point a lot of the time, but if like if we get him within his LOS, we couldn't, um, you know, like. It's a Roadhog. If he hooks you, you're dead. And then <laughs> once, once, once we get close die, to yeah. him, it's Way a lot harder. Fast. So, so what they did, they played their Moira Tracer together to help, like, force force point off of me. And then they just waited for our team to push into them, and then they punished us that way. And then a lot of the time, we over we tried to kill the Roadhog a lot of the time, and then he could just vape it all back up. And then it was it was a lot of uh, it was very confusing on how to like a. Uh, <laughs> How to finally solve their comp because you know that's obviously not something you go you go against every day but we, we did it and uh we figured it out um they got a lot we, we actually played them in the uh in the the uh, uh, the last Which stage thing to qualify yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, oh, so did they, they, also did they already run the rohawk there they, well, the Dirt is a Roadhog player, so the, the, their whole, yeah. their whole, like, uh... Got it. Yeah, their whole, their whole thing is, is, like, uh, they're all, one, like, one-trick players. I know they made some swaps, to, uh, but it's mostly, like, Schwartzy's on Moira, because he's a Moira player, and then Roadhog is, um, Dirt, and then they have a Tracer player, a Bastion player, and a Reaper player, and then they have Salami Boys, a Lucio player, and Schwartzy plays either Kiri or, uh... Moira, but they definitely have been practicing a lot on those specific comps because they're like, it's so niche that like, it's not everyone can solve it first go. Yeah, I mean, like you said before, it clearly took you like one map. Like, okay, well, we kind of <laughs> kind of suck, especially walking into the hog, like you were saying, when they control the point. But I mean, you ended up winning it, so that's the the important thing. Like, how do you feel about your next uh, elimination game, though? Um. Well, I think our next elimination game is going to be really hard compared to uh, what we just played against since they have X contenders and X owl players. And yeah, I, I think I think it's definitely possible, but it's definitely going to be rough, you know? And I want to ask one last question. You know, I felt like you really ramped up as the series went on. Is that just an adjustment of like, as soon as they had to put their Moira and more with their Roadhog, you had more freedom in the Tracer 1v1? Did you feel like you just got more space to work with as the series went on and that allowed you to dominate? I think uh, Malga applies a lot more pressure to Roadhog, like by himself. And um, it's kind of corny what we did, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, Malga's just really strong against Roadhog, so we uh we did that, and then once we started to have having to invest less resources into our tank and um, more like resources into me, I could just do a lot more. Makes sense. But right on. Yeah. Well, you guys made it work. So once again, of course, congratulations. We're excited to see you go at it again for another chance of making it to the main event. Sloth also. You have one of the best nicknames in the tournament, just saying. Uh, <laughs> top Dude, top three animal for sure. Uh, yeah, thank you so much I for joining Sloth. us and have a lovely rest of your day. You too. Bye bye. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you. That was slow. Very based. It is a, a fantastic animal. What's your top three, Jack? Hit me up. Top, animal, what, top so three sloth animals. Can't all be fish. Like, what? Can't all be fish. Yeah, well, only, uh, only they can't all be fish. fish. Yeah. Oh, um, shark! Uh, I like um, not pigeons and uh, uh, lizards. <laughs> there you go. I panicked. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's not I, bad for a panic pick. Like, I, yeah. I think we can roll with that. We can roll with that. Now, um, where do we go from that? Yeah. Anyway, that was the penultimate match of the day. Uh, moving on to the third and last one, Bill Ducks will go up against Goldfish. Uh, and stay tuned because all of that is going to happen. After a quick break, we will be finding out which pond, no, which team can stay in the pond. I don't know, which aquatic pond? animals, <laughs> I don't know, really. But I see you on the other side.
Heroes, this is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. That's right. So we hope to see you in there as well. Signups are open until April 25th, and you can get a shot at 170k prize pool. What? Yeah. Wow. So much Dolarians, and of course, it's the the path as well to the 60 million dollar prize pool at EWC. So a lot is on the line, and by playing in the Face It League. You're also supporting Overwatch as a whole, the competitive scene, uh, of course. Uh, you can also maybe meet some of your big idols. Yeah, true. I got I got to play like, uh, in OWCS in these kind of tournaments, and I got to get owned by some of the best of the best. We played Timeless. It was really fun. Chopper killed me a lot, and that was fun for me. I was about to like throw in a, an actual compliment. Some of your idols, like Custer. Oh, and the rest of the Overwatch, ga yeah. Overwatch gang. I, yeah, I wanted to end on like a really wholesome, kind yeah. note. That was nice of you. I don't like it. I would like to move on. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay. Like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It does make me feel so comfortable. <laughs> Okay, lots of trauma to unpack here in Custer <laughs> Childhood, uh, but for now we're going to move on and uh, take a look at our next game, the last one of the day. And for the last one, we do have some pretty good troublemakers with Dill Ducks oh, yeah. and who is Goldfish? Uh, we still don't know, actually, who Goldfish is. Uh, they kept us in the dark, but maybe we'll find out if they win. But uh, for now, let's just take a look at the uh, Ducks roster. Can't believe they got away with the name, but here we are. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes names get by. Legendary. You know, and, That's and, true. And this is our lives now. But and honestly, I'm about it. I'm a big fan of the Dill Ducks, okay? And I'm a big fan of Frothy Philly on this team as well. I Honestly, just a team of great names. True. <laughs> and Baz. Yeah. These are facts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think Baz. a lot of those players should be familiar faces if you're following contenders or collegiate. And uh, on the other side, uh, that was the number 16th seed. Definitely a team that uh, proved they can be clean. But we've yet to see them really like in action. Action. I'm very interested to see how yeah. they will stack up against one another. It, it's kind of interesting because both of these teams have something in common. Uh, they both beat Visor, so they can both agree to that, but they also both got dominated by the Toronto Defiant. So it's like they're, they're kind of on the same level. So it's about who's the superior team of these two and, you know, keep themselves alive and hopefully move on to the, the main stage. So I'm excited to see what both of these teams are going to be able to show. Who, who yeah. you got winning this one? And why is it who is Goldfish? Because they have a better logo. Well, I'm more of a Dill Ducks because I think the name is better. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm more of a, I'm yeah. more of a word person than a visual okay, person. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm visual. Yeah. Jack? Yeah, I, I got, obviously I've got the Goldfish team. Well. Like, obviously. Yeah, that's not fair. He's too, he's, he's, he can't be impartial. I'm, yeah, the viewers well, yeah. have spoken. They too are in favor of Dild. Let's go chat together. We will <laughs> take down the goldfish and Jaws. <laughs> and Jaws, okay. And me, yes. I'm, I'm playing for the goldfish you. now. <laughs> sure, why not? I'd be terrible. Fish, Jack, you know this. I represent all fish, including mystery goldfish. Maybe we will find out who they are uh, at the end of the series. I'm not sure. I mean, this group was really just Toronto's fine group to dominate. This decider match, it could be pretty interesting. Um, I, it's hard to say when like so there are so many three O's, but I mean, we'll have to wait and find out. I mean, I'm excited to see uh, who is goldfish in action, though. It should be it should be a whole lot of fun. I yeah, think I mean, that's goldfish's one of the... first match was against Toronto Defiant, so it exactly, wasn't really yeah. theirs to win, right? So that's that's a difficult one to even judge them by. And uh, as you said before, because the uh, transitive properties don't apply because they won both won against the same team. Yeah, so you can't look at the scores that have happened and be like, oh, there, oh yeah, maybe this team took a map off of this team. No, it's just been three O's across the board. These teams beat the worst team in the group and lost to the best team in the group. So honestly, anything could happen. It is worth noting that these two teams have faced off before in the Swiss stage, and it was a close series that went to the Dildaks. So, you know, they, they do have the edge in terms of the mental game and since last time they played but anything can happen that was two weeks ago we've had a patch since then maybe they'll play roadhog now it, it almost worked for timeless so anything anything's possible jack 
Yep, anything is possible. Let's load into the game though. Oasis, our first map. Dill Ducks ended up picking that one. I have to see. I don't think it's going to be as silly as before, but anything can happen, Scott. All right, Jack, important question as we continue on. How, where do you rate goldfish in the in the fish uh, animal kingdom? Like, are they like an S? I actually fish? got a lot to say. I have, I've got a lot to say about goldfish, actually. Oh, really? What do you think? I've got I've got a lot to say about the aquarium hobby and goldfish. You got well, 10 seconds. I, that's not happening in 10 seconds. They're okay. I, I prefer <laughs> koi. But they're okay. I don't really like fancy goldfish. There's a lot of people that are out there that are into fancy goldfish, like the ones that are really round and have big eyes and stuff. I'm not a fan. They're okay, though. They're cool. Okay, well, moving on from that, it's actually worth learning. Uh, yeah. Team Overwatch actually were able to play against who is goldfish, and we lost as well, so I actually think they're the best team in the world because that's the only way that makes sense. But both teams are actually going to be playing Winston. We haven't seen any Winston today, I don't think, in Finally. our previous two matches, so both teams yeah. rolling out in the mirror matchup. Excited to see yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, City Center, kind of nice to play Winston on, to be fair. Don't need to hold fast or anything. You can play around the pillar, so you don't need to play Arisa. Point does end up unlocking. Like you said, it's got mirror comps here, too. It's going a little bit low. Dust just poking away. Just trying to find a, an avenue into the back line, an avenue oh. he has found. Red X managing to get away somehow and receives some healing off of us. Uh, the who is goldfish? You want to get back to that point fast. Dust touching just before that cap went through. Here comes the dive now onto Frothy. He also ends up getting away. And with a hop over the wall. Oh, okay, no, the sojourn's gone. Okay, there they are. You went one way, I went the other. My bad. There are people getting very low, but no one's actually diving. There's been a couple of good dives by who is goldfish, but they just haven't been able to isolate anyone. The point is flipping back in the other way, but Azraf is going to get picked off. Oh, there we go. Azraf does end up going down, but you kind of take that trade if you take uh, care of their main healer in that Kiriko. Dildo trying to run away. A nice little pulse one there from Biz, but Scott still, the point has not been capped. I mean, I mean, you have Razor. Please just poke Razor a little bit. Shoot the Tracer. All good, but guess who's back again? Oh, no, this is never going to flip. I, I, Baz is back. This is our lives now. Uh-oh. Well, it's okay. There's the TP from the Kiriko. Point is still not being capped. We need a definite fight here. As are dead. Okay, there we go. Baz with two kills. Surely now. Surely. Both Kitsune Rush is used. Baz with almost a 5k. Hits four. There you go. Who is Goldfish? They eventually lose the fight, and Dildux claim the point. Yeah, the Dildux got the rush off earlier, yeah, and we talked about it in one of the earlier series where if you drop the Katsune Rush, you're generally in an advantageous situation. Even if you respond with the Katsune Rush, sometimes it's just too late. The damage was already done by Baz before the Goldfish uh, Katsune Rush came out, so they're unable to be able to hold up against it. Oh my god, what they feeling? Getting very low. You can see Gus is putting on a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, and there's that Primal Rage. Getting a match with a sound bar. Pretty easy target to shoot now. Is that primal raging monkey? How are they? Who oh, receives the B? Oh, guess who's back? Just straight back in there. And that's uh, overclock. Better be hitting things. Because right now, Dust is just controlling the map and flipping the point two for the team. Yeah, Baz had a primal in the background as well that we did not see. But oh, they found Baz. Baz lands on the back line. Is now getting very low and does fall. Trying to sort of re engage, but the rest of the team wasn't with him. And will be the flip coming up for who is goldfish. Honestly, uh, just a phenomenal uh, primal rage from Dust. Forces the sound barrier, end up getting a pick, created so much space, and Baz just wasn't able to find the same value on the other side. We'll see what overclock damage Azeroth can do. He's got a pulse as well. Yeah, you don't want to burn the recall that early on. And here's Azeroth using that overclock. Looks like they did to anything better of pushing into it. Just hiding away, waiting for it to wear off, not too bad. Does booping his little head there, almost uh, ends up falling down. To his own hubris there. Biz with a pulse bomb hits the recoil, spots the tank in the front line, easy stick. Red X actually ends up going down. Did I see Lucio, not the Winston? That was kind of crazy. I think it was uh, managed to weave that one. Lucio was collateral in the, in the grand scheme. Must of have been. All right, Rush is still available from Goldfish in about 8%, but they just got to keep this Lucio alive, but it doesn't like they're going to be able to, especially with Razor putting on a lot of pressure. No commitment, apparently. Not at all. Reverse wanted to touch it the last second, hoping they would stay alive for a little bit longer, but now who is Goldfish? I would think that they want to get out of this fight, but Dust is going in. Was it like it? Yeah, Dust is uh, yeah, getting out of there. No, 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 no. We back off, reset, quick, go again. They're in a good spot too. 
Uh, our Dill Ducks. They've got that cut. They got this rush. They're in a good space to use it too. But race is already dead to miss. Rush is basically overlapping at this point, and who is Goldfish? Just kind of rolling over Dildux. They needed to win this fight, of course. They don't want to make this uh, last. So capping with about 74% is going to net them at least a little bit of a cushion here to go for a re-engage if needed. That lead death by Biz is actually quite significant because all of a sudden this is a, an opening for Dildux so they're going to be able to get a lot of positioning without the fear of the Tracer just shooting them in the side. You can see Azraf is low as well. They're already on the back foot going into this fight and Baz has the primal rage so they can just go as aggressive as they want. Red X. Now they have the ground, to get they're there. They just need Fight to get the It's exactly what they need. That would be rather helpful, you'd imagine. Sound barrier. Red X just holding on to theirs. Who is Goldfish? Letting that one loose a little bit early. And there's the re-engage yet again. Baz just leaping back in after receiving that sound barrier. Almost too much. Just Red X there from Dildox just had a way better sound barrier. Yeah, the reverse pop the sound barrier to deal with like the threats of coming out as it pops the overclock and Dildux just disengage just a smidge back and then re-engage with their sound barrier. Baz just annihilates Azra. Great macro play and now Tristan has pretty much a completely free overclock. It's going to be on dust to be able to get on their face and just punch them around as they rip this overclock. Oh, oh no recall. No chance to get that one off. Well, However, now. Tristan... Overclock popped, insta-death, and Red X hit by a car. Yeah, they do move pretty quick on this map, funnily enough. Dust just leaping straight back in. Who is Goldfish? Might be able to take over this game now. Red X going down is disastrous for Dildux. That was Zaga uh, being taken. Primal by Dust. Like, absolutely phenomenal Primal. Gets two, stops the Overclock, and now he's just putting so much pressure on a Baz. Baz is... I mean, surely Baz dies. Nice. Point. Easy kill. There you go. Pulse bomb avoided Dust. My word, this movement, not only from the primal, just from just a normal monkey, looking clean. Who is Goldfish? They take round one. Crazy back and forth, though. They, that could have gone either way. Both teams having individual pop-off moments and working as a team. It's just, honestly, I'm just happy to see Winston. Winston mirrors are just so much fun in terms of just, like, seeing these individual players pop off and how they're playing around each other's cooldowns. Let's see if they're going to stick with it as we move over to Gardens. Oh, getting a little replay. Yeah, oh, Red no X. way. Wait, did he just fall off the edge? Did he go past the highway? Sure. I don't know. Surely must have been, but... Wow. Okay, nice. I'm surprised that Winston didn't get credit for that, but maybe Lucio glided on something. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe hit the ground, so therefore you don't get the credit for it. But yeah, maybe. Looks like we are going to see Winston coming out from who is Goldfish, but Dildux, they're going to go over to... Baz on the Orisa, which makes sense. I think your ability to stabilize and stick as a unit against the Winston can be very strong. All right, pretty easy to high ground control here from Dildux as well with the Orisa. It's going to be hard for Goldfish to get anybody to stick up on that height against uh, Orisa, Kiri, just pretty much, and the Casty as well. That's kind of frustrating for the... Well, that Magnate, goodbye. <laughs> he just threw that he, thing. Just he's just threw it for the best. <laughs> yeah, actually... <laughs> Pretty big cooldown as well, mind you, uh, in terms of, like, getting someone. Just pinning them down. Baz is going to drop, and Azraf's going to take the space. Oh, Red X. Yeah, Azraf, I didn't expect... Uh, I didn't think Red X really expected Azraf to be up there. Same with Dust. Space created for who is Goldfish and the cap. Getting this high ground would be monumentous for them. Oh, Dust. They're all stuck in a small room here. The Arisa oh, doing so much God. damage, yeah, Dust gets punished for it, but it will be traded back for the Cassidy. Is that good enough, though? I mean, the thing is, again, with this point, it's just so easy to kind of jump on and off, on and off. But it looks like Baz is playing all the way up now. Dust should be back in just a moment as well, Scott. Yeah, yeah they're going to have to hold on to this. Exactly, and they can just juggle the point for the whole time, so it's not even like they're losing much percentage. This is a good fight for them. Rush comes out from Frothy Philly. Pulse Ball onto the Orisa. Baz is dead. They can't even get value out of this rush. Yeah, team, where you at? Tristan taking a little bit of damage there in the front line. Can't make you to of that Kiriko rush that was on the point. Point still in control from who is Goldfish. Oh, is Biz switching? Oh, no, no, who's just keep up Kiri? Oh, right, yeah. I was, uh, so now Goldfish is coming up to the rush of their own. Azure with the overclock 
It doesn't feel like the Arista's been able to find any value. It feels like they they spent the entire round just chasing around the opposition of who is Goldfish. It's one of the reasons some people decide not to play the Arista on this map, because you're just not able to accomplish anything. This ends now. Okay, this ends now. Vazra have been one of the worst positions to be in realistically, although almost snipe someone out. Just a really hard fight from high to low, from low to high even. Pulse bomb on the ground. Razor almost recalling straight back into that one, but there's the rush on the point. Who is Goldfish just running away with this one? Dudux have Ulster a spawn spot, but they just don't get any chance to actually use them. I mean, they're going to have a whole host of them coming into this next fight, but is it actually going to be enough? Yeah, and it's also going to be like desperation touches here as well. Like, so Razor's going to be able to touch first to juggle off the point. But the the thing you have to be careful of is he has to recall uh, too early. Uh, oh, could be huge, actually. Never mind. Oh, he's looking for the Lucio. Fourth the Ajax. Oh, is it? That was very close. No AJs here. Reverse with a slightly better sound barrier a little bit later. There's the high noon just getting bopped away by Dust. 1,000 HP. A little bit dangerous, Scott, but he does manage to make it out alive. Razor already down to Goldfish himself. As Tristan now under a whole heap of pressure. However, jumping straight on top of the Orisa. That's a little bit of a defensive countermeasure there. Oh, someone's chasing me. Just jumping to my team's terror search. There's the flip. Finally, do looks make it work. Cost him a lot of ults, but same with Goldfish. Pretty much throw everything into that fight as well. Yeah, pretty great fight from Dildux. I think the high noon was perfectly timed. Dust wanted to try and get some value out of that primal rage, but just couldn't do anything because the Cassie's just holding that high noon. So now all of a sudden, no ults on either side of the board. And this is where it can get difficult for the Winston because now the Orisa is the one who's able to just anchor onto the point and there's nothing that who is Goldfish is going to be able to do to dislodge. So they have to get on the high ground and they need to get picks onto the backliners. Oh, they got high ground now, Scott. And Tristan's dead. Yeah. The pick. Tristan down. As if now could just shoot Arista in the back, charge up that railgun, and just sling a shot towards somebody. That's it, Scott. That's just done. That was almost too easy for his goldfish. I feel like Dildux didn't hold the door anywhere near enough. They just opened the door, left it open, goldfish take it, and just find the picks. And that should close out this second round. And who's going, go. going to take the first map? Map one, extremely decisively too. In their last series that they met up against each other, it was a 2-1 victory to Dildux. So we'll see if uh, the same can be repeated here, but... I mean, look, that was a uh, goldfish, especially that last couple of fights. That looked almost too easy for them, like you mentioned there. That was uh, it was kind of a roll. I mean, first uh, round was a little bit closer, but it was a 99 to 0 flip, and then they just flip it straight back and end up taking that first one. So, Iconvoda will be up next. It's goldfish's pick. Yeah, it's actually it's funny because I can actually pull in some uh, personal data uh, from this because. <laughs> This, uh, who is Goldfish was the team that actually knocked us out of the final round to be able to make it oh. to top 16. And something that they did against us that you saw here in this series was they play very all in, very decisive, right? They take position and then they just completely full engage with the Winston, right? You even actually see certain times when they want to commit and they understand their win conditions, Goldfish will, su uh, will TP in with the rest of his team so there is no backline to deal with. And I think that's one of the issues that we saw uh, for that um, for the opposition team is that it just didn't feel like they were ever able to get tempo, especially when they were stuck on the Orisa. It felt like they were just getting run past, the backline's dead, and there was no opportunity for them to even take an effective fight. Oh, God. I think that Lucio did go over the edge, you know. It looked like yeah, it. I think it they, like they it. were just past the car. As much yeah. as it's funny uh, when we see people get hit by cars in the game. Just let okay, no one clip that. No one clip that. Yeah, uh, you know, please have the context if you want to take that. Uh, but it's it's just one of those things that I, I think Dust has been my MVP so far in this win. So their ability to play oh, aggressive, yeah. find picks, but then also not be punished, I think it's just been doing a phenomenal job. Dust is looking super sick. The Primal Rage is the juggle. is pretty hard against like a lot of fast characters, but still making it work. Like forcing Kiri uh, TPs is very, very uh, powerful from the Winston. Then your team can follow up, or even you can follow up, right? So. Yeah, Dust is looking super clean. What if they're going to stick on the Winston here uh, as we go to Eichenbelda? I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, after this look and from what I we've seen in the past, especially as we go to Eichenbelda, this is a map that a lot of teams like to play the Winston on. The only... I guess you can make an argument that Orisa is better on the first and third points, but the second point, just with how many high grounds there are, a lot of people like to play the Winston across the board just because it enables you to get through the second point, which is really the pain point on Eichenbelda is just trying to deal with these high grounds if you're not playing a high ground take it just feels like you're walking on the low ground and just getting shot in the head 
All right, let's have a look. Load in. Dilducks versus who is duck goldfish? Has a mustache. How can you say the goldfish is cute when the, there's a rubber duck with a mustache? Uh, well, there's duck. Du du I'm more. I'm more. This is more yeah. like than Zoe, and she's not here to defend herself, so that makes it even better to make fun of Zoe. I just like how the goldfish is questioning everybody. <laughs> Zoe's lurking in the shadows, <laughs> waiting yeah, to well, pounce at any kind of uh, BM you throw her way. Yeah, so we just call me a really bad word in our private chat. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, please see us, please. please. But as, as we see, both teams actually going to opt back into the Winston. And Dildux believing, you know, especially because they play pretty well in the Winston mirror. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, hey, Arissa didn't work. Let's just go back to the Winston. Okay. I mean, we'll see if they do end up switching as well. They could uh, try and just counter comp them, but... They see the Winston, they're leaping out. No, they're happy to stick with this. All right, Winston versus Winston. This is what I'm talking about. See how our goldfish end up trying to defend this point. El Clasico dive. Whoa, how does Dust... Dust, Dust was is on HP. Dust, I do not know, but he's dead. He's looking so sad, propped up against that tank. Must have got a headshot with a railgun and maybe a kunai at the same time. Like, I don't know. That was ridiculously quick uh, kill. They wow. can give up some ticks here and then just sort of like give up a little bit of space. Wait for Dust to get back in. That will give opportunity for Razor to get back in on the Tracer as well. But now Baz is the one under fire and they're going to fall. Yeah, surely this is a, a little hold. Very quick kills, like you mentioned, Scott. Normally quite good, but a character like Winston gets back to the point very quickly. So... Bit of an issue. So you can see, you see the idea here for Deluxe is just trying to isolate Dust a little bit, trying to just push the frontliners away from their position and then set up a dive of their own. See how go who is Goldfish want to adjust and both teams diving in. Renix is the one to fall. Oh, little fadeaway kill there from Tristan using that disruption shot to kill the Tracer. And Dust going down, that is not good. They've lost their big ultimate in that pulse one for this fight. There's a lot of frontline pressure on top of that. Steel Ducks, they got two ticks and probably a third as well. From what it looked like there as well, Baz actually counter dive on the Winston, maybe expecting Dust to be playing hyper-aggressive. As soon as Dust went in, Baz jumped in on top of Dust as well, drops a bubble, and that sort of splits his team away from being able to help Dust. And that kind of split up that fight, and all of a sudden, Steel Ducks were able to do a better job of punishing what who his goldfish were trying to do. Question is, where is Dust 2? <laughs> I'm asking the real question, sir. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's gone, Jack. Dust 2 is over. <laughs> it's, it's gone. Actually, it's still around. Yeah, I know. It's, it's still my favorite map, but Actually. hey, you know, that's a different game. <laughs> we can yeah, that's, 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 that is true. in a small room. <laughs> oh, that pulse bomb, too. How does Baz get out of those? I do not know. Same with Dust. They're pretty good at the primal rage. They're able to weave out of there pretty quickly. I mean, that's an easy kill. Just waiting for the slide, and you just follow. You're literally following the sojourn in the skies. Like, hello! <laughs> like, you know, you're almost like carrying the sojourn to her death, right? Dude, looks with eye grab control, too. Has. Huge yeah, right, it's right. dust turn. Room. It's all about these primals, man. I'm telling you. Dolphins have a lot of ults, too, but Dude, looks even bad. like hiding away, waiting to jump onto the back line. There it is. There's a Kasune rush. Soundbar coming in, but Azrach just jumping out of nowhere just ends Tristan's existence. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go. Very late rush here. Oh, no, it's and then Astra trying to make use of it. And there we go. Baz can dodge out of that. He's trying to use that bubble to take down Azra, but a Katsune rush. And on top of that, the, uh, the Suzu is helping out. Yeah. Huge fight there from Who's Goldfish. It was an expensive one, right? They, they engaged with the overclock, sound barrier response onto the dive, then used the rush to make sure it closed things out. But Dildux didn't have to use too much as both of their support ultimates. So now it's on Tristan to get value with this overclock. The big issue is like, how do you get the space in this point? This is one of the hardest parts of the map to be able to deal with uh, this sort of Winston dive. Tristan needs to find a way to get onto the high ground. Just does have to use the Primal Rage to keep themselves alive. So oh. bring that back. Oh. Fine. Oh. Okay, Dust, I see you. Tristan's overclock from the Tristan. Overclock. Yeah, from, from Spawn. I mean, is there, is there any damage apart from the Winston here? I don't think there is. No, everybody just escorts themselves out of the door there, and uh, they just back up to the high ground. Okay. I mean, it's face created, I suppose. Pulse bomb lands. Oh, no! But Tristan slid into Frothy. Oh, I saw Tristan slide off of screen. Nice double kill from Biz. Granted it. 
I will say. Oh, hello. Hello, Red X. What? Oh, one HP. <laughs> That's I will I let know. you live out of the kindness of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. I double killed your backline, so. Goodbye. So huge pulse bomb there has a big swing, and who all of a sudden Dilbux, they've had to use a lot of their ultimate skin in these fights to almost no avail. Baz popping out of the primal rage, you don't really see what's going on, but Bizzy oh. is Tristan with nothing else. Jeez. It's a vendetta against Tristan, apparently. Alright, big reset again. 1 minute and 50 seconds for Dildux. Having a real tough time uh, uh, sieging the castle. Now, all of a sudden, that one tool, these ultimates are starting to wane. Minute 40 remaining on the clock. Who's Goldfish coming up to their support ultimates? Azrif with another overclock. And as you see, as soon as they see Dildux trying to cross that day in a distance, they run in because they know their cooldowns are being used and there's just so much damage in this small room. Oh, I mean, Baz took about six railgun shots there to the head. I don't think you're surviving that anytime soon. That payload is still moving back as well. So they're losing progress here. Yeah, and they're just keep going further and further aggressive. The fortunate thing for them, because they weren't able to get instant value from the uh, the overclock, Reverse did use the sound bar, but now Dust is looking for something cheeky. He has the prime Oh, range. I like this a lot. Guard. They step up, they split the team. There's the bubble, Baz 1 HP, gets so sniped. Smart. I know you guarantee last fight. Oh, little uh, kill onto Razor 2 on the back of those. I mean, this is uh, just ridiculous. And you can play up again. Like, you just play with Primal. You just boop them away. The payload is still moving back, Scott. They're losing progress. And if you're Dildux, you need to be willing to use ultimates early. As soon as you see the team and you see them go in, you need to use ultimates of your own. There it is. From They're going to do that. Tristan. Tristan's dead. I mean, they've got Sound Barrier, sure. Primal Rage as well. Available for his Goldfish. I mean, surely. Oh my god, he's gonna AJ. Oh my god, from the Never top worry. rope, he manages to get it off. I don't know how Red X survived that, but he did. Reverse dead, Red X down. They're in the spawn payload. Any touches? 10 it's seconds. Baz gets there, raises down. Oh my word. This is looking dicey. Yeah, it, it, the fight should come to a lull here as people fight for position, but the problem for Dildux is they have to stay on the point right now. That Biz has a pulse bomb. We saw him get a double kill with his last one. I'm seeing it. Tristan, one HP and a dream. Gets the high ground, healed up by the Lucio. Biz just holding down this choke here. There it is. There's the kills that you need. Overclock, kills Dust. Ooh, reverse two. Not a split second was his head revealed there. Taking clean off, Dildux managed to come back. Skin of their teeth, team kill two in OT. There is a potential to touch too. I don't think there's a touch here. Tristan switches over to the Sombra to get back into this fight quickly. Dust is setting up. They're gonna go for it. They're gonna go all in. Oh, Biz, oh, what? Insta down. Insta dies, Pulse Bomb in hand. That's not good. Here's the overclock though. It's gonna have to do some mean work. Trying to sneak it onto the payload. There's the sound barrier that they're waiting for. Now they can go aggressive. But Dust is the one to actually fall. Razor may have fallen here, but is enough. The staying power from Dildux is just too immense. Oh, Biz with a post bomb kill onto Red X. Not sure it's gonna be enough though. Azraf slides off the map. And there we go. My word. They make it work. And who is Goldfish committed three ultimates to get into that final fight? This could snowball away from them with the ult advantage as it's on Goldfish to get the value from this Kiriko rush. It's the only thing they have in their toolbox. And if Dildux are able to win this fight, because you can see how far who is Goldfish is playing, it could be really difficult for them to be able to stop this car from all the shoes. This one's dead already. That's what who is Goldfish needed. That was so rough. That's Susie from Frostby hitting the wall. Tristan not receiving that one. They do trade for reverse though, and they are sitting on a rush. So the later rush is going to be a little bit better here, especially on this re-engage. Sound barrier from Red X now. Hits four. Azrof dead. Dust looking like they were trying to hit Primal, but it didn't get it off quick enough. And now all of a sudden, who is Goldfish? It has to be on Dust with this Primal Rage. That was the best fight for Dildux. As I said, they trade those ultimates away. They win the team fight. If they can finish with time, this would be an incredible third point. Primal Rage. Can Dust do it to him again? Got the Lucio in their sights. I mean, Red X has been the target a lot of the time as well. Baz popping the Primal to Winston. Oh, Biz, oh, Biz again! Double kill with the Pulse Bomb. Surely that's over. Surely it's done. 
10 seconds to go, and there's only Bass and Frothy to try and get back. I mean, Bass doesn't even have Primal now, and Bits can just, just dance all day, basically. They can't hear me. Baz dead, and that will be it. Overtime was triggered, but uh, it doesn't matter. There's just not enough bodies on the point. Beers comes up with another huge double pulse, and the payload will end its journey there. Not bad from Blue's Goldfish. I'm sure, you know, with how successful their hold was on the second point, they would have loved to hold there. But going to the third point, this is definitely a winnable time for them. It really feels like we're seeing Dilducks really starting to step up in certain times. When they're able to play at their tempo, it actually makes sense and they, they're able to play their game. The, the situations where who is Goldfish is getting the advantages is when they're catching them off guard. Like those spawn hold where they, they use the rush very early on. Baz jumped right. out of spawn, not expecting that there was going to be a team around the corner. So if they can become more prepared for what who is Goldfish is willing to throw based around the ultimate economy and tracking, there's a world in which Dildox can start taking more better control of this game and taking fights on their terms. Same kind of compositions on defense here. Just very happy to run this Winston Mirror. Nice little change up from uh, the Arissa, to be fair. Not complaining. Yeah, no complaints. Yeah, yeah good things are happening. Let's, let's, not, let's not say the O word and hope someone's like, you know, maybe we just play Arissa and, you know, win the game. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You said it, please. Squad has now jinxed this one. And they're going to swap to, like... Arissa may sim. <laughs> then what if they go that? What if they go the timeless comp? There, let, let's go. Let's go. Oh Moira yeah, Ash and Moira guys. God, the timeless nightmare comp. All right, no, there's only Winston's in this game. Thankfully, good. good. Excellent. All right, let's see how they're gonna do this. Steel Ducks. Now they're the ones on defense. They're the ones who are able to choose the engagements because they have the position. They're giving a lot of space to who is Goldfish early on. They are, yeah. Oh. oh. Red X headshot dies to disruptor shot. Rest in peace. That might just be first point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's like, you know what's kind of funny? Because we talked about with the Roadhogs earlier. You know how like Roadhogs, they took away the one shot from Roadhogs and they found a way to bring back one, one shots? With yeah, yeah. Surgeon players did the exact same thing. With like, yep. they worked out that if they do like a little bit of chip damage or they shoot a disruptor shot, they can still one shot, right? Like, Azeroth didn't even have full charge on that rail, but because they did a little bit of damage with the left click and they hit them with the disruptor shot, they were able to hit one shot Red X and Red X couldn't do anything to counter that. Yeah, because you're not like, he you're not like, when you're down 25 HP, you're not like, oh, I'm gonna heal this real quick, I need healing, you know? Yeah. But you do, because you're just gonna get one shot, yeah. So small one. It's in isolation, it makes sense not getting the one shot, right? But in reality, when you're taking permanent chip damage from everything, um, it more often than not, it's just a one shot headshot with the Soge. Now there's a big jostling for positions. Oh, Tristan yeah. down. Very early. Yeah. I don't know how they're able. Was that just Dust? Just Dust just lands on top of them? Maybe a rail to follow it up beforehand, but now Dildux are going to all in. Yeah. I don't know, actually. That Yeah, that was a lot of like instant damage. Rough stuff. Wow, this is um, it's turning into a, quite a one-sided affair. Tristan's on the... <laughs> it's like, I'm not getting one-shot by a Winston again. <laughs> I am not getting jumped on by a Winston and getting insta-killed. I'm switching to Sombra. I'm going to hack, and you do the killing. <laughs> The issue with Sombra is Sombra is very chaseable these days. Her, the, her kick is quite exploitable. It does make your dive a little bit stronger, but most people would almost certainly opt in for playing the Sojin. Can't even get a hack down. This should at least result in something. Nope. Oh, there's the hack. Oh, Red X goes down yet again to Azraf. Back to back fights going down to the Sojin. Oh, that was a little bit RNG in there. Just uh, firing into that short corridor. That pulse bomb's good, but is it good for a kill? No, it is not. Lands the stick, but it didn't matter. Azrath now backing off, and here comes the rush. Oh, Sound barrier on top, and uh, Scott, this one is slowly becoming a stomp. 5.30 oh, on oh. to the third point. Feeling confident, I'm sure, who is Goldfish. Just where, in this Winston matchup, they just... They're, the way that they play around each other and their coordination just feels so difficult to play into. Tristan charges a very quick EMP, so this might be a difficult fight. Maybe this is a dry fight call here from who is Goldfish. Try and bait out this EMP. See what they can do. Yeah, it's got to be a dry fight, surely. There's the EMP. Oh, my. Trade it back. They didn't get a kill. 
Wait, what? Uh, you, oh, this is really bad for Dildux. Okay, there's the trade. There's the trade. We got it. We got the trade. Two ults invested. Baz cannot die. Do not die challenge. Got to be careful as well if you're the tracer. Razor's taking a lot of damage from those uh, kunais. They have to keep this sound barrier. They don't want to have to use this one to stay in this fight. Ooh. Trying to punish out. Dust, but that's a great fight for you if you're Who is Goldfish. That was two ultimates used by Dildux, and look at how much ult charge we have for Who is Goldfish. With their time bank, they're more than happy to just wait, get five ultimates up, and then drop them all at once, and there's nothing that Dildux are going to be able to do. Respond, and Baz did it. I'm sorry, I said the O word. Baz oh, did no, it. the O word. Arisa, please. Oh, well. Oh, nice stick. Better recall. Nice stuff from Biz there. Recognizing they have to get out of there. Dropping the bulb swap as they hit the reef. And like you said, Scott, just stacking up six ults. Might just be the rush. aim of the game here. Rush on the point. There's the beat to match. Better be in reserve. And here it comes. Reverse hitting the sound barrier. The pulse on the wall. Little hindernade on Biz. Somehow manages to get away. The chaos in that small corridor there was just absurd. Razor's dead, same with Red X, this is it, Scott, who is Goldfish, claiming the second map, extremely quick fashion too, what more can be said, Dilduck's just kind of falling over. And it's just one of those things, you know, who is Goldfish, just in this wins that I talked about the tempo at that halftime, they just feel like they have so much confidence in how they're going to play the yeah. game, and you can tell that Dilduck's just don't really know how to deal with it, at least in a macro sense of like how we play as a strategy. So they're having to make hero swaps, but the hero swaps so far have not paid up. The Sombra didn't find any value. Like that EMP was almost uh, a negative for their team because of how aggressive they went and how out of sync they were. Then they go to Orisa in desperation in that final fight. So Dillux, as you lose that second map, you cannot lose another one. Otherwise you're out of this tournament and they still have so many answers to give. Yeah, I mean, Esperanza is the map up next as well. And that's really good for dives, so. Rough, real rough right now. That was not a uh, close attacking round there from who is Goldfish. Worth keeping in mind too, I mean, Dildux uh, advanced at eighth seed, Scott, uh, coming into this one. Who is Goldfish advanced as 16th seed? Um, well, there's, there's an interesting nuance there because uh, from what we, we've heard is that uh, who is Goldfish? This is a team that came together an hour before roster lock going into the swiss stage so that could explain how this team and you know this is a team that did lose to dildux in the swiss stage so maybe who's goldfish they've just had a lot of extra value from just a couple of weeks since the swiss stage they've been able to practice scrim get their you know team identity in order and now they just look like they're at just a drastically different level to what dildux are playing at yeah what answers can they really bring out here that being a Dildux, I'm not sure. Maybe they're maybe they just like perma have the Orisa, like you just roll out with it. I mean, because the Winston is bad against the Orisa. It depends how fast you play, to be fair. If you play exceptionally fast, like they have been doing, it, the Orisa might just get run around, but let's wait and see. That's, that's one of the issues uh, that a lot of teams run into when you're playing the Winston versus the Orisa. You get stuck sort of like in this mid game where you're just like, you're waiting for the dive, but the dive never comes. Or then, as you said, they jump over your Orisa and then you're never able to get value. Overall, at least if you ask a North American player, they would say that Orisa is more well-rounded. But overall, if... Uh, who is Goldfish is just playing this Winston at such a high level. We saw the Orisa versus the Winston one time on Oasis Gardens, I'm pretty sure, and it wasn't particularly close because, as you said, Jack, it just felt like the Orisa was getting run around and never actually finding value. Well, let's have a look. Potential final map here for Who is Goldfish. Elimination, or I should say decider match for both teams. Winner here will advance to the main event alongside Toronto Defiant in Group A. Toronto, of course, going 2-0, in terms of map score. Like, no real surprise there. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty, they, you know, they're, you know, they're Toronto to find. They're pretty decent. One of the best It'd be in the world. interesting to see decent. if someone is able to hold on to Toronto and make it close again this stage, so. But let's look at this one, and it's going to be Dildux just being like, hey, no, we're going to take the Winston Mirror again. Well, I wonder if there's any changes, adjustments that they're going to make going into this map. Let's have a little look then. See if Tristan can survive as well. That is going to be the yeah. prime target for who is Goldfish. Just spotting out the Sojourn. Everybody pings and then everybody jumps. 
Okay, now we're waiting. Both, I, it, this is kind of that moment of like sojourns are just sort of poking and prodding. No one's really wanting to step and overextend because diving first here is just so difficult because your team is not going to be able to help you. So it's just going to be moments like this where Tristan gets the rail charge up, looking for a target. Just trying to find anybody to isolate. It's rough. They're losing energy too the, on the rail charge. Yeah. By the way, Dust has not peaked in like five minutes. No. So when do you think the first kill is going to come down? Oh, here it comes. It's very soon. Now, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> uh, busy the recall. And back to normal, everybody. Everybody reset. Everybody reset. Oh, no, maybe not. Razor gets uh, rolled by uh, Azrof, going a little bit too far. Ignoring the call there that I made. Unlucky. <laughs> Listen to the call, Razor. Jack said <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah, I said back. Come on, man. And now we're going to see Dildax already on the back foot here. It felt like they did a pretty good job of mitigating the aggression of that dive, but it, Razor's just not getting the memo. They had to fall back, so Bass is going to go in, drops a bubble pretty early to try and take some positioning. But you can see, who is Goldfish? More than happy to just sit on this high ground, feeling comfortable where they are. Wasn't a definitive uh, fight either, or like a kill, Scott, so they aren't able to get under the bridge. Wow, how, how, di how did Bass dodge that? That was an incredible sidestep. My word. The monkey uh, character model fits almost that entire uh, block there, so... Unfortunate there, that that Pokemon didn't land, but a continue rush on the high ground from Frothy. Does make sure they can kill a Dust. Pretty quick sharp. I really like that play where your Winston dives in, your Kiriko TPs to your Winston, which is usually very dangerous because you become exploitable as a Kiriko, but if you drop the rush, the other team's going to have to try and disengage from you, and as you saw, Dust just didn't have the HP to be able to run, and now Azure pops the overclock to try and get in their face, but gets instantly primal by Baz. Yeah. The OC still does a fair amount of damage though, but it's actually Dust as the first to fall. Here we go, okay, Dill Ducks looking alive. Getting that lead too in just a moment. The Azeroth is uh, wanting to fight this, they're gonna commit. Yeah, they got the sand barriers, both beasts have been used. I mean, what else, uh, what other obstacles you can really throw in here? Tristan has the overclock and Razor has the pulse bomb. Goldfish, theoretically here, are on the back foot, but this bot refusing to move now because Biz is just perma-anchoring it. Nice boot. Oh, again. And this feels like, it, I don't know what's changed here for Dildux, but they are just feeling way more comfortable. It feels like all of a sudden it's now who is Goldfish are the ones trying to play reactive. Great. Good primal here from Dust, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to find anyone. And now this is another 4v5 fight that who is Goldfish is going to try and commit to. Oh, 50 HP, 7 HP. Oh my God, 7 HP. <laughs> they got out of there. I don't know how. Oh, not quite. All right. There's Razor. Follow up with the pulse bomb. There we go. There's the win fight. This is a messy game so far, Scott. Just so many small picks. Eventually, now it deals with a very convincing win on that team fight. It's because who is Goldfish just keep trying to commit ultimates to overcome their player deficit. Like they, it seems like they're getting picked in their ultimate economy is a little bit on the back foot, but they just want to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. And that's kind of their identity, and that's what was so successful for them in the first couple of fights. But now they're fighting into an overclock on the high ground. And that will lead to a disengage. Oh, that's all headshots wants to be. Oh, dodges out of the post bomb as well. I think uh, Tristan there has changed his sneakers because, my word, fancy a footwork this time around. Last map, he was just permanently getting kind of rolled by the Winston dive with the tracer. There's the kill, too. Tristan coming up large. Yeah, that's where I end up going down. I mean, this this uh, continuing rush should make sure Dill. Uh, uh, Dildux plays a little bit further backwards, but re-engagement with the Primal Rage. Red X has Sound Barrier too. They got the tools to keep going in this fight if they even need to use them to there. And no, it doesn't like it. They're going to save those for another day. Yeah, it just feels like uh, Dildux is just permanently the one in control. And, and it really does start with Tristan on the Sojourn. Finally finding some picks, getting the differential over Azeroth and just doing a great job of just like really finding their position of like, how do we play up against this Winston? They know that who is Goldfish are wanting to play aggressive and be proactive. So they're making adjustments to do it now. Azraf is being very proactive. Overclock onto the high ground. Oh, oh dangerous. That was so close again to another Ajax. Only has three people with the beat though. And like a reverse there, hits all five. Now the target focus can begin. It dust is so low. The pulse bomb in the hands of Razor almost gets the one clip on the Kiriko. There's the pulse bomb in the bubble with no insta Suzu. And there's the turnaround goldfish we're looking for. And it looks like with those two picks, it could be a still going. goldfish, but the rush comes in from Fluffy Philly. That might turn things around. Yeah, it is exactly gonna do that. I mean, there's no way Dust wants to fight into this. Absolutely not. 
My word. This fight just never ends. This is a constant fight. He's been battling for what feels like the last three minutes with some small downtimes. I mean, we have four minutes to go, Scott, and yeah, it really has just been a consistent fight for the last six minutes. Oh, dust is dust, oh, dust, 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 dust. Turned to dust. My god, there was not a, a frame where he wasn't taking damage there. Primer Rage in the back, just waiting for that Sojourn slide. Thinks better of it though, under 500 HP. Has to get back to the rest of the team as the bot continues to move. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go now. And still, like, so slowly but surely, just gaining so much more of a lead. And they have checkpoint two, mind you. If you're Who's Goldfish, you need to slow things down and get like a reset here. But it's going to be Jillux. They're going to put the overclock and go a little too aggressive here. Great response here to Tristan. They're going to pop the rush as well, just to guarantee they're going to close out this fight. Oh, oh actually, he landed in the bus stop. Best rush I've ever seen, but it should be matter. Yeah. The overwhelming stampede of the team just running forward. So they end up taking the bot. Okay, three minutes. Okay, now we get some downtime. Good stuff. Yeah, and now, now all of a sudden we can see who is Goldfish. They're going to be able to remove the forward spawns from Deal Ducks. Let's see if they're going to be able to hold the offensive high ground here because a lot of teams like to fight for this after you get this forward spawn because you don't want to run through this low ground. And you can actually see the team of Deal Ducks in the back line going up the left side. They want to fight for this, battle, uh, this high ground. Well, let's have a look. What they can really do. I mean, you've got to be careful with your Azra fair. Yeah, you have to inter slide away, but not quick enough. There's the sand barrier. There was an OC available. That overclock could have been ripped at any moment. But Bass finds two. All right, okay. Deal Ducks now in control yet again. This map very much going in their favor, unlike the previous two, which have been kind of one sided in all honesty. Yeah, so, so something's clicked here for Dildux, and I like the way that they're playing. It feels like they're able to force who is Goldfish just to be a little bit more uncomfortable, and I think we've seen more mistakes out of who is Goldfish, and that's not that's not uh, like these are unforced errors. These are errors that are just feeling like, you know, Dust's example. He's been playing phenomenally in the first few maps. He's made a couple of mistakes in terms of his positioning and how much damage he's taking, and that's just the reactiveness of Dildux. They're going to drop the rush directly on top of where Dust jumps in, but Redix is down. Renex dead. Oh. Overclock not quite yet. Hitting that back line. It's all good though. Who is Goldfish now? If they can catch some stragglers here, that'll be even better. But it's actually dust that. Oh, he's okay. He just pops the primal. All right, okay. I see your game. Oh, that's so just juggle. Doesn't stand a chance. Tristan just getting juggled into a different map. Like, that was absurd. Just does end up paying for it with his life though, Scott, and this bot is not going to move. Yeah, it's unfortunate that Dustin ends up dying for that. It was a great juggle, but just took way more damage than I think they were hoping to take. This should lead to what should be a sort of slowdown and a reset for both teams as they both re-engage and regroup. Lots of ultimates coming here for who is Goldfish. They have the beat to be able to deal with this Tristan overclock that's coming, but Biz, can they come up with another big pulse bomb? They've had a couple of big ones. Oh, they found Tristan. Yeah, I mean, surely Tristan dies here. No HP. Bubble to block the healing, too. Sound barrier from uh, who is Goldfish? Yeah, okay. I don't know if I love that sound barrier. I guess Dust is very low. They're afraid of losing Dust and sort of invalidating that pick that they get from it. But now all of a sudden, Tristan does it. There's no responses to this Tristan overclock that's going to come in this next fight. Dust with a counter dive onto Baz. But look at this primal. I mean, oh, I already just disappeared. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, now you don't. Well, here we go again. That is just taking so much damage, though. Saws the bot a little bit there. Doesn't want it stolen. Wants to put on the pressure. Hey, that pulse bomb, but no kills in the kill feed. Here's the overclock. Dust is dead again. Who is Goldfish? Slowly but surely losing control here. 20 seconds to go as well, Scott. This is looking disastrous. They did not want to go to a map number four, but I think they're going to be forced to. Feels like Dust is just really trying to get so much done and Dildux have realized, hey, if we just counter die, Baz just keeps jumping in with a defensive bubble, isolating Dust. Dust is just taking way more damage than they're ever expecting. We will see Biz gets onto the point in his overtime setup, but all of a sudden Azeroth's in danger. Oh, Ajax! I think Renix just hit the AJ again. Oh, or almost uh, hit one earlier. I think Dildux is just going to round this one out. Don't need that sound barrier after all. Map number four on the cards now as Dildugs come back. Ooh, anything can happen. It's not even just like they won a map. They won a map playing who is Goldfish's game, right? Like, yeah. something Play in the has dive. definitely clicked.
They're playing the dive. They're, they are playing up to them right now. Yes, yeah, something has turned around. I don't know what happened in that small break that we had between uh, Esperanza. Not Esperanza, sorry. Well, no, Esperanza and Agamotti, yeah. And that small little gap there. But my word, those first two maps, they were all goldfishes. All of them. Like, there wasn't a single point where you're like, okay, you know, maybe they just W here. W M one and just uh, win. It was all goldfish, but now Dildax just turning on its head. Let's listen into these winning comms, though, at the final portions of uh, Esperanza. Just I'm getting the car, I'm getting the car. Who's bottom? Who's bottom by himself? Yeah, yeah, I want to call for rush best. Wait, check, right. car. check car, check car, check car. No, 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 Kimmy, Kimmy, nice. Okay, okay, okay. Lucky one, Lucky one, Lucky one, nice. Just, just carry, just carry. No touch. Oh my god. Nice. Oh, reverse sweep these more. guys. Reverse sweep them. I don't care. Reverse sweep them. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. Reverse sweep. We reverse sweep. sweep. Now. <laughs> nice. Good stuff. Like, hey, keeping the comms up like that and just making sure your head's always in the game is important. Even if you do hear the AJ at the very end, I mean, you didn't even need it in the end. So, you know, there's no point calling that out. If I was in that voice, I was like, I AJ. My no, no, no. You never admit Ajax. You just hope nobody realized. You're like, yeah, to be team. fair, everyone did their job. <laughs> the enemy surgeon was overclocking. So, yeah. yeah, a little rough, a little rough against the Lucio. It's also, you could see, because I said the same thing when I saw Azure take that position at the end there right like as soon as that sojourn slid in towards the bot i don't know why maybe thinking that they were the one that needed to touch but as soon as that slide was made the team all in so that's great coordination you can see they're on point they're in sync they know what they need to do with this composition now it's just about doing what they said live up to your promises the reverse sweep starts now and i can i'm starting to believe it jack yes that's just one map but oh yeah, yeah that was, there it that is there it is there it is a little rough all good though you're chilling you won the map got a flashpoint up next here's some stats for you too Oof. i also think if you're um what is goldfish it's one of those situations where you're like okay we we kind of made a mistake we made some mistakes there where like they were over forcing ultimates they were trying to win fights that they had no right to win that could almost come from an overconfidence in the first two maps of like hey we're just kind of winning like we have confidence that we can do whatever they need to just pull it back a little bit and be willing like hey if they get a pick hey if this happens we need to start resetting because it felt like they were sort of fighting against themselves at every step because they were just trying to use ultimates and just never accepting that a fight was lost all right here we go then Map number four, New Junk City. Still in a match point, who is Goldfish? I mean, we've got to take one here, but Dill Ducks, you heard it in the comms. Reverse sweep, don't care. Reverse sweep starts now. Very possible, especially after that game. And they, and playing against uh, the same composition, three maps in a row, and then you're finally, like you said, kind of figuring it out. We'll see if they want to do the same thing. Looks like maybe Arissa being hovered by both sides. Not too surprising, I wouldn't yeah. say monkey's good here i don't think monkey is good at all i think monkey's pretty bad uh, when it comes down to it especially like where are you really diving on a lot of these points the iris is just so much better at holding down uh, places so there you go there's just so much low ground right like yeah, there's so much low ground there's no reason you need the jumps and verticality of winston winston doesn't really have good positions to play base off of so that's why we see a lot of iris or even junker queen um in the in these games but we will see a mirror setup once again pretty much the exact same compositions but they're playing orissa i wouldn't expect these teams to be playing too differently on the orissa to how they were playing on the winston you can see both orissa's getting aggressive yeah again noticing like the sojourns using that slide is just so important to kind of follow up on that one good early kills here from who is goldfish boy unlocks quick sharp and that'll be a cat it's just Red X getting a little bit aggressive, maybe misstepping, not realizing how much pressure was going to be coming out. Since Tristan always dies just a step out of spawn. Ooh, what? It's getting very, very dangerous with it, but who's Goldfish? Ticking things up, and you can see Azra's doing a lot of damage getting up to that overclock Goldfish as well. In the lead with this Kitsune Rushes, we've seen this time and time again. Whoever gets the first Kitsune Rush, if they drop it as soon as they get it, they'll generally get a huge advantage in the fight. So keep an eye on those two ultimates. And you end up just winning this first flashpoint as well, right? Because of how quickly the time ticks up. So yeah, look for that ult. About twenty percent away for Goldfish. Same with Frothy right now. That was very aggressive. My word, Azeroth just jumped up onto high ground trying to get a headshot. He's got a headshot himself. Speaking of which, they're dead. Now the point is pressured. Razor just oh oh outplayed. Actually just outplayed by the uh, Orisa. 
They definitely can. They've got the Katuna Rush. You might as well lay it down. There's two of them. Straight on top of that point. Profi gets out of the way of that Orisa. Incoming fire, incoming damage. And here comes the sound by a Red X. 15% like away. I really like that B. This guarantees this one for sure. Yeah, I don't know if that was recognition knowing that Reddick died early in the previous fight and is probably lagging behind the sound barrier, but ripping that sound barrier almost guarantees that first capture uh, point, and I think you would take that trade 100% of the time. So, great play by Who is Goldfish. A lot of teams would have just, like, accepted that they were going to lose, but that huge javelin by Dust onto Razor getting that trade pick keeps them in the fight and keeps them getting this first point. All right, they're trying to keep uh, Dildux honest. No funny business. Oh, my word. Okay, Tristan almost went down to just a spear. This actually ends up going down first. Tristan playing in the disruptor shot. Giga chat. Oh, strategy. My word. Okay, there's the pulse bomb. Double kill for Razor. God, these tracer plays. Uh, these tracer pulses, in fact. This whole series have just been lights out. And then Steel Ducks taking the point. They end up using that sound barrier, though, Scott. So uh, both Red X and Reverse... They're a little bit off-kilter in terms of their ultimates now, so Goldfish, you expect them to have their one coming up pretty quickly now. And that's just the cost of them using the sound barrier in their previous fight, right? They don't have the sustainability to stand the fight. Beans tries to go for an aggressive pulse bomb to offset that, ends up going down. So it's not the worst fight if you're who is Goldfish. And now we have two Orisas with Terra Surge. Wonder if we're going to do the Spider-Man meme as they both Terra Surge on top of each other, waiting for uh, something interesting to happen. Oh, Dust might have to it pretty soon, because Dust is pretty damn low. Nice little kill from Biz, though. Another one, too. A second, perhaps. Point is being flipped right now by who is Goldfish, but Dildux are trying to get back onto the point. There's the Terror Surge, this time from Baz. The re-engage is almost perfectly timed, too. They don't let the point go over. Dust still picking up one, and Baz now has to fight on the point pretty much alone. Wow, get down, Mr. President, says Dust there, Jodge uh, jumping in front of that spear. Well, it's just a wrist is using spears against each other. This is... Uh, what's happening right now? It's just two phalanx looking at each other and just hoping something dies. And who's Goldfish will eventually flip that, but that's 86% here for Dildux, and Goldfish decides to commit the Katsune Rush. I like the decision, but once again, all of a sudden, who is Goldfish is now playing into a disadvantage. Frothy Philly is going to have this rush, and if who is Goldfish try and fight into it, they're just going to fall over. So they almost have to stall things out until they can get an overclock or a sound barrier, or Biz has to go crazy with a pulse bomb. Yeah, I mean, Biz is in a good position to do so, but decides better of it. Doesn't want to mess with the Katsuna Rush. Someone could just uh, jump around, just one-tap him. Doesn't end up missing, but spots the recalling Tracer. Razor gets back to the rest of the team. Can play safe now. Here comes the Sound Barrier. Dildug's in control of the point. Oh, oh that's a big boop. Can Dildug reclaim this space from that boop? I mean, Dust is on the low ground right now, and someone has to touch. Straight to the back line goes Dust. Same with Azra, but Azra gets chased down by Baz, but Baz oversteps. The rest of the team are just kind of looking at him, and Azra playing doorkeeper. So much damage from the overclock. I mean, you, you just can't stand up to that at all. And then she's going to get chased away. Final fight now for Goldfish. Wow, huge play by Azra. That felt like that fight was going away from them. They didn't really have much opportunity. They had later sound barriers, later overclocks coming in. But Azra just murders Baz with just constant body shots, even through the gold, and then hits a couple of big shots to take down some other players. And it will lock down the second point for who is Goldfish. Big plays by the Sojourn player in Azra. All right, Junkyard unlocked. Goldfish one point away now. I mean, this is the reverse sweep to reverse sweep. You need to get three points on Flashpoint, and then you need to win two more maps. So they got to come up big with something here. Renex goes super low, just gets poked out. Speaking of getting poked out, Tristan down. This isn't good. Not a good start. Points going to unlock too. This even isn't even a super early fight. So Goldfish is just going to be able to take this first up. Like there is no way Dildux is going to be able to fight here. Yeah. Not only the cost on the Terra Surge as well. Just some big plays. Honestly, Biz has been coming up big on this Tracer time and time again. Not just, not really just in the Tracer duel, but finding certain players like Red X or Tristan going into the fights. Just applying so much pressure. So now all of a sudden, Dildux backs against the wall. Their tournament dreams hanging in the balance. They lose this. They're out of the tournament. And who's Goldfish will go on to the round of eight. Pulse bomb. I thought, I thought Biz was going to try and pulse bomb Razor there. I, 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 I was speaking of pulse bombs. Razor gets heated. Katsuna Rush coming in. I, I don't think he know. I don't even think Razor knew where he was there. To be very honest with you, Scott. He recalled in amongst two different Orisas and uh, two rushes happening. 
They can push this. They can. They can force even more. Kills here is, is, no cool is a win. Well, there's the uh, uh, Terra Surge, but perfectly Susu from Goldfish. Stick comes in. Arisa down. This is it. Goldfish is just gonna win. There has to be some amazing plays here. A sound, sound barrier does hit four for Dildux, but can they make use of it? That's the question. They still need to reclaim the space. Ray's is gonna get chased out. Oh! Straight into a smack. Renex is gonna touch. That will be the hold. Reverse going down there, so they weren't able to respond to the sound barrier from Red X just meant that they weren't able to do anything. So maybe a little bit too aggressive from who is Goldfish, but also now you get to come in with your ultimates. You have your Terra Surge, you have your Sound Barrier that Dildux just had to use. But then it's also gonna be on the Sojans. Tristan came up clutch in Esperanza. I wanna see it again. He's the only one that has anything for Dildux. Well, the high ground control is gonna be needed and Tristan knows it. Same with Frothy. Okay, you can't... Okay, Red, Red X is alone, by the way. Okay, they're with the Tracer, but still, you can't get Ice it. They're gonna get Ice it. chasing at Red X. They're just chasing Red X. Red X, uh, I, uh, well, I don't know where Red X was ascending to there, but... Looks like he's gonna be able to get back. Oh, it's actually reversed. That ends up going down. Sound Barrier down. There's a chance to do that. to come back here, but with Froffy dead, Tristan's gonna get hounded down. Where's the heals? Where's the damage? Tristan, it does manage to get a couple of shots on the Arisa. Manages to take him out as well. Dust ends up falling down. This could be Tristan's time to try and clutch this one out. The Biz is gonna come back with a couple of kills of their own. As Tristan finds yet another one. A stick! A stick to end it all. And so Tristan slides into Razor again. Tristan slides into Razor as Biz gets another kill. Another stick onto the Soge and clutches it out. Goldfish end up taking this series as a Biz. Oh my god, that is the third time, I believe, in that series that Tristan has slid into someone and landed Biz a double kill with the Pulse Bomb. That is an absurd way to end the game. <laughs> who is Goldfish? I don't know who they are, but they take a win. They take themselves to the main event as well. Unbelievable ending. Wow, and I, you can't even really blame Tristan for that slide at the end there because he kind of got stuck on the way through. So Razor, he, there's nothing he could do, and Razor just is... Casual what did I that? just witness? Oh, that was crazy, boy. There are a lot of great moments, honestly, in this match. Uh, also, I do, uh, I am happy. I mean, uh, Dildux, we do have to say goodbye to them now. However, map three, they really came alive. Something clicked, like really clicked. I don't think any of us was able to like really put a finger on it. Like, I don't know why suddenly the dive looked super clean. Maybe it's just push maps for them. Who knows? But I am glad that they went out with at least a bit of more of a showcase on why they were in the group stage to begin with. Uh, I am I'm ready to see more of who is Goldfish, though. And with that, let's actually head into the highlights to once more relive some of the shenanigans that just went down in our last match of the day. And oh, yeah. it, it also really started with with Dust on the Winston, right? Like, I think Dust was having a couple of really big plays, and that was one of the, th the determining factors of why I think the first two maps were so decisive. Like, I think Dust was doing a phenomenal job, but as you said, Zoe, something clicked in the middle there, and all of a sudden, Dust was having a much harder time with it. Yeah, it was a little bit wild, too. I mean, the first two maps really were just shutouts, like, straight up. Dildux found something that worked for them. Um, they ended up uh, switching over to the Arista some of the time there, obviously, on uh, the last point uh, sorry the last map but you are uh, it does feel like this team is better on the dive that being dildux but it looks like the dive is just a little bit better from who is goldfish and as of and especially biz bro that guy i don't know what it is about sojourn sliding when it hit there's a pulse attached to him but biz is like uh, jedi mind tricks them like you will slide when you have pulse yeah. on you you will slide into your team and kill someone else for me like my word what a play from biz and just not only like getting the double kills is sick but like the attach rates especially on like super high mobility characters is so difficult so consistently being able to attach it to the trait uh, to the sojourn it is ridiculous and yeah mad props to biz yeah, multiple times throughout the series, just found multiple double kills. And it's not even just the mobility of the Pulse Bomb that makes it difficult, it's the Suzu's as well. Like, you have to find right. that timing where the Kiriko's not going to be able to Suzu it, where you're going to be able to find multi-kills. But this is a huge play by Azure as well. I think this, this is like a turning ridiculous point Ridiculous amount of damage. Like, uh, what, 20k damage? Uh, it's not 20k, but the college is like, <laughs> 20k <laughs> damage. The numbers a little bit, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he was doing a lot there. He was doing a lot. That I mean, this ending too. Bomb. Yeah, this Pulse Bomb is uh, just absurd. Oh, no, they did slide. Oh, yeah, they did, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, hit him with it, too. Love to Just see it. Just the Fortnite dance. Insane stuff. Dust game, player of the game, though. Uh, or player of the match, sorry. 
absolutely deserve you, you as you said we made a big uh big spiel about biz and like some of their big pulse bombs but for me it really was just being the tip of the spear right like he was always the one well going done. in uh di <laughs> diving in just sort of really just getting all <laughs> And then, until they won, right? And then third point, it, it got a little difficult. But, you know, I, I, I was really... It, it was cool to be able to see Winston play it again and sort of see it at this level because, you know, it's it, they make it look so much easier than it actually is. I was also just baffled at how kind of even the first map was. The first kill didn't happen forever. Point just wouldn't unlock. I literally yeah, thought we'd exactly. be stuck in limbo and never <laughs> move on. So I'm glad uh, that the Dust and Friends showed up and, and edged it out there in the end. That was ridiculous. Yeah, we've had... So, I feel, it's Coliseo is those moments where, like, the point has been unlocked for three minutes and we've not had a single kill like that seems to happen a lot um even in the dive mirrors as well because the spear is so good at like setting things up winston a little bit less so you can dive on the back line but it's uh it can get pretty tough um let's listen to the winning comms though of that last uh, point because my god biz must have been going absolutely psycho in comms or maybe his teammates were i'm getting traded i'm getting traded i'm getting traded I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. You guys are yeah, we can win. down one. Even, even. Search one, search one, search one. Search one, search one, search one. You guys are going back on B. Put it in. Behind you. Just try, just try. Good mode. I'm the stickiest, baby. They're doom, doom touch, doom touch. You ain't touching shit. Oh my god, Biz. Oh my god. Legendary. He certainly did not touch anything. And now we have Dust joining us for a chat. You moved on with this victory into the main event. So congrats to you and the squad. Also, Dust, just personally, insane Winston showcase from you. If I squinted my eyes during the series, I swear I could have seen Gushui on the server. Now, of course, Winston, not really the most common uh, composition we currently get to see in the EMEA and NA region. Um, we of course also saw some Marissa from you at the very end there though. Do you feel like you can make the Winston work uh, or the dive work in the main event? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely our best chances. We've been scrimming a lot more than we did prior to Swiss uh, in these last couple days and we've just kind of found like it's really our strong suit. So we plan to lean into it fully today and actually not play any Orisa, but just like how the maps fell out, we decided to play it on New Junk. And so I think it was the right decision. Yeah, I mean, hey, Winston worked out for you guys. Hopefully you can uh, play it more in the main event, but like, Going into this comp going into uh, this stage, you you came in last place in like Swiss or like not last place, but you you qualified last in like 16th. Like, what do you think? Uh, who's going to be your biggest uh, opposition going into the next stage, the main event? Because you are going up against, or probably like Toronto Defiant M80. Is there anybody on that list that you think you can really take to like a map number five or like take down? What are your expectations? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're quite at that level in terms of any of the top teams, but hopefully with like some of the lower tier top eight teams, we can have a uh, good showing and who knows, maybe after a scrim or two uh, of improvement. We haven't, we haven't been doing very good in scrims, but it's okay. So we're just match day players. So hopefully we can keep showing up on match day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there are teams that play in scrims really well, and there are teams that play really well in matches. And when if you're one of those teams, anything is possible. So first things first with my question, do you feel any remorse about knocking Overwatch out of the tournament? <laughs> okay. Mm, that's a good question. And I have to say, if there was any other way, I would have taken it. But unfortunately, we had to full hold you, and it's all business, no pleasure. Yeah, I, I understand. You could have at least made it close, but I understand. But, but the real question that I have for you is, <laughs> you guys seem to be a very proactive Winston team. You guys want to all in as a team. Like, you had that really cool spawn hold on Eichenwalder. Is that really how you guys like to play the Winston? And was that something that you kind of struggled with on Esperanza, where they kind of were dealing with those kind of dives a little bit better? I definitely struggled with it a lot on Esperanza, in case you didn't notice, but yeah, I think me personally, and I think my team will agree with this, like, I'm an aggressive player, like, I want to go first, and yeah. it kind of just fits into my play style, so that's just kind of what we tried to do today, and I think we succeeded most of the time, obviously Esperanza was a little ugly, but it happens. 
<laughs> no, you're definitely playing that trust Paul Winston and your backline is making it work for you. So you love to see it. I can't wait to see what you and the squad got for us in the main event. One last question before I let you go. It's a shot in the dark here, but who is Goldfish? Is it an actual person? It's been keeping me up at night. Please. <laughs> I need answers. I What's with the name? I don't... I don't know if I can give up that information right now. I think I think I hear them closing in, so uh, I'm going to need to back up on that. I'm that's sorry, right. I can't help you. Interview right there. That that's okay. I'll um, I'll find out. <laughs> if you need help, we might send someone over. For now, we're going to say goodbye. Though. So thanks again for joining us, Dust. Thank you. Legend. Ah, mysterious. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I it, actually, I it actually bothers me. Like, I'm physically bothered that I cannot get an answer I mean, to that. Maybe we'll find they out in the main me. event. The, the yeah. face reveal. It'll be like the Kevster face reveal, like, all over. Big it. reveal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be like Super is actually in their team or something. Like oh, my God, that'd be insane. <laughs> super playing I super swear, during one of the combos, I was like... Was that his voice? Does that sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. You'll never know. Maybe I just speak it into existence. Uh, now, that was, of course, our last match of the day. Let's once more look at the, the Group A bracket to see how this one turned out to be. Of course, Toronto defined they were the favorite to win it all. And uh, they will move on alongside the team that they knocked out in their first or knocked down in their very first uh, opening match. And that is, of course, who is Goldfish. Mm -hmm. And honestly, oh, yeah. you know, it's cool to be able to see these teams. Like, this is like my favorite ta uh, part of group stages where it feels like, you know, obviously the number one seeds, they're out of there. Okay, good job, guys. We're all really proud of you. Go away. And now they, we get to see a lot of these other teams, like middle of the pack. Like, these are the matches that matter. We're seeing very close matches. These are the matches that get you to top eight. Then you're getting points. Then you're getting prize pools. So it's really awesome to see lesser known players really sort of stepping up in the big moments. Yeah, and different metas as well, right? Each team bringing their different flavor uh, to the pot. So uh, we're eating. And now, uh, speaking of eating, uh, treats were had all day long. So let's once more revisit some from our NA region. Uh, there, was, uh, there was one, an amazing play or two or three. I don't know. Let's see how many we got. There's quite a few. Costa, I know it's so stretched, but I'm rolling with it. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your, your commitment to the bit, but... Uh, this... Thanks, thanks. This was dirty. The, uh, uh, yeah, pun this intended. Literally. This was dirty. Yeah, oh. they, like they, getting one play, you're like, ah, you know, good old Roadhogs. They're up to their old tricks again. But they just did it so consistently on this map. It's it. Come on. <laughs> like, what was, what was happening? Like, this is an old F4 moment if you're getting hooked this much. Like, it felt so bad. Just Not even just hooked, you're getting hooked off of the map. Also, that boop was insane. Um, you, you, you're fortified, right? When you're when you're going for the Arisa roll, like Slummy Boy must have hit the the boop of the century there, like the frame before Arisa went uh, went into the ult. But that was ridiculous. And Biz, this man, unbelievable stuff. The, the amount of slide kills Tristan got on his own team was insane. Like, but it's also kind of you, like you said at the at the very moment, Scott can't be helped sometimes when the Sojin is already sliding away from the tracer. Like, it just happens like that. But man, it doesn't look good on camera. Also, my favorite part of this when they showed the cons was they were like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like they're like, emote! <laughs> yeah, it was legendary, bro. I love the cons. It's always man. time for a good emote. Yeah, hell yeah. We had some, we had some really sick plays today. Also, some very, you know, out of the box compositions. So I am happy. That was the second to last day of our groups. Let's take a look at our NA standings to see where we currently are finding ourselves, which is one more day to play. And that means we have to say goodbye to a few more teams, guys. Oh, yes, we do. Citrus no. Nation and Timeless. Yeah. Um, that is going to be a match I'm looking forward to seeing and casting, obviously, with Carson tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, Citrus Nation, I think they've won the hearts of a lot of people. Timeless are still just disgusting at the game. Um, so that should be an extremely good match. Vice versus FMCL might be a little bit more one sided, but you know, they just come off of a win versus uh, everybody's nightmare, uh, the one trick <laughs> team. So yeah, we'll see how that ends up going down as well. Yeah. Which one are you most looking forward to, Custom? I, I think I kind of want to see Unk play again. I, I, I really enjoyed okay. Unk's team. I, I, th I think they were pretty strong. I, I'm kind of curious to see how they go up against, you know, Pirates in Pajamas. I think Pirates in Pajamas and the group as a whole is just a lot closer. So I, if I was going to choose a match that I thought was going to be the most competitive, it'll be the second one of the day.
Yeah, and uh, they're riding that victory high as well. So let's see if they can get it done. Uh, many things still to decide tomorrow. For now, we're going to say goodbye for our part of the day. However, we're not done with Overwatch as a whole. No, the game did not cease to exist, in fact. <laughs> we're still having some streams going on as well. Uh, and that's why we're going to be raiding Hydron. So stick around, oh. say hi to our favorite boy. And we're going to see you again around time tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's <laughs> Oh, I cap is already dead too. The comeback from Meta Boys does not look like it's gonna be happening. The last 22 seconds left. Oh yeah, we're so good at collapsing onto I cap. Stable, stable, stable. Just live, just live. Cash shot, shot, shot. I'm back. 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Super Shy might have done it. They might just send Exo home, and Kanile might be the final nail in the coffin. And this could be the biggest upset of the group stage, and someone has to touch it. Crispy, okay, reactivates the overtime wick, but who is next? Cloud isn't there, and neither will Exo. Kill on the front line, but oh my word, the pressure Caravan's putting on right now to Vintage. Kind of shrugging off, but that DPS passive doing a lot of work, making sure they go down quick, sharp. Although Peace landing that pulse bomb, that's a bit of AoE damage on Graveyard. There might be a little double kill as well. Yes, it is. Peace coming up huge in that fight with three. So join, so join, so join. Nice! Nice. Nice. Just straight through, guys. Straight through, Marfa. Carry it. It's a tracer, tracer. Oh, tracer, tracer. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys are carrying me. You guys are carrying me. Missing one, missing one, missing one. Okay, they're coming. Doom, 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 doom. Focus up, focus up. I'm getting traded, I'm getting traded, I'm getting traded. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. You guys are down one. Good one, touch, 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 just try, just try. Yeah, I'm the stickiest, baby. Doom, touch, doom touch. You ain't touching shit. Oh my god, please. Oh my god. Yo, 